Web novel fanfiction TG the good. The latest of the latest. Chapter 56 At the same time. At WU's PR team office. While team leader Park had gone out to call Jang Yunuk and say thank you, the female and male employees finally let out sighs of relief. Since Lee Song has controversy once again turned into a heated debate, scales were gradually leaning towards Lee Song has favor as Jang Yunok's interview spread. Lee Song has name was still first on the real-time search rankings, and Cat Guardian Ghost was rising in ranking again. This was because there were people searching for the date of its first broadcast, saying that they would absolutely watch the broadcast to confirm Lee Song has acting skills. The female PR employee relaxed as she said. It looks like Sangha really was good at acting since Mrs. Jang Yunok is really picky. If she wasn't impressed with her acting, then I don't think she would have done an interview even if it was our CEO's request. At this rate, Sangha might surge in popularity and instantly become a first-rate actress for all we know. At his words, the female employee smiled brightly. That'll be great. There are lots of projects we miss and are taken by other companies because our actors can't fit them in their schedules. It was a shame. Also, since Song has image isn't fixed, she could pull off MS. Ju He or Sora's image, even Sun Chai Yu. Hey, hey. The female employee did a double take before closing her mouth. Then she carefully turned her head. Sun Chai Young was still sitting in the corner of the PR team office. Unlike before, she was staring at her phone with gloomy eyes. The path to the van after coming down from the stage was very far. The girls were buried in a crowd of about ten people. They gave autographs, shook hands, and took pictures. Even though the bodyguard scolded them, saying that there might be an accident since the path was so narrow and to quickly get in the van, the people as well as the girls stayed put and didn't think about moving. Well, the girls didn't have any immunity against such heated reactions. We endured it until the next girl group went up on stage before the trader, Kim Hyunjo and I dragged them from the front and pushed them from the back until we got them in the van. It's a complete madhouse. When I closed the door and let out a sigh, the trader next to me grinned. With this much? You should go check out Blackout's autograph event later. Why? How is it there? This place is like a school of minnows while it's like a school of piranhas there. He said as he looked off into the distance. A school of piranhas. Would there be a day I would be surrounded by them? The trader got in the driver's seat while I went around to get in the passenger seat. Excuse me. When someone called out to me, I turned around and instantly regretted it. Through a half-opened window of a white van parked nearby, Sugar Cat's Han Saitbile was looking at me with a bright smile. Is Lee Sangha okay? Last time I checked, there was a big fuss. Pardon? A source from Cat Guardian Ghost praised Lee Sangha, saying she was an acting genius. Is she really good? Sh. Yes. She's really good. As the van started, I quickly ended the exchange. If you're still curious, look at the article that was released afterwards. I replied with a friendliness I dragged out from within my soul and quickly turned my back on her. When I opened the door and got in the passenger seat, the mood at the back was somewhat of a mess. I turned around to see what was going on here and became surprised. Im Seo Young was biting her lower lip as she cried. I had thought it was serious a while ago, but the dam finally broke. Her cheeks were soaked. With a flustered expression, the trader asked. Why why are you crying? Did something happen outside? No, she says she's crying because she's so happy. Because she's happy. Kim Hyunjo smiled as he said. The day Neptune has their own concert she will probably sob and wail on top of the stage. Im Seo Young slapped Kim Hyunjo's back multiple times. Kim Hyunjo handed her a tissue. Okay, stop crying. Your eye makeup is running and it's all BL, it's fine. Yeah. It might be because it's waterproof. Im Seo Young said in a half-crying voice. Everyone who watched this burst into laughter. 
To be honest, everyone had been worried a great deal before they got on stage since the situation changed once that source or whatever said she was a genius right after the public's opinion of Lee Sangha had become slightly better. Once I get a hold of that person. Either way, because of that, even Lee Taehee, who didn't get nervous easily, had a stiff expression. And Im Seo Young was nervous as she gazed out at the audience, saying she was scared that the cheering audience might become quiet when they went up. However, her worries were for naught as the mood was great. Although we didn't know how long these cheering people would remember their performance and whether they would look up Neptune's name on the internet, today's performance was a success. To the point where they could be happy and proud of themselves. Do you think there were any of our fans in the audience? Will there be people who will come watch us again? Said Im Seo Young as she wiped her tears with the tissue. LJ shrugged her shoulders and said. Don't get your hopes up too high. They say the higher your expectations, the more disappointed you become. I can't even get my hopes up however I want. You never know since there were so many people. This is Hong Day. You might get a crowd that size if you turned on some music and blue bubbles. Yet, even as she said this, LJ was happier than ever. The lingering aftereffect of the performance didn't easily fade, and she was even faintly humming. I don't know if he was a fan or not. Lee Taehee, who was slumped in her designated seat at the very back, leaned forward and handed Lee Sangha something. It was a small bag of cookies sold in cafes. When Lee Sangha stared at it, Lee Taehee nodded her head as if telling her to eat it. Lee Sangha carefully ripped the plastic and began to eat a coin sized cookie. I looked at her vacantly. Although they had all gone up with heavy hearts, the one who had the heaviest heart was probably Lee Sangha since it was her controversy that impacted on Neptune. Although all I could do was comfort her before, I now had something that could lighten her heart. When I quietly gestured at her with my hand, Lee Sangha leaned towards me. Just then, Lee Taehee scratched her neck and said. Someone who was tall like an athlete gave it to me, saying it was a present. Those cookies. Why are you saying that now, Uni? Don't eat it. Don't eat it. Startled, Im Seo Young snatched the bag of cookies from Lee Song His hand. It's the first present we received after our performance. We have to take it home. ITLL rot, dummy. While the girls, as well as Kim Hyunjo and the trader, were chatting noisily around a bag of cookies, Lee Sangha approached me with a hopeless face as her food had been snatched from her right under her nose. Then she stretched her hand out. On top of her white hand was half a cookie. Do you want it? No, you were only able to save that. You eat it. As if she had been waiting for my words, the cookie entered Lee Song His mouth. I momentarily laughed before taking my phone out from my pocket. I opened the new exclusive article with Mrs. Jang Yunok's interview and showed it to her. Sangha, look at this. Lee Sangha looked down at it with a strange look. Not long after, her lips, smeared with cookie crumbs, opened slightly. Lee Sangha grabbed my phone and couldn't take her eyes off the article for a long time. It's probably been over 50 years since Mrs. Jang Yunok began acting. Ah. An acting veteran like her complimented your acting. If it's like this, then it becomes certain that your previous acting teacher was crazy. Now there is no need for you remember anything he said. It would be better if she forgot all his words that traumatized her. Of course, even if Lee Sangha forgot, I wouldn't. After having waited so long, how could I forget it so easily? While I was thinking these insidious thoughts, Lee Song has lips moved slightly. I could hear her whispering voice once I perked my ears. Appa's words. Hmm. Always seem right. Then she stared directly at me. My neck itched. No, it's not like that. Li Sangha smiled faintly at my words while she mumbled that I was. In the end, I simply laughed it off. As my mind relaxed, a simulation on how I would catch teacher Shim Kyungtaek ran even faster in my head. Yeah, tomorrow let's put an end to this. The next day, 11A. Instead of being at work, I was sitting on a sofa in an office of an art school. My hair was a mess as if I had just gotten up, and I had come wearing the same clothes as yesterday. The finishing touch was spraying soju one instead of cologne. 
Even when I saw my appearance, I looked like someone who had been drinking all night. In front of me was a man in his forties sitting in an intimidating posture. He wore an expensive suit and had a thick mustache and the good looks expected of a former musical actor. Teacher Shim Kyung Taek. No, he was someone who was even called a professor here. What was the important thing you had to say? Teacher Shim Kyung Taek scanned my figure as he asked. I scratched the back of my head. Then I acted like a new recruit who caused an accident. That is, I came here because of a problem regarding Lee Sangha. Lee Sangha? I was curious why you suddenly came here. Teacher Shim Kyung Taek let out a sigh and said. I believe I apologized, saying that I felt my words were a bit too harsh. It's not because of that. I might have sworn at him just then. After traumatizing a girl like that, my words were a bit too harsh. Like hell that was an apology. How was that saying sorry? There's such a big fuss about Lee Song has acting skill right now. It became a heated topic once again when Mrs. Jang Yunok did an interview yesterday, personally saying she was born with acting talent. Teacher Shim Kyung Taek's expression became uncomfortable. Of course, it would. Since the actress he said wasn't talented was praised as a genius by a veteran actress, who knew the entertainment world like the back of her hand. He was only able to sit there like that because of his thick face. If it was anyone else, they would have died from embarrassment. So. I had a couple drinks with a reporter yesterday he was very curious why Sangha never pursued acting during their two years of obscurity. As my lies continued, teacher Shim Kyung Taek's expression stiffened. I scratched the back of my head again and said. I was so drunk that I think I made a mistake. A mistake? What kind of mistake did you make? I threw a pile of it the clearly taken aback teacher Shim Kyung Taek. That Lee Sangha gave up on acting after her previous acting teacher told her to never step foot in the acting industry something like that. Teacher Shim Kyung Taek's face turned sour. The problem is that after hearing that, the reporter said that the teacher might have had ulterior motives and kept asking me who he was. What? He was so surprised that he was staring at me with glaring eyes. Currently, Lee Song has name was the most enticing bait for reporters. Once an exclusive article about her was published, other similar articles would quickly cover the news pages. Then netizens would spread and plaster these articles everywhere. But what would happen if a rumor that teacher Shim Kyung Taek, who previously taught Lee Sangha, severely criticized her to the point of traumatizing her and blocked her path as an actress? Especially if this somehow involved Sun Chai Young, then wouldn't he express a reaction beyond being angry at my words? since he wouldn't want this to be exposed to the public. I attentively examined teacher Shim Kyung Taek's reaction before recalling something else I wanted to throw at him. It seems I let it slip because I was too drunk. I came here because I thought I should at least apologize. Here you go, an apology. Chapter, 57 I observed teacher Shim Kyung Taek's reaction. This wasn't much compared to when I saw the future with my foresight ability. His fingers hurriedly tapped on the laptop on top of the table. His eyes rolled around rapidly, and soon, he let out the sigh he had been holding back. He probably had been checking to see if his name had come up in any article. Ah. When I looked at his relieved face, I really wanted to call reporter Park Wujong. His smooth, unchapped lips moved slightly. Below his stylish suit sleeve was a tightly clenched fist with bulging veins. His sharp eyes soon found their target. Of course, it was me. Who is it? Teacher Shim Kyung Taek stared at me as he urged. That reporter, who is it? Call him immediately and tell him not to write that article. I came here because I can't. I squeezed out a regrettable expression as I acted like I was looking at my watch. I wanted to apologize before the article was published. You crazy idiot. Do you think this is something you can gloss over with an apology? I know, right? For someone who knows this, why did you end it with an apology, you crazy teacher? I continued to speak with a blank face. Still, since I didn't say your name. If reporters start snooping around, it won't be long until they learn my name. You idiot, it doesn't look like you can distinguish heaven and earth right now, but do you know what kind of mess you caused? Of course I did. 
If this is leaked to the press. Teacher Shim Kyungtaek, who was biting his lips, shouted. Who is the reporter you talk to? Which newspaper is it? Although he shouted with an angry voice and a forceful tone to pressure me, it was the wrong choice. The more aggressively he reacted, the cooler my head became. I licked my dry lips. Should I go a little further? But, to be honest, it is a fact that you said that to her. I grumbled in complaint. Teacher Shim Kyungtik's face was worth seeing. I wanted to take a picture and send it to Lee Sangha. I thought she'd like it. What, you idiot? Calling me idiot, idiot for a while now. For a professor to have such poor vocabulary. For a professor, who was formerly a musical actor, to fail to look through my sloppy acting and become purple with rage, his skills were also doubtful. Everyone will know that Lee Sangha is great at acting after the first broadcast, and I bet reporters will constantly ask me why we didn't make her act earlier until my ears become sore. Those who don't know will probably swear at the company. I only gave him the facts, thinking about the company's situation. The company's situation. Teacher Shim Kyungtaek finally shot up from his sofa. WU will be in more of a mess if this is leaked to the press. Do you think this is some small incident? If this incident is revealed, do you think ITLL end with just my name in disgrace? I was asked. Why stop? You should have kept going. You should have told me exactly what kind of mess it would create if it was revealed. And whose face, other than yours, it would disgrace. When I stared at him, Teacher Shim Kyungtaek spat a few more curses as if he said something unnecessary. It was too late even if he sealed his lips now. It had already been a while since my suspicion became a certainty. Now I only needed to pressure him and drag out the evidence. A definite proof. I suddenly recalled CEO Beck Hansung's figure. His figure that could intimidate others by just looking at them without raising his voice or losing his temper. If CEO Beck Hansung was sitting here instead of me, what expression and what tone would he speak with? Your words seem to suggest that there is a hidden circumstance that can't be leaked to the press. It also seems like it's related to someone from WU. Teacher Shim Kyungtaek's voice shouted out immediately. Why are you pointlessly trying to learn things? Tell me the name of that reporter and his company while we can resolve this before it gets bigger than leave. He'll talk to the WU team leader personally about the rest. I don't know about that. I relaxed my hunched shoulders and leisurely leaned my back against the sofa. Rather than a company problem I don't know, Lee Song has problem is much more important to me. You idiot, you're going too far. Why are you bringing up the past? The past? It's better for Lee Songa if we just gloss past this without digging further. She's doing a project right now anyways. Everything's good now, so why are you annoying me about this? I clenched my fist. If I was a more impulsive person, I might have already thrown a punch at him. Director Park from 20 years in the future said that Lee Sangha began acting past her 30s. If I hadn't seen that future and if, through overlapping fate, coincidences, or whatever, Lee Sangha didn't begin acting, then she might have wasted 10 years due to that ridiculous trauma. The 20-year-old Lee Sangha I knew greatly enjoyed acting and put in endless effort into it to do better. How would those ten years look like for the Lee Sangha I didn't know? When I thought about that, I didn't want to hear his bullshit any longer. As someone who is called a professor, you shouldn't speak like that. I quit trying to maintain my expression. I stopped thinking about what I should say. Everything progressed naturally. Shin Kyungtaek was sitting awkwardly as he gazed at the youth in front of him. He didn't even remember his name. If that man didn't create such a huge accident, he wouldn't have even talked with him for this long. Until now, he had thought he was a dimwit that flapped his tongue around reporters. If he sent him and the one he shared the secret with to WU, they would eventually clean up the mess themselves, and he would never have to see this idiot again. Although he had originally thought this, he felt something was strange when the youth's expression changed. The guy, who had kept rolling his vacant eyes, suddenly looked back at him as if he was someone who was very experienced in this industry. Why did you do that to Sangha? For what reason? For whom? The slow-talking youth took out his phone. He played a video and placed it down in front of Shim Kyungtaek. 
the side of someone's face appeared on the small screen. It was Lee Sangha. He could clearly hear the pages of the script flipping and the dialogue. It was a video taken during a script reading session. WHY are you show? Before he could finish his question, the youth smiled as he said. Isn't she good? When I first saw Lee Sangha act, I thought all actors would be like that when I saw them up close, but that wasn't the case. The actors in the script reading session, the director, and even a veteran actress with tens of years of experience. Everyone besides you said she was a natural. Shin Kyung Tae couldn't take his eyes of Lee Song has acting on the screen. It was like discovering a doll he had crushed so that it could never stand back up then thrown away had come back completely intact. It was difficult to endure the uncomfortable feeling. A smooth yet cold voice burrowed into his ears. If I were you, I'd feel a little urgent. Even right now, the reporter is probably suspicious whether your abuse was intentional or not, and if this appears in the press, it will be impossible to deal with the aftermath. As you probably know, this. The youth's lips curled upwards. Is a story reporters will go crazy for. You, you. Shim Kyung takes eyes reddened. He was right. There would be nothing they could do if an article was published. He had experienced this industry long enough to know this. An article about Lee Sangha would be like throwing fire at a dry stack of straws. It would burn up instantly, and they couldn't even think about dealing with that aftermath. Both himself and his student who asked him to. As if he read his discomposure, the youth said in a persuading manner. That's why, isn't it better to tell me the problem the company doesn't know and persuade me? If the article explodes, it'll just remain as an ignorant manager who caused a mess, but for you, a professor, it seems ITLL leave quite the scar. You idiot, are you threatening? Threatening you? The youth laughed strangely. I never threatened anyone before. He then stopped laughing. A heavy silence hung in the air. The youth stared at him and said. But I think I can. It was quicker than I thought. I meant getting teacher Shim Kyung Taek to say Sun Chai Young's name. Unexpectedly, teacher Shim Kyung Taek didn't seem to worry much about revealing Sun Chai Young's name. He was thinking more about how to silence the reporter. Well, that wasn't hard since there never was a reporter to silence. Teacher Shim Kyung Taek was calling someone on his phone as he said. I told you before, it would have been better if you just glossed over it without knowing. You'll see what I mean by that. I didn't reply and left the school. After having obtained what I wanted, I didn't want to see his face any longer. After walking a while, I leaned against a tree on the street. Then I checked the audio recording of teacher Shim Kyung Taek's words and sent it to Kim Hyunjo. Since I received a call right away, I briefly explained the situation. Sun Chai Young suffered from stress after seeing Lee Sangha act and requested teacher Shim Kyung Taek to take action. Then teacher Shim Kyung Taek, to protect his prized star student, cut the bud known as Lee Sangha so that she wouldn't grow anymore. At first, I heard foul language coming from the phone, but around the middle, it became silent. We decided to meet and discuss things with the Team 3 leader and Lee Sangha a bit later and hung up. I shoved my hands in my coat pockets and quickly entered the fray of people. The early winter wind scratched past my face. Did I only need to wait for the higher-ups to come to a decision now? I had reached my original goal. To expose the awkward suspicion I had. To catch teacher Shim Kyung Taek and drag Sun Chai Young's name out from him. After slowly walking for a bit, I recalled what had happened. I threatened someone, didn't I? To be honest, I felt a bit weird. It wasn't because I threatened someone but because it didn't seem like much. Instead, I didn't want to think about what might have happened next. I might have used fouler language than the ones he said to Lee Sangha or even have asked reporter Park Woo Jong to expose Sun Chai Young's selfish actions to the press. That was if I was in a position like CEO Baek Han Sung or myself 20 years in the future, who could take these actions, and not simply a manager. On my way back to the company, I bought a tiramisu cake the size of a head to give to Lee Sangha. I wanted to give her something delicious to eat before she learned of what kind of dirty, selfish exchange occurred behind the incidents causing her trauma. If she learned of the truth, then she would more shocked and angrier than I was. 
though, knowing her, I wasn't sure if she would quietly bury it in her heart. When I entered the meeting room, I saw Lee Sangha, who had arrived ahead of me. It seemed she thought we were going to talk about her drama as she held the Cat Guardian ghost script in her hands. Well, maybe not since she did bring that around with her wherever she went these days. You came. Yeah. Eat this before the chief and team three leader arrive. When I handed her the cake, her expression brightened. Although there wasn't much time before the appointed time, it was more than enough for Lee Sangha to finish off this cake. Do I eat this all by myself? When I nodded my head, Lee Sangha quickly unboxed the cake. Then she stared at the cake sprinkled with a fresh layer of cocoa powder. Some might think that she was appreciating it a work of art. With one hand holding a cake knife and the other holding a fork, it looked like she was thinking about something before placing the knife down. Then she used the fork to dig into the center of the cake. A piece of the cake dangerously wavered on top of her fork. It was the moment Lee Sangha shoved the fork into her mouth with an expectant face. The meeting room door abruptly opened, and two people entered in. They weren't Kim Hyunjo and the Team 3 leader we were waiting for but Sun Chai Young and Chief Jo. She didn't look like she came here to apologize. Lee Sangha, who was eating the cake, glanced at Sun Chai Young before immediately getting in front of me. As if contemplating whether he should stop Sun Chai Young or not, Chief Jo stood hesitantly before firmly closing the door in the end. Sun Chai Young asked in a tone that seemed like she would slap my cheek. What did you say to Teacher Shim? Who are you to threaten Teacher Shim? Didn't they call this the crook accusing a law-abiding citizen of a crime one? I was so dumbfounded that a laugh escaped my lips. You're laughing. What happened next occurred in a few moments. Sun Chai Young swung her hand as if she was really trying to slap my cheek. While wondering whether she would actually go through with it, I leaned my head back to avoid it at the last instant. Lee Sangha, who was more surprised than I was, threw her fork and stood up. The usually calm Lee Song has eyes flared with rage. Then, before I could stop her, of course, I didn't want to either, she grabbed the cake with her bare hands and threw it at Sun Chai Young's face. Chapter 58 Without being able to scream, Sun Chai Young stiffened like a mannequin. Looking at how only her pupils slid downwards in her widened eyes, it seemed she couldn't grasp the situation and what had hit her face. The tiramisu cake, still a black mess stuck onto her face, slowly slid down. While taking in the once-in-a-lifetime scene in front of me, I thought for a moment. Although the cake I spent a lot of money on became like that, I didn't feel like the money was wasted. The cake choice was great. If it was simply a cream cake, then I thought it would feel slightly lacking. W.H. Watt, T.H. This, Chai Cheung. Chief Jaw's stutter broke the silence. He stared at me then at Lee Sangha with the pale face of someone who had watched a terrifying horror movie before rummaging through his pockets and hurriedly disappearing, saying that he would bring tissues. Are you crazy? Sun Chai Young said as she wiped her cheek with the back of her hand and furiously brushed off the cakey mess. I thought she would rampage like a beast like before, but perhaps it was similar to the quiet before the storm as her voice was unexpectedly calm. However, there was a vicious look in her eyes. I raised my arm and shielded Lee Sangha just in case. No. Replied Lee Sangha. When I turned around, I became surprised. Her voice was as calm as usual, but her eyes seemed to be burning. Her attitude seemed as though, if Sun Chai Young raised her hand again, she'd throw the cake box at her too. Well, she was like that. I had forgotten for a while. I had forgotten that Lee Sangha, who would become dejected whenever she troubled her team because of her mistakes, was the type who would say what she wanted and fight when necessary. You're the one who started it. You. 1. Sun Chai Young laughed as if taken aback. Lee Sangha didn't care and continued. You tried to hit him. So. Did he get hit? He dodged it like a slippery eel. Also, because I vented my anger on your manager, you throw a cake at your company senior? Have you lost your mind because people praise you for being a genius? Do you think that you can still? Don't vent. Lee Sangha cut her off. What? Don't vent your anger on someone else's. Someone else's. 
someone else's appa. It felt like she had hurriedly changed her words. However, I didn't have the chance to be curious. Behind Sun Chai Young, the door opened again. Then the still pale-faced Chief Zhou glanced outside before entering then closing the door. He had a bunch of tissues in one hand. Chai Young, before anyone sees you, you show. Appa, is someone seeing me the problem? When I was hit with a cake. She spat after snatching the tissues. Chief Zhou did a double take before looking at Li Sangha with a frown. What were you T? However, Chief Zhou's expression soon became bitter. It was clear he was also aware that Sun Chai Young requested teacher Shim Kyung take to block Li Songha's path. That was why he couldn't scold her. When thinking of what Sun Chai Young did, she deserved a rock thrown at her, let alone a cake. Instead of Li Songha, Chief Zhou picked on me. Hey, you. How could you just watch instead of stopping her? I didn't see it as I was thinking about teacher Shim Kyung take. Chief Zhou flinched like someone who had been suddenly attacked at my words. As if this sight irritated her, Sun Chai Young angrily threw the tissues she was wiping her face with on the floor. Ah, I'm pissed. Don't think about picking on Teacher Shim with this incident. I heard that you now know everything. I did it. I asked the teacher to stop Li Sangha from acting. Chai Young. Frightened, Chief Zhou checked outside. I momentarily halted. Although Teacher Shim Kyungtaek told me everything, I never thought that Sun Chai Young would admit it with her own mouth as if it was nothing. I suddenly became worried and looked at Li Sangha. However, Li Sangha was less agitated than before. She simply stared at Sun Chai Young with eyes that seemed calm and deep like a bottomless pool of water. I couldn't tell what she was thinking with those eyes. But what are you going to do about it now that you know? Sun Chai Young asked me. Who are you going to whine to? The director? The CEO? Try it. What do you think the CEO is going to say to me? Chai Young, really, what if someone hears you? When Chief Zhou grabbed her arm and tried to stop her, Sun Chai Young raised her voice. There's no one besides these two anyways. And what did I do wrong? I only hit it because it was embarrassing. Do you think I hit it because I was scared? You. Ha, you clearly told the team leader you wouldn't do it Aga. I did it because I didn't like her. When I thought that she might join my project, I became so irritated that I couldn't read the script or sleep. I made so much money for the company, they can just gloss it over with that. Even her assigned manager, Chief Joe, seemed flabbergasted. Although he was looking at Sun Chai Young like a moving bomb, Sun Chai Young didn't stop and continued. That's why I became relaxed, Appa. Since there was nothing getting in my way, I became relaxed and didn't get stressed. Because of that, the drama went well and so did the movie. I did so many commercials and s last year too. Do you think that she'd make more than me even if she continued acting? In the company's perspective, wasn't this better? My anger surged, calmed, was taken aback, then calmed again. There was one thing on my mind now. Just where did someone like her come from? It was like I was looking into Sun Chai Young the human and not the actress. When you took off her clean, innocent fabricated fod, there was an obscure, disgusting monster inside. Can I tell you something? Without waiting for my reply, she said sarcastically. There not much time before I have to renew my contract. That is why the director and CEO aren't going to say anything to me right now. From the drama releasing in January to extending commercial and advertising contracts, there's a lot riding on me. Ah, uh, so this was it. This was what teacher Shim Kyung take meant. That it would be better if I had just glossed over it without knowing. If the CEO asks me to apologize, then, well, he'll think about it. So, until then, don't piss someone off with something like this. It seems you don't know because it hasn't been long since you've started working, but this industry is always like this. I swallow the countless words that surged up my throat and said. Although it hasn't been long since I've started working, there's something I clearly learned. Something you learned. Sun Chai Young, who had a mocking smile, narrowed her eyes. I looked at Li Sangha. She was still standing tall behind me. 
However, I could feel her thin fingers clinging on my shirt. Although I might not know the ways of the world, I wasn't simply a naive person. Meaning, I wasn't the type to completely believe CEO Beck Hansung would make Sun Chaiyang pay a worthy price for her actions after listening to her words. That wasn't naivety but stupidity. This industry was a breeding ground of absurdity and irrationality. There was nothing more to say about this as this was a celebrity management organization with an enormous food chain of boss subordinate relationships. Sun Chai Young was a top actress residing in the upper echelon, while Lee Sangha and I were buried way below, to the point where it would be difficult to see us, and were only now sticking our heads out and looking up towards the top. However, because I was in this position, I could say this. You never know what will happen the very next day in this industry. Kim Hyunjo and the Team 3 leader arrived long after the appointed time. The Team 3 leader's expression stiffened after checking the cake on the meeting room floor and the cocoa powder still stuck on Sun Chai Young's neck. When the two of them entered, Sun Chai Young clicked her tongue as if they were a hindrance. Then she bobbed her head in greeting to the Team 3 leader and left. Sun Chai Young. When the Team 3 leader called out to her, Sun Chai Young momentarily stopped. This isn't something we can just gloss over. It's tiresome to say the same thing multiple times. Please talk with my team leader. She said with a smile before disappearing without turning back. Chief Zhou followed behind while reading at the team three leader's expression. Kim Hyunjo and the team three leader shook their heads. They both revealed the same expression I had on previously. An expression that said, just where did someone like her come from? I, once again, thought that the influence of a top star was quite amazing and that, if I didn't want to see such dirty figures in this industry, I needed to at least have the title of a CEO. How ill-mannered. She's no good. The Team 3 leader sat in an empty seat and said. It looks like Shim Kyung Take, that damn idiot, called the Team 2 leader. He fumed about how you crossed the line or whatever so we were late because we got in a dispute. He looked like he was going to grind you up. Kim Hyunjo added with a frown. Since I already became an eyesore to the Team 2 leader after the Sung Dawan incident, with this, it seemed that I had crossed a point of no return. Well, I had no thoughts on turning things around for this incident. The Team 3 leader tapped my arm. You have nothing to worry about. I firmly told the Team 2 leader that I told you to do it and to not even think about letting his temper out on you. Ah, uh, yes. How dare he try to vent his anger out on someone else after being stabbed in the back. He should have taken better care of his people. If it were me, I would be too embarrassed to show my face. When the Team 3 leader continued to grumble, Kim Hyunjo tapped the table and changed the subject. While both Hyung and I have listened to the audio file, tell us from the start. Still aware of Lee Sangha, who was sitting next to me, I opened my mouth. From the incident with Shim Kyungtaek in the morning, to the incident just now. As I told the events which took place while taking out the unnecessary bits and emphasizing others, Kim Hyunjo and the Team 3 leader's expressions progressively turned uglier. The only one who remained calm was Lee Sangha, the person this concerned. No, at this point, she surpassed calmness and approached the boundaries of imperturbability. On the other hand, the two who showed intense reactions at each word, using swears I hadn't even heard of before, became rampant like angry bulls when they heard the part when Sun Chai Young mentioned the director and the CEO. There's a limit to wickedness. At this point, she's just a crazy. Sangha, you should have thrown the table at her instead of the cake. Added Kim Hyunjo. I deeply agreed with him. Hyung, how much longer is it until Sun Chai Young's contract renewal? I don't know the exact date but since they made a two-year exclusive contract last time, there isn't much time left. That's why the Team 2 leader was busy since last month, trying to curry favor with Sun Chai Young. Even Team Leader Park from the PR team was exhausted. Don't tell me the director and the CEO will really. Kim Hyunjo said while glancing at Lee Sangha. He was worried that the director and the CEO would really gloss over this for the contract renewal like Sun Chai Young said. The Team 3 leader frowned. This isn't a one-person company for Sun Chai Young, she needs to take responsibility for her actions. This goes the same for that Shim Kyung Take idiot. When I investigated, 
it looked like there were previous cases before Sangha as well. He'll call the director and the CEO and discuss it with them. The two talked for a while before each saying a word of encouragement to Lee Sangha and getting up. Since they left with murderous looks, it looked like their target was either Chief Joe or the Team 2 leader. I was also about to leave, but I kept thinking of the disaster in the meeting room. I rolled up my sleeves and wiped the cake plastered everywhere. Lee Sangha, who was next to me, helping me clean up with tissues, said. Sorry. About what? I threw the cake you bought me. Then she looked at the cake dropped under the table as if it was a waste. Although she knew her life had almost been twisted by Sun Chai Young's wickedness, the words she said with a serious expression where I wanted to open her head and see what kind of thoughts were contained in that small head of hers. It was this moment when I felt it was a pity my ability wasn't mind reading. I was only able to take one bite, but it was incredibly tasty. It was expensive, right? No, you did well to throw it. The price didn't matter. It's all good since it was worthwhile. I grinned when I recalled Sun Chai Young's face plastered with cake. It seemed Lee Sangha recalled the same thing as her lips curved slightly upwards. Don't think it was a waste. I'll buy you one that's bigger. Yes. As she picked up the tissues and placed them in the cake box, she said in a passing tone. That which? Huh. If I work hard and become successful, can I drive her out far away? Even after I took Lee Sangha to her residence and went home, her last words kept ringing in my ears. Her words asking if she could drive Sun Chai Young far away. Although she said it in a passing tone, the more I thought about it, the heavier her words felt. While I was thinking about it, slouched on my desk, my phone rang. It was a number I was seeing for the first time. Well, it seemed my phone number became public since broadcast writers and entertainment reporters would call me all day and night so I was used unknown numbers now. Yes, this is Yong Sun Wu. Um. Are you free to talk? Whoa. I hurriedly turned the phone, which was against my ear, and confirmed the phone number. Did I ever see this number on my company's list of phone numbers? He sounded like CEO Beck Hansung. Um, are you the CEO? Right. I called you because I wanted to ask you something. I heard a low laughter from the other side. That moment, I suddenly recalled what CEO Beck Hansung said to me privately in his office. What to give me if the drama is a success? If there was something I wanted, to tell him then. I straightened my back and said while sitting. I'm free to talk. I also have something I would like to tell you. Chapter, 59 Tell me. CEO said without hesitation. Although the thought that I should talk with Kim Hyunjo or the Team 3 leader first briefly crossed my mind, I had already set my mind. I never knew CEO Beck Hansung would personally call me. Let's act first and report later. If I talk to Kim Hyunjo tomorrow. Hmm. I guess I'd get the same look I've received a few times. The he's crazy look. I relaxed and calmed myself down with my mother's ginger honey tea before saying. About what you said last time. If Cat Guardian Ghost is a success, to tell you then. Ah. A low laugh. Was it because he was the CEO? Why couldn't I even listen to his laughter comfortably? It looks like you found something you wanted. As carefully as possible, I talked about Sun Chai Young, Teacher Shim Kyung Take, and Lee Sangha. It seemed he had already heard this from the Team 3 leader as he also seemed to know the whole story. While I was seriously setting things up for my final words, CEO Beck Hansung indicated he was listening with short replies. After I expressed everything I could, I said. Rather than a spoken apology ID like if she paid the appropriate price. How odd. Pardon. The voice from the other end continued. When I listen to you talk, it feels like you are certain the drama will do well. Th that's because it's a good drama. I believe that it will definitely be a success. Good. That seemed natural. Okay. Then try making it a success. I'll think about the price. I clenched my fist. Teacher Shim Kyung takes overbearing face and Sun Chai Young's mocking face appeared in front of me. 
I thought I'd have trouble sleeping after seeing those two poor excuses for human beings today, but my mind became calm at last. Then I suddenly recalled CEO Beck Hansung's motive for calling me. What you wanted to ask me was. Just what did he have to ask me? While spinning my head and thinking of different circumstances, I heard a relaxed voice. That drama. How do you think ITLL do in China? Am asking a lucky person to guess. Beijing, China. In the living room of the glamorous suite room lavished in red, CEO Beck Hansung, who was leaning against a spacious sofa, said a few more words before hanging up. He tossed his phone to the side of the sofa and threw his head back. CEO, we need to go down in 20 minutes. The director entered the living room and sat on the sofa. His exhaustion due to the busy schedule was clearly evident on his face. Although they were on the same schedule, he looked twice as exhausted as CEO Beck Hansung. But who did you call for so long? Was it the Team 3 leader again? CEO Beck Hansung, who was lost in thought with his eyes closed, curled his lips into a smile. No, Young Sun Wu. Who? Young Sun Wu Young Sun, the Team 3 luck tosser. When the director became puzzled, CEO Beck Hansung's smile grew even more apparent. There was something I wanted to ask him. Just what did you have to ask him ah, the problem regarding Chai Young and Sangha? There's that too. I asked him to guess what the reaction of Cat Guardian Ghost would be in China. Taken aback, the director said exasperatingly. He's not some sort of shaman. At this rate, we might have to pay him a commission. While sitting on the sofa and looking through the thick folder he had brought, the director asked. So what did he say? CEO Beck Hansung paused for a moment. As if out of habit, his white, long finger tapped on the sofa. He said he thinks ITLL be good. Oh, I wish it does. But, while it's true that his ability is extraordinary at times, I don't know about his senses. The reason why he rejected Dowen when he asked him to be his manager, it seemed that he later said he got a bad vibe. Really? His finger stopped in midair. CEO Beck Hansung straightened his relaxed posture. He brushed back his tangled hair and narrowed his eyes. His eyes shined as if he found a good source of entertainment. He said he got a bad vibe from Sung Dowen. Well, it was probably a joke. Quite odd. Then the director said to the quietly mumbling CEO. Ah, there's one more. I heard this from the PR team. Well, they told me this was also said as a joke. Hmm. Mermaid out of water, he said he got a bad vibe about that too. This time, CEO Beck Hansung tilted his head. Now that's unexpected. That's why I'm not sure about his senses. It might just be his habit. The director changed the subject. But, did Luck Tosser say anything about the problem regarding Sun Chai Young? Ah. We decided to talk about it again in January. January? Why? The two dramas start broadcasting that time. CEO Beck Hansung's tone was mixed with interest and an odd feeling. What does that have to do with? The director cut his words short when he saw the CEO lost in thought. After around ten minutes had passed, CEO Beck Hansung stretched as his muscles inside his thin shirt showed their vigor. After ridding himself of exhaustion, he stretched out his hand. The portfolios? Ah, uh, I did prepare them as you told me to. The director took out a few portfolios from the folder he was holding. Everyone else's image isn't really good enough to replace Dao and the advertisers want a high-class, refined image. Jijun is the closest to what they are looking for, but he's not well known in China. CEO Beck Hansung received the portfolios and wordlessly flipped through them. The director scratched his half-balding head and asked in a quiet voice, even though they were the only two there. But why are you trying to replace Dowen? The advertisers chose Dowen, and since they've clearly experienced the effects of marketing with a star, they will try not to let him go. CEO Beck Hansung stared at Sung Dowen's portfolio in his hand. Sung Dowen's profile picture was of him, barefooted in a white dress shirt, lying down on a sandy beach with a smile. It was the cool, elegant smile that made him a popular Hallyu One star. We need to clean up the uncontrollable bomb. 
CEO Beck Hansung closed the portfolio and tossed it below the sofa. Looking at this, the director subtly licked his lips and said. What about Chai Young? Apparently, the advertisers had wanted to keep Dowan and replace Chai Young with a new face, but they stopped once Mermaid Out of Water received heated reactions in China. Really? Although Korea is in a frenzy about Cat Guardian Ghost, the reactions for Mermaid Out of Water is pretty good here. Well, since it's to the point where the copyrights for this unreleased drama sold for one. Seven million. After rubbing his chin multiple times, CEO Baek Hansung placed Seo Jijun's portfolio on the table. Then pushed Sun Chai Young's portfolio, which was next to it, aside and replaced it with a thin, paltry portfolio. It was Lee Songa. How does this look? Uh, um they look good. They look good, but I don't think the advertisers will like it. The director, who had replied hesitantly, scratched the hair behind his ear. Not many people know Jijun here, but Sangha is completely unknown. Maybe if, like Luck Tosser said, the drama is a big hit in China, but that's something decided by heavens. Would it really be that lucky? We have to see. Did you say that contracts of the Cat Guardian Ghost copyrights are still ongoing? It looks like Pan Production is trying their best, but it seems the contract needs more adjustments. It looks like they are in a bit of a mess because it hasn't been long since the production itself was founded, and above all, they don't have a How You Star to push. Maybe I should have talked to Blackout since playing around after their concert. The director mumbled while licking his lips. CEO Beck Hansung checked his watch and leisurely wore his necktie. Soon, he opened his mouth. Find out the CEO of Pan Productions number. Also, tell him to get meetings with a few big online video platforms here. The director let out a silent sigh as he expected that, listening to the CEO's words, they would have to push back their return date. Unlike the director's round, Slumped shoulders, CEO Beck Hansung's lips curved upwards as he gazed at the three portfolios on the table. I'm curious about this as well. What? How much of Young Sunwoo's vibes are correct? It felt like I was speeding on the Autobahn in a sports car. Each day passed by at lightning speed. Although I had never gone to the Autobahn or ridden in a sports car, I just thought it would feel like this. Extremely fast. In a blink of an eye, we had another filming of Next K Star and two more episodes of it had been broadcast. The highest viewership rating was 3.1% on the first broadcast, 3.6% on the second, and 3.9% on the third. It kept reaching a new highest viewership rating every broadcast and continued to go up. Maybe it was because we were close to hitting 4%, but the staff's smiles were reaching their ears. Although producer Go Junti still put Neptune, especially focusing on Lee Songa, through various edits and milked Lee Song has trendiness, he didn't directly screw them over again like the first broadcast. Of course, since we didn't know when he would screw us over again, we had to keep our eyes open. Either way, since their faces kept showing up on screen, they were becoming more and more well known, and since they continuously received good scores from the judges, they were gradually building the image of a talented girl group. Broadcasts were indeed great as, once their name became a little known, they started to receive more event requests and increased pay, and they now made enough to at least pay their makeup expenses. This was worth clapping for. We're almost done. Accompanied by the cold night air, the trader entered the open hall. Did you smoke? Does it smell? Of course it does. You didn't smoke before, right? I quit but I started craving it recently. The trader clicked his tongue as he shook his clothes. Maybe it was because of the cigarette, but his face, which looked as exhausted as Kim Hyunjo's, seemed to have found some of its vigor. Due to my family environment, I never touched a cigarette during school or even mandatory military service, but I've become tempted recently. Other team managers would look livelier after a smoke during filming as if they had an four injection. Today's song has first drama filming, right? Yeah. Finally. After finishing the photo shoot for the poster in Gosa 2, Cat Guardian Ghost began filming not too long ago. They were busy filming the flashback scenes of the male and female leads before snow started to fall. Although it was Song Ha's first filming today, 
I heard that Seo Jijun and Chief Li Bangjun were already spending their days going back and forth between the outdoor and indoor film sets. Are you going to the set right after this recording? Yeah. They said we need to be on standby by 4A. It currently just passed midnight right now. We needed to dash to the film set after erasing her performance makeup, putting on new makeup, and changing her outfit. While I was looking at my watch and estimating the time, the trader let out a small sigh and said. Then you probably won't be able to come to work tomorrow. He'll text you the details of the meeting. There was a meeting. We're starting meetings discussing the girl's next mini-album. Ah, right. We were. There were countless celebrities who faded into obscurity after the programs, that made them well-known, ended. To prevent this from happening to Neptune, we were carefully considering our next step. The most important thing was Neptune's next mini-album, which would be released early next year. This was because, while we are focusing on entertainment shows and dramas, Neptune was a girl group. If they even had one hit song the general public knew the melody of, their activities could greatly expand to performances, events, autograph events, as well as others. Because their future would be well set if this album was a success, all related employees were mobilized and were putting their heart and soul into it. Since there weren't only one or two albums with Neptune's name on it that failed, it felt like they were all grounding their teeth in determination. Kim Hyunjo had pretty much become a roaming zombie, yet full of drive, trying to prevent Neptune from quickly falling from the music charts this time. The only person who felt more expectant than pressured or worried was probably me. Since I knew that there was a very likely chance that Neptune's next title track would reach first on the music charts. Hey, Lee Sangha. Good luck with filming. Said Im Seo Young as she rubbed her tired eyes in front of their residence. Lee Tae Hee and LJ held their yawns back as they added their own words of encouragement. Sangha, good luck. Don't be pressured since it's your first filming. Do they give you breakfast there? I set aside some snacks in the back seat so if you're hungry, of course, you will be, you can eat it all. Lee Sangha was the only one left in the van as she nodded her head in front of the window. Of course, she showed the greatest reaction to LJ's words. I was about to start the van when Im Seo Young said some gloomy words from outside. You have to do better than Sun Chai Young. Sun Chai. Don't give her pressure, dummy. The back mirror reflected Im Seo Young getting hit in the back of her head by LJ. Kim Hyunjo and I tidied up Sun Chai Young and teacher Shim Kyung takes atrocities before telling the girls, but wow, their reactions were killer. Either way, Sun Chai Young became their mutual enemy at their residence. Lee Tae Hee was silently angry, while LJ threw an uppercut to Im Seo Young's cat doll and ripped its leg. Im Seo Young printed out a humiliating photo of Sun Chai Young, placed in an easily viewable spot in the living room, and made time to appreciate it every day. I heard that the company would have a New Year's party at the beginning of the year. I couldn't imagine what would happen when they met Sun Chai Young there. Well, since we weren't sure, I jokingly talked with Kim Hyunjo about it. Asking whether we should prepare a few cakes at our table. We visited the shop, finished our preparations for the shoot, and immediately drove to the outdoor film site next to Han River. Lee Sangha, who was sitting in the back seat, was eating the snacks prepared by LJ as if they were military provisions as she flipped through her script. Looking at her expression, it seemed she had partially gotten into the role of Young Haewon already. I shouldn't bother her. Although it was very late, there were almost a hundred people crowding the filming set on Han Riverbank. I slowly approached before opening the van window and sticking my head out. I was faced with the wet, howling wind along with the loud noises on set. There was a long crane, lighting equipment, cameras, thick cables, and people going around holding reflectors. I was seeing the busy filming site I had only seen in behind-the-scenes videos with my own two eyes. I felt adrenaline surging within me. I probably had the same face the quadruplets would have when they arrived at an amusement park. When I parked the van between other vans, a familiar assistant director knocked on the window. You've come. Yes, you're working hard when it's so late. This is nothing since we're only starting. Nothing. The assistant director gestured to the film site with his chin and said worriedly. The staff who didn't get to see the script reading session as well as extras. 
they are all talking a ton about Lee Sangha. Since this is Han River, there will be a big crowd of people when the day brightens the director was worried Lee Sangha would feel pressured. Will she be okay? I turned to my back. Lee Sangha was staring at the cover of the script. No. I couldn't really tell whether she was looking at the cover or if the cover just happened to be where she was staring at. Beside her were leftover snacks she hadn't finished yet. I nodded my head to the assistant director. I think ITLL be fine. Yes, then. The assistant director shouted into the intercom on the headset around his neck. Lee Sangha has arrived. Then he briefly placed his ear next to the headset before looking in my direction. Yes, Lee Sangha will do a rehearsal first. Then said his final words. Then immediately begin filming. Chapter, 60. I heard people are filming a drama over there. Apparently, Seo Jijun's there, Seo Jijun. Who? Who's there? Seo Jijun and what's her name? That girl with the acting controversy. Ah, Lee Sangha. Should we go take a look? Late morning. One by one, the people who had been walking down the cherry blossom path, which only bare branches remaining, made their way to the Han Riverbank. There were already quite a few people spectating the film set. Around half were female fans who came for Seo Jijun, while the others were interested to see Lee Sangha, who was a hot topic due to her acting controversy. A woman stuck her head out from the crowd. In her case, she was the former. As soon as she heard that Seo Jijun had appeared at Han River, she made an excuse, saying that she had to go to the bank, and left work. Although Lee Sangha's acting skills might have been of great interest to others, she felt that she already didn't even have enough time to only see Seo Jijun. With wide open eyes, she was thinking about seeing him a little more. While she did think this, she tilted her head and thought. What's wrong with me? As if entranced, her gaze kept going elsewhere. It wasn't to Seo Jijun but Lee Sangha. Although she didn't know what they were filming, she knew that Lee Sangha was imitating a cat. And that she was great at it. Every minor gesture and movement made her look like she truly was possessed by a cat. Even though the person in front of her was human, as if they were an illusion, she felt like she could see the perked ears and tail of a cat. I have to take a picture. The woman filled the photo gallery on her phone with pictures of Lee Sangha instead of Seo Jijun. Next to her, a man holding a bicycle under his arm continuously admired. There was such a fuss on the internet, but she's good at acting. Iya, if she messed up, it would be such a toe-curling scene, but she does it so well and naturally. It's like she's really a cat. I wish my cat at home could change like that. Then I would serve her as my master. Don't think about that, you crazy idiot. Her acting aside, how could someone look like that? I know, right? Are all actresses like her? It's like she was made through computer graphics. The majority of reactions about Lee Sangha was positive. Someone made a big fuss, saying that they knew she'd be good, mentioning Jang Yunok's interview, while others felt embarrassed, saying that this was unexpected as they had been 100% sure she was an add-on. Among them, a man who had been absent-mindedly staring at Lee Sangha mumbled. Should I make a post about her on social media? Lee Sangha is still being criticized a lot. Although the heated criticisms came to a lull after Jang Yunok's interview, there were still many who ignored it and continued to condemn her. There were even people saying that Jang Yunok did the interview for the drama. Yeah, post it, post it. When his friend egged him on, the man uploaded a post on his social media. I am currently watching them film Lee Song has drama, and it's true she's good at acting. To those who are commenting that she's terrible at acting without any proof, let's stop now. End of controversy. Who are you to say end of controversy? Are you being paid? When he saw the reply, the man frowned. Who are you to talk so impolitely when we've never met before? I'm watching her act right now. Then why don't you upload a video? Now, really. The man rolled up his sleeves and recorded Lee Sangha acting. Just when he thought they would believe him now, comments began to stream below it. While there were people who saw this positively, the comments saying eyes confirmed were more eye-catching. The hell. Why are they like this? 
They are seeing it for themselves, but they don't believe it. They are just saying they didn't see her with their own eyes. The man fought with the faceless commenters on the internet before raising the flag. There were so many people diligently writing hateful comments that he couldn't face them by himself. Astonished, he screenshotted the hate comments. Why are you screenshotting them? If this drama airs, then the comments about the controversy about Lee Song has acting skills will die down, right? Probably. I want to use this as evidence then. The shoot that started early morning didn't end even though the sun was leaning towards the west. All we did was move locations from Han River to an outdoor film set. Whether she was in front of the camera or not, Lee Sangha went around as if she was possessed by Yung Haewon. I let her be because I had heard that she could become more immersed in her role and that it would show up better on the camera this way, but there was a big problem. She didn't eat. Lee Sangha didn't eat. Because of the next K-Star recording, she hadn't been able to eat much yesterday, and all she ate at night were the snacks LJ had left her. Even when the staff brought her a lunchbox, which I could tell was high quality at a glance, she barely ate it. Oh my god! For there to be barely eating in her vocabulary. While I was wondering what I should do, a truck arrived at the film set. Please take care of Jijun Appa. Cat Guardian Ghost, Fighting One. Ah, now that I think about it, they said Seo Jijun's fans were coming today. When I checked, it was a food truck too emitting a delicious scent. There was a menu on its banner, and it was pretty much a gift set. For Lee Songa. I dragged the still absent-minded Lee Songa in front of the food truck. Songa, look at that. Fish cakes, tiak, baki three, chicken skewers, shrimp tempura. Pardon? Sure enough, Yung Haewon disappeared and along came Lee Sangha. The food truck opened like a transformer, and as soon as the plentiful food inside was revealed, Lee Songha's eyes twinkled like a child who was seeing an amazing toy. I want it. I wish I could take it home. You can't so give up. It looked like she planned on putting it her stomach to make up for being unable to take it home as Lee Sangha piled food on her plate to form a mountain. She really piled it up into a mountain. The staff became wide-eyed at the sight as they stared at her. Well, this made sense since the Lee Sangha they had seen since she had gotten into character early this morning was the cold, mature young Haewon. As if they thought this was a good scene, the behind-the-scenes team came over and filmed it. Wow, how unexpected. She eats all that. Where does it all go? Why are you saying that to a person who has been working hard since early morning? Eat up. When she was young Haewon, the staff only glanced at her from afar with an expression that seemed to show they were holding back their words, however, they were currently approaching her and saying something to her before leaving. We went around the film set and told the other actors and staff, including director Shin Taekyun, to eat well. Just when we sat down and raised our chopsticks. Luck Tosser and Sangha, you guys should eat a low O, you already are. Did you ransack the food truck? Chief Lee Bang Jun, who brought a crowd of Seo Ji Jun's fans behind him, showed a dumbfounded expression when he saw Lee Song has plate. Songa didn't eat much since yesterday. Of course, she would eat this much even if she did. Either way, I turned to Seo Ji Jun's fans after making that excuse. There were women who seemed to be around my age as well as girls with no makeup, who seemed to have just graduated school. Thank you for the meal. When I said this, Lee Sangha bowed her head with a shrimp tempura in her mouth. It's really good. Thank you for the meal. Ah, eat a lot, Booni. The fans, who had been blankly looking at Lee Sangha, waved. Just now, there were a few who were giving her a sharp look, but, perhaps due to a preconception, their gazes softened the moment they received Lee Sangha's greeting. After they took a few pictures of Lee Sangha eating, the fans handed me a paper bag. Please take this. And please take care of Seo Jijun Appa from now on. Ah, uh, yes. Please take care of me as well. The bag was filled with items that were useful on a winter film set. There were hot packs, hand cream, candy, and even a lap blanket. Seo Jijun's name and the name of his fan club were engraved on the corner of the blanket. Although I was well aware of the support and present giving culture of celebrity fans, after experiencing it firsthand, they were extremely devoted. 
Did I have to hand something out with Lee Song his name on it as well? But, aren't you guys going overboard? The drama hasn't even been broadcasted, yet you already supplied a food truck and presents. It must have cost a lot, right? At Chief Lee Bun Jun's words, the woman who looked to be the oldest of the bunch replied friendlily. Since the situation is what it is, we prepared it early to cheer you up. And the moment we opened up the bank account, the ammunition gathered in an instant. We became more tightly knit after the controversy broke out and people kept bothering us from all around. That's right. Since we all fought like hell these days, everyone's fighting skill is at their max. We collected a bunch of hate comments, and well send it over to the PR team. Looking at this, I became a little jealous. For there to be fans who would roll up their sleeves and help out this much. Yeah. They'll try to set up a small fan meeting if the drama is a hit. Once the broadcast starts, there will be a flow of light fans, so well bring a food truck and coffee truck then. Although we're thankful, don't push yourselves too hard. Soon, Seo Jijun, who had finished talking with the director, walked this way. His fans gathered around him. His fans, who said they had fought against the haters, were jumping up and down with flushed faces. It was rather Seo Jijun who spread his arms out and met with no hesitation. He lightly hugged them, held their hands, and it looked like he knew a few of their faces as he even called them their names. The fans who were called by their names looked like their faces would burst. Seo Jijun's great at fan service. His youngest looking fan babbled. There is a poll about which drama broadcasting early next year people are waiting for, and Cat Guardian Ghost is second right now, Appa. We posted it a lot on social media and gathered a ton of votes. We're second. Who's first? At his question, the fans showed a sad expression. Mermaid out of water. The firepower of the fans of the original work is so strong. We fought hard, but we were crushed, Appa. I didn't know where the poll was going on, but I decided to vote as well. You must be tired because of all the fuss on the internet. When his fans looked at him with sympathetic eyes, Seo Jijun clicked his tongue. Then he looked at Lee Sangha as he said. She's the one who should be tired. There are still a lot of people who think she was cast as a set with me when, in fact, it was me who joined after she was already cast. You should watch her act and spread the word around. Yes. His fans nodded their heads incessantly. After the short meal time, the filming commenced right away. Lee Sangha, once again, got into character and was waiting. I was watching her when I kept hearing Lee Song has a name from somewhere. When I looked around, I saw Seo Jijun's fans gathered in a circle, looking at something. Wow. So much nonsense. Do they really have nothing to do? This person looks like he has a grudge on Lee Sangha. When I took a few steps closer and looked, it seemed one of them had uploaded a picture of Lee Sangha eating online. When I took out my phone and checked, it was a picture of her eating. I was also caught on camera as the person sitting in front of her. The picture was fine, but the comments below it were quite the sight. Wow, did she go to the film set to eat? She's just stuffing herself instead of practicing. A genius doesn't need to do such things like practice. These crazy. I intentionally spoke my mind. The fans, who had been looking at their phones, became surprised and looked at me. Ah, uh, sorry. I lost control for a second. When I explained while showing them the page on my phone, a girl with a ponytail consoled me. Ah, uh, you saw it. There are a lot of crazies on the internet. Since it's a battle of fandoms as celebrities, it's not this bad when you have a big fandom. That's right. Although there are a lot of people protecting her, it's more like commenting in the passing. There aren't a lot of fans who are grabbing the haters by their collars and talking back, saying, you're dead. That's why haters will start to gather. When a few of them opened their mouths, a few more voices joined in. But does Neptune have no fandom? They've recently been getting popular. Although they have been gaining popularity because of Next K Star, their solidarity is weak. There are apparently Neptune fans who don't think well of Lee Sangha. If this continues in a fight between group fans and individual fans break out, ITLL be hell. 
Neptune fans don't think well of Lee Sangha. I had been happy thinking that they were gaining fans as Neptune's ranking in the next K-Star viewer polls was slowly rising. Is that true? When I asked seriously, a short-haired woman flinched as she replied. I heard a bit about it since I fangirl over another girl group on the side. They seem to think Lee Sangha is the only one who's not trying. But it makes sense that they think that. Other fans carefully added in. I saw all the episodes of Next K-Star out right now, and maybe it's because she gets pointed out a lot more than other members, but I did think that she wasn't trying hard and glossing over things. Why, you see it occasionally in other groups. Members who don't care about team activities and are only concerned about their personal schedules. She might be branded as someone like them. To call her a member who is only concerned about her own personal schedule and passingly does team activities. It was vastly different from the real Lee Sangha. When I thought that there could be many people looking at her with that opinion, I became so frustrated I was about to suffocate. On the other hand, I also thought that it was possible that those who only saw her through the TV could think that. Next K-Star was a program with 60-minute episodes, and there were dozens of celebrities appearing on it. Although Lee Sangha had more on-screen time compared to others, they only made up a fraction of the episode. There was no way they could tell what kind of person Lee Sangha was and how hard she tried with just that. How frustrating. She's practicing for her performances just as much as acting. When I mumbled while clicking my tongue, the fan said. But it's not noticeable. Since we don't know her circumstances, we're just spouting nonsense, taking the bait. To be honest, if we had decent bait, we could get the fandom to unite. Right? Bait? The girl with the ponytail replied. A video or a gif, something like that. Something that could show she's a hard worker. A bait that could show Lee Sangha was a hard worker, huh? I did record her practicing in the practice room a lot. That seems too much like a setup. If the company is involved, then it looks like they are trying to brainwash the public and will probably make things worse than not doing anything. Have people uploaded any fan cams? They proactively began tapping their phones. Not much. Are there any broadcasts where all the members appeared on together? I looked back at my memories. They appeared on a music broadcast on net, a public network music broadcast, Next K Star, and they had a live broadcast on TBS sharing campaign. Ah, uh, they didn't appear on that. When I thought back to that day, I reflexively frowned. The day of the sudden downpour. The day Lee Sangha had been dancing on the wet stage before she fell and later recorded Next K Star with an injured ankle. What was worse was that they only did a rehearsal, they didn't get to show their faces on the live broadcast. Even when I thought about it again, it was ridiculous. Ah. Uh, a girl who had her face pressed against her phone tilted her head. Then she showed me her screen. Is it this? When I looked at the screen, it was the personal blog of a public officer. It seemed he was someone who participated in TBS sharing campaign as he had uploaded a brief post of what occurred that day and some pictures. There was also a video as well. The title was the girl group Webtoon who suffered in the rain. Webtoon. As soon as the video began to play, I heard heavily pouring rain. Then I saw the girls dancing on the stage. Their figures, which had become completely soaked in less than a minute, was clearly reflected in the high-resolution video. What the hell? Why is the stage like that? There could be an accident. When someone mumbled this, the Lee Sangha on screen staggered and fell. Two or three people sucked in their breaths. Lee Sangha got right back up within a few seconds like a roly-poly toy before quickly resuming her dance. The screen turned black once the video ended. The fans who had been staring at the screen, one by one, raised their heads and looked at me. The girl with the ponytail said. We found the bait. Chapter, 61. Video who has seen the fan cam of Neptune performing in the rain. They say it was a live broadcast of a campaign from PBS, but as they rehearsed in the rain, Lee Sangha fell really hard at 2.24. However, she got up in two seconds and continued. There were people who disdained her, saying she was participating in their team activities half-heartedly even thought she was a rookie, but when looking at this, she doesn't look like someone who would do that. Oh my god. 
It hurts just watching. If it looks like this on screen, then it must have a huge downpour. I read the comments of the person who took the fan cam, and it said that they only did the rehearsal and didn't even get to appear on the broadcast due to the weather. So sad. TT. I heard from somewhere that this was the day of the first Next K-Star recording. There were tons of people who were bashing her after watching the first broadcast, saying her expression looked sour or that she didn't look like she worked hard. But to be honest, there's no way your condition wouldn't be good if you went to a recording after that. But when I keep replaying the video, she glances at her ankle at around 2.34 after she gets up. Maybe she got a sprain. Ha. Huh. You're right. I'm honestly shocked by all the controversies about her attitude and personality. My friend saw Lee Sangha in front of WU before, and she said she was very friendly and let her take pictures and stuff. You have the photo? She does, but she says she can't upload it online since her manager took the picture with his feet one. The video of Lee Sangha falling was quietly spreading with social media and community sites at its core. It was different from before. It didn't suddenly appear on the real-time search rankings or was plastered on articles. However, it wasn't like the bait wasn't effective either. Instead, it was surprisingly positive. There were more people looking positively at Lee Sangha herself without the label of the hot topic headliner or the controversy headliner. And this turned into a reaction towards Neptune. Even if Neptune's performances were good, I didn't feel like fangirling over them because of the gossip behind Lee Sangha but the fan cam slayed me. After watching this, I want to support them so much. Same, I agree. Ah, it's so hard to fangirl over rookie idols since they don't have any good material. TT. I've been looking since I was interested as well, but there's nothing. WU, go work. What are you doing by not putting them in public network broadcasts? Let's use this momentum to promote Neptune. You can't leave once you join. There were more people talking about Neptune, and there were people who weren't satisfied with the material they found and were making their own. The number of people visiting Neptune's official homepage, which was managed by the PR team, and their fan cafe too increased drastically in one day. Since the homepage, whose comment section had been bare as an empty house, kept receiving comments, it finally felt worthwhile monitoring them. The Neptune girls opened their official homepage or fan cafe on their phones whenever they had the opportunity, especially I'm Seo Young, who I suspected was addicted to it. Of course, the people making malicious comments about Lee Sangha didn't disappear. However, instead of people replying to them in the passing, there were now fans who diligently rebutted them. The change was slow yet definitely occurring. What are those? Presents. From your fans. Our fans. Although the other girls' faces were dazed, Im Seo Young's was especially surprised. Her already large eyes widened even further. It seemed like her eyes would pop out if someone smacked the back of her head. I placed the paper bags, of which I had two in each hand, in the living room of their residence. They were presents sent to Neptune members. The company employee who gathered the presents and handed them to me laughed, saying that it was very little compared to blackout but it was more important that they received presents rather than how many. This was proof they gained true fans. Really, are you serious? Probably. When I said so jokingly, I'm CEO Young nervously glanced between me and the paper bags. Uh, you can't joke about things like this. Although Appa is heartless, I trust that you aren't mean enough to joke about something as important as T. Im taking this back. No. When I picked up the paper bags, Im Seo Young slid on the living room floor and clung on to me. I grinned and told the other girls to come closer as well. Although they didn't make such a big deal out of this like Im Seo Young, they all approached with expectant eyes. I checked the contents of the paper bag and handed them out to the girls. Im Seo Young received two bags while Lee Tae Hee and LJ each received one. I heard that there were weird people who sent garbage as presents so checked each one, but the presents sent to Im Seo Young were of the small, cute character merchandise and doll variety. Im Seo Young loved her presents with teary eyes that seemed to she might cry any moment. Who? I wonder who sent it. Yua, I received four dolls. How did they know I like dolls? 
A photo was uploaded on our official social media, dummy. The one where you were bawling like someone who's lost their country while hugging a doll. LJ said apathetically. Im Seo Young, who had been enjoying looking at the dolls, instantly glared at her. Its leg ripped because you punched it, you gangster. I did it because I was pissed at Sun Chai Young. And I fixed it later. That was true. LJ sewed the ripped area together. It was quite well done. I was quite surprised by her unexpected talent. That was also uploaded on their social media, and maybe it was because of it, but LJ received a sewing box among her presents. Lee Tehi's presents were cough drops and red ginseng concentrate, which was effective against fatigue. Perhaps it was because she occasionally would thump her lower back or act lethargic, but it seemed she had a granny image, even though she was only 22. After drinking a pack of red ginseng extract, Lee Tehi nodded her head. It seemed she liked it. I felt this when she was drinking the wild ginseng wine by herself, but her tastes were quite unusual. I took some pictures of the girls holding their presents as proof. Then I turned my head. Li Sangha, who had been looking vacantly for a while, tilted her head and looked behind me. After confirming there wasn't anything there, she looked at my thin coat pocket and empty hands before sitting down on the rug and flipping through the script. Although it looked like she was fine, her shoulders were slightly slumped. Sangha, come and eat this. Li Taehee handed her a cough drop. Im Seo Young and LJ, both aware that only Li Sangha didn't receive anything, hid their excited expressions. Im Seo Young looked at me and mouthed, Is there really nothing? Wait a little, why is he taking so? Just as I looked at the front door, the door burst open. The trader entered with quick steps. Sorry, they fell in the elevator, and I had to pick them back up. The girls' gazes were fixed on the dolly the trader had dragged in. There was a box and two paper bags on top of it. The box was so big I couldn't wrap my arms around it. Lee Song has eyes shined as she came closer. This. It's for you. As soon as I said that, Lee Songa opened the box. Then she opened her mouth with a blank expression. The inside was filled with things to eat. From a large bag of chips to a small chocolate bar, the large box was filled with snacks. On a bag, there was a sincere post-it, telling her to eat this and cheer up. You remember Seo Jijun's fans, right? The people you saw on your first drama shoot. Yes. They sent this to cheer you on. Maybe it was because they saw her eating the snacks piled up on her plate, but the present was optimized for her. Because those fans mentioned that Lee Sangha liked eating after the drama shoot, her other presents were centered around food as well. There were even handwritten letters. The majority of them were encouraging her, telling her to cheer up even though the current situation wasn't good, to ignore the hate comments, and that they were awaiting her drama. Lee Sangha sat down with her presents and went back and forth between holding snacks and letters. Although she didn't really show it, she was happy. She was very happy. Sangha, you must be happy. Hey, you can set up a convenience store in your room. There's even something that was handmade. How are you going to eat something so precious? When I looked at the four of them chatting together, I unconsciously smiled. Since they received presents, I finally feel that they've become more well-known. I know, right? The trader nodded as he said. If their fandom becomes more concrete, and next K-Star, Song has drama, and their next album do well one after each other they should be able to consolidate their footing by next year. They have to. Yeah, they do. I turned my head and looked at the trader from the side. His face gave off a nice impression, and his amiable eyes were looking at Neptune. He suddenly turned towards me. Our eyes met. Although his gaze wasn't any different from just now, my fingers reflexively stiffened. He smiled brightly as he said. We need to make it happen. The drama shoots were on a tight schedule. They didn't care about night or day, and of course, there was no start or end time for work. Depending on the situation, we had times where we arrived at night but had to wait until morning. Our meal times were erratic, and our sleeping schedule was more so. Luckily, Lee Sangha and I had the van we could rest in, but the staff slept anywhere they could sit their butts down. 
It was to the point where there would always be someone curled up sleeping on the emergency exit stairs during a shoot. I was seriously curious whether there had been anyone who died of exhaustion during filming. Luckily, since there wasn't film shoot today due to a next K-Star recording, I could avoid sleeping in the van. Still, I had to sleep in the night duty room at the company. With a toothbrush in my mouth, I blankly stared at the whiteboard. At first, Neptune's name was as rare as a blue moon, but now that their name was posted at least two or three times a week, my heart felt plentiful even though I currently looked like I was homeless. Although the majority of them were Lee Song has drama schedules, I expected there to be more team schedules or other girls' personal schedules in the future. Good morning. Kim Hyunjo, who had also slept in the night duty room, yawned as he approached. I was surprised when I looked at his face. He was someone who seemed to have dark circles tattooed to his face, but his entire face was the color of dark circles these days. Chief. I'm asking this because I'm really curious. Huh. You divided the work you had before with Gun Young and me. Yeah, I divided it a lot. But why does it seem like your work hasn't decreased? Weren't recruits supposed to think, ah, I need to work hard to be like them, when they saw their superiors? But why did I want to slump onto the floor when I thought that I might look like Kim Hyunjo in a few years? Hey, you know how, when you make money, there's always something you need to spend it on. When you have more time, you have more things to do. Kim Hyunjo smiled faintly and changed the subject as he asked. But when is your next drama shoot? Right after the recording. We have to stand by until 2A. Wow, they're really pushing you hard. Why are they filming that drama every day? You guys have quite a bit of the script complete and started filming early even compared to public networks. But how are you guys busier than Mermaid out of water? Director Shin is a perfectionist. First, he was very picky about the continuity of shots. It wasn't simply displaying the positions of cameras and the size of cuts, but even their emotions and details about how it would be edited filled the pages of the book detailing them. He even took the trouble to shoot each scene in various ways. However, there was no one who was dissatisfied with this as they believed the degree of polish would be equally high. Also, if they filmed a lot beforehand, they wouldn't be as pressed for time once they started broadcasting. Instead of hurriedly filming it while broadcasting, it was better to be busier now. There are still two weeks before the release of Cat Guardian Ghost, right? There were two weeks until the drama premiered. The interest in Cat Guardian Ghost hadn't diminished yet. To be precise, we were managing it so that it wouldn't drop. We periodically released short behind-the-scenes videos, teasers, and pictures taken during the film shoot, and whenever it seemed like Lee Song has controversy would die down, it surged once again. This was because producer Go Junti from Next K Star was using Lee Sangha as kindling for viewership ratings. That damn idiot. Next K Star had recently hit its highest viewership rating at 7%. As it kept rising, producer Go Junti was becoming too big for his shoes. It was great that Neptune's popularity would rise alongside the rising viewership ratings, but the problem was he was burning Lee Sangha. It was because it was Lee Sangha that she was able to endure this long, if it was someone else with a weaker mentality than her, they would have lost it already. He would edit the episodes in that way yet speak nonsense about how he gave her more screen time or whatever with a deceitful smile. It was to the point I wanted to rip open his mouth. I would only feel refreshed if I threw at his face. Still, since Neptune's fans were bashing producer Go Junti into Pulp Online, I was calming my heart with that. If I didn't even have that as comfort, I really might have been unable to control my temper. Just as I bit down on my toothbrush, becoming irritated simply thinking about it, the traitor approached me from behind. It seemed he had washed his face just now as water dripped from his bangs. When I turned around, I suddenly became shocked. Although Kim Hyunjo was also serious, he was worse. His face showed that he was so exhausted he could die. Even though I knew that he was helping Kim Hyunjo prepare for Neptune's next album while I was busy with the drama, I thought that he would at least be better off than me. But what's this? His face seemed to have suffered more hardship than me. He'll be outside having a smoke. His voice croaked. Call me when you're ready. Okay. After listening to my reply, he disappeared, 
off to find somewhere to have a smoke. While looking at his receding figure, I asked Kim Hyunjo. It seems the album preparations are tough too. Ah, he's been busy with something else these days. Kim Hyunjo, who was in the middle of a yawn, shut his mouth as if he said something he shouldn't have. Something he's busy with? Although I asked right away, Kim Hyunjo shook his head. There's something like that. In my eyes, he's just wasting his time, but it still counts as experience. When I asked him a few more times, he adamantly said it wasn't something he should say now as he shook his head. Something he was busy with. Just what was it? Chapter, 62. Do you have something to say to me? The trader asked. There was no need to feel surprised as I had been looking at him ever since we arrived at the next K-Star set. Even now, my head kept coming up with various scenarios of betrayal and disputes. Within my head, I had been betrayed around a hundred times and had betrayed a hundred times as well. Yeah. Do it then. Is it serious? No, it's nothing like that. I examined the trader's face as I said. The chief said you were working hard on something so I was curious what it was. Ah that. He glanced at me while rubbing his thumb against his lower lip. Then his always smiling smile became slightly crooked, an awkward expression. Soon, the trader replied in a clear voice. Sorry, I don't want to say it yet. You don't want to. Let's talk if things go well. ITLL be embarrassing if things don't after I say it. The trader patted my shoulder with a smiling face. I would have become worked up if I heard this from anyone else but this was Choi Gunyoung to boot. He was a dormant bomb that I could never let my guard down against even though he was the colleague I spent the most time with. I couldn't let the situation continue like this. Instead of constantly thinking about when he would explode, it would be better to keep him far away. It was when I was thinking about this with a cool head. It had been a while since the world turned black. I had never welcomed this severely hazy vision this much before. How long had it been? Since I hadn't experienced this in a long while, I consciously tried to avoid thinking about my foresight ability. An ability that appeared suddenly could disappear just as quickly, and I didn't know how to find it again if it disappeared. I didn't want to get my hopes up. However, now that I had the future right in front of my eyes, I could tell how much I waited for this and how relieved I was. While calming my surging emotions, I concentrated all my senses to not lose a single detail. I couldn't tell exactly where I was. My vision had so much static, and it kept cutting off. However, what was certain was that Kim Hyunjo and the trader were sitting in front of me. Both their hairstyles were similar to the present. There was no difference in their looks either. Kim Hyunjo wore a thick winter turtleneck. It seemed like it was a very near future. Both Young Hoon Hyung and I thought that it would all be for nothing, but you really are a determined guy. You'll do something in life. Astonished, Kim Hyunjo laughed. With an expression that couldn't contain his happiness, the trader said. You could say it's all thanks to Sun Wu. Thanks to me. When I wondered whether he had finally betrayed me or not, the trader smiled. We joined on the same day and started working at the same time, but as the gap between us kept getting wider and wider, I ended up working harder. My vision returned. I was once again standing in front of the audience seats of the open hall. I saw the trader when I looked to my side. He was smiling as he watched the ongoing recording. It was similar to the smile I saw in the future just now. So it wasn't the thing I was worried about. Looking at how Kim Hyunjo was happy, there was a high possibility that the thing the trader was working on would be helpful to us, namely Neptune. Since Kim Hyunjo knew about it, it shouldn't be something done with bad intentions. While I was relieved, a sudden thought crossed my mind. I had already seen the future and changed the present, and because of this, I had experienced the future changing could I even say that the Choi Gunyoung, who betrayed me, and the Choi Gunyoung now were the same person. This thought crossed my mind, albeit very briefly. Maybe, maybe this was the case. However, as long as I couldn't look into Choi Gunyoung's mind and be 100% certain, I could never sincerely trust him anymore. Also, if an opportunity of not having to see Choi Gunyoung ever presented itself, I would probably choose it. What did you want? 
TVL's drama department director, Bei Django, stopped signing files and looked up. Standing in front of him were the chief producer of Cat Guardian Ghost, General Manager Song, and director Shin Taekyun. Just as General Manager Song was about to speak after clearing his throat, director Shin Taekyun said. Please give us the time slot to release a special episode. Hey you, too abruptly, did you leave a time slot with the director? General Manager Song poked director Shin Taekyun's side. With a face, exhausted due to overnight filming and editing, director Shin Taekyun frowned. Wasn't what you said last time a joke? Director Bei asked General Manager Song. That time, well, I said it in a half-joking, half-sincere manner, but this time, it is sincere. When I looked at the schedule, it looked like we can squeeze it in. Is the cast at the level of a blockbuster film? Pardon? No, not that high. Then are you confident in reaching over 10% viewership ratings? Director, the hurdle is too high. 10% would be a record high. When General Manager Song said exaggeratingly, Director Bay said in a flat voice. We've only given special episodes to dramas like that. But the situation this time is a bit different. Although it's a hot topic right now, people's interests are focused more on Lee Sangha herself than the drama, so if we slip up, the interest in the drama might drop as soon as Lee Song has controversy dies down. That's why we propose we make a special episode to brilliantly put the controversy to rest and try to absorb that interest into the drama so that interest doesn't fade. At the heated persuasion, Director Bei rubbed his chin, seemingly taking things into consideration. Director Shin Taekyun broke the silence and said. Then please take a look at the edit of part 1 and 2. At his words, Director Beck put down his fountain pen. Two hours later, as Director Bei took his eyes off the black screen, he said. It'll get you a time slot, so try it. Four days later, at the basement restaurant of NET. Producer Go Junti was talking with the chief producer, General Manager Park. Hyung, if the episode we're editing right now is released, I think ITLL hit 8%. 8%? On that day, it'll pay for the get-together. General Manager Park, who had a fancy muffler on today as well, stirred his stew. Why are you so confident? Was the result of editing for two nights straight amazing? Amazing. If it broadcasts, ITLL definitely show up on the real-time search rankings. Lee Sangha and this punchline member who raps. I'm trying to make a pink atmosphere flow between them, as if they are flirting with each other. What? General Manager Park frowned. As if he didn't see it, producer Go Junti smiled slyly as he continued. It looked like the guy from Punchline is interested in Lee Sangha. We've filmed him intensely staring at her on camera multiple times. Since Punchline has the highest popularity out of the teams, I bet if we even say FL of Fling, the reactions will be heated. Although WU are going flip out again, if we do it like loss. Hey, I don't think it's a good time for that. General Manager Park gave an awkward expression as he cut him off. Not good. The director said he heard some news from TVL, and it seems like there are rumors that Cat Guardian Ghost, even if it's not a hit, will at the very least do well. He said they even scheduled a special episode. That's why the director told us to cast Seo Jijun early. So. A few producers tried, but WU's reaction is unenthusiastic, something about wanting to focus on their current project. At this rate, even I might have to go and try to persuade them. That's why don't bother WU too much until we get Seo Jijun. Producer Go Junti set his spoon down. His voice contained a bit of irritation. Hyung, I worked overnight editing this. It's amazingly put together. Since there's still time before the broadcast, you can put it together again. I'm not telling to get scrap it completely, just keep it for now and use it once we get Seo Jijun. No, if we ask TVL's drama department to help us, we'll get him in no time. They'll have to place their leads into entertainment shows to promote their drama anyways. You screwed them over last time, yet you think they're going to help. General Manager Park clicked his tongue. Producer Go Junti's face distorted after recalling what happened last time. Since they were the ones who entangled Lee Sangha with Cat Guardian Ghost and created controversy first, there was no way TVL's drama department would look at them favorably. 
Producer Go Junti had a sip of cold water and grumbled. Well, in the end, it was good promotion. Yeah, like you said, it was great promotion. Even my daughter who doesn't watch dramas knew what Cat Guardian Ghost was. In this situation, do you think they'll forcefully appear on entertainment shows? When there are grand talks about a special episode? General Manager Park had been wiping his mouth with a napkin before his eyes abruptly shined. Hey, instead of that, what do you think about putting Seo Jijun on next K-Star? You can make whatever excuse like supporting Neptune or something when putting him on. If you get a two-shot of Lee Songa and him while they are still a hot topic, don't you think you can hit 8%? Producer Go Junti's complexion brightened as if he had never been dissatisfied in the first place. You're going to put him on my show. If that's the case, he'll happily accept. No, I want you to cast him. His brightened complexion returned to its somber state. You said even you might have to act. How am I supposed to cast him? You know Lee Song has manager, right? The one who goes with her to film shoots. Manager. As if recalling his memories, producer Go Junti's eyes lowered. If he's a manager who follows her to drama shoots, then it won't be the chief. Then it's one out of the two. The one who gives off a good impression and the one who doesn't. I heard that Lee Song has manager and Seo Jijun's chief are good friends. How about you ask him? I heard Seo Jijun listens to that chief. Producer Go Jundi tilted his head as if he heard something wrong. What do you want me to do? You want me to cling to a road manager and ask him for a favor? Not cling, I'm just wondering what if you asked him. It's not like me, the chief producer, can do it. And think about it. Imagine if you, who's good at getting high viewership ratings, cast Seo Jijun, who other producers couldn't get. How favorably the director will view you. Once the director was mentioned, producer Go Junti's expression softened. After thinking about it silently for a while, he opened his mouth. Okay, whatever, he'll do it. The moment General Manager Park rejoiced, producer Go Junti crossed his legs and added. If that drama gets better ratings than my show. The air felt different this morning. Although it was a bit comical, it was true. Should I say the density of the air was higher? Or that it felt a bit heavier. Either way, it felt different from normal. I waited a long time for this day, but when deciding day was finally here, I was simply blank. Did I sleep too much? It felt like that could be why. As I yawned, looking out my window, my phone underneath my blanket vibrated. When I turned it on after fumbling for it, I had a ton of texts and messages. There were some from my parents and my brother's family, and some from my friends. There were also ones from reporter Park Wu Jong, company employees, Neptune, and even from TVL and Pan Production. Besides them, I also received some from reporters, producers, and writers I didn't know the names of. Although it felt like my phone became more popular once I started this job, today was a record high. Looking through them, there was a common narrative among them. I saw the article. I got up and sat in front of my laptop. As soon as I accessed the portal site, a headline caught my attention on the homepage. Cat Guardian Ghost Special Episode, staff are going to put the controversies to rest before proceeding. The much-discussed Cat Guardian Ghost will be unveiling itself tonight with a special episode. After seeing that, my mind became clear. It really was today. Today was the day Cat Guardian Ghost would begin broadcasting, starting with a special episode. Also, like the confident comments on the headlines, it was also the day the controversies, which went on for over a month, would be put to rest. I took deep breaths before examining the public's opinion on the internet. Put the controversies to rest before proceeding. Look at the staff's spirit shiver. They are finally doing it lol I waited for this more than my year-end bonus lol I'm not really interested in the drama but very curious of Lee Song has acting skills. If her acting is terrible after making this into such a hot topic, ITLL become a notorious con. It might become a notorious reversal. Since there are a lot of people waiting to put her down, ITLL be difficult to reverse things with decent acting. If only they didn't talk about Lee sung being a genius to the press, she wouldn't have such extreme haters. ITLL be hard with decent acting skills. 
It looks like she needs to method act for them to acknowledge and praise her. Look at how hot this topic is after all this time since the controversy broke out shiver I bet ITLL'd be funny AF just watching people's reactions. Ill prepare some beer beforehand. Reading through them, my lips unconsciously curled into a smile. The reactions were the hottest yet. The people who would write hate comments directed at Lee Sangha, the people who would watch this with interest, and those who would cheer her on as fans. They joined together to create a massive wave whether they had good motives or bad, everyone would sit in front of the TV tonight. That was enough for now. I closed my laptop. A few questions hovered over my head. How well would Cat Guardian Ghost do? Once the cast changed and it was swept up in an enormous controversy, it was already vastly different from the drama I saw in the future. However, I had seen director Shin Taikian's directing skills and the cast's acting. I didn't think drama would flop, not one bit. What I was curious about was how successful would it be. Also, with today as a starting point, what would change by how much? I took a shower to clear my mind and leisurely prepared to go to work. There wasn't a next K-Star recording or Cat Guardian Ghost filming today. Neptune members were to stay home today, and Kim Hyunjo, the trader, and I were going to meet at the company before heading to their residence. We planned on watching Cat Guardian Ghost's special episode together like when we monitored Next K-Star's first broadcast last time. I put my laptop in my bag and left my apartment. Then, eight hours later, I placed my laptop on my knees then clicked the refresh button. I'm on my way home from work, did Cat Guardian Ghost start? They are still playing commercials. Ah, they ended now. It's starting. Chapter, 63 TVL. Master Control Room. This place was noisier than a marketplace today. From employees responsible for airing to employees from other teams, they were all scrambling noisily while waving banknotes. 2. 5% for me. Don't you know that it's damn hot right now? 3% for me. 3. 3%. Stop. Stop. The director is coming. As soon as someone shouted hurriedly, the control room's door flung open. Then Director Bay and General Manager Song of the Drama Department, as well as Director Shin Taikyun, entered. As it was a drama with so much interest, they planned on tracking the viewership rating in the master control room today. The people who had been whispering amongst each other quickly left while clearing their throats. You're betting on the viewership rating again. The technical director showed a bashful smile at General Manager Song's words. General Manager Song intercepted a post-it, which had the evidence of betting on the viewership ratings, and read it. Almost all are 3%. Because the reactions are so heated, everyone held higher standards. Still, with this mood, it might reach 4% if we're lucky. I bet 50,000 that ITLL be higher than 4%. General Manager Song took out a banknote from his wallet. The master control room employees showed startled expressions. General Manager, isn't that too much? There are tons of dramas that don't reach 4% by the time they end. I bet on 5%. It was Director Shin Taikyun this time. A 50,001 bill swayed in his hand. The technical team and programming team employees read the mood as they accepted their money. Afterwards, they whispered to each other that those men probably counted their chickens before they hatched in quiet voices so they wouldn't hear. However, the employees had to retract their thoughts in a few minutes. Two minutes in huh. The assistant manager, who had been checking the time, halted after checking the graph recording the minute ratings in real time. TVL's minute ratings were rising at a rate incomparable to other cable channels on at the same time. This, right now, uh, what the it's already over 2%. What? Is that true? A programming team employee read the mood behind him as he even tapped on the monitor. During this time, the line on the graph was quickly rising at a steep angle. The technical director gulped his saliva and mumbled. How high will it rise? Don't tell me it's going to reach 3% before it starts. Then that possibility became a reality. We we reached 3% minute ratings at the start. At the better than expected start, the master control room became noisy. 
Cat Guardian Ghost's title screen flashed by. Then the best highlights picked from the edited version swept through. Cuts of the lead and supporting actors passed by at a breathtaking pace until it came to a sudden stop. It was Lee Songa. As if the director had planned it this way, there were a ton of highlight scenes of Lee Songa. The technical director forgot to pay attention to the graph as he looked at the screen. He had expected she would be good at acting since there had been a rumor that she was a great actress spreading within TVL. However, he didn't have high hopes. While he was in charge of the broadcasting in the master control room, he had seen his fill of actors who received high praise. Therefore, most things he saw weren't exciting anymore. However, he clicked his tongue. Do you think I would have said that she was a natural without any truth? I even asked her to get psychological counseling. An interview with a camera operator followed after veteran actress Jang Yunok's words. Why, you know those actors that come up occasionally. The ones that seem possessed by their character. I sometimes got shivers when I looked at her through a camera. The scene changed to the film set. A Lee Sangha with a cold, depressed expression was edited next to a different Lee Sangha, who was following behind her manager to maximize their contrast. The technical director nodded his head without knowing. Wouldn't this be what people call possessed? Ah, uh, I it passed 4%. At the cracking voice, the technical director came to his senses. Everyone looked at the minute ratings monitor. The moment they saw the graph, which had passed 4%, someone screamed in excitement. Soon after, a round of applause broke out. We're almost triple GTBN right now, triple. A at this rate, want it really reach 5%? General Manager Song clenched his fists. Director, what did I say? This is a hit. As soon as it's been unveiled, the ratings passed 4%, 4%. If it's like this, we can compete against public networks. Director Bay nodded. Although he had a serious face, he too was stealthily clenching his fists. Director Shin, Shin Taekyun. You worked hard, buddy. Now, all we need to do is keep rising to the top. First, let CEO Kim Pan-suk and WU CEO Baek Han-sung know the news, no, they'll personally call. Please watch quietly, General Manager. Director Shin Taekyun said. He hadn't taken his eyes off the minute-by-minute -minute ratings for a while now. The chattering employees, director, and even the general manager once again looked at the monitor. No one could open their mouths. Within the silence filled with excitement, the ratings graph gradually rose higher. Sun Chai Young was sitting on her sofa with her legs crossed as she stared at her TV. There was only one thought on her mind. Fail. Because of Lee Sangha and her manager, whom she didn't want to see, she had a loss of appetite these days. She was the kind of person who couldn't do anything if something bothering her. Only once she saw that drama go under with less than 1% ratings would her mind be at peace. Veteran actress Jang Yunok's interview sounded from the TV. Do you think I would have said that she was a natural? Sun Chai Young, who had been biting her nails, threw whatever she could get her hands on at the TV. Aren't her eyes skewed? Well, that's probably why she's doing cable with her experience. Soon the screen changed to show a scene of Lee Sangha acting in the role of Young Haewon. Sun Chai Young unconsciously lowered her arm at the chilling scene. Her hairs stood on their end. She bit hard on her lower lip. Unable to continue looking at the screen any longer, she took her eyes off it and irritably pulled her laptop close. In times like these, it was best to look at hate comments swearing at Lee Sangha to change her mood. Her mind would quickly relax like a calm lake. As soon as she opened a portal site, Lee Song has name was first on real-time search rankings. Even the articles on the main page and the countless articles below it all had Lee Song has name on them. The keywords were sweeping away her acting controversy. Netizens applause, best acting. Reporters, what do they know? Comments. Comments will be fine. Haters don't change. She went to a site that would indiscriminately curse and hate female celebrities. There were tons of related articles and comments. Sun Chai Young's lips curled upwards. It looks like the director ground his teeth to make this and put the controversies to rest. Just look at this we can tell she's good at acting. 
Are all the people who had been swearing at her, saying she wouldn't be good at acting, kicking their blankets? It's so quiet. I knew this would happen. With no experience, and no talks about her learning acting for a long time, she got hate because they said she was a natural or whatever, at looking at her now, it seems saying that she's a natural was reasonable. It doesn't even look like she's acting. Even Jang Yunok asked her to consult with a psychologist. I'm a little worried tbh. But it looks like this will have incredibly high ratings. The drama looks like a heck of a lot of fun. What is this? Astonished, Sun Chai Young threw her laptop. Still angry, she threw her remaining pots, remote, and even the mermaid out of water script in irritation. Nervously going back and forth in her living room, Sun Chai Young called Chief Joe. A commercial was playing after the Cat Guardian Ghost broadcast had ended. Appa, what were its ratings? You checked, right? When she shouted fiercely, Chief Joe mumbled in a reluctant voice. That is, um, Chai Young. What were its ratings? 2%. 3%. So that is, that ha. Huh? Sun Chai Young's forehead distorted at the ominous sigh. Don't tell me it's 4%. Chai Young. Once Mermaid Out of Water comes out, ITLL get great ratings too. You can get twice, no, triple the ratings of Cat Guardian Ghost. So. That's obvious. So what are its ratings? Ilte text you. Chief Joe hung up as if he was distancing himself from a bomb. Then, a few seconds later, a text appeared on her phone. After hurriedly checking it, Sun Chai Young stiffened. She blinked her eyes but the number didn't change. Nonsense. A chaotic aura appeared in her eyes. Soon after, Sun Chai Young began screaming as she smashed the items around her. At the same time, a low laughter echoed in the CEO's office at WU. If it's like this from the start, then ill expectant how high ITLL go from now. Don't worry about her condition. Ill look out for her, and even now she has a good manager. After exchanging a few more pleasant words, CEO Beck Hansung hung up. After placing his phone down, he stood up from his chair. Then he walked a few steps and stood in front of a wall. It was packed with pictures of celebrities under WU. He rubbed his lips as he gazed at an empty space. It was the place Sung Dawan's picture had been hung. Thinking about putting Lee Sangha there instead, he suddenly lowered his gaze. He looked at a picture of a brightly smiling Sun Chai Young. He silently looked at the picture before stretching his hand out. With the tip of his long finger, he tapped on her face as if in thought. And in Zhangyo district. In Jita Day's entertainment department's office. Reporter Park Wu Jong glanced at the clutter of references and materials on her desk as she passionately tapped on her keyboard. Her hair, which she pulled on intermittently, had already become a rat's nest. Other employees passed by her while clicking their tongues. Not caring about them, she leaned her face closer to the monitor as if she was about to crawl in it. Her screen was scattered with Cat Guardian Ghosts broadcast, real time search rankings, and reaction comments. Hey, what are you doing? Surprised, she turned around to see a man with a messy beard standing behind her. Ah, general manager. Don't you know that everyone's pouring out articles about Lee Sangha? You should be publishing articles even a second faster, why are you holding on to it so much? I'm a bit close with Lee Songha's manager so I wanted to write it earnestly ill publish it immediately. No, no, wait. Hastily grabbing reporter Park Wujong's shoulder, her general manager asked. You're close with Lee Songha's manager? Yes. Hey, you should have told me. People are desperately trying to get an interview with Lee Songha and anyone involved right now. Her general manager's eyes shined as he added. Ask the manager for an interview. Kim Hyunjo frowned. After looking back at his phone a couple times, he asked again. What percent was it? While listening to what the other side was saying, Kim Hyunjo's expression gradually turned strange. Like meerkats, we stretched our necks and looked at Kim Hyunjo. Just what was it? What percent was it? I was so curious I could die. It must have done better than Next K Star since people's reactions were incomparably more heated than that. Also, 
Internet aside, my phone was creating a fuss for a while now. The calls and messages this morning were cute compared to right now. I felt that my fingerprints would wear out writing all those replies. Just then, Kim Hyunjo hung up. Im Seo Young immediately asked. What percent was it? Quickly, quickly tell me. I'm going to die of anticipation. Kim Hyunjo slumped onto the sofa. Then he looked at each of us once, especially Lee Songa and me. Fifth place in TVL's all-time drama ratings was 5. 9%. Winter Sun. What was this all of a sudden? But they said Cat Guardian Ghost hit 6% today. Since they only have the real-time ratings right now, we won't know precisely until tomorrow, but it won't be much different. For a moment, no one showed any sort of reaction. Everyone was probably deciphering the number Kim Hyunjo had just said. I was too. Although my expectations were high since the reactions on the internet were so explosive. 6%. A cable drama, that only just started, got 6%. I'll all time fifth doesn't that mean it's really good? Im Seo Young stuttered. LJ had a dazed expression as she said. Is NT it? I mean how many dramas have TVL broadcasted so far? Appa, right? It's a success, right? Im Seo Young slapped my back with both hands as she asked. I gulped my saliva and replied. No. No. It's a resounding success. Im Seo Young screamed at the top of her lungs. Lee Tae Hee and LJ stuck next to Lee Sangha with bright complexions. Then, with Lee Sangha, who was still caught up in the lingering feelings after the broadcast, in the middle, the two chatted noisily. Of course, 95% of it was Im Seo Young's voice, but their voices clearly contained their excitement. After ending a call with someone else, Kim Hyunjo gestured to me. It's team leader Park and she says it's crazy in the PR team right now. Crazy. She said inquiries by people who now want a piece of the cake are flooding in. Since there are so many calls, she said it's not a PR team but a call center. Apparently, she said it already feels like the drama hit 10% ratings. As his smile curled all the way up his ears, Kim Hyunjo slapped my arm. How do you feel? How do I feel, huh? Although you only brought the opportunity for Neptune to appear on Next K-Star, isn't this time something you brought up with your own hands? You received the synopsis, pushed Lee Sangha to act, and even preparations for the audition and film shoots. What you brought up has become a success right now, so how do you feel? How do I feel now that the first drama I was involved with has broadcasted? Well, I mean. I grinned as I said. Fantastic. Kim Hyunjo laughed loudly like a drunken person. I was filled with pride. My chest felt stiff, and my heart felt like it would explode. If there wasn't anyone here, I might have shouted refreshingly. Also, I might have called my parents and my brother and bragged on and on. They would all be very happy. I clenched my fists. Like Kim Hyunjo said, I had suffered hardships and brought it up to this point, and it returned to me as a great success. I felt that I accomplished something that I could hold with my own two hands, drunk from people's acknowledgement of me and my fruits of labor. It was an amazing feeling. I looked at Lee Sangha, who was buried under the girls, receiving their congratulations. She had been gawking just now, but she was smiling brightly right now, perhaps due to the girls causing such a large commotion. Yeah, smile. It's a day you can't help but smile. The people who had hated on Lee Sangha were dispirited, pushed aside by the masses. Instead, it felt like there were people crowding at hate comments, tearing them apart. This was because there were people uploading evidence of others who had previously hated and bashed Lee Sangha because of her controversies, and sympathy for Lee Sangha spreading like wildfire. Neptune's fan cafe, as well as Cat Guardian Ghost's fan cafe, were filled with supportive comments. From now on, she wouldn't have to suffer like in the past. Now, there was no need to take Lee Song his phone away, and there would be no need to feel down because of people's mocking looks anymore. As if she noticed my gaze, Lee Song looked at me. Our eyes momentarily met. Her picturesque eyes smiled slightly. How many emotions passed by in that brief moment? If possible, 
I wanted to stop time and closely examine them. Li Sangha, who was about to approach me, was grabbed by M. Seo Young's hand and was shaken, while I turned my head at Kim Hyunjo's call. Anyways, I bet the mood at Neptune's album meeting will be great tomorrow because of this. Ah. Team Leader Park told me to bring you, saying that there are a lot of people who want to see you. Kim Hyunjo gave a meaningful smile. Ah, right. You really are a lucky charm. Even when I saw you for the first time, I. He went on about the repertoire I had heard multiple times. Soon, we began a simple celebration, although it later changed to a drinking party once Kim Hyunjo brought out another wild ginseng wine the Team 3 leader gave him. I felt this last time as well, but the wine's effects were amazing. After two hours, there was almost no one in their right mind anymore. Li Sangha, who had been nodding her head constantly, eventually slumped over. When I barely managed to lean her against the sofa, she had a faint smile as she mumbled something. Just what was she eating in her dreams after finishing off a chicken? I looked at the living room, which looked more like a mess than a girl group's residence, and at the people who were collapsed like stragglers, but there was someone missing. The trader wasn't here. Now that I thought about it, I felt like I didn't see him for a while. Did he go out to smoke again? After hanging up, Choi Gunyoung entered the quiet residence. It seemed they had dragged the Neptune members back to their rooms as only Kim Hyunjo and Young Sunwoo were wearing their outerwear as they nodded off. Choi Gunyoung stood in front of Young Sunwoo and looked down at him. You couldn't find a smile on his always smiling face. He was cold and rigid like lead. He clenched his phone in his hand as he thought that if today was Young Sunwoo's day, then tomorrow would be his. Chapter 64 Want to come up to the fifth floor for a bit before the meeting? Just looking at the message, it looked like it might be an office relationship, but in reality, it was Team Leader Park. What office relationship? I didn't even have enough time to eat and sleep. Holding coffee in both hands, I went up to the fifth floor. Buying and bringing coffee whenever I came here had become a habit. Well, it was good since I was able to get closer to Team Leader Park and other PR team employees because of this. I opened the door and entered like usual before halting. What the? Around three to four people suddenly stood up. There were unfamiliar faces as well as a few who I saw roaming around the company like poltergeists. Either way, the important thing was that it seemed like they were waiting for me. Are you the guy? Who's the guy? But before that, to speak so informally at our first meeting well, I guess he did look old enough to. Team Leader Park, is he the guy? So who is the guy? While I stood there, puzzled, Team Leader Park received the coffee from my hands as she said. That's right. He's Team 3's lucky charm, the one who hit jackpot with Cat Guardian Ghost. Oh, no wonder, he looks like it. Wait, what do you buy I look like it? The group of people said a few things to me, like congratulating me on the drama doing well, telling me that, for someone so young, I possessed a good discerning eye and that I would become a success. While saying this, they looked at me with shining eyes. What was this uneasy feeling I felt? They looked like the eyes the quadruplets had when they looked rare animals last time I took them to the zoo. There's something I really want to ask you. The middle-aged man who spoke casually to me took something from his jacket. They were two pictures of eye-catchingly beautiful women. Were they their profile pictures? They are marriage candidates for my son. Who looks better of the two? I thought I had heard wrong. Taken aback, I looked towards Team Leader Park who had her back turned on me, hold back her laughter. I saw her shoulders move up and down. Behind her, the female employee and the male employee of the PR team were laughing while drinking coffee. I hope you burn your tongues. It wasn't only the middle-aged man, the rest were the same. Someone's manager said that there were overlapping schedules this upcoming Lunar New Year's Day and asked me which one they should do. Another one took out scenarios and asked me which would do well. Seriously, would my social image be okay like this? Of course not. I spent a long time telling them I was just lucky. I was barely able to send these people, who were clinging to me, telling me to choose without feeling pressure or that if I wanted a fee that they'd pay it, back. As soon as the office became quiet, Team Leader Park burst into laughter as she said. 
I told you there were a lot of people who wanted to see you. I never thought it would be for this sort of reason. At my words, the employees grinned as they chatted. It makes sense considering what Mr. Sunwoo has done. The most important thing, as well as the most difficult thing, in this industry is decision making. Whether that decision is regarding a person or a project. You said that you thought the drama will be a hit after reading a synopsis others thought wasn't very good, pushed forward with it, and it eventually became successful. Not just that but an unbelievably great success. I think that either there really is something about Mr. Sunwoo or you used your entire life's worth of luck this time. Doesn't the second severely lack in hopes and dreams? As they chatted, I was busy thinking in my mind. I shouldn't say things like the vibes I felt, that something would be a hit with certainty from now on. Maybe once or twice was okay, but if it kept repeating like this, then there would be more and more people who would find this strange as well as suspicious. Just as I was about to leave after we talked, a sudden thought crossed my mind. Ah, right. Team leader, I have something I want to ask you. What is it? There's a reporter I'm sort of close with from G today. Why, I mentioned her last time. As if she remembered, team leader Park nodded. Ah, the reporter I told you to bring to your side? Yes. That reporter asked me if I could do an interview. I received a call from reporter Park Wujong this morning. She said that she had no choice because her general manager ordered her to, asking me in a careful voice. To be honest, we received a lot of inquiries, asking for interviews, during Lee Song has controversies. Though, we did reject them all because the more people talked about it, the more it would invite disaster and because if we held interviews with a few media platforms, the others would make a fuss. We planned on holding an interview in a hotel at a later date with the reporters. When I told reporter Park about this, I received another call a little later. She said that she won't ask about Song has controversies and only wanted to listen to my story as Neptune's manager. It looks like they think the reactions will be quite good if they release an exclusive interview even if they don't have the main person. Well, you do have a lot of stories starting with when you brought next K-Star over. Mumbling, team leader Park became lost in thought momentarily. She seemed to be thinking of something as she examined me with narrow eyes, rubbed her chin. Very thoroughly. Closely. Then she smiled. Let's talk about it later. But besides that. Team leader Park asked. Will it be okay to sell your face on TV? 1. Team leader Park stared at me. Kim Hyunjo stared at me too. A Lunar New Year's entertainment special. When I asked while scratching my cheek, Kim Hyunjo told me the details. Yeah. It's IBC's. It's a format where celebrities and managers appear together. Apparently, they look at the chemistry between celebrity and their manager rather than celebrity standing. Also, they are apparently looking for broadcast-worthy characters amongst the managers as they are normal people. It might be achievable since the public's opinion of Sangha is good after the broadcast last night. Appearing on an entertainment program. Why me? There's the chief, and Gun Young as well. Team leader Park gave Kim Hyunjo a thorough glance as she said. Look, look. Mr. Hyunjo doesn't have the entertainment feel. He seems more like someone who should appear on extreme jobs. That was true. I nodded my head while looking at Kim Hyunjo's tired face, which resembled a zombie's. Anyone would be concerned that he might die from overworking when looking at him. As if he also acknowledged this, he smacked his lips and added. And Gun Young, don't you think ITLL be difficult to persuade the staff with him? He looks too much like a youth with an upright lifestyle. He looks cultured, not the entertainment type. Then what did I look like? You have a good character. And your chemistry with the girls isn't bad either. I did consider it for a bit before eventually nodding my head. Although my preference wasn't standing in front of the camera, my face had already been displayed quite a bit. My reactions had been filmed in Next K-Star a few times, and I often appeared in the Cat Guardian Ghost behind-the-scenes videos. If it was a Lunar New Year special, then it would only be a one-off event. Since it was an opportunity for Neptune to appear on a public network as a group, why not sell my face a little? After finishing our chat, I went down to the fourth floor with Kim Hyunjo. 
Since the weather was chilly, I had been hoping I could have some hot soup to warm my insides for lunch before I stopped abruptly. I glanced over Kim Hyunjo, who was walking a few steps ahead of me. The thick turtleneck he was wearing caught my eye. It wasn't something he wore often. Where did I see it before? Ah. I recalled it immediately once I flipped through my memories. Kim Hyunjo was wearing that in the future I saw not long ago. Was it just a coincidence he wore the same clothes? Or was today the day? Right before the album meeting, a drama film shoot was abruptly scheduled. Although it was a film shoot I had to attend even if I was sleeping, the timing was amazing. Why did it have to be today? I had no choice but to skip the meeting and go to the film set with Lee Sangha. If there was any consolation, it was that the staff and actors were excited and the mood on the film set was best yet due to yesterday's broadcast. After filming, I brought Lee Sangha to her residence and immediately returned to work. Was today was the day I saw in the future, and if it was, what had the traitor prepared? I was so curious I couldn't even focus on the film set. Whatever it was, it should be beneficial for Neptune. That was what I thought when I reviewed what I was in the future. Separate from the fact I couldn't trust the traitor 100%, there was no doubt the traitor was working hard and putting in effort for Neptune. So there wasn't a need to be too worried. When I called Kim Hyunjo and let him know I arrived, he told me to come up to the meeting room on the fifth floor. Just as I entered the meeting room after almost running up to the fifth floor, I was certain. It was now. The future I saw not too long ago was right in front of me. There was a laptop with a tangled pair of earphones on the table, and Kim Hyunjo and the trader were talking, seated next to each other. It was a good mood. There was a bright smile on Kim Hyunjo's face for a change and a clear sense of happiness on the traders. Oh, you're here. Come in, come in. Kim Hyunjo, who saw me first, gestured with his hands. I came to my senses and entered. As soon as I sat down, the trader asked. It must be tough since it's cold these days. Are you done filming for the day? No, I have to go out later tonight for a night scene. After exchanging a few words, Kim Hyunjo joined in with a pleased voice. Not too long ago, while working with an idiot, I wondered what kind of sins I committed in my previous life to have had to work with such bad people. But it seems like it was all to meet you guys. One guy brought home a hit drama without me ordering him to and another. His eyes which momentarily fell on the traitor turned to me. Simon Lee, that fellow. There's a song he made for Seraphic. Unexpected names popped out from his mouth. Simon Lee, a judge on Next K-Star and a star songwriter, as well as Seraphic, a top girl group that debuted ten years ago. As soon as I thought this, like cold water being poured on me, my mind jolted. Neptune's next album. What the traitor had been working hard for a long time. And a songwriter. Oh my god. I had an ominous feeling. But after their world tour, Seraphic's been busy trying to enter the U. Industry and their Korean comeback has constantly been pushed back. So the song doesn't have an owner anymore. To be honest, we also wanted it for our next album's title track, but that fellow seemed like he was going to give it to a girl group on a slightly lower level than Seraphic. That why we gave up. Kim Hyunjo grabbed the traitor's shoulder. He said hell try to persuade him, and I have no idea what methods he used, but he got it from him. I barely managed to control my expression and congratulated him. I couldn't show them that I was taken aback. Congratulations were in order as he persuaded Simon Lee and obtained the song they wanted, and there was no way they knew what I knew. That, if things progressed like normal, then Neptune's next album title track would take first place on music programs. My mind twisted into a tangled knot. I continued to listen while suppressing the urge to rub my face. First, the reactions from the internal meeting were good. Well, the CEO and Neptune have to listen to it, and will make a final decision once a few monitors listen to it as well. I think this will be the title track. Kim Hyunjo looked at the traitor, astonished. Both Young Hoon Hyung and I thought that it would all be for nothing, but you really are a determined guy. You'll do something in life. I knew what would happen afterwards. When I looked towards the traitor, our eyes met as he too looked at me. 
Unlike the previously noise-filled vision, now that I was looking at him clearly, the traitor's expression looked slightly complicated. He was happy, yet he also possessed a strange excitement. His lips curled upwards before opening. You could say it's all thanks to Sun Wu. We joined on the same day and started working at the same time, but as the gap between us kept getting wider and wider, I ended up working harder. It definitely changed. The event of the traitor bringing Simon Lee's song probably didn't happen in the future set 20 years later that I saw. Since, in that future, events like me bringing Next K-Star and Cat Guardian Ghost and tasting success probably didn't occur either. Then, what was the probability? The probability that the song which was Neptune's title track in the future set 20 years from now and the song the traitor brought would be the same. I gulped down my saliva and asked. What kind of song is it? Listen to it yourself and see how it is. Kim Hyunjo handed me the pair of earphones. They were smaller than coins, yet they felt heavy as stone. As soon as I put them on, it became quiet. Soon, I heard the instrumentals flowing into my ears. I wasn't very interested in the song, and although I didn't possess an ability that let me know if a song would be popular the moment I listened to it, even I could tell it was a good song. Even though there weren't any lyrics, only humming, I wanted to hum along with it. However, it wasn't the song I heard from the future. I was going crazy. It felt like everything was going smoothly just this morning, but what was this all of a sudden? Aside from Simon Lee's song The Trader brought over, I listened to the songs collected during the song collection period that were discussed during the internal meetings. However, the song I heard from the future wasn't there. How strange. Why wasn't it there? Was it because the future 20 years from now was different from the present? Was that why the song that should have been collected wasn't? The song the trader brought was a good song. There was no doubt about it since Simon Lee made it and the other employees of the internal meetings all said it was good. However, like dramas and movies, it wasn't like a song would become an amazing hit because it was made by a famous songwriter or because it was a good song. It had to suit the group, and it also largely depended on luck. Above all, director Park from the future said that the song was really good and it matched Neptune well. The song was definitely out there somewhere, but no matter how much I thought about it, there was no way to find it. It wasn't like I could go to the countless number of songwriters and ask them to let me listen to their songs. Was progressing with Simon Lee's song, which the trader brought, the best? If we did, would it be a hit song that you would think of when you thought of Neptune like the one from the future? Appa. When I turned around towards the voice, Lee Sanga was looking at me. Only then did I become aware of my surroundings. Even if my head was complicated, I had to follow the schedule so I was on my way to the Cat Guardian ghost film set with Lee Sanga once again. Is something wrong? No, I was just thinking about your next album. At my words, Lee Sanga leaned towards the front seat and said. We listened to it too. Will the song made by Mr. Simon Lee be our title track? It's not decided yet, but they say there's a likely chance it will. That's a bit of a bummer. A bummer? What was? Before I could ask, Lee Sanga mumbled in a quiet voice. The song Tehi Uni made was good too. Chapter, 65 It felt like I was hit on the head with a hammer. I gripped the steering wheel. I felt my heart, which had stopped in surprise, beating restlessly. Lee Song has words echoed in my mind. The song Tehi Uni made was good too. The song Tehi Uni made. That's right. Lee Tehi also wrote songs. Why didn't I think of this until now? When I had first promoted Neptune to producer Go Junti, I had even said that Lee Tehi was skilled in both writing songs and lyrics with my own mouth. Was it this? Was this song written by Lee Tae the title track from the original future? What kind of song is it? My lips felt dry. My voice sounded a little hoarse. It seemed she didn't notice anything weird about me as Lee Song that gently placed her chin on the back of the passenger seat. When I glanced towards her, I saw Lee Song has eyes under the dim lights. Her eyes, which had been cloudy due to accumulated exhaustion, became gentle. I really like it. Really? It's a fun, fast song, but for some reason, I feel that it's our song whenever I hear it. Our song. 
I think about the unis, and I even recall the times we were sad and gloomy because our albums constantly failed even though we tried really hard. I recall how much of a fuss everyone made when we got a call from Appa the day we were cast for Next K-Star. I remember us not sleeping a wink that night in fear the decision would be reversed. Also the times I ran away when Appa kept asking me to act. Lee Sangha, who had been talking quietly, looked at me and revealed a faint smile. Maybe it's because of this, but I feel like I can sing that song really well. The entire time we were going to the film set, I brooded over Lee Song has words. My thoughts that it might be a possibility slowly became more concrete. A song that made one recall Neptune's past. If that was the case, it also matched what director Park had said about how it was a song that suited Neptune. But why didn't she put it out during the time they were looking for songs? Did she feel pressure in showing off a song she personally wrote during this important time? That shouldn't be the case. Maybe if it was a digital single, but we were preparing a mini-album this time. Even if it wasn't the title track, there was still a chance it could appear on the album. Why didn't she say anything? After fumbling through my own thoughts, I shook my head. I wouldn't be able to come up with an answer by thinking about it myself. I had to meet Lee Tae-hee and talk with her first. It was 10 p. When we arrived at Neptune's residence after we finished filming the night scenes. I woke Lee Sangha, who was wrapped up in such thick clothes it made one confused whether it was thick padding or a sleeping bag, up. As we entered the residence together, Lee Sangha, who had been wobbling, tilted her head as if abruptly coming to her senses. You're going to go in too? Yeah. I want to listen to the song Tay he made. You said it was good. Li Song has eyes widened at my words. Soon, a silent giggle escaped her lips. It seemed she was in a good mood as her padded sleeves, which were as long as a scarecrow's, shook back and forth. As soon as we pressed the passcode and entered, Im Seo Young, who was lying flat on the rug, seemingly rolled to a stand. It seemed she had been watching a rebroadcast of Next K Star as the faces of the three judges appeared on the screen. While my eyes were momentarily fixed on Simon Lee's face, Im Seo Young came up to us. You worked hard. It was really cold outside, Sangha, you must be frozen solid. Quickly go take a hot shower. You're qualified to use as much hot water as you want. They seemed to have heard us chatting as Lee Tae Hee and LJ came out from their own rooms. Walking leisurely, Lee Tae Hee brushed Lee Song has hair with her fingers. Her hair, which had become tangled due to sleeping in the van, was tidied smoothly. Im Seo Young asked. But why did you come together? Are you planning on reading the script this late at night? No, I came here because I wanted to talk about something with Tae Hee. Lee Tae Hee tilted her head at my reply. Me? Sangha said the song you made was good, so I was curious. Song. I summarized the conversation we had in the van. When she heard Lee Song has thoughts on it, Lee Tae Hee looked at Lee Sangha with a warm gaze. Then she tangled up the hair she had just brushed. Although it looked like she was slightly hesitant, she eventually led me to her room. Though I had glimpses of her room through the open door occasionally, this was my first time entering it. It was clean, no, desolate overall. Then something strongly grabbed my attention. She had a desk the size of a bed with a laptop and a mini keyboard on top of it. Next to them were beer cans. One, two, three there was no doubt she drank them like soda. This wasn't dangerous, right? As if she saw my gaze, Lee Tae Hee coolly dumped the cans into the trash. It's that. She plopped onto her chair and gestured to her laptop screen. At a glance, I could see it was filled with complicated looking tools. I stood right behind her chair. Lee Sangha, Im Seo Young, and LJ gathered around me. It seemed they had all listened to the song before as their expressions showed they weren't dying to see it, but the expectations in their faces were clear. I waited after preparing myself. Even if it wasn't the song I was thinking of, I couldn't show any traces of disappointment. Lee Tae Hee clicked her mouse a few times. Sound began to flow out from the speakers. The song currently didn't have any lyrics and only Lee Tae Hee's sweet humming was heard. The other members hummed along with it while bobbing their heads. 
The moment the clear sounding music and the music I heard in the future overlapped, shivers went down my spine. This was it. There was no doubt. This was the song I heard in the future. Neptune's first hit track, the song that took first place in music broadcasts, and the song which one thought of first when thinking of Neptune was precisely this song. The moment the song ended, I began to rack my brains. What to do now? We already had Simon Lee's song in our hands. There was no way I could propose we use Lee Tehi's song over his without a proper reason. As it was a great song that the trader had spent a lot of effort getting. If I was in his place and my colleague turned down the song I spent a lot of effort getting, I would swear a ton. He would be considered a son of a unmatched under the heavens. On top of that, there was no doubt that our relationship with Simon Lee, who gave us the song, would become uncomfortable. How about we pushed Simon Lee's song and Lee Tehi's song as double title tracks? Artists these days would push for a double, even triple title tracks as long as the songs were good. If we shot music videos for both songs and promoted them equally, and while it might split the public's interest in the songs and end with lackluster results if done badly, if done well, both songs could get good results. There were real-life, successful cases where multiple songs had entered the top ranks. If we did that, there was a high chance that Lee Tehi's song could get first place in music broadcasts as expected, and if Simon Lee's song also received good reactions, it would be better for us. It was like getting another oar when you needed to row intensely on a boat. While I was lost in thought, M. C. O. Young, who had come to her senses after getting caught up in the song, suddenly said. It's better than when I listened to it before. Why don't you put this in the album? I know, right? Besides the title track, there will still be four additional songs. LJ seconded. I also asked the question that had been on my mind. Yeah, it sounds good to me too. Why didn't you reveal it when we were collecting songs? Didn't you make it with the goal of putting in the album? I was planning to. Li Taehee suddenly scratched the back of her head. Her complexion became gloomy. I even saw an illusion of miniature dark clouds hovering over her head. I was taken aback as this was my first seeing Li Taehee like this. While getting heavily rained on by the illusionary dark clouds, Li Taehee replied. I'm not happy with it. There's something I'm not happy with about it, but I can't figure out what it is. I didn't expect this sort of answer. I spent all night thinking about it and went to work with a fried brain. Just yesterday, I had felt like I could fly with the success of the drama, but today felt like I was going around with a bowling ball in place of my head. It was damn heavy. I found the song I was looking for, but it wasn't finished yet. Although I did tell her to hurry up and finish it, I couldn't be certain she could complete it before it was too late. As this was a creative work, it wasn't like someone could finish it for her. I had thought about it for a long time, wondering what was different from this song and the song I listened to in the future, but I couldn't figure it out. My rotten memory. If I could listen to it once more, I could figure out what part Lee Tae wasn't happy with. Where did the gears become misaligned? I thought it was most likely one out of the two. Either, because I changed the present, the release of Neptune's album was pushed forward, or the hardships they endured from Lee Song has controversies and other related events had an effect. In the original future, Neptune did appear on Next K-Star as well, and thinking that they would probably rush to release a new album before their accumulated popularity crumbled like a sand castle, I felt that the latter was most probable. I felt like I was about to go crazy. This was something a lot of people were involved with and were preparing for, so I couldn't suddenly push the album back. How about I let Kim Hyunjo and the Team 3 leader listen to the unfinished song and try to persuade them afterwards? If those two liked it, then we might be able to wait a little longer for the song to be finished and release it as one of the double title tracks. While I was thinking about this, a spoon moved side to side in front of me. When I looked up, I saw the trader. The food's here. Unknown when it came out, an oyster guckbap one, topped with plump oysters and a plentiful amount of chives, was steaming on top of the table. My hungry stomach rumbled as soon as I saw it. We didn't have a lunch schedule for a change and had gone to a restaurant in front of the company. I came to my senses and quickly picked up my spoon. After a few spoonfuls, the trader leisurely started a conversation. Your face looks like a corpse's. 
you might even give the chief a run for his money. You weren't so different not too long ago. Was I? You suddenly started smoking a whole bunch and went around like a corpse. Looking at the traitor's face, I continued. All that was to get Simon Lee's song. You really worked hard. You're amazing. This much was sincere since this was something I couldn't help but admire. Maybe it was because of the name Star Songwriter, but Simon Lee was someone who had his head held up high. If it was a song he planned on giving to a girl group at a similar standing to Seraphic on top of that, then he probably didn't find Neptune worthwhile. How hard must it have been to persuade him? Could I have persuaded him if it were me? The traitor gave a smile before staring at me. Well, I tried to asking him and persuading him. I tried all sorts of things to try to get that song in my hands. It's good that it worked out in the end. To be honest, if this didn't go well I even thought about changing teams or quitting. My spoon halted in midair. The trader continued. Since I haven't really lost to anyone in anything, I was quite confident with work, but things didn't go the way I thought here. My thoughts became complicated since everything you brought became a success as if you were possessed by a god or something in the end, since I was able to do it because of that, I should be the one thanking you. I suddenly took notice of the traitors, Choi Gunyoung's face. The reason I had been prejudiced against Choi Gunyoung was because of the future I had seen through my foresight ability on my first day of work. The information that Choi Gunyoung lied to me and snatched the opportunity from me, and reporter Song's words asking if he had been like that since then. Because of that, I had considered him as someone who might backstab me some day. And to not let down my guard, I called him a traitor. However, Choi Gunyoung had yet to show any traces of attempting to backstab me and had never revealed his dark intentions. Instead, he even received a song from Simon Lee through his own efforts. While I had been swept by my prejudice and had branded Choi Gunyoung as a traitor, he had been working just as hard as me. Choi Gunyoung smiled as he said. Let's do our best from now on as well. I had a thought not too long ago. That a person could change. That the Choi Gunyoung in front of me might not be the Choi Gunyoung who backstabbed me. Although I acknowledged the possibility, I believed I couldn't truly trust Choi Gunyoung despite it. However, perhaps, perhaps. Just as I opened my mouth to reply, my vision suddenly turned black. Chapter, 66 it was a familiar scene. As if sand had been scattered in front of my eyes, the future I saw was a static-filled one with a bad connection. I crammed everything I saw into my head. Although I didn't clearly remember Lee Tehi's song, I didn't want to lose even a single, small detail from now on. The sky was dark. A chilly wind cooled my sweat. I was outside. It was a groomed yard with brown grass, peppered with spots of green. I saw a wooden bench. I was sitting on that bench with my legs crossed. I knew where I was. I was in the outdoor smoking room on the fifth floor of the company. I knew it because it was a place I came to take a breather when no one was out here smoking. What are you thinking of by yourself? I heard a voice behind me. When I turned around, I saw the male employee from the PR team lighting a cigarette. Wearing a not-so-thick dress shirt, he put away his lighter in his cotton pants pocket and came towards me. A dry voice came out from my mouth. Just thinking about how people don't change. I wanted to hear more, but the PR team employee said something else as if he didn't hear me. The reactions are really amazing. I never expected this sort of reaction when he pushed Lee Tae-hee's song at first, but Mr. Gunyoung's choice this time was a divine move for the album. Just then, my mind faltered. I didn't understand what he was saying. But that song, I heard that Mr. Sun Woo listened to it first. How did you lose the opportunity this time? I felt like I had been slammed into water head first. Then, my vision rippled once more. Like a transition in a drama, the scene changed. There was less static, but this too was, without a doubt, a future with a bad connection. I was sitting on a sofa instead of a bench. There were a short table and a dressing table with a mirror. They were familiar. It was PBS's dressing room. Then in front of the door of the dressing was Choi Gunyoung, leaning against the door. He smiled as he said. I'm sorry I snatched it from you, 
but I couldn't let the opportunity pass by. The next moment I was sitting in a chair in the Gukbap restaurant instead of the sofa. The sounds of TV and people's voices rushed into my ears. When I raised my head, Choi Gunyoung was looking at me with a smile. Why are you looking at me like that? I said let's do our best from now on. Yeah, let's. I said in a voice calmer than expected. Of course, my mind was a mess. I decided to drink a glass of cold water first. It wasn't enough so I drank another. Only then did it feel like I could breathe. As soon as I could think properly, I recalled what I saw. The one who pushed Lee Tae-hee's song was Choi Gun-young. My future self said people didn't change. I had just thought that people could change a moment ago. Although I couldn't know exactly what happened, I had enough pieces of the puzzle to guess. I experienced something that made me change my thoughts. Also, that probably was something related to Choi Gun-young that made me feel a sense of betrayal. The words Choi Gun-young said at the end drifted in my mind. Sorry I snatched it from you. I couldn't let the opportunity pass. My mind had become complicated when I heard Choi Gun-young's words previously. The reason why everything I brought became a success, as though I was possessed by a god, was because I had a ridiculous ability. Something Choi Gun-young didn't have. However, the complicated unease in my heart, the bulk of which was how sorry I felt, completely washed away the moment I saw the future. When it was about next K-star, he lied and backstabbed me, snatching the opportunity that was right in front of my eyes. Now, in relation to Lee Tae-hee's song, he chose to take the opportunity from me even though it meant acting wrongly towards me. I was utterly at loss for words that I almost burst out laughing. I knew it. I clearly knew it. I definitely thought this in the beginning. To be careful. That I was a fool if I was backstabbed knowingly. I almost became a fool just now. Perhaps twenty years from now, I might regret this day and say how it was this moment when I realized that life was a battle. I might have done an interview like that. I raised my head and looked in front of me. I saw Choi Gunyoung just a while ago, but now I didn't. The person in front of me was simply the traitor. People didn't change. This fact nailed into my previously softened heart. After going our separate ways, I walked down the street by myself. I needed time to organize my thoughts. I felt that the ash-colored sky looked foreboding, and sure enough, it started to snow. It was damn cold. My mind became colder along with it as well. Like hell, we're going to do our best together. I would no longer foolishly stay nervous next to a bomb I didn't know when would explode. What should I do? If I tried to find fault with things he hadn't even done yet, only I would look like the crazy one. But that didn't mean I wanted to set up a trap to be backstabbed and increase my mortal enemies by one. Especially when Sun Chai Young, teacher Shim Kyung Taek, and the Team 2 leader already wanted to hassle me. While thinking, I suddenly recalled what the traitor had said a while ago. He said that he was thinking about switching to a different team or quitting if things didn't go well this time. Though, I did feel a little suspicious when he said he did all sorts of things to persuade Simon Lee. Either way, when I thought back to what the male employee had said, although I didn't know how Simon Lee's song fared, there was no doubt that Lee Tae-hee's song was a hit since he said the reactions were amazing. Yeah. They say you can't let an opportunity pass. I took out my phone and called Kim Hyunjo. Chief, it's me. Yeah, what is it? I heard Tae-hee's song yesterday, and it was really good. I think it's almost complete and that ITLL be best if you listen to it. A song written by a member will probably solidify the image that they are a talented girl group. Kim Hyunjo laughed on the other side of the phone. Okay. This isn't the first time with you anyways. If you think it's good, then, of course, I need to listen to it. If it's not bad, let's talk about putting it in the album. Still, don't let Taehee get her hopes up since it might not. That probably wouldn't happen. I swallowed my thoughts and hung up. Then, at night, I went to the girl's residence carrying stuff in both hands. LJ came over to me. It seemed she had been exercising as there were beads of sweat on her forehead. Did you come to give Sangha food again? She's sleeping right now, should I wake her? No. 
There's no drama shoot today for a change, so she needs to rest on days like this. When I glanced at Li Taehee's door before turning my gaze, LJ was standing crookedly with her arms crossed, staring at me. Her blue eyes deepened slightly. Did something bad happen today? Why? I don't know. You seem a little. Let's say you seem more like a venomous snake than a lucky one today. She had good senses. I took a blow to my soul. I said the truth as if it was a joke and changed the subject. But what are the other girls doing? What do you think those addicts are doing? LJ said with a sour look. Taehyuni is pouring down beers while working on her song, and Im Seo Young, that girl, is so busy checking whether there's a new comment on the fan cafe that she even eats on her desk. From my perspective, both of them, no, including Appa, the three of you will probably be diagnosed with two or three illnesses if you went to a mental clinic. That was possible. I'd probably be diagnosed with distrust in humans or something like that. Im fine. Im Seo Young burst out from her door. After greeting me, she soon began barking at LJ. Once it became noisy outside, Li Taehee came out as well. It seemed she really working while drinking as her long, slender eyes drooped. I handed one of the two bags I was holding to her. Is it for me? How odd. Even Im Seo Young and LJ looked at me with suspicion. Li Taehee halted when she looked in the bag. That was because it was filled with alcohol and snacks. There were cans of beer, bottled beer, champagne and even wine. I bought everything displayed in the store. Ah. Uh, is today a drinking day or something? Do you think there's a day like that? Think before you speak. Think. The fight between the cat and dog reignited, and Lee Taehee scratched her well-brushed, brown hair as she asked. Really, what is all this? Work on your song while drinking whatever you crave. She looked at me as if I was a weirdo. Well, it wasn't an unfamiliar gaze. I told the chief that your song was good. Li Taehee's eyes widened at my words and her pupils shined. It seemed like a shame for only me to listen to it. Li Taehee momentarily looked at me silently. When I glanced at the two who were still fighting, they came a step closer to me. Then, with a small cough, she asked. Do you really think that? I do. Then could you be more detailed? I thought it was better than Simon Lee's song. Perhaps it was because she was the leader, but she always looked relaxed and mature. Now that her eyes were wide with surprise, she looked her age. In that state, she stared at me as if seeing a one-of-a-kind weirdo in the entire world before smiling. I think I sort of get it. What Sangha felt. The next day, I talked with Lee Taehee on the phone a few times. Every time, I listened to Lee Taehee's song playing from the other side. To be honest, I didn't know how or where it was adjusted and it sounded the same as the song I heard from the future, but, hoping it would be of some help, I tried my best to convey my thoughts. Tuesday morning, I received a text from Lee Taehee, putting all the time I spent worrying until my head turned dull to rest. It said that she finished her song. In the same room as two days ago, with the same items, and once Kim Hyunjo arrived, even the people here would be the same. I glanced at the laptop on top of the table and placed a thin USB drive in front of me. The trader's gaze briefly fixed onto the USB drive. Taehee made it? Yeah. She said she finished it yesterday. I can't wait. The trader's cheeks slightly revealed his dimples. He really smiled often. I was busy controlling my expression because I kept recalling the future I saw yesterday. It wasn't this hard when I feigned innocence in front of teacher Shim kyung -tae, but it seemed that the fact I couldn't have been backstabbed by the traitor twice really had an impact on me. Soon, Kim Hyunjo opened the glass door and entered with a deeply sunken expression on his face. Sangha doesn't have to come to work today, right? No, she doesn't. Why did he suddenly bring Sangha up? Tell her not to be anywhere nearby. Sun Chai Young's here right now. She was scolding team leader Park, telling her to strike while the iron's hot. Looking at how her pride was reaching the sky, you'd think she's a concubine who gave birth to a son. 1. If it was Sun Chai Young, it was perfectly possible. 
mermaid out of water began yesterday night. With 11. 9% national viewership ratings, it took first place against others broadcasting at the same time. They say it even peaked at 14% during the broadcast. Since it had been a long time since a drama started off with double-digit ratings, even the internet was causing a fuss. Kim Hyunjo clicked his tongue and looked at me. Since Mermaid Out of Water is doing so well, I don't know if the thing you talked with the CEO about last time is going to happen. Well, we'll have to wait and see a little longer. Honestly, I wasn't really concerned. In the future, Mermaid Out of Water's ratings rose until its third episode before failing due to the fans of the original. That was why I wasn't concerned, but I guess people would be agitated. Don't tell me Lee Sangha saw it too. Yeah, you never know until the end. What's the point in trembling in fear now? Cat Guardian Ghost's ratings will go up too. The trader added while nodding. Kim Hyunjo changed the topic. Let's hear Taehee's song. I plugged the USB drive into the laptop. I received it when I went to their residence this morning. Although it looked like Lee Taehee pulled an all-nighter judging by her exhausted face, she didn't have dark clouds over her head like before. She seemed incredibly satisfied. Let's listen to it first and bring it up during the next meeting if it's good. But, since we have Simon Lee's song, everyone's standards must have gone up. On top of that, we are doing our best to keep the quality as high as possible. At Kim Hyunjo's words, the trader replied with a smiling face. Still, there's a merit if it's her song. ITLL also be good when promoting it. I moved the mouse and clicked play. Soon, music began to flow into the small room. It didn't take long for Kim Hyunjo's eyes to turn serious and for the smile to fade from the trader's leisurely face. Although he was quick to collect himself, I clearly saw it. The moment his eyes frowned and irritation crossed his face. At the same time, my lips curled upwards. It had been hard to smile nonchalantly before, but now, the muscles on my face were smiling by themselves. As soon as the song ended, Kim Hyunjo rubbed his chin. This is better than I thought. He stood up and pointed to the USB drive. Can I take that? Of course. I'll talk with Young Hoon Hyung first before discussing it again. With those words, Kim Hyunjo left with quick steps. There were now only two people remaining in the small meeting room, the trader and myself. As if he had never been unhappy, the trader's eyes calmed once again. A smile returned to his lips. However, it felt different from usual. Just as the trader, who had been staring at me, opened his mouth, the door suddenly burst open behind me. I turned around thinking that Kim Hyunjo returned but instead, ruined my eyes. Sun Chaeyoung was standing there wearing the expression of a concubine who had given birth to a son like Kim Hyunjo said. Also, she was looking at me as if I was a queen who gave birth to a daughter. No, since that was a bit terrifying, the queen who gave birth to a daughter was Lee Sangha and I was like her older brother. Putting that aside, behind me was the witch and the traitor was in front. Ha, huh, how great. This damn company was dirtying my soul. I would have to go to my brother's house and receive some healing from the quadruplet soon. Just as I was thinking this, Sun Chai Young asked while brushing her long hair aside. I looked everywhere for you. Did you watch my drama? Chapter, 67 I didn't watch it. I don't have any plans on watching it. Go back. How successful would I have to be to be able to say such refreshing words to a top star? Ah, uh, I saw it. It was really fun. Congratulations on ranking first in ratings amongst the programs airing at the same time. The trader stood up from his seat and said in greeting. I am Neptune's manager, Choi Gun Young. His face was so friendly that it made anyone, whether they were young, old, male, or female, have a favorable impression of him. However, it didn't work on Sun Chai Young. As soon as she heard he was Neptune's manager, her eyebrows rose. Glancing briefly at the trader, Sun Chai Young looked at me and asked. How about you? Did you watch it? No, I was too busy yesterday. I replied nonchalantly. Maybe it was because Sun Chai Young straightforwardly acted as the crazy in this region, but she was easier to deal with than the trader. 
Although they were pretty much the same, my mind was less complicated at the very least. Sun Chai Young, who had been fully prepared to boast, frowned. You didn't watch it? Why didn't you watch it? I couldn't watch it because I was busy with my schedule, but if you ask me why I didn't watch it, then all I can say is I was too busy to watch it. I said while shrugging, but Sun Chai Young stomped her sharp heels on the floor. No matter how busy you are, you should have watched it. I watched Cat Guardian Ghost. She shouted before quickly adding in as if she had slipped up. Isn't that basic manners since we work in the same company? Manners? For the word manners to come out from her mouth. It sent shivers down my spine. It seemed like she had expected me to react with a damn it. For Cat Guardian Ghost to be pushed aside by Mermaid out of water. For Sangha to lose to Sun Chai Young. I'm angry. Well, that wasn't happening. Even if I didn't know that Mermaid Out of Water would flop its tail before it dried up and died, I would never reveal such a reaction in front of Sun Chai Young. I would rather play SSE 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 1 with the traitor. Either way, it was nice she watched Cat Guardian Ghost. Just imagining what her expression was like when she watched it made me feel refreshed as if soda was being poured into my blood vessels. Lee Songa, did she see it? I don't know. A grinding sound escaped her lips. Watch it today for sure. We have a night shoot today as well so. Watch it. That surprised me. The more I saw her, the more I felt the team three leaders' words that day were correct. Considering the way she acted, she had to have a mental illness. It looked like Sun Chai Young was trying to pierce the floor as she stomped the ground with her heels when suddenly, the glass door burst open once more. Chai Young. Just where did you go, leaving your phone behind? I looked everywhere for you. It was Chief Joe. Panting heavily, he sighed when he saw me. His face indicated he figured out what was going on with a glance. You said you wanted to see the CEO. Since his meeting ended just now, let's quickly go meet him. When I saw Chief Joe trying his best to coax her, I suddenly recalled what I thought when I saw him for the first time. I had thought that he was someone who had saved a nation in his past life to have become Sun Chai Young's manager, but it was the opposite. Looking at her, there was no doubt he sold out his nation in his previous life. It seemed meeting CEO Beck Hansung was more important than hassling me as Sun Chai Young told me repeatedly to watch the rebroadcasts of her drama and left. Of course, I did plan on seeing it. I planned on watching it when it started to go downhill. Since I had also thought Mermaid Out of Water was a good drama looking at its synopsis before I saw the future, I thought I could learn something by seeing how a good project would fail. She has a really unique personality. The traitor grinned. His expression when he looked at me previously was a bit stiff, but it had now returned to its usual state. I replied in my usual manner. Calling her personality unique is a huge understatement. Well, since she started off as a child actor, she pretty much spent the majority of her life in the entertainment business. When thinking of it like that, it's not like I can't understand her. It's not like I can't understand her. I couldn't help but frown. Still, there are lines you shouldn't cross. You know what Sun Chai Young and teacher Shim Kyung Taek did to Sangha. You can't just understand her and gloss over the problem. At my words, the trader smiled faintly and replied. That's true but, well, this industry makes people like that. This industry makes people like that. His words weren't wrong since this industry was a place where all sorts of things happened. Even I threatened someone right to his face within the first few months of working in this industry. Also, there was no telling if an incident like that wouldn't occur again. However, there was still a line people shouldn't cross. I stared directly at the trader and said. Everyone who works in this industry isn't like Sun Chai Young. Someone like her, it might not have been the industry that made her like that but, instead, was someone like that from the start. After facing the traitor and Sun Chai Young at the same time, I was confused whether I was at work or in the abode of demons. Just when would this company be purified? I was on my way to the office while recalling the number of Mermaid Out of Water episodes that have yet to air and the date Neptune's next album would go on sale. It seems you made a wrong guess. When I turned around, team leader Park was sitting in the lounge. Her face was drained of energy. 
Now that I thought about it, Kim Hyunjo did say Sun Chai Young had grilled her. Made a wrong guess. When I asked, sitting down in front of her, team leader Park looked around, and after confirming no one was around, she said in a quiet voice. You said so the first day you met Sun Chai Young. That you got a bad vibe from Mermaid out of water. But it seems like ITLL be a big hit. I simply smiled wordlessly. Team leader Park patted my shoulder as if comforting me. Well, still, don't be disappointed. Your name has definitely spread with just Cat Guardian Ghost. I recalled the people waiting for me at the PR team's office last time. I had a hunch that, when Mermaid out of water flops, the PR team employees would look at me with the same expressions as those people. I really had to be careful with my words from now on. I was resolving myself when team leader Park said with a meaningful look. It's not only the employees who know you, even celebrities do. Although I can't say who, there was someone who went to the team 3 leader, telling him he wanted to work with you. There was someone who wanted to work with me. Who? When I looked at her with wide eyes, team leader Park smiled. But the team 3 leader thoroughly refused, saying that it was currently an important time for Neptune, and. And. If you are snatched by someone else, Sangha might cause a fuss. Sangha. Was she being serious? I scratched my neck while thinking about it. If I got in a situation where I had to change the celebrity I was assigned to, although I currently didn't want to, how would Lee Sangha react? She would definitely be sad. She might even try to hold me back. Though, I would be in shock if she just said goodbye. However, to cause a fuss in the company. I don't think she will. There are many cases where celebrities feel the need to possess a monopoly over people and things they consider theirs. Well, I did say that she might cause a fuss as a joke, but seeing how she acts towards you, I feel like that day might actually come. Monopoly. It wasn't a word that suited Lee Sangha. When I tilted my head, team leader Park grinned as she said. Try bringing it up with Lee Sangha later, and see how she reacts. I didn't hear any news from Kim Hyunjo, who had left with the USB drive in his hands, for a while. I only heard from him while I was waiting at the Cat Guardian ghost drama shoot. Considering how long it took, he didn't say much. He said he played Lee Taehee's song for the Team 3 leader and that they planned on discussing it with the staff, CEO Baek Han Sung, and board members at the next internal meeting. I wasn't worried since I felt it wouldn't be difficult to push Lee Taehee's song as one of the double title tracks. The fact that her song was the title track in the original future meant that it had been chosen by those people then as well. After I called Lee Taehee, explaining the situation, Chief Lee Bang Jun, who had been sitting right next to me, warming himself in front of the campfire, poked my side. Then he gestured with his chin. When I turned around, Lee Sangha was staring at me. Why did you come out when it's cold? The shoot of the scene ahead of yours is continuously being delayed, so we have to wait a while longer. Today's outdoor shoot was at a camping ground in a dense forest. Perhaps it was because we were in a forest, but the temperature felt like it kept dropping. We were lucky to have a campfire, if we didn't even have this, we would freeze. Come here. When I gestured to her with my hands, Lee Sangha trudged her way towards me before sitting down next to me. Even though the distance from the parked van to here wasn't far, since her cheeks had paled due to the cold, I handed her the two hot packs I had in my hands. Here, put one in each pocket. They are quite warm even though they are small. Her small, white hands held the hot packs. Then, following my words, she put one in each of her pockets. It seemed she was fiddling with them as her pocket squirmed. Did you call Taehyuni just now? Yeah. Her voice didn't sound well. Well, there's no way her body would be fine after working for two days without sleep. She's already so thin, I wonder if she'll be fine. I guess I should check up on her when I take you home. I think Uni will be asleep by then. Perhaps it was due to the crackling sounds of the fire, but her voice sounded especially quiet. Ah, right. She probably will. ITLL be quite late. Yup, it might be past 1A. Then. I almost woke up a sleeping girl. Maybe it's because I'm always with you until early morning, but it looks like I lost my sense of time. 
Then when I go home and if Tehiuni isn't sleeping, he'll ask if she's okay and call Appa. Huh. You will. Lee Sangha revealed a small smile as she nodded. Not long after, they started filming Lee Song has seen. When I saw her acting with Seo Jijun and other actors, Lee Sangha from before had disappeared. The person standing there was Young Haewen. She's probably cold since her outfit is so thin. I hope that they finished filming this scene quickly. Well, Sangha almost never makes mistakes. She'll probably finish quickly and come over. Chief Lee Bun Jun said while shrugging his shoulders. That was true. Even when compared to other actors, Lee Sangha made considerably fewer mistakes. On top of that, the majority of reshoots were caused by misalignments in the scene, making director Shin Taekyun redirect it, or the wind and other sounds muddling the audio. While I was watching them film with happy eyes, Chief Lee Bun Jun asked. I'm hungry. Do you have any of Song has snacks left over? What kind of person do you think Sangha is? She's not the type of girl who does something like have snacks left over. I was worried that she wasn't eating much when she got in the role of Young Haewen at first, but it seemed she quickly adjusted to it as she would eat a ton before filming and a ton afterwards. Eh, I need to start carrying food around with me too. I'm already cold and sleepy I can't handle this if I'm hungry as well. Winter film shoots overexert your body. You should be careful while you're still young. You're going to be seriously sick once we finish filming a drama. Why don't you recruit a road manager and split the work? Ha, huh, although I would very much to do that, I can't because of Jijun, that guy. Chief Lee Bun Jun grumbled while looking at Seo Jijun who was currently acting. He can't stand the sight of me resting. If he doesn't see me for a moment, he'll ask where I am, what I'm doing, and where I went while leaving him behind. Sometimes I feel like I'm living with someone with delusional jealousy than a celebrity. Well, it did seem Seo Jijun did follow Chief Lee Bun Jun very well. That is also a problem itself. Well, it doesn't seem like this is a problem wholly unrelated to you either. I'm talking about Sangha. It seems like Shell cause a fuss if you ever leave. He said similar words as Team Leader Park. I don't know. Team Leader Park did say something like that previously. Team Leader Park did? Yes. I don't know if the person is an actor or a singer, but either way, someone went to the Team 3 leader and said he wanted to work with me. Team Leader Park did tell me to bring it up with Sangha. I was in the middle of talking when Chief Lee Bun Jun poked my side like before. Then he gestured with his chin. When I turned around, Lee Sangha was standing rigidly a few steps away. Chapter, 68 For a second, I was confused. Whether she was currently Lee Sangha or Young Haewen. Since she felt unfamiliar. While I momentarily hesitated, her white hand covered her mouth. Then I heard her cough. Ah, it was Lee Sangha. As soon as I thought that, my mind jolted awake. Come here quickly. When I spread open a thickly padded parka, Lee Sangha, who had come in front of me in a few steps, seemed to be swallowed by it when she put it on. Her face was pale. I zipped her parka up, even covering the bridge of her nose, and put the hood on. It would be a big deal if she caught a cold. Are you done already? No, after they filmed the reactions of the male and female leads, I have to go back. Lee Sangha shook her head and lightly grabbed my arm. She stared directly at me. Since I had wrapped her up like Gimbap one, all I could see from the outside were her eyes. Every time the campfire flickered with the wind, so did Lee Song has eyes, which were lit by the firelight. Appa. Yeah. Who was it? Only then did I recall the conversation I had with Chief Lee Bun Jun just now. So she heard all of it. I quickly replied in case she was taken aback while she still had to film. I don't know either. I heard the Team 3 leader refused right away. Ah, but who? I really don't know. I only heard it from Team Leader Park as well. Team Leader Park. Lee Sangha mumbled while nodding her head. Although I couldn't clearly hear her voice through the thick padding, I could clearly tell that she was trying to calm her surprise. Her hand, which had made its way out of the parka sleeve, was still holding my clothes. 
Even though she didn't create a fuss like Chief Li Bangjun said I was satisfied with this. I felt a ticklish feeling so I scratched my neck. It would be a lie if I didn't feel proud. As this meant that the relationship I built up with Li Sangha all this time wasn't frivolous. I was the same. If Li Sangha said that she wanted to change managers, I might really hit the bottle for a few days. Scene 37 MS Li Sangha, please stand by once again. Li Sangha returned to the film set surrounded by dozens of staff and camera equipment. I focused my eyes there as well. The way she looked as she nodded and replied to director Shin Taikian's words were no different from normal. Making a fuss at the company or monopoly. As expected, they didn't suit Lee Sangha. Song has personality is a bit placid. When I shrugged, Chief Li Bangjun placed his thick arm on my shoulder. Then he stared at me. What were those eyes that seemed to explode with a sense of kinship? I don't know about that. Didn't you see the words on Song Ha's eyes? Words. Chief Li Bangjun pointed at my left eye with his other hand. Who on her left eye? Who? Was it on her right? Who was it? I recalled how Li Song Ha's eyes looked, but Chief Li Bangjun continued to speak. I think her eyes were clearly open just now. I feel like you just turned on the switch. What do you mean? Cut. MS. Sangha, did you forget your lines? Just as I was about to ask, director Shin Taikian's voice pierced my ears. I thought I had heard wrong. She forgot her lines. Li Sangha did. I turned my head and looked at the film set. Under the white lights, Li Sangha stood with her mouth tightly shut. It wasn't Yung Heiwen but Li Sangha. That day, Li Sangha constantly made mistakes. It was a first. Just in case, I repeatedly told Li Sangha that I wouldn't go anywhere. If I had my seal too, I would have made a contract. I wasn't sure if it was because of it, but fortunately, she received an okay from director Shin Taikyan in the end. The event that day was glossed over as light incident caused by an irregularity in her condition. There was no problem afterwards. Since Chief Li Bunjun said such weird things like her eyes opened or I turned on the switch, I was continuously observing her, but she was the same as usual. She had finished Next K Star's past hit song cover mission well just now. Well, the judges did give her harsh evaluations. They were like Cinderella's stepsisters. She had reduced her sleep time to practice for this performance, and in my eyes, she did great. Judging aside, I was already worried about how things would be edited this time as well. The person known as the main producer of the show was someone who had already gotten a taste of using Lee Sangha to raise their viewership ratings. If the judges were like stepsisters, then he was the stepmother. After glaring at producer Go Junti who was wrapping things up, I turned my gaze to Neptune. They were returning their mics to the audio staff. Maybe it was due to the long recording time, but they all looked exhausted. Since the trader said he had something to talk with Simon Lee about, I was alone as I waited for the girls. I patted their shoulders one by one, and when I went to find Lee Sangha, I suddenly frowned. Some guy was sticking next to Lee Sangha. Even though I only saw the back of his head, I could tell who he was in an instant. The guy who raps in punchline. Lee Juwan. He was the guy who chatted about how he put dibs on Lee Sangha or something to his stylists. Since I always saw his face every next K-Star recording, I observed his behavior. He had only glanced at her in the passing until now, he never straightforwardly approached her. When I walked towards them, I heard Lee Juwan's voice. Are you okay? Ah, uh, yes. Just consider the judges drivel as dogs barking and forget them. I did the same. Lee Songa halted. I was so shocked that I looked around. Was this guy out of his mind? There were cameramen everywhere. Luckily, there wasn't anyone filming the two as the recording ended. He could have still been picked up by the mics, yet he directly called the judges dogs. Did he want to screw Lee Sangha over along with him? I didn't hesitate to step between them. Sangha, you worked hard. Let's go. Yes, Appa. Lee Sangha stuck next to me. I heard him mumbling behind me. Can't idols even flirt? 
so protective. Like hell, you were flirting. The look Lee Songda gave him indicated that they were a million light years away from flirting. If that look was flirting, then were the eyes that she looked at her rice bowl with, lust? It seemed I would have to have a talk with Punchline's manager. Sangha, don't associate with him. Sangha nodded without hesitation. That's right. What flirting? I snorted. It looked like the other girls had already gone to the waiting room as they were nowhere in sight. I was leaving the set with Lee Sangha when someone made his way through the busy staff. A thick-skinned eyesore. It was producer Go Junti. He tapped my forearm as he said. You don't have to worry about the judge's comments today. While editing, if we take out the unnecessary parts and keep what we need, we can definitely show it in a good light. Please take care of us for real this time. Why was this guy acting so unusually? While I greeted him, I raised my suspicion radar. Producer Go Junti continued. Oh, right. He'll make sure to tune into Cat Guardian Ghost's broadcast. When I saw the special episode last time, the drama was very fun. MS. Song has acting was amazing. If things continue like this, next K star might be able to produce a top star. I was dumbfounded. Although Lee Songa becoming a top star was something to celebrate, why are you trying to take credit for it, you shameless man? All Next K star had given Lee Songa was an armful of popularity and a pile of so enormous it could cover all of that. How hard did we try to change the public opinion of her that had gone bad due to Next K star into something positive? And how much hardship did she have to endure? Only my mouth smiled as I replied. Yes, as the project is so good, we are expecting good results as well. Ah really? Producer Go Junti opened his mouth a few times before asking. What kind of ratings are you expecting? To be honest, I was expecting over 10% ratings, but I didn't say that. Just in case people told me it would bring bad luck. Since the special episode reached a peak minute rating of 6%, if we could maintain that, it would be a success considering it was on cable. The staff and related parties were predicting 8 to 9%. We are planning on a public pledge 3 for when we hit 8 to 9% for now. 8 to 9%. Producer Go Junti's eyes widened before he scratched the back of his head. Then, in a shameless tone, he said. You must be so busy filming these days, right? Since even M.S. Sangha, who is playing a supporting role, looks tired, Mr. Seo Jijun from your company must be even busier since he's the lead, right? That's right. Aha. I was curious why he was acting so unusually. Seeing as how Seo Jijun's name suddenly came up, I could guess what was going on his head. Although only my mouth smiled previously, this time, my entire face was smiling. Mr. Seo Jijun is very busy too. CEO Kim Pansuk of Pan Production tapped a beer bottle with his spoon. Cheers for Mr. Seo Jijun. A cheer erupted in the Korean barbecue restaurant. The table where the filming, lighting, and audio staff were sitting at, the table where CEO Kim Pansuk, writer Hong Jumi, director Shin Taekyun. As well as the actors were sitting at, and even the table the managers were sitting at, glasses of alcohol sloshed everywhere. This was a get-together to tune into Cat Guardian Ghost's broadcast. Since Seo Jijun was paying, besides a few who had important schedules, everyone had gathered. Even the behind-the-scenes team was present with their cameras rolling, but everyone frantically covered their face to not be filmed. As we had come after filming an outdoor scene, everyone's appearances were a bit. If people watching didn't know, they would think this was a gathering of homeless people instead of a drama production team. Even while they used their chopsticks, everyone kept turning their heads towards the TV on the wall. The program before us had just ended, and it was currently playing commercials. Should we do something when we reach a certain rating? Said the manager of the female lead as he swallowed a piece of beef still red inside. Another manager joined in while creating a bomb shot for. Oh, right. Mermaid Out of Water is doing something like that as well. They are aiming for 20% over there. 20%? Wow, that's high. As people made a commotion, the manager who brought it up shrugged. It's not an impossible number. Their upwards momentum is no joke. 
I wonder how long ITLL keep rising for. Probably until the third episode. I thought while flipping a delicious piece of beef. I thought that the masterpiece in the beginning of this year would be our drama. Eh. Do you know how strong the public network lineup is? Even IBC's time slip reached 12% yesterday. It's a great start considering its genre. The director and writer of that project have such great teamwork. Yeah, they have excessively great teamwork. Enough for a drama to flop since the director and writer got into an affair. I cut the beef into big pieces with scissors. Its juices dripped down. Was Lee Songa eating well? I looked at Lee Songa who was sitting between Seo Jijun and another lead actor. She was nodding her head as she listened to people conversing around her. Her mouth didn't rest either. Lee Songa, whose one cheek was bulging, turned around and looked at me. Our eyes met. I smiled, telling her to eat a lot since it was expensive meat, but she looked to her left and right as she read the mood. Then she stealthily got up with one hand holding her plate and the other holding chopsticks. Walking towards me on her knees, Lee Sangha turned to the seat next to me. Then she placed her plate in front of me. There were large pieces of beef on it. For me. She nodded and said in a small voice. Only the chief keeps eating. I ate one of the pieces Lee Sangha made a big decision to give me before piling her plate with meat. Even though Chief Lee Bang Jun stare stabbed at me, I ignored him. I need to eat until my stomach bursts. I enthusiastically placed a new batch of meat on the grill. An associate producer shouted. It's the last commercial. One minute before the broadcast. The Korean barbecue restaurant, that had been as noisy as a marketplace, became quiet in an instant. Everyone looked at the TV with faces full of excitement and expectations. People enjoyed the drama in various ways. There were people whose eyes fixated on the TV as if they were at a theater and people who went online to check the real-time reactions of viewers. What they had in common was that they all were in festive mood. There are tons of comments popping up in community sites and social media outlets. The majority of them are positive. Yua, when Seo Jijun and Lee Sangha are on the screen together, the reactions are explosive. Although I had read the script enough times to memorize it and seen them film the scenes, seeing the well-edited version moved me beyond expectation. The polish of the drama was good, and every time Lee Song has face appeared on screen, my heart swelled with pride. As expected, Lee Song has seemed captivated as she looked at the screen. With a face that seemed more satisfied than when she was eating beef. Between their heated words, the sounds of phones vibrating and ringing never ceased. Even my phone didn't stop ringing since a while ago. Reporter Park said that she already wrote multiple articles, and my brother and sister-in-law sent me a long message expressing their thoughts and feelings before it even ended. There were even texts from my parents, friends, and even from the PR team employees at work. The one who sent me the most messages was I'm CEO Young. It looked like the other girls were watching it together at home as a new message popped up every minute. The messages were about how Lee Sangha was filmed yet she didn't appear on screen and how the fans in the fan cafe were going crazy. There was no need for me to monitor it on my own. Just then, the drama ended. The Korean barbecue restaurant was packed with the sounds of 20 people chatting all at once. The waiters didn't have time to rest as they constantly brought beer over, and glasses were refilled as soon as they became empty. People became a mob, scrambling back and forth as they toasted with each other. What silenced this commotion was a phone call. It was a call from TVL's master control room. Everyone, even the employees at the Korean barbecue restaurant, watched director Shin Taekyun while he was on the phone. As he wasn't someone who easily expressed his emotions, it was difficult to guess the ratings by his expression. Soon, director Shin Taekyun hung up. Then he looked towards us and asked. Actors, at what ratings are you planning on setting your public pledges? Someone said 8%, another replied with a 9%. Director Shin Taekyun smiled as he said. I guess we need to raise the bar. Chapter, 69. First episode, average 7. 9%. Peak ratings 8. 3%. Second episode, average 8. 2. Peak ratings 9. 
1%. They were only a few numbers. Yet the effect these numbers brought along was tremendous. It was like a gust, no, a storm. Everyone I met this weekend congratulated me as they stopped me in my tracks. I even received almost a hundred text messages. I thought my fingerprints would rub off after replying to each and every one of them. Still, I wasn't annoyed in the slightest. Instead, there was nothing more rejuvenating. Every time I was congratulated, it felt like I was being rewarded for all the hardships I had endured up until now. It felt like my feet weren't planted on the ground but instead floating in the air. Since my heart would swell with pride all the time, there were many times when I smiled unwittingly. On the other hand, it also felt a bit odd. The people who didn't even look at me properly when I greeted them multiple times, the people who half-heartedly tossed the Neptune album CD I gave them to the side. And the people who seemed to make sarcastic remarks for us to hear during Lee Song has add-on controversy. I felt odd because it was rather these people who sent texts full of flattery. No matter how much people was ratings and popularity was everything in this industry, their change in attitude was all too transparent. Also, the person that dumbfounded me the most out of those people was producer Go Junti. After sending me an artful text congratulating me, he suddenly asked if we could meet, which was why I was currently waiting in a coffee shop near Net for him. When I turned around after ordering, I halted. There was a familiar poster posted to the left of the counter. It was a poster of the Cat Guardian Ghost cast. It seemed this coffee shop put it up as it was also an affiliate of the same enterprise as TVL and Net. Even among the glamorous faces, the only one that caught my eye was Lee Sanga. It was while I was staring at the poster with a happy expression for quite some time. Would you like one? When I turned around, an employee handed me my coffee. Then he smiled as if he completely understood. I asked because you were constantly staring at Lee Sanga. After we put this poster up, there were quite a few customers asking if they could get one. Normally, we can't, but since we don't have any other customers right now, I can get one for you. I too took one home because of Lee Sanga. I don't know who took the picture, it came out spectacular. No matter how many times I see it, my eyes are happy. I said to the chattering employee. She doesn't just look good in pictures. Someone I know saw her and said she looked much more beautiful in real life. Really? She's prettier than her picture. That's why the photographer who took her picture felt regretful. After bragging about Lee Sangha as if I didn't know her, I received a poster. Although I already had one at home, the more the better. As soon as I sat on the sofa, my phone rang. Since it was a casting call, I quickly took out my pen and notebook. Ever since the drama began doing well, the number of casting calls I received increased significantly. They weren't anything big, and although they intended to cast Lee Sangha as the focus and the other girls as extras, it was better than nothing. Compared to a few months ago, it was a change that could make one hula dance in joy. Yes. I will check their schedule and get back to you, M.S. Writer. I said in a gentle voice when the sofa in front of me moved. His appearance cleaner than normal, producer Go Junti greeted me with his eyes as he sat. As soon as I hung up, he asked as he glanced at my notebook. It seems there are a lot of places asking for MS. Sangha. Well, since the drama's ratings are over 8% I heard that its ratings are fourth in the all-time rankings for cable dramas. I heard that TVL's drama department are in a festive mood right now. It's not like we are strangers, I asked to see you to congratulate you on behalf of Next K-Star. Even though he said he wanted to congratulate me, his expression was sour. Well, his stomach must be aching quite a bit. Although Next K-Star was also a popular program that kept surpassing its previous week's ratings, it hadn't passed 8% yet. While they had been eager for it to surpass 8%, Cat Guardian Ghost had surpassed it in two episodes. Also, looking at the audience reactions and experienced popularity, it seemed it would go even higher. After taking a sip of coffee, I said. The reactions were better than we expected so we are expectant of the future. We are even discussing changing our public pledge from 8 or 9% to 10%. 10%? Producer Go Junti's eyes widened. It's because our peak ratings passed 9%. At this rate, 
we think that 10% doesn't seem impossible. Hearing my words, producer Go Junti looked like he had swallowed a bug. The more he did, the deeper the smile on my face became. I wondered when I had ever felt so at peace in front of him before. I was leisurely savoring my coffee when producer Go Junti licked his lower lip and said, Um, that's why our staff came up with this idea. They say to strike while the iron's hot. We think Cat Guardian Ghost can gain more momentum with a bit of promoting. What do you think about having Mr. Seo Jijun appear as a special guest on the last mission, the open concert? This was it. What congratulations. I knew you would bring this up. I shrugged my shoulders, saying. Rather than me, I think ITLL be better if you contacted our PR team or Chief Lee Bang Jun. Of course, you would be rejected immediately. I heard that casting requests from other directors were being rejected so there was nothing more to say about producer Go Junti as team leader Park already had her fiery glare directed at him. While I too was waiting for an opportunity to screw producer Go Junti over, team leader Park was no joke. Producer Go Junti licked his lips. Some other place had already contacted them, but they said things didn't go well. That will probably because Mr. Seo Jijun said he wanted to solely focus on the project. The company is trying to listen to our actors' opinions the best we can. At my words, producer Go Junti became more courteous. I heard Mr. Sun Wu was close with the chief in charge of Seo Jijun. Oh, goody. Couldn't we change Seo Jijun's mind if we asked through Chief Lee? It's not like it's difficult to show his face and cheer his company juniors on. He'll even edit the episode incredibly. You almost ended Lee Song has image with your editing, this guy. Also, what have you done for me to want to cast Seo Jijun for you? My expression clearly showed how dumbfounded I was. As if making an excuse, producer Go Junti said. I sprinkled a bit of MSG1 until now because the ratings needed a little push, but I had no choice since the program had to survive for its cast to as well. I intended to take care of Neptune and Lee Song has image with editing before the program ended. Really? I just wanted to smack his mouth. If I could, I wanted to pour on him by the truckload. Just as I was about to firmly reject him a sudden thought crossed my mind. After acting like I was considering it for a while, I nodded. Then he'll bring it up with Chief Lee. Don't get your hopes up though. Producer Go Junti's complexion brightened. Then he asked right away. Will you really? Really? Of course, it was a lie. Even if Seo Jijun said he would, I wanted to hold him by his leg and tell him not to, so unless I was crazy, how could I? Only, I planned on dragging this bait for a bit longer. While I had Seo Jijun as bait, producer Go Junti couldn't use Neptune and Lee Sangha as kindling for his ratings. Well, either way, I did tell him not to get his hopes up. Did something good happen? Lee Sangha asked, sitting in the passenger seat next to me. As we had to talk with team leader Park about the public pledge, we were on our way to the company together. When I glanced next to me, Lee Sangha was looking at me while munching on chocolate-coated biscuit sticks. Why? Does it look like something good happened? Her reply was accompanied by a rustling sound. Then something solid poked my lips. It was a biscuit stick. While I casually received it, I felt a little strange. Why was she trying to feed me these days? If one of the other girls did it, I would have eaten it without any thought, but it was Lee Sangha. She was a girl who even wrote her name on the ice cream container in fear someone might eat it. But she gave me pieces of beef during the first episode broadcast get-together, and even afterwards, she kept sharing things with me. Did I look hungry? I did become all skin and bones due to the film shoots these days. While thinking this, I quickly replied since Lee Sangha was waiting. It's all because of you. The munching sounds paused. After your drama became a hit, I have been flooded with calls from people congratulating me and casting calls. This is a first. Working feels worthwhile because of you. Since I didn't hear a reply, I looked towards my side and saw Lee Sangha smiling silently. Ah. It was regretful that I was driving. I should have taken a picture. I recalled the Cat Guardian ghost poster I had in my bag. Even though she didn't have any makeup on right now, she was much prettier than her face on that poster. 
to the point it was a shame to see it by myself. Appa. Hmm. You said that you originally wanted to be assigned to an actor. How long has it been since I said that? Don't tell me it was bothering her still. When I turned towards her, Lee Song has face had turned towards the window. I did. Well, to be honest, I was only okay with it because I was with Neptune. I didn't feel inclined towards being assigned to some other singer. I clearly liked actors. I liked dramas and movies. I felt this once more while going through Cat Guardian Ghost with Lee Sangha. Although it was tough enough to make you cry, it was also just as enjoyable. Either way, I was about to say that I was perfectly satisfied right now, but Lee Sangha asked me first. Then you probably don't think about it anymore. She continued with a quiet voice. Because of me. Lee Sangha was still staring at the window. I couldn't see what sort of expression she had due to her long, luscious hair. I looked down at her hands. Her fingers were fidgeting with the biscuit sticks a whole lot. I smiled as I replied. Yeah. Because of you. It seemed this company had tons of log bridges. Two. I kept meeting my enemies all the time. I was entering the PR team's office with Lee Sangha when I suddenly stood still. Sun Chai Young and Chief Joe were talking with Team Leader Park inside. Were they hassling Team Leader Park again? Leaning on one leg, Sun Chai Young said. Please release an interview saying that I readily voted in favor for editing the script since the viewers and the fans of the original work wanted it. If the script is edited, then I need to reanalyze it again and I might even be sent 1-2 page scripts, so I need to take as much credit for it as I can. Mermaid out of water had fallen into the mud. In the future, they said that they redid the entire script, saying they would reflect on the fans of the original work's opinions, before it flopped as too many people got involved. While fireworks were going off in my mind, I heard Team Leader Park's worried voice. The script is good right now. I'm not sure if the staff are being too greedy. If we want to surpass 20%, we have to be a little greedy, Team Leader. She said, burning with desire. Team Leader Park let out a sigh as she nodded. Listening to those two talk, Chief Joe read Sun Chai Young's expression before saying, It's because the production company in PBS pushed hard for it, the writer was reluctant to. PBS's opinion is important. Appa, does the writer give the Best Performance Award? PBS does. What Best Performance Award? What big dream she had? Well, they did say a drama evaluation article picked it as the worst drama. After saying a few more words to Team Leader Park, Sun Chai Young quickly turned around. Then, as soon as she discovered Lee Sangha and me, her expression swelled with irritation. We weren't glad to see you either. As we entered the office, I glanced at Lee Sangha to see if she was okay since she did throw a cake at her the last time they met. Luckily, she seemed to her normal calm. Although Sun Chai Young looked like she had a ton to say, it seemed she was barely holding it in because Chief Joe held her back. Well, this place had too many watching eyes for her to scream and flaunt her wickedness. Stomping on the floor as she passed by, she stopped and looked at me. Then she said. I didn't watch it, her drama. So what? Wasn't she the one who said it was basic manners to watch her drama since we all worked in the same company? I burst into laughter when Lee Sangha, who had simply been standing by, said to the back of Sun Chai Young's head. I didn't watch yours either. Sun Chai Young abruptly turned her head. Her gaze towards Lee Sangha was fierce. I quickly pulled Lee Songha's arm and hit her behind me. Sun Chai Young's shoulders heaved up and down as if she was about to shout any moment. Chief Joe took her away after almost begging her to leave if this place wasn't the PR team's office and if the employees were glancing at us, I felt that a season 2 of the cake throwing incident would break out. Did you really not see Sun Chai Young's drama? When I asked Lee Sangha, she covertly avoided my eyes as she told the truth. I did see it. With the unis. Why did you go and see her face on TV as well? Don't watch it from now on. I said in a small voice. She quickly nodded her head. I was thinking that I should show her when it dropped to 3% ratings when I felt someone's gaze on the back of my head. 
When I turned around, team leader Park was looking at Lee Songa and me. Her cheek sunken after being pestered by Sun Chai Young, she smiled. My heart is at peace now that you came. So are my ears. You had a hard time. I sincerely consoled her. After seating Lee Songa and me in front of her, team leader Park got to the point. She said that, since we were already planning on a public pledge once we reached a certain rating, she thought about combining Lee Songa and Seo Jijun's pledges together. Since it was difficult to control the crowd out in the streets, she asked what we thought about renting a theater and watching the episode broadcast with fans as well as holding a small fan meeting. Lee Songa and I, well, we simply nodded our heads. Team leader Park took a while as she told us things to be careful of during the fan meeting and things we had to prepare for. I looked beside me while taking notes, and Lee Sangha looked serious as well. After finishing what she had to say, team leader smiled happily. You'll be busier from now on. There aren't any difficulties with the two of you working together, right? Nope. Lee Sangha was the first to reply. I nodded my head as well. Team leader Park revealed a motherly smile. Now that we had pretty much discussed what we needed, I said my farewells and got up. But Lee Sangha didn't get up right away and instead hesitated. Then she looked up at me and said. It'll be down later I have a few questions to ask team leader Park. You want to? Then he'll be waiting in the van so come down whenever. I had wanted to go down first and turn the heater on so it was good. The inside of the van would be ice cold because of the cold weather outside. She was barely maintaining her constantly reducing stamina with food, it would be bad if she caught a cold like this. Leaving Lee Sangha behind, I left the office. Just as I entered the elevator, my phone in my pocket vibrated. I took it out while humming, thinking it was another casting call, but it was Kim Hyunjo. After a brief greeting, Kim Hyunjo cut straight to the point. Let's talk later about Taehee's song. Chapter 70 did something happen? I replied saying that I understood for now and went down to the basement. While I waited for Lee Sangha with the heat turned on, I was lost in my thoughts. After handing the song over to Kim Hyunjo, I had been thinking positively since it was a song that had been chosen as the title track in the original future. Although it might not be able to be the exclusive title track now that we had Simon Lee's song, I thought that, since there were merits to it being written by one of the members, we could push it as double title tracks. Was there a problem? I was already worried that there was an unexpected variable. In the past, I had thought that, as long as I knew the future, everything would be as easy as pie. I had thought that all I needed to do was walk the path guaranteed to succeed. However, in reality, I was troubled that a variable would knock the path astray. I was lost in thought for a long while when the door to the passenger seat opened. In here. She seemed to have run all the way here as she was out of breath as she got in. You should have taken your time. Why did you run? I thought you'd be waiting. It's only a couple minutes. Did you ask team leader Park what you wanted to ask? When I asked while starting the van, Lee Sangha paused for a moment. Then she glanced at me and asked. Appa. You're not interested in guys, right? Just what was she saying now? I was at such loss for words that the worries I had about the song had gone out the window. What kind of interest are you talking about? First, I'm not interested in guys in that way. Maybe you wanted to work with a male celebrity. She mumbled. What's this? Was this a continuation of our prior conversation? I tilted my head when a light bulb suddenly went off in my head. You, are you asking this because someone wanted to work with me? Don't tell me you asked Team Leader Park about this. Lee Sangha stealthily turned her head towards the window. So that was what she asked. While I was taken aback on one hand, on the other hand, warmth spread in my chest. Although it wasn't a feeling as heavy as wanting a monopoly over me, I could still tell she was worried I might go to some other celebrity. I was proud and felt a little ticklish. I even thought that this was what the relationship between a celebrity and her manager was like. Should I say it felt like having a companion? My heart went beyond feeling warm and started to feel hot. It was more effective than the heater. I don't have any thoughts of changing. I like working with Neptune, and I told you just now, 
that I'm having fun working because of you. Now really, do I need to write a contract or something? No. Lee Sangha quickly changed her words. I eventually couldn't take it anymore and burst into laughter. Then I asked jokingly. So the person who wanted to work with me was a guy. Who was he? I don't know either. She tightly shut her lips again. I had a hard time containing my laughter while we drove to her residence. Only after I dropped Lee Sangha off did a few chuckles escape. However, my happy mood hit rock bottom as soon as I returned to work to meet Kim Hyunjo. On one side of the office were Kim Hyunjo and the trader sitting next to each other. I'm here, chief. I greeted Kim Hyunjo and lightly waved my hand at the trader. Maybe it was because he was next to the dreary Kim Hyunjo, but the trader's face seemed unusually bright today. About Taehee's song. Kim Hyunjo went straight to the point. I had taken deep breaths in preparation for this. To be prepared for whatever variable was thrown at me. Although I didn't know what happened, I had to protect Lee Taehee's song. It was better than we thought so Young Hoon Hyung and I were thinking of pushing it part of double title tracks. Huh. Was I worried for nothing? Their reactions were positive enough that my nervousness was for naught. I nodded heavily as I pushed further. I thought that it would be a shame to just put the song in the album as well. I think there is definitely a chance of succeeding as a double title track. Above all, if a song written by Taehee becomes a title track, it will be beneficial for her and Neptune's image. That's right. But the situation has become a bit iffy. I did think things were going too smoothly. Gun Young talked with Simon Lee about Neptune's next album, and apparently, he said some very enticing words. Enticing words. It seems he has thoughts of providing support when they go on entertainment shows after their comeback. Support. Simon Lee will. While I hesitated, the trader added in with a bright smile. Song is doing well because of the drama. On top of that, Neptune's popularity is rising as their name is being spread because of her. That's why it seems Simon Lee thought that it could be a win-win for both sides if things went well. There's a talk show that Simon Lee is a panelist for so starting with that, he's saying that we should appear on a few programs together. To be honest, it's good for us. Kim Hyunjo continued while rubbing his chin. If that guy talks about stories that happened in Next K Star, then ITLL give the girls a push and their image as a talented girl group will solidify. And if there's someone who takes care of them in entertainment programs, ITLL be a great help to them. Even while my mind was complicated, I nodded my head. If Simon Lee was actively going to help us like this, then it was a very enticing offer for us. But why did he say Lee Taehee's song was iffy? As if he read my mind, Kim Hyunjo continued. If that's the case, even if we go with double title tracks, Simon Lee's song will gain much more publicity. If the public reacts, then we have no choice but to focus more on that as well. If that happens, Taehee's song might be buried. If the song is good, isn't there a good chance ITLL do well on the charts? It was a song that would be known as a hit. On top of that, the future with the bad connection I had seen not too long ago. They said that the trader pushed Lee Taehee's song then. That it was a divine move. Judging from the PR team employee's appearance, clothes and even the surrounding environment, it must have been early spring. No matter how much I thought about it, there was a good chance that the album the employee was talking about was the same as the one we were currently preparing for. That was why it was clear Lee Taehee's song would garner a huge reaction. However, Kim Hyunjo was skeptical. How good would it be if a song became a hit because it was good? Although there are cases where songs slowly climb the charts because they are good, there are many more cases where they are buried. I racked my brains. Kim Hyunjo continued. In thinking about how it would be if we pushed Simon Lee's song this time then release Taehee's song as a follow-up or hold on to it until their next album. If it became a follow-up, then its release would be postponed. If it was to be put on the next album, a few months at least, it might be pushed even further back than that there will be too many variables. Would Lee Taehee's song still be a hit like in the future then? Songs were greatly affected by the trends and times when they were released. If we slipped up, our release might overlap with a famous singer, and above all, 
it was uncertain if their next album would be a success with just Simon Lee's song. Either way, Sun Wu, you think that there's a chance of succeeding with double title tracks, right? I nodded my head right away. If it's your senses, then I do want to trust them. How about you, Gun Young? When I glanced at him, the trader rubbed his lips as he carefully replied. I think ITLL be best if we push one that is certain to succeed. If our promotions are split, both might end up flat. Then Simon Lee, who actively offered to help, might not like it either. There was a problem with his premise. The one certain to succeed wasn't Simon Lee's song. The trader looked at me. Our eyes met. Having a headache, Kim Hyunjo ruffled his hair. Okay. Well, it's not like Simon Lee's song has been decided to be their title track, and there could be people who vote for Taehee's song. Let's try to gather opinions about what will be the best move. It had been a long while since I got off work early, but rather than resting, my head felt like it would explode. I skipped dinner and was trying to anticipate the events that would occur. My phone vibrated. It was Kim Hyunjo. I was wondering what it was now as I quickly checked, but it wasn't about the album. Instead, it was a text telling me to call I'm Seo Young right away all of a sudden. What was going on? I called her as I tilted my head. She answered immediately, and I heard a noisy background. Appa? The chief wanted me to call you, is there something wrong? Why is it so loud? As soon as I asked, Im Seo Young hurriedly replied. We are locked in a coffee shop. We all came out to eat dinner together, but too many people gathered. I told her to send me the coffee shop's address through text and got up. It took 30 minutes to get to the location Im Seo Young sent me by van. It was easy to find the coffee shop as there were dozens of people gathered around it. Just what was happening? Although the girl's popularity had gone up due to Next K Star, it was like a bud that had only just started to sprout from dry, cracked ground. They weren't at the level of people crowding around them. Was it because of Lee Sangha? No, no matter how successful the drama became, that was a bit. I stopped thinking about it for now and parked the van near the cafe. Then I jumped into the crowd of people. The small coffee shop was packed with people as if it had a huge sale. There weren't any more seats inside so people were peering in through windows outside. Wow, it's so freaking lively since such pretty girls are gathered in a group. Should we go get their autographs? They say it's Neptune. Neptune, the girl group Lee Song has in. Ah, she was a girl group. Seeing as I heard them say Neptune Lee Sangha within the noisy sounds, it seemed the girls were in there, but since they were tightly surrounded by people, I couldn't even catch a glimpse of their hair. I rolled my sleeves up and squeezed in between people. Excuse me, coming through. Ah, damn it, don't try to cut in line. I'm Neptune's manager. The people who had been glaring at me gave way. After saying that I was their manager about fifteen times did I barely reach the table the girls were seated at. Oh my god. I wasn't that small either, but I thought I would be crushed. When I looked at them, Lee Sangha was diligently signing her autograph or scribbling or something, and the other girls were showing flustered expressions in front of the people taking pictures of them. Im Seo Young, who had been darting her large, round eyes, jolted up when she discovered me. Appa. Even Lee Sangha, who had been signing, abruptly raised her head. Relief brushed over Lee Taehee and LJ's faces. I would ask just how this happened later and decided to quickly calm the situation and take them away. First, I told them that we would only give autographs and allow pictures to those waiting inside the coffee shop. I asked for their understanding, saying that the girls had a schedule to go to, and gave everyone waiting outside a cup of coffee paid for with the company credit card. I also apologized to the cafe manager for this unexpected disturbance. I didn't know with what mind I did all that in. I quickly organized the situation and took the girls out. Since there were so many people tightly packed together, it was difficult even leaving the cafe. Creating a path for the girls and taking care of them. I felt like I was evacuating the girls from a war zone. As this was my first time experiencing this, I was exhausted in moments. Back when we held a guerrilla concert in Hongdae, I had Kim Hyunjo, the trader, the staff, and bodyguards. 
The girls held onto my arms or shoulders, following behind me like ducklings. I was barely able to get them in the van before quickly starting the van and leaving the place. It seemed the girls finally relaxed as they slumped down like deflated balloons. I parked the van once we were a little distance away from the coffee shop and asked. Just what happened? The first one to come to her senses was Lee Taehee, who answered. It had been a long time since we'd gone out so we went to celebrate the success of Song His Drama, but we didn't think it would end up like this. Sorry. Ju just what happened? My mind is still all over the place. Maybe it was because she was agitated or surprised, but Im Seo Young said this with a reddened face. LJ brushed her tangled hair over and criticized her. It's because of you that things went out of hand. At first, there were only a few people, but once you got into position and began signing autographs, people started to crowd around us, thinking we were holding an autograph event. Yua. I didn't think so many people would come. I went around by myself a few times to check if there was anyone who would recognize me, and back then, it ended with me giving them my autograph. I could vaguely picture what happened. Since a group of eye-catchingly pretty girls went around together, they would, of course, gain attention, and then there would be people who recognized Neptune and Lee Sangha. And then when Im Seo Young set up an autograph event on top of that, those who casually came over to see them probably decided to get their autographs and pictures while they were there. It was pretty much the same as holding a small fan signing event. It was fine since nothing serious happened, but what if there was trouble? We couldn't easily let them go out from now on. While I was lost in my thoughts and massaging my stiff neck, Im Seo Young suddenly shouted. Appa, Lee Songa. Lee Song has not here. Where did she go? I think we left her there. My heart dropped for a moment. I turned around to check if we really had left her behind when my heart relaxed right away. Lee Sangha was sitting right next to me. Im over here. You freaked me out. Why are you sitting in the front seat? Im Seo Young was grumpy for a while. Then, when it looked like things had calmed down, she leaned her head to the front and started chatting again. Lee Taehee and LJ were slumped in their seats with relieved expressions, but Im Seo Young's eyes shined. Even though it was crazy, I liked it but there were a lot of people who recognized Lee Sangha. Appa, there were many people who specifically said Lee Sangha, and it felt like she signed multiple times the amount the three of us signed together. Well, she does have her drama. Dramas really are good. Our next album has to do well so that we can start working too. I'm scared well be known as Eunice who mooch off the youngest. Although she said it in a joking manner, her eyes were serious. Well, when I thought back to that scene, it seemed the majority of people were gathered around Lee Sangha. Since she had constantly seen this right in front of her, I thought that it was possible for her thoughts to be complicated right now. She must have seen a lot of groups where only one or two members became famous and the rest were treated as add-ons. There were also a lot of groups that ended up disbanding because of this as well. Their next album had to do well like I'm Seo Young's words. Just as I was once again thinking about the album. Ah, an article about us was published. LJ, who had been on her phone, suddenly said. Im Seo Young immediately stuck next to her. What? Is it about how we signed autographs in the coffee shop? There's an article about that. No, that's not it it's about how we will be working on our next album with Simon Lee. Chapter, 71 Let me see. As soon as I received the phone, I read the headline. Although it didn't contain specifics, it stated that the girl group Neptune connected with Simon Lee through Next K-Star and that they were anticipating what kind of comeback Neptune. A girl group that had been accumulating the image of a talented girl group, and the star songwriter Simon Lee would make. The source of the information came from a music world of Revenge Insider. If I knew who that idiot was I would have ripped his mouth off. I immediately called Kim Hyunjo. Chief, did you see the article with Simon Lee? I just saw it. Whoever that insider is, considering he said it as if it was definitive, he doesn't seem like he's an insider on our side. Gun Young says that someone might have overheard Simon Lee and him talking at the next K-Star set. I abruptly recalled today's events as well as the look the trader gave me. 
That moment, a suspicion that the music world of Revenge Insider might be related to the traitor crossed my mind since he would want Simon Lee's song to become the title track. If he leaked this to the press first, then the company would have no choice but to consider Simon Lee's position as well. From what Young Hoon Hyung says, it seems we will hold an internal staff meeting tomorrow with the AR Team 1 and decide as quickly as possible. If we try to drag it on and revise the story, then Simon Lee, who has actively gotten involved, might feel weird. Then Simon Lee's song becoming the title track was only a matter of time. Will this affect our double title track strategy? I perked my ears and looked at the rear view mirror. My gaze met with Lee Taehee's in the mirror. Unlike me, whose expression was stiff with anxiety, she gave me a calm look. I already told Young Hoon Hyung that you passionately pushed Taehee's song as part of double title tracks. You already have a past record of pushing Cat Guardian Ghost and getting good results. Either way, it won't take long so just wait a little. As soon as I hung up the phone, Im Seo Young asked as if she had been waiting. Appa, we might go with double title tracks. You're talking about the song Tae Uni made, right? It's not for certain. He'll let you know when things are decided. I left it at that and parked the van at their residence. Im Seo Young and LJ rushed out, and Lee Sangha, who kept giving me a worried look, seemingly finding my expression serious, said goodbye and left. Now, only Lee Tae remained. Uni, what are you doing? Aren't you coming? You go first. I have something to say before I go in. Lee Taehee said, looking in my direction. The girls revealed suspicious expression but nodded their heads without probing further. Only after the two girls dragged the slow-walking Lee Sangha did Lee Taehee open her mouth. Sorry for today. We suddenly made work for you when you should have been resting. Huh. It's nothing. You girls must have been shocked. I had forgotten what had happened just a while ago because I caught up thinking about the article. I should have been more careful, but it seems I was caught up in the mood. It was the first time so many people recognized and approached us out on the streets as well as said that we were Neptune. Lee Taehee's lips rose into a gentle smile as if she was recalling the events. Looking back at me, Lee Taehee continued. I wish that people will call us Neptune for a long time. For that, the next album needs to do well. I don't have any other desires. So if you are pushing double title tracks for me, you don't have to. I heard what Hyunjo Appa said. When I looked back at her, Lee Taehee was smiling beneath the dim lights. I will be happy if the song I made was even put in the album. Even if it doesn't become a title track, I won't be so disappointed that it'll fall into a hole of despair or become an alcoholic or anything like that. She said, mixing in a joke with her gentle voice. With complicated thoughts, I replied. It's not like that. To me, your song is better than Simon Lee's. I thought that you said that simply as a compliment last time. Her slender eyes closed slightly. Thank you. For thinking of it like that. If I could, I wanted to tell her. I wanted to tell her that, in the future I saw, Lee Taehee's song was the song that represented Neptune. If I hadn't changed the present and, through this, the traitor didn't bring Simon Lee's song over, she would have encountered this future without any problems. When I thought this, I resolved myself that I would do whatever I could to correct this path that had gone awry. When the day brightened, I headed to work with a combatant mindset. Then, as soon as the Team 3 leader arrived at work, I stuck next to him. If I tried to persuade staff members who I wasn't really familiar with, I felt like they would call me crazy and beat me up so I decided that completely persuading the Team 3 leader was the best I could do. There was the thing with Cat Guardian Ghost as well. If the Team 3 leader thought that my senses were decent, he wouldn't completely disregard my words. Team leader, no matter how much I think about it, I think now's the best time to release Taehee's song. If we push double title tracks with Taehee's song, when they go on entertainment shows with Simon Lee, it can help support a more singer-songwriter, artist-like image. ITLL really nail in their image as a talented girl group. I spilled everything I had thought of all last night. The Team 3 leader, who had been listening with a tired expression for a while, waved his hand. Then he crossed his arms and said. Now, really. Do you really like that song that much? 
Yes. Not just me, the other girls really like it too. Especially Sangha, she said that the song felt like it was Neptune's and that she felt she could sing it well. I even tried persuading him by bringing in Neptune and Lee Sangha. The Team 3 leader scratched his patchy beard. Okay, I got it. Last time, you were obsessed with Cat Guardian Ghost, and this time, it's Tehi's song. I also feel like I shouldn't ignore your words because of last time. I really think it can be successful. He'll try to push for double title tracks as much as I can. But if the other staff members' opinions are different, then there's nothing I can do. I sat on a terrace from where the meeting room could be seen and stared at the meeting room door. I kept thinking about it in my head. If the results of the meeting weren't good, what would I have to do? I thought of all sorts of crazy things. Should I really act like a shaman? I even thought about telling people that I sensed that Lee Tae song would be a hit, very seriously. I didn't know how far rumors about me would spread, but there might be a staff member, like the Team 3 leader, who felt like they shouldn't ignore my words. I pressed hard on my temples. I felt that I, in my current position as a manager who had only been working for a few months, was powerless. If I stood in a position where I could choose and decide on everything, I wouldn't have to agonize over this so much. While I was still immersed in my thoughts. It looks like you're still thinking about Tehi's song. I suddenly heard a voice. The trader was sitting in the chair across from me. My mind was already complicated, but when I saw the trader's leisurely face, my mood hit rock bottom. Why did his face look even better than yesterday? Well, of course, it did. Due to the article published yesterday, Simon Lee's song being the title track was pretty much set in stone. A sudden question crossed my mind. The future where the trader pushed and succeeded in making Lee Tae-hee's song a title track. Was Lee Tae-hee's song part of the double title tracks in that future? The trader continued. I don't understand why you insist on pushing for double title tracks. Her song's good. There are a lot of singers who put out double or even triple title tracks if the songs are good. I replied while brushed my tangled hair. The trader revealed a strange expression before shrugging his shoulders. I don't know about that. I think it's better to push one that is certain to succeed. It's better to focus our energy into one. If we took a risk and it fails, then they both might end up with mediocre results. One that is certain to succeed? I think that Simon Lee's song will become Neptune's first hit track. Also. After pausing for a bit, he continued. I think that my senses are right this time. The trader gave me a bright smile. That moment, I had a sudden urge to wipe his face from my sight. How long had I waited? The door to the meeting room opened. The staff members who had attended the meeting bustled out. I shot up and approached the Team 3 leader. The Team 3 leader, who had been scratching the back of his neck, clicked his tongue when he saw me. Damn it. It didn't end well. Everyone agreed that Tehi's song was good. The Team 3 leader said while patting my shoulder. But an article that we were working with Simon Lee had already been published, and they asked why we should insist on dividing the public's attention with double title tracks when we already had a song that would be a hot topic. That's why the meeting leaned towards the opinion of putting Tehi's song on their next album. There was nothing I could do. There was no other way using normal means. Just as I thought that I only had crazy options left, the Team 3 leader mumbled. Unless the CEO tells us to go with double title tracks. The CEO. When I turned my head and asked, the Team 3 leader licked his lips and nodded. Since they say the CEO arrived not too long ago, ITLL be decided once I tell him and he makes the final decision. But ITLL probably end up like that. Like Blackout's album and Neptune's last album, he usually leaves it up to the staff. CEO Beck Hansung's face crossed my mind. Then I also recalled how he had personally called me. He had suddenly asked whether I thought Cat Guardian Ghost would do well in China. He had also said previously that he had to keep lucky people close. Maybe, just maybe, if he saw me before he made the final decision on Neptune's next album, he might ask me for my opinion this time as well. Also, one more thing. 
I also recalled him saying that he would do something for me if Cat Guardian Ghost became successful. Since I was gnashing my teeth at Sun Chai Young and Teacher Shim Kyung take that time, I had told him that I hoped Sun Chai Young would pay the appropriate price for her deeds. However, the current situation was more important than that. I swallowed my saliva and said. Team leader. Could I come with you when you go to the CEO's office? Don't tell me you want to. The team three leader glanced at me, seemingly at loss for words, before slapping my back. You're a troublesome guy. Have you become so daring after entering the CEO's office a few times? Is the CEO your friend? No way. He'll keep my mouth shut and simply stand behind you. I said no. He wouldn't budge. The team three leader shook his head and disappeared towards the sixth floor by himself. Of course, it wasn't like I didn't understand him. If I was him, I too would have wondered just where this crazy guy came from. However, even if it was crazy, I had no choice but to do it if it could possibly connect the present to the future I saw. After thinking for a long while, I took out my phone. I found the phone number I had saved previously. It was a phone number that had called me once. It was CEO Beck Hansung's personal number. CEO Beck Hansung gazed at the synopsis on his desk with a strange look. It was the early synopsis of Cat Guardian Ghost. Does this look like a drama that will be successful? At his question, the director who had been drinking black tea on the sofa shook his head. Just looking at the synopsis, it looks like a project from a newly founded production company. Well, if the script and the characters weren't okay, I couldn't have even suggested Jijun do it at all. Also, to be honest, I thought that their target ratings would be 5% after reading the script. Just what did he see in this? CEO Beck Hansung mumbled with interest. Just then, accompanied by a knock, the Team 3 leader entered the CEO's office. CEO, the staff meeting regarding Neptune's next album title track has ended just now. Hmm, okay. There was a lot of talk about what sort of strategy we should take with Simon Lee's song and Lee Tehi's song, but the opinion that we go with Simon Lee's song as the title track this time was. What was Young Sun Woo's opinion? CEO Beck Hansung abruptly asked. The Team 3 leader blinked. After tapping his desk a few times with his fingers, CEO Beck Hansung asked once more. Young Sun Woo. I'm curious what he chose. Chapter 72. If someone was to ask me, when were you the craziest? I could reply in a heartbeat. Right now. I was thinking about calling CEO Beck Hansung as soon as the Team 3 leader finished talking and left his office. I wanted to do whatever I could. When I resolved myself and tightly held my phone, my phone in my hand vibrated. It was the Team 3 leader. As soon as I answered the phone, he abruptly said. You, come up to the CEO's office immediately. This was my fourth time entering the CEO's office. However, I was the most nervous this time. I felt like I was on tenterhooks. The blinds were closed inside the office, making the shadows come down heavily. Although the Team 3 leader and the director were present, my gaze was fixed on CEO Beck Hansung. I felt this every time I saw him, but he was difficult to talk to. I felt this even though he wasn't hostile or overbearing. I had never been told I was timid wherever I went, but when my eyes met with his, I felt like my energy was being sucked out of me. No, it felt like it was being crushed. After greeting them and sitting next to the Team 3 leader, CEO Beck Hansung said. This is the first time we've talked since the phone call last time, right? Ah, uh, yes. My cheeks burned. The Team 3 leader was giving me a strange look from the side. His face seemed to ask if I had talked with the CEO on the phone. You guessed well that time. CEO Beck Hansung said with an odd smile. The director added. Yeah, you really did choose well. Although Mermaid Out of Water is sweeping through the drama charts in China right now, Cat Guardian Ghost is slowly crawling its way up, spreading through word of mouth. The director gave me a few more pieces of information while drinking tea. They were all good news. They really were great news, but while I nodded my head and reacted to his words, a different thought kept making its way in my mind. 
Just as I glanced at CEO Beck Hansung to look for an opportunity, he suddenly went straight to the point. I heard you wanted to go for double title tracks for Neptune's next album. He stared at me and asked again. I heard you passionately pushed the song a member made. Why? That was because it was a song that was almost guaranteed success. There was no way I could say that. I brought out what I had prepared to persuade the Team 3 leader again. When I looked at CEO Beck Hansung when I finished talking, he was still looking at me. However, his expression was different. He had previously been smiling pleasantly, but now, he was calm. As if he found this boring. Since his appearance was completely different from when he was smiling, my shoulders and waist unwittingly stiffened. He tilted his head. Hmm. And? What do you mean and? When I had already told you everything I could. Any other reason? I understand what you mean, but that's something anyone can say. I somehow feel like you have another reason why you are pushing that song. Am I wrong? A chill went down the back of my neck. CEO Beck Hansung leaned forward. His eyes were still fixated on me, seemingly observing me. It felt as though he was reading my mind. I swallowed dryly. I myself wanted to know what this person was thinking. Don't tell me he truly thinks I have some supernatural ability. Of course, I had acted suspiciously a few times, but they were acts that could be glossed over with having good luck, senses, or a discerning eye. Even the employees who had looked for me previously had come with the thought of simply asking since they were curious. To them, it was like going to a 3000 one tarot stall on the streets. Although I wasn't sure what the other reason CEO Beck Hansung was thinking of was, I would never tell him the truth. It would be a problem if he believed me and a problem if he didn't. There are no other reasons besides the reasons I've told you. There aren't any. Yes. There aren't. Damn it. If my persuasion didn't work, should I bring up the option I had due to the Sun Chai Young incident last time again? Then that's fine. Let's go with double title tracks for this album. It felt like a taut string had suddenly become loose. My mind, which had been churning furiously, became blank as my head jolted up. What was this? It wasn't only me who was surprised, even the Team 3 leader, who had been looking at me as though I was a child walking on thin ice, widened his eyes. The director was also taken aback. The only one who kept his composure was CEO Beck Hansung. With a serious voice, he said. He'll trust you once more. Kim Hyunjo and the traitor seemed to be at loss for words. After opening and closing his mouth a few times, Kim Hyunjo finally spoke. He'll trust you. The CEO said that. That's what I'm saying. The Team 3 leader said, astonished, as he looked at me. Lucky Charm here casually said everything he wanted to say in front of the CEO and the director. Now, really, I don't know where he got his confidence from but he didn't look even a bit nervous. It was completely nerve-wracking though. Hyunjo, are kids these days all like him? The spirit of the rookie, or something like that? He's just crazy. I only got to look around the sixth floor after working for over a year. Gun Young, have you talked with the CEO before? No. Yeah, this is normal. I secretly calmed my heart amidst their heated looks. To be honest, CEO Beck Hansung's face still lingered in my head. His voice that simply said to go with double title tracks. I had spent all night agonizing over it, and even when I stuck next to the Team 3 leader to try and persuade him, I was still pulling my hair as things weren't going my way, yet it all reversed with CEO Beck Hansung's words. When would I be able to climb up to that level? Just when? When I looked up, the top looked distant, but I was relieved right now. It felt like something that had been heavily bearing down on me had dropped since, in the end, the train, that had broken away from the rails and had been rushing into a fog, had now returned to its original path. A smile of relief hung on my lips. Don't smile, you crazy guy. With a dumbfounded expression, Kim Hyunjo shook his head. The Team 3 leader said. Lucky charm, you should directly tell Taehee the news since this is the same as you grabbing what shouldn't have happened by the collar and lifting it up. Yes, understood. Hey, but how? 
the Team 3 leader scratched the back of his disheveled hair before cautiously saying. How can you push for such things so confidently? What are you going to do if it fails? Then he screwed. Kim Hyunjo said while gesturing a sword striking his neck with his hand before patting my shoulder. Well, if you get fired, it'll introduce you to other companies. Since you now have three months of experience, you should be able to get a job. He was being serious. 100% serious. Shaking his head side to side, Kim Hyunjo left with the Team 3 leader. Now only the traitor and I remained. Hey. The traitor said. Do you have something with Taehee? Just what nonsense was this now? It looked like you would focus on the acting side, and I thought that the production of their album was beyond pretty much outside your, sorry. He grimaced slightly before correcting himself. You didn't look like you were interested in it. Instead, this was my area of interest. That's why I can't understand why you are pushing so hard at all. Like the team leader said, all the contributions you accumulated until now might fade if this fails. Well, that's why I thought there might be something up with you and Taehee. What would there be? Taehee's song was good, and that's why I felt it was a waste to miss this opportunity. If it's like this, is there something between you and Simon Lee? No way there is. At my joking words, the trader smiled as he shook his head. I felt this when I talked with him before, but it seemed like he was confident Simon Lee's song would be a hit. Which was why he wanted to push for an exclusive title track. But why did he push for Taehee's song in the future? Was it because he secretly liked her song better? Or maybe he felt unpleasant that this song was in my hands? If it's like this, then it's like we brought a song each. I guess. Although what's important is for any of the two songs to do well and make this album a success, still, do you want to make a small bet since things turned out this way? To others, this might seem like a normal conversation. However, I could see it with my eyes. The bridge that connected the two of us was splitting apart and collapsing. It looked like it would break apart any moment. I readily nodded my head. A bet seems nice. That night, I told Lee Taehee the news in front of her residence door. Lee Taehee was at loss for words for a while then showed off a perplexed expression that I was seeing for the first time. Since she asked a few more times, seemingly in disbelief, I too answered her slowly every time. Title She tried her best to control her expression before glancing towards the living room. The other girls were looking in our direction as if they were dying to hear what we were talking about. The only one who was calm was Lee Sangha or so I thought, but only her body was still while her head and neck gradually leaned closer towards us like the leaning tower of Pisa. One second. Lee Taehee came out and closed the door. When she shut the door, it looked like there were earthquakes going off in Lee Songha's eyes. It's really a title track. Yeah, there'll be double title tracks. You're going to be busier now that you have to record and mix. Oh my god. Li Tae covered her face with one hand. What would that do when your ears were red and your lips were wriggling beneath your hand? Although I expected her to be happy, her reaction was bigger than I had thought. Ha! <laughs> it was worth going around like a crazy person. Calming her excitement after a few minutes, Li Tae said. Thank you for constantly taking care of me. From now on, Illinois. No need to thank me. Practice hard like a dog. No, don't do that. You already had more than enough practice time. Was she thinking of performing their comeback on and for? Anyways, tell the girls as well. I said while glancing at my wristwatch when Lee Taehee suddenly held on to me. Have a beer before you go. There are still a few left from what you bought last time. Huh. There are only you girls and without the chief or gun young, that's a bit. ITLL be a secret. Lee Taehee made a zipping her lips gesture. I thought about it while my arm was being held onto. First, I had stayed up all night yesterday. As I used up a lot of my mental energy today due to various reasons, my shoulders felt stiff. There also was a schedule I had to take Lee Sangha to early tomorrow. My reasoning told me to stop thinking about drinking and to go home and sleep, yet my body simply nodded its head and entered their residence. After that, well. 
After drinking and toasting with the girls until early morning, I took a short nap in the van parked in front of their residence. Then, for the first time in my life, I had sleep paralysis. I realized the reason why when I woke up. There was something heavy on top of me. The thick parka Lee Sangha wore on every film set, a microfiber blanket, as well as another blanket, covered me in three layers. It looked like someone put them on me so that I didn't freeze to death, but I was lucky I didn't die of suffocation. Either way, we all agreed to keep this a secret from Kim Hyunjo. If he knew, had eliminate me. Once the title tracks were determined, the album production sped up. When audio recording was added to the already busy schedule of Next K-Star and Cat Guardian ghost film shoots, each passing day felt like an hour. However, even though my body was exhausted, I could endure it since my efforts weren't for naught. Looking at the progress of our ratings, it's only a matter of time before it reaches 10%. Chief Lee Bun Jun said while yawning. Infected, I too yawned as I replied. Looks like it. The PR team is already preparing our viewership ratings pledge. The third episode, which aired two days ago, and the fourth consecutively beat our previous peak ratings. Those involved were focused on how much higher it would go beyond 10%. Food Trucks, Presents, and Food continuously arrived on film sets. Because of them, the Cat Guardian Ghost team was always in a festive mood. They both are sleeping well. Poor things. Chief Lee Bun Jun clicked his tongue as he looked to his side. With earphones on, Seo Ji Jun had buried himself on the sofa and was sleeping. Of course, Lee Sangha was nodding off next to me while holding on to my coat. I didn't know what kind of dream she was having, but she tightly held on to my coat. Since the film shoot started early in the morning and ended at night, I wanted to head straight home and lie down on my bed but we still had a schedule left. Apparently, they were producing a short video of New Year's greetings from WU celebrities. This was why we had come back to work and were waiting for the film crew in a break room. Although Neptune had already done it, they scheduled an additional one for Sangha to air on PBS. Well, this meant that Neptune wasn't at the level of giving New Year's greetings on public networks yet. To be honest, it was only possible for Lee Sangha to make a greeting alongside Seo Jijun because their currently airing drama was trending right now. She was still considered a rookie. Right, are there any commercial offers coming in for Sangha? Although it's not certain yet, we are in the talks with some. I was already awaiting it. Once things were confirmed, it would probably be Lee Sangha's first commercial. I heard that there were a ton of offers for Jijun. I heard that he was almost sweeping them up. I felt that, once Cat Guardian Ghost ended, would see Seo Jijun's face all the time on TV for a while. Since this role suited him like well-fitted clothes, his acting spectrum and fandom had increased drastically. When he heard me, Seo Jijun opened one eye. To be honest, I wanted to repay you somehow since this was all due to you. Ill repay with my body. Do you need me for anything? When a terrifyingly good-looking person said so in such a polite manner, it was even more spine-chilling. Do I need him for anything? While I thinking, Seo Jijun asked again. What about the program that Neptune's on, next K-Star or something? I heard I received a casting call from them, should I go on there? So who can be happy? It's good if you don't associate with that program. When I replied seriously, Chief Lee Bang Jun, who knew my situation, giggled. After the event last time, producer Go Jundi's acts of using Lee Sangha as kindling for ratings had stopped. What a detestable man. He stuck next to me and tried to persuade me during every recording session, but I kept dragging it on. We're still discussing it, he's thinking about it, in trying to persuade him. I kept talking in circles. This was what I learned the most while working. In any case, every time I saw producer Go Junti suppressing his temper, I felt refreshed. Should I say he became somewhat of an energy drink for me? Recently, I began happily thinking about the best way to tell him that I tried to persuade him but that it didn't work out in the end so that he would burst into a fit of rage. But to add Seo Jijun in there? Never. Then next time. He'll repay you. Just as Seo Jijun said this while shrugging his shoulders, the break room door opened. I shook Lee Sangha awake thinking it was the film crew, 
but the people who entered were those who I didn't want to associate with as much as producer Go Junti. The crazy of this region, plus one. Sun Chai Young and Chief Zhou. What the? As soon as she saw us, Sun Chai Young glared at us. Her gaze seemed to stab at Seo Jijun, Li Songa, and me. It felt like the time she glared at me was especially long. Li Songa, absent minded since she had just awoken, fumbled around before grabbing the gummy bears she had been eating before. If Sun Chai Young charged at us again, it seemed she would throw the jellies at least. Of course, I had no thoughts on stopping her. She needed to grow up strong. I'm going crazy. Appa, how did you set my schedule? While throwing a fit at Chief Joe, Sun Chai Young clenched the paper in her hand. No matter how you looked at it, it was a short 1-2 page script. Last week, Mermaid Out of Water's rating had continuously shot up until their third episode. They maintained their ratings on their fourth. Perhaps it was because of this, but Sun Chai Young's complexion was lively like a poisonous flower in full bloom even though she had been suffering from the short, rewritten scripts. Her temper was lively as well. Don't you know that I can't do anything if something's bothering me? Yeah, Chai Young. Since the drama filming schedules have been all over the place, things might have we can go as soon as you do a 30-second greeting. I have to spend all night memorizing the script after this, but do you think you'll be able to like this? When the top three people I consider eyesores are gathered in front of me? Who was first? I seem to be sleep-deprived since that was what I was curious about in this situation. Who's first? Instead, it was Seo Jijun who asked while shaking one of his crossed legs up and down. Sun Chai Young snorted. Why? Do you want to be first? If it's a ranking of people who you consider an eyesore, then, of course, I want to be first. After a few exchanges, they began to bicker more severely. I did hear that they didn't have a good relationship. Well, I did wonder who else would be on friendly terms with Sun Chai Young besides teacher Shim Kyung Taek. While the two fought each other, Chief Lee Ban Jun didn't seem to have any thoughts on stopping them. Chief Zhou looked pitiful, nervously trying to stop them by himself. I remained a spectator, and Lee Sangha snacked on jellies instead of popcorn as she watched. Chai Young. Chai Young. The broadcast, your drama began airing. What? When? Just then, Chief Zhou was successful in gaining Sun Chai Young's attention. Since it was 10.15 p.m. right now, the fifth episode of Mermaid Out of Water started 15 minutes ago. It seemed she had forgotten her bickering with Seo Jijun as Sun Chai Young grumbled about how he didn't tell her sooner. Then she sat on the sofa in front of us, crossing her legs. Put the episode on your phone. Uh, one second. Chief Joe tapped his phone with his thick fingers. During this time, Sun Chai Young raised her chin as she looked at us. Her eyes narrowed and her lips curved upwards in a slant. It was a familiar expression. Ah, it was the expression the quadruplets would make when they wanted to brag about something. Damn it, how could I have recalled the quadruplets while looking at Sun Chai Young? I don't know if you guys saw the progress of my drama's ratings. Sun Chai Young said in a passing tone. I didn't. I didn't see it. Why would I watch that? I'm already busy checking mine. Me too. Seo Jijun and Lee Sangha replied one after each other. Who asked you? I didn't check your ratings either. Snorting, Sun Chai Young asked again. Did you see it? At me. Why was this woman acting like this towards me since last time? For some reason, I thought that the first on her ranking of eyesores was me. It was the same for me as well. Although I was checking Mermaid out of water's ratings every time, I acted as though I didn't and shook my head. Chief Joe mouthed that I reply that I saw it, but I didn't see him. I didn't. I didn't see it either. I thought she would shout like last time, but she was unexpectedly calm. Instead, Sun Chai Young even crossed her arms and smiled. Well, not looking at it will be good for your mental health. When the difference is so large, you'd only feel sad if you saw it. Since we reached 15% in metropolitan areas in four episodes, we'll definitely hit 20% at this rate. There's already more than 5% difference from the cat or rat thing so it's obvious what will happen in the future. 
Then she started talking for a long while about things we never asked like how the times when 10% on cable being equal to multiple times that of public networks had passed. That there weren't any TVs not connected to cable these days, and that we had to consider cable and public networks on the same level. But you said that you didn't know Cat Guardian Ghost's ratings. I made a dumbfounded expression, and as if just remembering, Sun Chai Young swiftly turned to Chief Joe. Appa, what are you doing? Aren't you going to give it to me? No, um, Chai Young. Let's watch this after we film your greeting. Chief Joe, who had been looking at his phone, stuttered. Why? Since we were hastily filming the adjusted parts, I didn't have time to properly monitor it on set. I have to check it. Uh, but I think ITLL be good if you watched it from start to finish after this episode airs. That's why I'm asking, why? Is there a problem? Was my scene cut out? No, that's not it. The viewers' reactions right now are a bit. Chief Joss' face was pale as if he was watching a horror movie. As if trying to not show his phone to Sun Chai Young at all costs, he slowly backed away. Ah, I had a strong intuition. Finally. Mermaid out of water finally slipped up. Chapter, 73. Was it time to turn on the music? Was it? I took out my phone and searched Mermaid out of water. Lee Sangha leaned her still drowsy face in to see as well. Comments regarding Mermaid out of water were pouring onto portal sites, social media, and fan sites for the drama. Due to the fans of the original work, the drama had been quite a hot topic until now, but it had never been this heated before. And only 15 minutes into the broadcast to boot. It was clear that today's broadcast really rubbed their viewers the wrong way when looking the occasional comments asking if the writer had gone crazy or if the director had lost his mind. Seo Jijun, whose head was next to Chief Lee Bang Jun's as he looked at his phone, ridiculed. Hey, you kept going on and on about real-time search rankings, but it looks like your drama will reach the rankings before the broadcast ends. Sun Chai Young frowned. Appa, phone. Never mind, I don't need it. Where did I put my phone? When Chief Joe hesitated, Sun Chai Young looked through her coat pockets and purse. Then she found her phone, which had a photo from her photo shoot printed on its case. Chief Joe was so antsy that it seemed as though Sun Chai Young was holding on a bomb rather than her phone as he looked around. Just what happened? She mumbled as she tapped her fingers before closing her mouth at some point. Her eyes widened and her gaze fixated on her screen. What is this? What happened for people to cause such a mess like this? First first, Il called the director. After we check the broadcast. I need to see just how he pasted things together for people to be like this. After flipping out at him, Sun Chai Young stopped. With irritated eyes, she gave us a sideward glance. Soon Sun Chai Young stretched her hand out to Chief Joe. Give me your earphones. Chai Young, calm do. Give me your earphones. This was it. It was about time she burst. Unable to endure her scream which pierced his eardrums, Chief Joe gave her his earphones as if offering them up to her. After plugging the earphones in her ears, Sun Chai Young focused on her phone screen. I thought about watching it on DMB1 but decided not to. I felt that watching Sun Chai Young would be more fun than the actual broadcast. Her face, which had been lively just moments ago, now looked terrible. On the other hand, I felt like fresh sprouts had budded and were tap dancing in my heart. Ah, what a wonderfully refreshing feeling. Mermaid out of water's fall would gain momentum like a fast-flowing stream. Although it was sad for those involved in mermaid out of water, I was extremely excited. I was as excited as I would be on the day a blockbuster sequel I had waited two years for finally opened in theaters. It seemed my feelings toward Sun Chai Young ran quite deep. Well, I had been suppressing them since the day I heard Sun Chai Young mock me by saying, so, until then, don't piss someone off with something like this. It seems you don't know because it hasn't been long since you've started working, but this industry is always like this, to my face. Curious about how Lee Sangha, the victim, was handling this, I looked to my side. She was simply eating her jellies with a calm expression. Those who didn't know her might admire her, thinking that she maintained a cool head in this situation, 
but she was different from usual. She was eating especially happily. Is it tasty? Yes. It's yummy. She whispered after decimating the five gummy bears she popped in her mouth. Then she placed a few in my hand as well. While happily eating jellies, I watched Sun Chai Young's distorted face gradually become more dreadful. What the? To suddenly ah, what was the director thinking? Chai Young, please calm. Calm down. Do I look like I can calm down? When he pasted the scenes that I was barely able to act with the scraps of 1-2 page scripts like this? If he was going to be like this, then why bother refilming? Ah, I had to share this happiness. I wanted to show her face to Neptune, Kim Hyunjo, and the Team 3 leader, but what a shame. If I took a recording, it probably wouldn't end with a slap on my cheek, right? Did the break room not have any security cameras? I looked up at the ceiling when there was a knock on the door. Hello. A man wearing a baseball cap backwards entered the room. Behind him came other staff members holding a heavy ENG camera and lighting equipment. It was a film crew from PBS. Their timing was amazing. The producer was quick to read the mood. It seemed he had immediately realized that the mood in the break room was unusual. He quickly took off his hat and bowed his head. Ah, I'm sorry that we were late after asking such busy people to gather. He said, gently making excuses about how the traffic was slow and such. It seemed like he had mistakenly believed that the frightening mood was because the film crew was late. Since he acted so humble, perhaps because of Seo Jijun and Sun Chai Young's value, Chief Lee Bang Jun got off his heavy butt and settled the mood. During this time, the raging sense of a calm before the storm subsided. Seo Jijun, who had been snickering while looking at his phone, and even Sun Chai Young, who cursed the director so much that it seemed she would stab a stake into a voodoo doll, had, at some point, put on calm facades. Of the three, the only one who was showing her true face was Lee Sangha. After sharing light greetings and finishing preparations for the shoot, the producer said in an amiable tone. Well film a sketch for the beginning before the greetings. You just need to talk to each other naturally like normal. There won't be any audio recorded. Like normal, talk to each other naturally. Then it would 100% be unsuitable for TV. Would it be fine since they weren't recording audio? I glanced at Chief Lee Bang Jun, and he told me not to worry and yawned. Sun Chai Young was the first to talk calmly. You know the saying take a step back to take two steps forward. It's like that. She looked at both Lee Sangha and Seo Jijun before continuing. There's no need to worry since the director and writer are both trustworthy people. They'll quickly get back on track. There's no need to suddenly become sad. It was you who had been sad just a moment ago. I looked at Sun Chai Young, astonished. The Sun Chai Young I knew before I began to work here was sitting there. The symbol of innocence. There was a smile on her lips, and her gentle voice put narrators to shame. I almost wondered whether this woman was the same person who had been cursing the director with ignited eyes not long ago. Sun Chai Young brushed her long hair aside and added. This is pretty common in the drama industry. Yeah, I hope there isn't an impact to your ratings. Seo Jijun said, smiling. It wasn't the ridiculing smile from before but one that felt sincere. I was inadvertently amazed. If I were to translate it, I felt that it would be something like since this is normal, don't try to get on my nerves by talking nonsense, did I say anything? But do you think you'll be able to even maintain your current ratings, let alone hit 20%? From the outside, it looked like small talk between fellow celebrities living under the same roof. Luckily, Seo Jijun brought up the topic of drama shoots with Lee Sangha so she was able to naturally mix in with their conversation. The scene reflected through the camera was frighteningly friendly. See, there's no need to worry, right? Chief Lee Bang Jun snickered as he poked my side. Of course, the two of them are pros. I'm worried about Sangha. I don't think she's very good acting coy like that. She didn't express her emotions or talk much, and there were many times when she spoke bluntly. I didn't know whether she could mix in with them like that, especially with someone like Sun Chai Young. Also, the other girls wouldn't be able to help her when she was out on her personal schedule. 
I didn't know if I was worrying needlessly, but I was worried. After letting out a sigh, Chief Lee Bun Jun mumbled from the side. I don't know about that. I think she has a knack for it when looking at how she acts towards you. Towards me? Well, to me, it doesn't look like you should be worried. After making speculations, he said that he wanted coffee from the vending machine since he was so tired and left. Chief Joe had already left, saying that he was going to call the director of Mermaid out of water, so I was the only manager remaining. I watched the shoot with my arms crossed, but someone came up next to me and whispered. The celebrities of WU are very close with one another. I turned around to see who was speaking such nonsense, and it was a young man. The man, who introduced himself as the floor director, prattled on again. Maybe it's because it's a large management company or maybe it's because of the family-like atmosphere, but it seems like WU only has nice people. We filmed an interview with Mr. Sung Dowan yesterday, and, man, he really was a great guy. Ha ha ha. It was the funniest thing I heard recently. Only have nice people. Great guy. This place was an abode of demons under the guise of showbiz. If, one day, everyone stopped their charade and there was a free-for-all competition between management companies, there probably wouldn't be anyone who could match the fighting power of this place. We were set to bring home the gold. After I swallowed down the words that were slowly creeping up inside me and laughed, the floor director carefully asked for a favor. He asked if I could get a few autographs from those three after they were done. He said those pleasant words for this. When I told him I would ask them about it, he was happy as if he was on top of the world. Once they were done filming the sketch, they stood side by side and said their New Year's greetings. Afterwards, the producer asked a few simple questions as well. While I was watching this idly, my ears perked when it was Sun Chai Young's turn. Now, what kind of junior is M.S.? Lee Sangha to M.S. Sun Chai Young. What did you say? A crack appeared on her facade. Seo Jijun, who sat next to her, cleared his throat as he covered his mouth. His eyes were laughing. I suppressed the laughter that was trying to escape and quickly took out my phone. I had to film this. I had to. Since everyone would think I was taking this for monitoring purposes, I filmed it openly. Chief Lee Bun Jun, who was sipping his coffee beside me, snickered as he requested I send him the video as well. So, what kind of junior is MS? Lee Songa too. No, I was pretty sure that it wasn't that she didn't hear but that she didn't want to hear it. Sun Chai Young slowly closed and reopened her eyes. She probably was swearing a ton inwardly. Her irritation had probably reached its peak right now since Mermaid Out of Water slipped up, but as she couldn't swear in front of the camera, I was very, very curious about what she would say. Below the camera, which was filming her upper body, Sun Chai Young's hands tightly gripped the sofa covers. How pissed was she that her veins on the back of her hands bulged? M.S. Lee Sangha is really. After pausing for a while, Sun Chai Young said slowly. Good at acting and kind-hearted. A deep breath later, she finally let it out. She's a very dear junior to me. After the film crew left, Sun Chai Young glared at Lee Sangha with outraged eyes as she shouted that the comment she made was out of courtesy for the viewers before kicking a guiltless table and disappearing. She had yet to fully develop into a proper human. 2. I sent the video to Chief Lee Bun Jun and also uploaded it to the group chat with Neptune members, Kim Hyunjo, and others. As everyone held a big grudge against her because of the acting teacher incident, it was obvious the group chat would explode. Like Seo Jijun said, Mermaid Out of Water was ranked on the real-time search rankings. Also, its ratings, which had been on a roll, staggered. After being pressured to make changes, the writer made changes with an unwilling heart, and these 1-2 page scripts. Which turned their filming schedule into a mess, as well as hasty editing became the problem, veering the story into a mountain 3. The bigger problem was that this mountain was a burial ground. Although they could climb up when they wanted to, it was impossible to come down from it. Sadly, I didn't personally encounter Sun Chai Young afterwards. Only, I heard that she was bothering the PR team. Something about how they needed to manipulate the media more in times like this. 
To be honest, the opinion that they could come back from this after readjusting was still predominant at this time. Well, since it was still the beginning. However, the situation didn't get better. The mentality of the writer faltered, and the vicious cycle of countless people, such as the swarms of the original work fans. The broadcasting company, the production company, the directing team, and sponsors, noisily asserting their opinions on this and that repeated itself. Since the situation turned out this way, it would be no use if they published a ton of promotional articles. Eventually, the next week, Mermaid Out of Water's ratings, which had a goal of reaching 20%, fell drastically. Also, Cat Guardian Ghost's ratings exceeded 10%. From the net dressing room hallway to the recording set, which would only take me two minutes to walk normally. It took me ten minutes to arrive since next K-Star staff members and broadcasting staff whom I had met previously kept holding me up as they passed by. Everyone was clamoring to congratulate me. As Cat Guardian Ghost had already placed its name on the record of successful cable dramas, I had already received an overabundant amount of congratulations. But after its ratings exceeded 10%, their reactions were incomparably more intense than before. This was because we were now actually beginning to exceed public network drama ratings. Our ratings were still on the rise, and entertainment reporters and critics who didn't have any expectations of the drama and had expected the drama to go down as a flop in history due to the scandals, said it was a reversal in the special articles they wrote. There were also articles comparing it to Mermaid Out of Water, which it started off as the most anticipated project but ended up staggering. People were making a commotion all around me for various reasons. Should I say it felt like water filling a dam to its brim? What would happen if that dam burst, just imagining it was too much for me? Mr. Sun Wu. Someone called for me. When I turned around, I saw producer Go Junti's sly face. I heard that your drama's ratings exceeded 10%. When I replied while smiling, producer Go Junti smacked his lips. Wow, your ratings are going up like a public network's. If MS. Song has drama continues like this and next K-Star just passes 8% and ends successfully, then Neptune is really raking it in early this year. Isn't that, right? That's true. I said with a still smiling face. So. Producer Go Junti looked around as if checking his surroundings. With a heart as broad as an ocean, I waited for him to get to the point. Just then, Producer Go Junti asked. Before other programs can snatch him, I would like to confirm Mr. Seo Jijun's appearance on the show and film him and MS. Sangha together on the last episode do you have any good news? Chapter, 74 No, I don't have any. I tried to persuade Chief Lee Bang Jun every time we film, but it seems it will be difficult to take time away from his schedule as it is currently an important time for Cat Guardian Ghost. I said with an embarrassed expression. Producer Go Junti frowned. It wasn't just because I wanted to screw him over, although that did take up a significant portion. Either way, this was the decision I had came to after discussing it with team leader Park and Kim Hyunjo. If Seo Jijun appearing on Next K-Star was a big opportunity for Neptune, I would have asked producer Go Junti first despite his hateful personality. If I asked him whether Seo Jijun should come on the show or not, he would have immediately taken hold of this chance. Since business was business. However, there wasn't really a need to. Neptune had gained more popularity than expected due to Lee Sangha and also obtained the valuable public image as a talented girl group. Now was the time to solidify this image with a great performance. However, if we cast Seo Jijun to appear on the final episode concert where a bunch of spectators were gathered, Neptune might end up being pushed to the side. It could also look like they were using their company connections because they weren't confident in their performance. Either way, it wouldn't help in their talented girl group image. Also, exceeding 8% in ratings. Of course, it would be good if that happened, but even if it didn't, Next K-Star was already a successful program since it kept constant at 6-7% ratings. If they were going to appear with Seo Jijun, it would be better to appear on a different program. After letting out a sigh, I ended by saying. I'm frustrated too. No, it's not like you guys are strangers. Is this really that hard for them to do when you guys work in the same company? 
Although he tried to sloppily act friendly since it was them who weren't going along with it, like how a leopard couldn't change its spots, his eyes gradually began to show his irritation. I said once more. I'm not at the level where I can make Mr. Seo Jijun act. He'll try to persuade them until the last episode, but looking at how things are going, I think ITLL be difficult. Ah, uh, I can't have this fall through. Rumors that I got Seo Jijun already reached the director. That was your problem. I did hear about it. There were rumors about it spreading amongst the staff. That, while everyone was making a fuss trying to cast Seo Jijun, producer Go Junti might be able to. Something about how, because of this, producer Go Junti went around with his chin up, receiving the envy of other producers. It seemed this rumor had even reached the director. Producer Go Junti pulled his hair. It looked like he was about to shake my neck and shout, Bring him. Bring him without fail. It was exhilarating. That was why I told you not to get your hopes up too high. I tried my best to hide my inner thoughts. The show hadn't ended yet so nothing good would come out of us holding grudges against each other. Although I didn't know whether Lee Sangha would be used as kindling for ratings if Seo Jijun wasn't cast. Since there were calls hoping to cast both Seo Jijun and Lee Sangha from NET's entertainment department, he probably couldn't straight up mess with her like he did when she was unknown. The devil's editing process, maybe it was because we were now experienced with it, but it was endurable. Also, the mood and opinions had been slowly changing as well. At some point, the number of people cursing producer Go Junti equaled the number of people cursing Lee Sangha. Producer Go Junti licked his dry lips and asked. If Mr. Sun Wu's words don't work, could MS. Lee Sangha asked him. Sangha. If MS. Sangha asks, I think Mr. Seo Jijun will consider it more seriously. Why it looked like MS. Sangha obediently followed your words so could you ask her to. What? Obediently? Did he think she was some pet? I stared at him, dumbfounded, when producer Go Junti nimbly placed his arm on my shoulder. It's a bit weird if I were to ask her personally. It looks like MS. Sangha is uncomfortable around me. Whatever the method, what's important is that both parties win, but women are a bit more emotional than businesslike. Like hell both parties win. Whether Lee Sangha was bashed or not, all you cared about were the ratings. When I took in a deep breath as it was getting hard for me to maintain a straight face, a familiar voice cut in. Lee Sangha came around a corner and approached us. Perhaps it was because of her stage outfit but her every step exploded with energy. Just looking at her spirit, one might think she was a girl protecting Earth rather than going up on stage. Ah, M.S. Sangha. Since Appa asked Chief Lee about casting Seo Jijun, I asked him about it, but he said he couldn't because he was too busy. How surprising. Her voice was calm as if she was following a drama script. Producer Go Junti asked with an urgent voice. Mr. Seo Jijun said that. That he couldn't straightforwardly. Yes. He's the busiest since he's the lead. I got scolded at because I brought it up. Do do you really not want to ask him again? Lee Sangha let out a sigh. Oh my god. When I saw her between Seo Jijun and Sun Chai Young, I had worried whether she would be able to survive in such a jungle but Chief Lee Bangjun was right. I was worried for nothing. It was a weird feeling. Should I say it felt like seeing a tadpole, which I thought had only just been born, already have its hind legs? I was proud of her. I exchanged a glance with Lee Sangha before looking at producer Go Junti. I did whatever I could to try to make this happen, but it's sad that it fell through. It seemed my words were like a death sentence as producer Go Junti's complexion became dark. Though I wanted to throw buckets of on his face, I was still greatly satisfied with throwing him what seemed to be a piece of poop at him at least. Producer Go Junti's mouth opened and closed a few times before his expression sank. He was probably daunted by what he should tell the director. I said my farewell to producer Go Junti, whose head was lowered, and left with Lee Sangha. Only after we went around the corner did I grin. Lee Sangha glanced at me from the side while holding onto my sleeve as if out of habit and asked. Are you happy? Of course, I am. I'm completely refreshed. How about you? 
Im happy too. The sleeve her white, slender hand was holding on to shook in a ticklish manner. Then a small smile appeared on her coral-colored lips. Adrenaline swept my body as festive music began to play in my mind. That was because Mermaid Out of Water's ratings fell even more. It was now close to Cat Guardian Ghost's ratings. I heard their film sets were a complete mess. Since the Mermaid Out of Water's original fans were causing a fuss on top of that, once Cat Guardian Ghost aired this week, it seemed the situation between Mermaid Out of Water and Cat Guardian Ghost would reverse. Curious about what kind of face Sun Chai Young made these days, I looked around every time I came to work, but I didn't encounter her once. I only heard that she was causing trouble for Team Leader Park. Either way, it was almost time for what I talked with the CEO about to come true. The thought kept crossing my mind a few times every day recently. Would CEO Beck Hansung really do what I hoped? If that was the case, what kind of price would Sun Chai Young pay? Then, on Friday night, Lee Sangha and I went to the theaters. The theaters, the place where I would find peace. The moment I sniffed the sweet smell of freshly popped popcorn, I realized how little leisure time I had the past few months. Oh my god. There weren't any movies on display that I had watched. On top of that, there were even movies I hadn't even heard of. Before I started working, I came here multiple times a week. Although my heart wanted to watch around four movies consecutively, sadly I didn't come to watch movies today. We came to fulfill our ratings pledge. It was an event the PR team spent a lot of time on, where we would rent out a theater and watch the broadcast with the fans. I pushed the massive door open and entered the theaters. I almost gasped when I saw that all 200 seats were filled. Although the fans had first priority, apparently, when they posted it on social media, hundreds of people wanted to attend. Of course, Seo Jijun must have had a large influence on that. Even at a glance, the seats were overwhelmingly taken up by women. Passing by the chatting fans, I went to the seats in the middle. While it was an exaggeration to say that there was designated press seating, as Cat Guardian Ghost became a hot topic day after day, a few reporters had shown up. They all had a laptop on their laps and were tapping away on their keyboards or checking their cameras. Amidst them, I saw a familiar face. Hello, Reporter Park. Manager. She had large glasses and seemed determined on keeping herself warm by wearing a field jacket, a turtleneck, and a scarf. Even though it had been a long time since we had seen each other, reporter Park Wu Jong waved her hand friendlily as she came up to me. Wow, I almost didn't recognize you. In a few months, your atmosphere is just people who don't know you will think you're a veteran manager instead of a new recruit. All sorts of things happened during this time. You look much more composed as well now. It was really eventful for me too. We really need to have a drink together. That's what I'm saying. Oh, right. Please write a good article today as well. Hey, no need to say that. I always write Neptune and MS. Song has articles as though I'm writing a work of art. Ah, uh, but. Reporter Park Wujong cautiously asked. Did MS. Lee Sangha and Mr. Seo Jijun arrive? Yes. They are prepping in a temporary waiting room. Could I take a picture of them getting ready? It seemed she was embarrassed to ask this as her cheeks reddened. She then glanced at the man looking at us behind her. Seeing as a camera hung around his neck, it seemed he was a photographer. Like how she asked me for an interview last time because her general manager ordered her to, did that person tell her to ask me? Like I thought, she continued in a quiet voice. A rumor that I'm close with you has spread around me so my senior over there told me to at least ask you. If you say that we can't, then he'll back off right away. Hmm, one second. When I called Kim Hyunjo, who was in the waiting room, about it, he unexpectedly said it was okay right away. I guided a dazed yet happy reporter Park Woo Jong and the photographer to the waiting room. As soon as we entered, Lee Sangha came over, already changed into her outfit. Appa, where were you? I was about to go looking for you. Why? You thought I might get lost in the theaters? I was just curious where you were. I met her outside. You remember her, right? Reporter Park Wujong. Lee Sangha greeted her lightly. 
Reporter Park Wujong greeted her back rigidly as though she was a block of wood. Her reaction was still decent. Behind her, the photographer's mouth was opened so widely that I could see his tongue, which I didn't want to see, at a glance. I was already used to reactions like his. It was like experiencing a visual shock. Although it had only been a few months since I had gone around with Lee Sangha, there were times when even I was shocked, especially days like today, where a lot of work went into her hair and makeup. Whether they were a man or a woman, as long as they had eyes, they couldn't help but admire her looks. On top of that, she was wearing a short dress. Perhaps she saw that I was looking at her dress, but Lee Sangha awkwardly held her dress and asked. They say it was sponsored. How is it? It suits you. Well, you'll look pretty even wearing a potato sack. Just what could she look bad wearing? After coming to his senses, the photographer took out his camera. Then he took a few pictures of makeup artists sticking next to Lee Sangha and Seo Jijun and fixing their makeup. While watching this, I suddenly recalled another matter. Right, MS. Park Wu Jong. About what we talked about last time, my interview. Yes, yes. Although I'm a bit late, it seems the PR team said it will be okay. Reporter Park Wujong's eyes widened. Really? But will my interview be article-worthy? I'll do my best to make it so. Ah, uh, after the interview, I'll buy beers as well. How's Monday or Tuesday for you? We have film shoots. Lee Sangha answered instead of me. Even though she was putting on makeup, her gaze was focused on us. Uh, I saw the schedule, and we have film shoots on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. There probably won't be any on Wednesday. They say it's going to snow that day so it's been pushed back. At my words, Lee Sangha tapped her phone and quickly said. ITLL only snow in some regions. It might not at our film shoot location. Damn it. Then the schedule might change again. These drama shoots were hard work, but having to stay tense while waiting for our turn every day was the hardest part since our schedule would change constantly depending on the weather or situations on set. I told reporter Park Wu Jong that I would try to make time when I heard a strange laugh. It was Chief Lee Bun Jun. While Kim Hyunjo looked at me as if I was some crazy person, Chief Lee Bun Jun giggled as his gaze alternated between Lee Sangha and me. It was the same look as before. A somewhat wicked yet exploding with empathy look. An hour before the broadcast. With the guidance of the bodyguards, we entered the theater. I was freaked out when I heard 200 people screaming at once from their seats. There were also camera flashes from photographers on top of that. I was heating up. We first held a simple event for the fans who had been waiting for us. The host gave them a quiz, and Seo Jijun and Lee Sangha gave their autographs and took pictures with those who got questions right. I was worried that they might gather around Seo Jijun too much, but fortunately, there seemed to be a lot of fans of the drama present as there were quite a few who wanted Lee Song his autograph and photo. Seo Jijun skillfully talked with his fans and hugged them, giving them lots of fan service. Lee Sangha glanced at him and followed his actions quite well. I was a few steps away, giving out autograph paper and pens, and even took pictures with my phone in case they were useful later. I took another picture since Lee Sangha was looking towards me, and it seemed she knew I was taking a picture as she was smiling subtly in the picture. Just then, a scrawny man walked out from the center. It seemed to be his turn. His baseball cap was pressed firmly down on his head, but his expression revealed below it was strange. The man's mumbling voice pierced my ears. Wow, damn. So hot. Frowning, I kept my eye on him. It seemed the man requested a hug as Lee Sangha spread her arms slightly. Then, the next moment, the man hugged Lee Sangha. I came close since something felt strange. Although she did give hugs to fans earlier, they were all mannerly and only slightly touched her before backing away quickly. They didn't give her a bare hug as though they were meeting their long-lost family. Since the host's attention was on Seo Jijun, I personally tapped the man's shoulder. Now, now. That's enough. Li Sangha, who had been standing awkwardly and blinking her eyes, revealed a relieved expression when she saw me. I tapped the man's shoulder with more force. 
but he didn't think to stop and instead grinned as his hand slid down her back. I frowned furiously. This idiot, to do this to her, did he want to be arrested? I told you that's enough. Chapter, 75 I grabbed the man's shoulder firmly and pulled him away. After being released from the man's suffocating embrace, Lee Sangha hid behind my back. Her small hands touched my back, and I felt her hands grasping onto my clothes tightly. Are you okay? I asked in a low voice. She nodded. Although she didn't show it, it seemed she was shocked as she stuck against my back and didn't think to move. Well, since the dark-clothed man hugged and touched her, it would be weirder if she wasn't in shock. With a scowl, I glared at the still grinning man. The man's expression had no trace of seriousness. Instead, he licked his lips and closed and opened both his hands, which had slid down Lee Song his back. Were you surprised? Imms. Lee Song his fan. I don't know when I would ever have this chance again. Wow, damn. I won't wash my hands for a few days. Let's talk outside. Although words I wanted to say surged up my throat, there were too many watching eyes, especially reporters. If there was a commotion and provocative words, such as sexual harassment, were tossed into the mix, then it would be the most troublesome for the female celebrity. Which was Lee Sangha, since various imaginations would run wild and leak to the public without a doubt. A bodyguard came up quietly and dragged the man out. Fortunately, aware of the situation here, Seo Jijun and the host directed people's attention their way and Kim Hyunjo went to talk with the reporters. Although those near us were muttered amongst each other, this much would only result in a small incident if uploaded to the internet. Sighing, I looked behind me. Sangha, it's fine now so you can come out. Her voice was faint. I took deep breaths as my insides heated up. Although I had heard instances like this occurred more frequently than expected, after experiencing it personally, I felt my insides boil. I didn't think I could sleep tonight if I didn't swear buckets at that man. I walked in the direction the bodyguard dragged the man towards, but Lee Sangha followed behind me. When I looked around, her hands were still grasping onto the clothing on my back. It seemed she didn't realize it either, as she relaxed her hands and blinked. Then she stared at her own hands. Silence hung in the air for a few seconds. While Lee Sangha was opening and closing her mouth, the chattering host approached her and started a conversation. Then he introduced the next fan who had been waiting for his turn. The event progressed smoothly. I sent a text to Kim Hyunjo, asking him to swear my share at the perverted guy. I couldn't act personally. Every time I moved, Lee Song has eyes followed behind me. Although she acted like she was fine, in my eyes, it looked like she was nervous something like that would happen again. That was why I didn't leave Lee Song has sight until the fan event ended. On one side of the seats. Amongst the fans clamoring to answer the quiz questions the host asked, a few people murmured to each other. It feels like we're losing out on enthusiasm. We look like losers. Seo Jijun's fans are so scary. I can't even answer the quiz questions because I'm so intimidated. They weren't fans of Seo Jijun, who held the absolute majority amongst the fans gathered here today, nor were they fans of the drama, which was the second largest group. They were Neptune fans who had even joined Neptune's official fan cafe. I want to take one picture with Lee Sangha, but it seems that the chances are slim. Let's go ask the manager secretly later. The manager. The manager will let you if you ask him. A man wearing horn-rimmed glasses asked. A woman, who still had baby fat on her round cheeks, nicknamed Sangha eating busily snapped pictures of Lee Sangha on her camera as she said. It depends on who you go to. There are three managers in charge of Neptune, and among them, there are two oppas who are always around them. You can tell just by their faces. One gives you a great impression while the other seems as cold as a chilly breeze. Then we just need to go to the one who gives off a good impression. This time, it was another woman who asked. Sangha eating firmly shook her head. That oppa is strangely uncomfortable to talk to. Instead, you have to target the other appa named Yung Sun Wu. People don't usually approach him because they're scared, but fans who actually talked with him always beg him. He usually does whatever you ask him for. 
he takes pictures and gets you autographs. Yes. He doesn't act in a way that would embarrass us, like be annoyed or ignore us. Ah, but if he says no once, no matter how much you beg, he won't change his mind. There are almost no incidences where he went from no to a yes. He's completely firm. I need to remember his face. Is he out there right now? He's right next to Songa Ha. Songa Eating, who was replying, widened her eyes. She saw a man step onto the stage after answering a question correctly, hug Lee Songa, be pulled away by her manager and then disappear out the door accompanied by a bodyguard. Although this all took place in a few moments, the ones who found something was strange wasn't only her. There were people muttering about how disrespectful the man was and how they envied him. However, rather than the man who had hugged Lee Sangha then disappeared, their focus was on someone else. It seemed she was taken aback by the fan's excessive touchiness as Lee Sangha stuck to her manager's back like a turtle shell. Oh my god. A back hug who is that guy? A staff member? They say he's the manager. What the hell? The fans are gathered, but the one who lucks out is the manager. Look at how close they are. I want to buy his back. People spoke noisily as they took pictures. It was the same for Neptune's fans. Wow, Lee Sangha felt like a celebrity living in a different world from ours, but when she's like that, she seems more normal. It looks like ITLL be a hit heartthrobbing picture. I need to post it on their official page. Someone already posted it on social media. So fast. Sangha Eating looked at her phone and admired. A picture clearly containing the two people, which was no doubt taken just moments ago, was posted on someone's social media. Then it began to spread widely due to the many people who weren't selected to attend the event and had been looking at pictures instead. A man beside her scratched his neck as he said. But her manager is just a normal guy, is it okay to just post his face without blurring it? I also predicted this. Ever since Team Leader Park asked if she could sell my face on TV, I accepted the fact that my face might one day spread on social media and websites. However, I didn't know that that day would come so suddenly. Mom, it's nothing much. You don't need to worry about it. What do you mean it's nothing much? Your aunt told me that a picture of you and a celebrity was even posted on an internet article. The voice on the other side of the call was especially bright. Was this something a parent would be happy of? Well, it was a hundred times better than turning up in the papers under troublesome circumstances, but my face still felt hot. It wasn't only my parents, I had already been buried under the number of calls and messages I received from relatives and friends. Since my phone vibrated ceaselessly due to the group chat I was in with my friends, I turned off the notifications for it. Things were hectic since this morning. Sighing, I picked out snacks for Lee Sangha from the aisles. For some reason, it felt like the convenience store employee was glancing at my face for a while now. It was probably nothing, right? I was probably reading too much into it. On top of that, it wasn't like I was Lee Sangha, there was probably no one who would recognize a manager. I was paying at the counter when I heard my mother's voice mixed with laughter. Your father says he's going to print out that picture and hang it in the living room. What? No, why? He wants to show our relatives when they come over for Lunar New Year's Day. I was about to go crazy. I rubbed my face. Your father kept worrying about you day after day at home even if he didn't tell you, but that at least seems to have stopped. Well, that's good. Are you going to appear on TV? I'm a manager, not a celebrity, mom. Even while saying this, I recalled something. The Lunar New Year's special program that Team Leader Park and Kim Hyunjo told me about. Well, since they didn't say anything about it until now, it probably fell through. Still, you never know. If you're going to appear on TV, you have to let me know in advance, okay? Okay, okay. You've been cast for IBC's special entertainment program. I had been looking at the large snowflakes falling outside when I quickly turned around. Team Leader Park, who had dragged me outside for a coffee, was smiling in front of me. I've been cast. Yup. It seems they looked into you after your picture was posted. They seemed to like you after looking at the comments written by fans who actually met you. 
I looked it up too and your reputation among the fans is quite entertaining. Ah. An interview and now a broadcast, if things go well, you might become a star manager. Be careful you don't catch celebrity sickness one. Huh, that's not funny. Either way, this was worth celebrating since it wasn't just Lee Sangha but all the Neptune members who were going to appear on a public network entertainment program. Especially I'm Seo Young, once she heard this news, she would cry tears of joy. She was someone who had constantly polished her talents too and read General Knowledge Quiz Books 3, which looked completely useless in real life, for the day she would appear on entertainment shows. When I thought about telling them, my heart, which felt like it was swaying in the wind, warmed. Team leader Park patted my shoulder with a smile. Although your face became known earlier than I expected, I think things turned out well. Think what would have happened if Sangha stuck to Jijun's back that time. A scandal might have exploded, and she might be getting tons of insults right now. It's because she stuck to your back, a normal guy, that people are glossing over it by saying it was heartwarming and stuff. That's a relief. I licked my lips and looked back out the window. In this short while, snow began to fall even heavier. Due to the snow being unexpected on the forecast, the white snow piled on the heads and shoulders of people walking in the streets without an umbrella. It was because of this snow that filming for Cat Guardian Ghost had halted. They said that they would schedule it later when the snow stops, but it didn't seem like it would stop today. But did you come out to just tell me that? When I asked while taking a sip of slightly bitter coffee, Team Leader Park frowned. Then she leaned forward towards me. More than that. The coffee franchise we were in was bustling with noise at lunch as though it was a war zone so there wasn't anyone paying attention to our conversation, yet her voice was so low that it felt like it would touch the ground. I felt like it was about time for Sun Chai Young to appear. I opened my eyes wide. Should I go see her? This would have been a crazy thought not too long ago, but now the situation had changed. Since Cat Guardian Ghost, which aired yesterday, beat Mermaid out of water's ratings, her face was probably like a demon's. Is it because of another promotional article? No, because a commercial came in for Sangha. That's why I escaped with you. Don't come to work if you can today. Sun Chai Young's so crazy she might cause a huge fuss at work. What relation is there between Sangha appearing on a commercial and Sun Chai Young? She wasn't going to make a fuss just because she didn't want Lee Sangha to appear on a commercial, right? Even though I thought this, I thought that, if it was Sun Chai Young, it was plausible since she was a woman who exceeded my imagination. However, Team Leader Park's words were different from my expectations. The commercial for Sangha used to be Sun Chai Young's. Sun Chai Young entered the empty CEO's office by herself. Unlike Team Leader Park's predictions, she didn't seem mad nor was she causing a fuss. However, her chilly eyes, which were so cold they seemed frozen, looked like the calm before a storm. It wouldn't seem unusual if she exploded in rage at any moment. She glared at her phone. There was one picture on its screen. The man whose back was turned to the camera looked cold no matter who looked at him, but his eyes were filled with worry. The woman, Lee Sangha, held on to his back and stuck close to him. Her eyes contained trust as they looked at him. Click. The office door opened. CEO Beck Hansung entered while taking off his coat. I heard some absurd news so I came to ask you personally. Hmm. Say it. As he sat on his chair, CEO Beck Hansung nodded his head. Is it true the Chinese commercial went to Lee Sangha? It is. CEO. I added her in since they wanted to switch you out. Sun Chai Young bit her lips at the CEO's calm reply. So you gave what was mine, not to just anyone, but Lee Sangha. It's better than handing it over to another company. Sun Chai Young gripped her phone. Her eyes burned in anger. Why did it have to be her? Do you want to see me go crazy? Any other person would have been better, I don't want it being snatched by her. Are you doing this because I haven't signed the renewal contract yet? Ill sign. So don't give her my commercial. Sun Chai Young, who had been causing a fuss like any other time, stopped. CEO Beck Hansung wordlessly looked at her. Like usual, he was smiling leisurely, but his eyes were different. 
Sun Chai Young had been with W Yu for a few years now. It wasn't her first time seeing his eyes like that. However, his eyes were always gentle when looking at her. Not once was this look directed at her. Until now. Avoiding his eyes, Sun Chai Young bit her lips again. Her lips, which had been bitten for a while now, were red as though they were smeared with blood. After a moment of silence, Sun Chai Young raised her head again. Okay. That commercial, let her have it. Her lips became crooked. In return, Song has manager, assign him to me. Chapter, 76 So the commercial that went to Lee Songa was originally Sun Chai Young's. My lips cracked a smile by themselves. It was such good news I wanted by everyone a round of coffee. To celebrities, having their commercial snatched away should leave them feeling quite awful. Since hers was taken by Lee Sangha, who used to be on a much lower standing than her, would her big head have deflated a little? Either way, I quickly dropped any thoughts on going to see Sun Chai Young since I didn't know whether she would be enraged, fuming flames from her mouth. It was worth taking refuge. Thank you, team leader. Since we're in the same boat, might as well share an umbrella. Team leader Park mischievously added. If you're really that thankful, why don't you buy me a slice of cake or something? Ah, uh, wait. I suddenly want tiramisu as well. Smiling, I stood up when my phone rang. Yes, hell. Where are you right now? We need to talk. The coffee that had run down my throat was about to make its way back up. Her voice rattled on without introducing herself, as though I would definitely know who she was by her voice. Her tone, which indicated that, since she had something to say, I should immediately reply with an okay. A face abruptly appeared in my mind without any hesitation. But, what was this? She shouldn't have any reason to call me. With a normal person's way of thinking, I couldn't guess what she was up to. What? Why aren't you replying? Are you sure this number is right? The voice became louder. It seemed someone was next to her as a voice said that this number was the right one. The man's voice was awkward, and it seemed he was taken aback. Although his voice was faint, he was, without a doubt, the traitor. Just what was this combination? Just as I was about to reply while frowning, the world turned black. Chief. It was the future. As soon as I saw the haziness in my vision, I quickly cleared the complicated thoughts in my head. I didn't have the time to think of other things right now. Since I couldn't leave out a single, small detail, I crammed everything I saw in my head. Thank God. Chief, did your phone call end? A youth with a refreshingly handsome face approached me with hurried steps. He had a t-shirt on, and his pants were made of a thin material. Was it summer? There was an unfamiliar person in an unfamiliar place. All I could assume was that we were in a hallway inside a building. She's making a fuss looking for you, Chief Young. My ears perked. Chief Young. He was referring to me when he shouted Chief. What now? I, so my future self, said in a casual manner. The unfamiliar youth hesitated before saying in a quiet voice. I ran out of there in fear of being lashed out on so I don't know the details but last time, the team leader told me that, if the mood seems critical, to not try to do something by myself and to absolutely leave it to you. Now, really. Am I some babysitter? I'm sorry. I'm trembling in fear. Other people told me that her personality's gotten a lot better, no, that she changed a lot ever since she started working with you. Then does that mean she was worse B? personality's gotten better my ass. It's hard to be as unchanging as her. The conversation was a little strange. Even while grumbling, my future self began to walk. The youth followed after me, calling out, Chief, Chief. The more I heard it, the stranger it felt. I was no longer a rookie manager but a chief. So days like this really did occur. Of course, as long as I didn't quit, it was a future I would inevitably face, but it was still far off for me right now. Since it felt like I had taken a step towards my dream, I did feel a little excited. When in the future was this? If I could move my lips, I would have immediately asked what year it was. Hoping to obtain even a small clue, I concentrated as much as I could. 
The place I arrived at was a playroom. Although it was really unexpected, it was true. A colorful ball pit and a gently sloped slide. They were things I was tired of seeing due to taking care of the quadruplets. There was also a woman. I saw the back of a woman with long, braided hair. I heard the cries of a baby. The woman was rocking the baby, who was only wearing diapers, in an awkward manner. Who was she? As soon as I thought this, the woman turned around. Why are you so late? Take the baby, he's crying. I thought something big happened. Babies are supposed to cry. He didn't cry when you were holding him before. Are you and I the same? Do you know how many kids I took care of? Also, babies have eyes too, you know. Do you think hell put up with you staring at him with that face? Just by the fact that he wasn't shaken up, he would grow up to be a general. Hell do great things in the future. Hey! My thoughts went awry. This was the moment I was supposed to be shocked, but I was confused with just what I should start being shocked at. The reasons were because the woman holding the baby, who seemed a bit over a month old, asked me why I was so late and that woman was Sun Chai Young. She was Sun Chai Young. It felt like someone was hammering a stake in my head. Uncaring about whether my soul was flailing in an abyss of confusion, my future self sighed and received the baby from Sun Chai Young. Then, while humoring the drooling, whining baby, I said. If the baby cries, you need to look for his mom. Why look for me? So the baby's mother was someone else. Even in this situation, I was relieved. I almost imagined a more terrifying thought. A terrifying imagination that could give me a heart attack. I don't know. I think she left the baby on set and went somewhere because I haven't seen her for a while now. Either way, I don't like her. Looking at how someone who calls herself a parent is acting, I can already imagine how ITLL be in the foot. Sun Chai Young, who was grumbling, suddenly shouted. Wait, why can't I look for you? You're my manager. Hello. I jolted to my senses. I felt like I was dragged out after being forced underwater. Team leader Park was sitting in front of me with an odd expression, and the voice sounding out from the phone in my ear talked ceaselessly. It was the same voice as the one I heard a moment ago. The line went dead. Don't just stand there and check the number again. Either you're blind or he's deaf. The hairs on my body stood on their ends. I unintentionally pressed the end call button. I tossed my phone on the table. Wasn't that Sun Chai Young's voice just now? It was, right? I slowly nodded my head. Team leader Park was taken aback and said. Why is she calling you but did you just hang up on her? I was just so surprised. Yeah, I totally understand. Breathe. My word. Just how terrifying was it for your face to go pale like that as if you just had a nightmare? It was similar to a nightmare. No, it was worse since it was the future. Oh my god. It was the future. First, let's calm down. Yeah, although it was the future, depending on my actions from now on, I could definitely change it. So rather than being confused, now was the time to quickly understand the situation and deal with it rationally. I tried the Lama's breathing method one a few times but gave up. Damn it, even a monk who had reached enlightenment wouldn't be able to keep calm. In a hurry, I chugged my coffee and stumbled through my memories. Although I didn't know how far in the future it was, there was no doubt that I was promoted to a chief. Also, that I was in charge of Sun Chai Young. Since I only got a glimpse, I didn't know whether I was in charge of just Sun Chai Young or others as well, but either option made me shocked and terrified. Why? Why did I become Sun Chai Young's manager? Just where did my life go wrong for something like that to happen? At this moment, my phone vibrated once more. It was the same number as before. I gulped down my saliva and received the call. This is Young Sun Wu. What? Can you hear me now? Is it okay for someone who calls himself a manager to be this difficult to get a hold of? I hate people like that. Your phone's a piece of crap so change it. Also, we need to talk. Talk. Not swear. Is there something we need to talk about? There is now. 
Sun Chai Young said right away. Because I asked the CEO to assign you to me. What did you say? Shocked, I hurried back to the company. It seemed that the news had spread during this time as a few employees acted as though they knew me. Those who knew Sun Chai Young's true nature gave me sad looks while those who didn't spouted nonsense about how I had tremendously good luck with people. I had good luck with people. Were they trying to drive me insane? I confronted Sun Chai Young in a sealed, unlit meeting room. What kind of trick was this woman trying to pull? Was the horrible future I saw because of this? However, whatever the case, I couldn't understand it at all. I would rather quit this damn company than be her manager unless there was some cataclysmic change. I temporarily stopped my chain of questions and asked. Who did you ask the CEO be assigned to who? You, to me. As if she was incredibly pleased with this situation, Sun Chai Young looked at me with a smile on her lips. If there was a cake in front of me, I might have been the one to throw it this time. Just why? Why is the reason important? The fact that I want to work with you is all that matters. After bringing around a rookie for a few months, you should know how dirty and foul this industry is. With her arms crossed, Sun Chai Young leaned towards me. When you were a complete beginner, well, you are still a beginner I heard you rejected Sun Dawan. Tell me honestly, you regret it, right? You probably regret being swept up by the momentary emotions of the situation and throwing away such a precious chance a ton. That's why you should grab hold of the opportunity this time. If you work with me, no one will disregard you wherever you go. In return for not being disregarded by anyone, would probably wither up and die staying by your side. I listened quietly as she created a ruckus by herself. When I thought about it, her intentions were clear. Unless she had suddenly taken a strange liking to working with her enemies, she was probably trying to keep me by her side and screw me over by finding fault with every little thing. There was also a good chance that she childishly wanted to snatch something from Lee Songa after having her commercial taken by her. Damn it. The more I thought about it, the more ridiculous it was. Why fuss about me? Was I Chun Hyang too? So what did the CEO say? Ah, he said he would. My heart dropped. Before I had trouble breathing, Sun Chai Young added. If you agree. My stiff shoulders relaxed. So it wasn't the worst case scenario. Of course, it wasn't. Not after the conversations I had with CEO Beck Hansung. He probably wouldn't assign me to Sun Chai Young of all people. If he did, he wouldn't be human. Well, that was that. Considering that he passed the choice down to me, did that mean I could reject Sun Chai Young right to her face? So quickly agree. Why should I? I asked because I was sincerely curious. With what confidence did this woman think that I would agree? What do you mean why? I just said I'm going to help you grow. The two eyes staring straight at me gleamed with arrogance. Sun Chai Young gestured her finger towards me then herself. Do you want me to say it again? I am going to help you grow. So stop playing house with that girl and come to me. Oh, wow. Since her attitude was that of someone with a kind heart, laughter unwittingly escaped my lips. I will grow on my own. Now, really. It seems you are confused because Lee Song has doing well these days, but it only takes a second for her popularity from the drama to die down. Do you think it's easy to rise to where I am? Can't you tell which side to take to grow faster? You have a lot to learn. I knew one thing for sure. That son Chai Young thought this was a given. As if she thought of something after looking at my expression, Sun Chai Young frowned. What? Why? Don't tell me you're worried because my drama might fail. The drama hasn't ended yet. Also, I'm Sun Chai Young. Do you think I'll even falter because a drama flops or bat an eye when I lose a commercial? I think you did more than bat an eye already. Since I didn't need to listen to her any longer, I was about to open my mouth when the meeting room door opened with a thud and a chilling wind and snow blew in. When I turned around, I was startled. I saw a familiar face at the door. It was Lee Songa. Snowflakes hung from her long hair and her exposed skin was as cold as ice. Oh my god. 
In how much of a hurry did she leave that she was wearing clothes she would wear at home, without a coat or anything? On her feet were furry rabbit slippers instead of shoes. Sangha, did you come from your residence like that? As I was taking off my coat for her, Li Sangha took a deep breath and glanced in my direction. It seemed as though she was checking if there was anything wrong with me. Then she approached Sun Chai Young with sure-footed steps. Her eyes revealed an intimidating gleam. It was as though she would proclaim she was a secret royal inspector and throw out a maypi three. However, in her hand was something other than a maypi. It was a fist-sized snowball with two herb leaves embedded on it like eyes. I saw someone had made a small snowman on the windowsill of the terrace. There was no doubt she removed its head. When I recalled the previous tiramisu incident, I could easily discern why she brought the snowman's head and what she was going to do next. Sun Chai Young, who was about to stand up while glaring angrily, hesitated. Hey! Yo you just try throwing that. If you'd. Before she could finish talking, Li Sangha threw the snowball at her. Chapter, 77 A brutal sound echoed out. It looked she tried to dodge it, but the snowman's head precise struck Sun Chai Young's head. It was perfect. With four similarly aged kids at home, I was used to snow fights, but this was my first time seeing a work of art like this. The snow stuck to Sun Chai Young's forehead, and specks of snow would fall every time her eyelashes trembled and her facial muscles distorted. I told you not to throw it. You think him some pushover? Sun Chai Young slowly wiped her forehead. Since it was her second time, she didn't scream, and she reacted faster than the previous time. The mood felt much more severe than before as well. Sangha, come here. Although my mind felt dizzy just thinking about how to deal with the situation, I couldn't let Sun Chai Young grab Li Songha's hair in front of me. I grabbed Li Songha's hand and pulled her towards me. How tightly did she hold on to the snowball for her hands to be as cold as ice? Sun Chai Young looked at Li Songha again and said. Even if we gloss over what happened last time because I was the first to raise my hand, though he wasn't hit, what's this now? You dare throw a snowball at me, who's many years your senior. Are you testing my tolerance? There's no need to test your tolerance. I really wanted to say this, but I had to handle the situation since Li Songha threw the snowball in my stead as well. When I glanced at her, water dripped down from Sun Chai Young's chin. Although I didn't want to, I took out the handkerchief from my pocket. As soon as she saw this, Li Songha stretched out her hand, which was wet due to holding the snowball. She gave me a look that seemed to say, me, me, give it to me. In the end, the handkerchief went to Li Songha. Sun Chai Young's lips distorted. If I just say one word to the CEO or the director, it's only a matter of time for this to get out of Ha. Say it. Then I will too. Li Songha replied. I might go around telling people what you did to me. It wasn't only Sun Chai Young who lost her mind. Li Songha was worse. Stopping briefly, Sun Chai Young glared at Li Songha. Are you saying that you want to face off against me? Last time and now this. You're the one who started it. You're going to go around telling people. Do it. You'll tell them I have no idea what you're talking about. Do you think the company will write a news release in favor of you or me when this blows up? Well have to see about that. I still have a lot of time left on my contract. You dare keep talking back to me. Although you couldn't see it, the two of them had thrown a dozen snowballs at each other. The situation was already in disarray. Considering later events, it was correct to hold Lee Sangha back as losing was winning in cases like this. Even if it was dirty and foul, this was the right decision. But why was I so proud of Lee Sangha right now? She didn't lose a single bout against the great Sun Chai Young. Was it weird if I thought she developed at a great pace? It seemed Li Song has words were effective as Sun Chai Young bit her lips. Then she changed the topic. Her tone of speech became more leisurely. But why are you causing such a fuss? Because your manager might be snatched away. If you have any brains, think about it. Working with me or with you, which do you think is more beneficial for his future? That's. Li Songha glanced at me. Having missed the opportunity to let go, 
her small hand in my grasp moved. Li Song has hand tightly held onto mine. What a sight! Sun Chai Young ridiculed before turning towards me. Now tell me, you agree with changing, right? Nope. I replied in a heartbeat. There was no need to consider it unless there was a huge change like I found out Sun Chai Young was my little sister, whom we had lost for 28 years. Damn it, that was too messed up. For that lump of trouble to be my little sister. At my instant reply, Li Sangha and Sun Chai Young's expressions changed simultaneously. I was more shocked that Li Sangha was surprised than Sun Chai Young. Don't tell me she thought I would agree. With a dumbfounded expression, Sun Chai Young asked. You don't want to. Why don't you want to? Are you serious? Are you out of your mind? I'm serious and my mind is fine. Then think about it again. It'll give you one last chance. That's okay. I have no thoughts on transferring to MS. Sun Chai Young's team. I am very satisfied with my current team and enjoy working with them. I think my future is still a path of flowers one. To be precise, only seeds have been planted in my path, and even though there were piles of poop like the traitor and Sun Chai Young and Sun Chai Young and Sun Chai Young on this path, I just needed to avoid them. Sun Chai Young revealed an odd expression as she opened and closed her mouth. Then she sent me a chilling gaze. Even if I didn't know any better, it was clear that her rigid confidence had crumbled. Playing house, I wonder how long that'll last. After making this sarcastic remark, she opened the door with a bang and left. I let out the sigh I had been holding back and racked my brains. Since the storm had passed, I had to deal with the aftermath. Since there wasn't a big aftermath after Lee Sangha threw a cake at her last time and since Lee Sangha said that she wouldn't go down by herself, it seemed that Sun Chai Young wouldn't bully her outright. Still, I decided to tell Kim Hyunjo and the Team 3 leader about it just in case as we were dealing with Sun Chai Young of all people. That was that. Sangha. You can let go now, I feel like it might cramp. Even though I said it in a joking tone, Lee Sangha still gripped my hand. Her expression was dark and gloomy, and I could now guess what she was thinking inside her small head without looking. Her pale lips moved. I'm going to be as successful as her. What's yours will be snatched if you're powerless. Nervousness and a clumsy malice were currently seeping out from her normally calm voice. I patted Lee Song has shoulder with my other hand. What do you mean snatched? Am I an object? Ill fight and choose where I should be so don't worry. Also, it's good that incidents like this can motivate you, but don't let it make you feel uneasy or impatient. There's no need to. Although they were slightly toe-curling words, I thought it was good I said them. The malice in Lee Song has expression melted like snow. I didn't miss this opportunity to clear my thought and change the topic. Also, the snowman's head from before. I found it on my way here. It felt like such a waste throwing the cake last time. Uh, yeah. That's good and all, but next time, if you feel the impulse to throw something, discuss it with me first. Like always, Li Sangha nodded her head. Her powerful grip holding on my hand loosened as well. With my now free hand, I handed her my coat which I had taken off a while ago. Put this on first. You're as cold as ice. Who did you hear this from for you to come here like this? Didn't the other girls try to hold you back? I came out in secret. He'll probably hear an earful when I go home. Of course, you will. Still, he'll stay next to you and explain the situation. Lee Song has eyes widened slightly before gently curving into a smile. A sleek van drove down a snowy road. The road manager in the driver's seat and Chief Joe kept glancing back at Sun Chai Young, who's sitting in the rear seat. Sun Chai Young's mood these days called for snow, rain, and clouds, but today, there was a storm warning. Uh, huh? What? What do you think about me leaving the company? Chief Joe hurriedly turned around at Sun Chai Young's indifferent words. What? What do you, are you planning on going independent? Or has anyone contacted you for an exclusive contract? Who is it? If I leave, will you come with me? Huh? His outpour of questions halted. Chief Joss' eyes jittered quickly. 
Soon after, while examining Sun Chaoyang's mood, he carefully said. That, air. That you know that isn't a matter to decide easily, right? This industry is small. While you'll be fine, I might get a bad image if I do. You know this. If you get a bad image, it's difficult to grow in this industry. After growing a little more her. Never mind. It was a joke. Sun Chaoyang's lips curled up into a smile. Although the conversation ended, Chief Joe kept glancing back with uneasy eyes. Sun Chaoyang's expression, which had been gloomy just before, had cleared up a little. As Chief Joe was relieved, Sun Chaoyang casually said. You know Lee Song has manager, right? Young Sun Wu. What about him? I want to snatch him away from her. Find a way. I brought Lee Songa back to her residence. The Neptune members, who were trembling with worry, welcomed us with glaring eyes. Even after Lee Songa was released from being surrounded and scolded by them, my turn didn't end. The girls, especially I'm Seo Young, kept looked at me with nervous eyes, so I repeated my words. There won't be any problems. Just trust me. Of course, we trust you, but in a company, a new employee is like a worm. You'll die if your higher up step on you. Im Seo Young shouted as she imitated stepping on something with her fur slippers. While I was thankful she was worrying about me, calling me a worm was a bit too severe. You've never worked at a company before so where did you hear that from? Do you have to work to know? It's on the internet. You need to quit using the internet. Then I suddenly recalled the good news I had forgotten due to the consecutive shocking events. Oh, right. We're going to be on a public network entertainment show. They suddenly became silent. Im Seo Young, Lee Songa, who was drinking ginger tea as a preventative measure for a cold, LJ, who was seriously thinking about a way to screw Sun Chai Young over. And Lee Tae Hee, who was helping next to her, they all stopped what they were doing and looked at me. It's a Lunar New Year's special on IBC. Team Leader Park told me we were set. Re really? IBC? Public Network? We're all going on it? Yeah. We all are. Since you're appearing with your manager, I'm going on too. With him Seo Young scream as the start, there was a huge commotion in their residence. In only a week, there was a significant change. When I searched Cat Guardian Ghost on portal sites, there were quite a few articles calling it a historic drama. It was a historic drama since it exceeded 15% ratings. Compared to GTBN's new drama, which couldn't exceed 1% ratings and was initially regarded as our competitor as it aired at the same time as us, calling it a historic drama wasn't an exaggeration. Ah, there was another historic drama as well. Mermaid Out of Water Faced with the public rage of the original works fans, its ratings dropped to a single digit, making it a historic drama as well. Even those involved murmured that it would be a historical fail. Either way, the only drama that was doing as well as Cat Guardian Ghost was IBC's time slip. As there and our ratings were going neck and neck, people were quite anxious, but I was fine. A fuse should be burning up over there. When the bomb explodes, there wouldn't be any competitors remaining. The best drama of this year's first quarter would be Cat Guardian Ghost without a doubt. While this heated mood kept continuing day after day, the day of recording IBC's Lunar New Year's special star manager finally arrived. IBC Basement Broadcast Studio A. With three hours remaining until it began, dozens of staff members hurriedly moved about. The film crew checked the mountain of equipment. The staff threw their coats and moved things around. The sweat and heat within the studio were enough to forget the season, but there was a cold wave brewing outside. Production staff members were bustling like bees, chattering on their intercoms. Senior, I think we need to change the outdoor set we scheduled to one indoors. They say it's minus 14 degrees outside. It's not like there are only one or two celebrities but a heap of them. How are we going to endure the amount of complaints when the cameras are off? The gate to hell will open today too. Schedule another set. Have the sponsored cars not arrived yet? They say they'll definitely arrive before the start. If we delay our starting time, everything will go bust. Tell them to be late if they are confident to take responsibility for that. 
you are checking the cast, right? Yes, I'm calling them every 30 minutes and checking on them. The studio was extremely busy on one side. A few writers for the special program were discussing while flipping through the program composition. Next, Neptune. Yunseo, you are in charge of Neptune, right? Since they are rookies, they'll probably listen to you well. Deputy Manager Shin, who had been examining the mood on set, added in at the main writer's words. Rather than how easily they listen, how much broadcast-worthy content we'll get from them is the problem. I said okay because their manager is worth using, but I'm still worried. If they are nervous and don't say a word, they'll be completely edited out. They probably won't be completely edited out though. They have a great story. At the main writer's words, Deputy Manager Shin tilted his head. A great story. Neptune's Lee Sangha is hot right now. Yeah, she's amazing at acting. Although she's proven herself now, before the drama aired, there was huge commotion concerning her acting controversy and that she was just an add-on. They told us that they would talk about some of the behind-the-scenes of that commotion when they appear today. Really? Is it fun? It's fun. It also works with our program concept. The main writer said, satisfied. Their manager's story was the most entertaining. Chapter, 78 Oh, my God! Look at this! This! It's good to constantly moisturize your skin and provide it with nutrition during winter. Still, you don't have any blemishes. It'll add a light foundation. I think I just need to smooth out your skin. Please just end it. The moment I sat in front of the dressing table, I had emptied my heart. The mustached artist affiliated with this shop smiled slyly. In his hand was a flat makeup brush. He dabbed the brush in a beige cream instead of paint and brushed it on my face. Im Seo Young poked my shoulder from the back. I just wanted to call out to you. Im Seo Young's face was reflected in the mirror in front of me. Her large, round eyes narrowed into crescent moons. She giggled in a way which didn't suit the smile from her eyes that seemed like it could even melt ice. Appa, Appa, Appa. What, what, what? Since I already called out your name, I just wanted to say it three more times. After saying this, she walked around me and looked as if I was some amazing spectacle. She reminded me of something. Her curly hair reminded me of fur and her shaking flared skirt reminded me of a tail. She seemed like a dog running in the snow, no, she was more like a puppy. I understand that you've been waiting for this day for a long time, but come to your senses. Appa, how do you feel sitting there? What do you mean how do I feel? I feel like I'm receiving punishment. No, I would feel more at ease if they just scribbled on my face with permanent markers. I was extremely lucky that Kim Hyunjo and the traitor weren't here. Eh, how can you consider this a punishment? I bet you'd be foaming at the mouth if you were to receive full makeup. Do you want to try blush as well? They say this year's spring-summer color is light coral. This, this, my lipstick color. Stop speaking such nonsense and just sit down. Why are you so excited? You're going to be exhausted before the recording if you're like this. I'm fine. My condition today is amazing. She raised her fists as she shouted confidently. Stop driving me crazy and eat your lunch, dummy. LJ approached and slapped him Seo Young's back. Her blonde cascading hair and her makeup which curved her eyes in a sleek fashion made her look especially cat-like today. A street cat wearing the guise of an expensive breed. I thought that it would be nice to take a picture of the two of them right now. People from the fan cafe had already made comparison photos about how they were like cats and dogs. This would make great bait. Just as I thought this, LJ shoved her phone towards me. Then she took my picture. What are you doing? Why did you take a picture of me? Because I think it might be useful in the future. Don't take pictures and don't use them either. If you hate it that much, it makes me want to take more. You'll use it for a good cause. Then she smiled slightly. It was an eccentric smile. Im Seo Young leaned towards LJ's phone and said. Me, me, me. Send me those pictures you took. I don't want to. Ah, uh, 
Damn it. You meanie. Fine, it'll just take pictures on my phone. She brought her phone over and took pictures of me. I sighed as I looked towards Lee Tae-hee and Lee Sangha, hoping they were a bit better behaved. Hmm. They were as well behaved as ever. They couldn't help but be well behaved. Lee Sangha was sitting on the sofa and eating her lunch while Lee Tae-hee was sleeping on Lee Sangha's lap. When does today's recording air? The artist's assistant asked while smiling brightly. Lunar New Year's Day. He'll definitely watch it then. I think the program will be fun. I think ITLL be fun if you just act like this in front of the camera without any MSG1. This is fun. Yes. We see celebrities and managers all the time. There are many teams that give off such a bad mood that we can't even say a joke. But this team seems really close with each other. I hope that it looks that way on the broadcast as well. Really. It was a public network broadcast and I candidly agreed to do it because Kim Hyunjo and team leader Park said I was the most suited for it, but I still wasn't sure if this would be good. I didn't have the comedic senses that could make others burst into laughter on entertainment shows, and above all, I didn't really enjoy watching entertainment shows in general. Since I was going on the show anyway, I had to be of use to the girls. It seemed she saw my serious expression as I'm Seo Young patted my shoulder with the tips of her fingers. Don't worry, Appa. All you need to do is stick next to me. My talents too are perfect, and I picked out and practiced a ton of possible general knowledge quizzes. I even thoroughly memorized the capitals of countries. She really spent all night memorizing them. It's not like she's trying to take a university entrance exam or anything. LJ said while clicking her tongue. Im Seo Young swiftly turned and leered at her. We need to be fully prepared so that we can show up on air often. Entertainment shows are like jungles, jungles. If you go without any preparations, you could be disregarded by other people on the show and even be edited out entirely. After scolding in a rapid-fire fashion, her eyes shined as she added. Do you know how big of an opportunity this is? It'll show them everything I have out there. The title of the special was Star Manager. The concept looked simple. The compatibility between celebrities and their managers. It was a mix between a talk show and a variety show 3, where they gathered a bunch of celebrities and their managers, talked and played a few games before finally giving a prize to the team that was picked as being the most compatible. The prize was a high-quality beef set. It seemed Lee Song has drive surged as her eyes shined brightly. Well, the talk show was simply an attempt in bringing out fun stories from managers who knew the most about their celebrities' personal lives. This seemed somewhat fine, but the games were the problem. The game was called Stop Telling Me To Do This and That and You Do It. They said it was a walking in someone's shoes type of game where the positions of managers and celebrities were switched. The broadcast composition was so simple that no matter how many times I read over it, I couldn't tell what we were specifically going to do. Hey, you look the part. You really do. Kim Hyunjo, who arrived late, said as he glanced at me. But why was he by himself? Where's Gun Young? I assigned him some other work and came by myself. How are the girls? They'll probably be nervous since it's their first time appearing on an entire entertainment special on a public network, with all four of them to boot. I think him the most nervous out of all the people appearing on the show today. At my words, Kim Hyunjo grinned. It doesn't really show even if you are nervous. Your impression and mood will give you a boost. You just need to act naturally. Although I took the girls around to their schedules without Kim Hyunjo these days, maybe it was because I was a part of the cast and not a manager this time, but having Kim Hyunjo here was reassuring. Well, he'll do my best. Yeah. Also, don't forget to talk about Lee Song has incident during the talk show segment. Since that part is undoubtedly going on air, prepare what you're going to say ahead of time. Of course, I will. But Chief. I licked my dry lips and asked. Is it really okay to mention him on air? It's something that came from the higher ups. Even the CEO personally okayed it. Before this airs, the company will also put out a news release. Kim Hyunjo firmly nodded his head. That's why you don't need to worry about the aftermath and just talk. 
that man needs to be screwed over. Although it's a pity we can't straight up say his name, even this is disgracing that man's arrogant face. Right? Of course. Kim Hyunjo smiled creepily. As if infected by it, my lips raised into a creepy smile as well. I thought that I had become used to seeing celebrities after working as a manager for a few months now, but today felt different. If the majority of celebrities I had seen until now were actors and singers, there were many comedians and TV personalities here today. While going around the dressing rooms and greeting them, I felt exhausted. Rather than calling it a greeting, it was more of an investigation. Although Next K Star was an entertainment show as well, this place was on a completely different level from it. I could understand why I'm CEO Young said that entertainment programs were a jungle. Not long after, the girls, wearing their sponsored clothes, came to me. But one person was missing. Where's CEO Young? As if frustrated, LJ clicked her tongue and said. She's in the waiting room. She said she'll come after practicing her talents one last time before the recording. She's practicing again. This time, Lee Songa replied. We came out ahead of her since she said she couldn't concentrate with us there. I was about to go to the waiting room when Lee Tae Hee held me back. It seems she's overwhelmed by pressure. Pressure. Her eyes, which were as calm as lakes, shined with worry. Back when we were completely unknown, Seo Young went on several entertainment programs to spread our name. Maybe it's because of that, but it seems she thinks everything rests on her shoulders. She looks like she's feeling a lot of pressure, but she won't talk to us. LJ and Lee Sangha both added in. She was making an abnormally big deal out of everything at the shop today. She keeps going back and forth like a puppy that has to go. Her condition must be crap since she stayed up all night so it's concerning she says her condition's great. Also, she didn't eat much this morning. She didn't even touch her lunch. Hmm, okay. Go in first and let the chief know. After leaving the girls behind, I quickly headed to the waiting room. I should have observed her more carefully. Although I did think that she was more agitated than normal, I thought it was because she really wanted to appear on entertainment shows. Was she suffering from pressure while showing a cheerfully smiling face? I immediately opened the door and entered the waiting room. No, I stopped before I went in. Im Seo Young stood rigidly right behind the door. Seo Young. Ah, uh, Appa. I was just about to go. Im Seo Young tilted her head. Her voice was as bright as usual. However, it was definitely different. It was the same for her slightly reddened eyes and her trembling pupils. Are you very nervous? As soon as I asked, Im Seo Young shook her head in a wide motion. No. Im fine. No, I don't think you are. I really am. Let's go quickly, Appa. However, unlike her words, Im Seo Young couldn't take a single step past the door. Her round shoes moved hesitantly before returning to its place. Ah, uh, damn it. Why am I like this? She squatted on the floor and covered her head with her arms. I heard sniffling coming from her mumbling voice. I went inside and closed the door. Im Seo Young, who had lowered her head, raised it slightly. Sure enough, tears had welled up in her large eyes. No, I can't cry. The mascara might run. Ah, uh, really, is it time to worry about that right now? You still have time to fix your makeup so it's fine. I said in the lightest tone I could in order to make her relax a little, but it seemed it didn't help. I was flustered and didn't know what to do. I sat in front of him Seo Young and met her gaze. You should have told me if you were this nervous. It's not like you're committing a sin or anything, why are you trembling in nervousness by yourself in the waiting room? I was definitely fine. I really was. But. Im Seo Young bit her lips. This is a really big opportunity. It's on a public network, and it's a Lunar New Year special. Well appear in it for the full hour. I always thought that it would be great if we could get an opportunity like this and that I would really do well if we got the opportunity. That's why I practiced every day but I suddenly became scared. Why? We got this opportunity, but what if I suck? 
I thought her voice was shaking, and in the end, a tear fell from her tightly closed eyes. The dam that had endured for this long finally broke and it was instantaneous afterwards. A second and third tear dripped. Yua, in crying. What do I do? I need something to wipe it. Worried her tear would flow down her cheek and ruin her makeup she positioned her face towards the floor and flailed her arms. I pulled out a few tissues from the tissue box in the waiting room and handed them to her. Im Seo Young received them and carefully patted her tears. I kept pulling out tissues as I thought about how I could calm her down. I first patted her shoulders. When I did, she quickly shrunk away. Ah, you can't. If you do that, they'll cry more. Tears are dripping just by hearing your voice. With no other choice, I pulled my hand away and said. Will the world collapse if you mess up a little this time? You just need to do better next time. Your next album will be released soon and you'll have many opportunities to appear on entertainment shows in the future. They'll work to the bone and keep getting you shows. I have to do well this time too. I went on entertainment shows the most. Hyunjo Appa, Taehyuni, LJ, and Sangha. They'll all be thinking that he'll do well. I'm a stupid dummy. Im Seo Young slammed her head against the door. Chapter, 79 My hand reflexively stretched out. Im Seo Young's round forehead hit my palm instead and bounced off. Then, before I even had time to catch her, she fell onto the floor. Im Seo Young's face was scrunched up as though she was so sad she could die. I inwardly clicked my tongue as I gave her my hand. Why bully your perfectly fine forehead? Do you want to go to the emergency instead of the studio? No. Oh. Young. She faltered as she got up. It seemed she still wanted to be on the show. As though she barely managed to contain her tears, she bit her lips and sniffed her nose. She waited so much for this opportunity, but it seemed like pessimistic thoughts flooded her mind now that the opportunity was in front of her. Creating an obsession that she had to do well and an uneasiness of what if she didn't as well as the fear that she might disappoint her colleagues who believed in her. Stop digging yourself into a hole and think about it calmly. Just because others call you the girl breadwinner, girl breadwinner one, do you really think you are one? The chief or the other girls, they won't be disappointed that you couldn't get more screen time. Instead, they'll probably freak out if they knew that you were thinking this way. I said it as gently as I could since it seemed her mind had turned into mush. You think you're a genius who sweeps through all the entertainment shows you going on. Just think of it as throwing your hat into the ring of public network entertainment shows. Also, let's be honest. Do you think the one to cause an incident will be you or me today? Im Seo Young looked up at me with wet eyes and asked. Appa, how are you so okay? You're not even a celebrity. Aren't you scared about your first recording? Do I look okay? Yup. Completely okay. I'm not. I'll be honest, only half my brain's been working since yesterday. I'm regretting that I didn't take a Chong Sim one too. After saying this while sighing, Im Seo Young replied with smiling eyes. To be honest, I secretly took a Chong Sim one. You ate one by yourself. If you have good stuff like that, then you should share. I thought you were fine. Im Seo Young lightly tapped my arm. Wait, I have one more. I brought another just in case. Then she really did take out a Chong Simwon from her bag. I laughed in surprise, but she unwrapped then handed it to me. I didn't reject and swallowed it down. Thanks. Let's do this somehow with the help of the medicine. Um, Appa, just, just in case. Yeah, say it. Could you say that today will go well just once? Hmm. You said it would go well and song has drama went well and so did the incident with Taehyuni's song. I easily believe in stuff like that. I want to grab the tail of the lucky snack. Okay, today will go well. Although I didn't see the future and because I didn't, I couldn't be certain, but I still said it. Tears dangling on her eyelashes, I'm Seo Young smiled broadly. Hey, if you smile after crying, three. I stopped what I was saying. Hmm, it wasn't proper to say that to a fully grown woman. Can you tell I cried? Yeah. 
Yua, what do I do? I can't let them notice. What should I say? Let's say you hit your head on the door while practicing your talents. What's that? That makes me seem like a dummy. What's new about that? You're the one who said that you were a stupid dummy. When I said this while smiling, I'm Seo Yum rattled on about something while slapping my arm. Although it wasn't like the pressure had completely disappeared, fortunately, it looked like her tears had gone away. Really? I didn't think I could ever get used to comforting someone when they were crying. Just as I thought this, the tips of my fingers touched thin strands of hair. I jolted to my senses. It seemed the habit I had around the quadruplets arose as my hand was on I'm Seo Young's head. Ah, uh, sorry. I thought of my brother's kids. What? What about it? Why are you sorry? I'm fine. Women don't like their head being pet. No, I like it. Then she lowered her head slightly. Her eyes had, at some point, curved into crescent moons. I placed my hand on her head once again. Maybe it was the effect of the Chong Simwen or because of animal therapy, but my heart relaxed gently. As soon as we left the waiting room, we encountered Kim Hyunjo and the other girls. It seemed they had enough of waiting and had come to get us. Without a trace of having been digging herself into a hole, Im Seo Young, mixing amidst the girls, lied naturally that she had hit her head on the door and cried because it hurt so much. Though, it didn't seem like anyone believed her. Will she be okay? Kim Hyunjo mouthed to me. I silently nodded. Then, not long after, we all stepped onto the studio set. 10.35 a.m. A spacious VIP dressing room. Producer Yoon, who gave a gaunt, rigid impression, and writer Park, who was experienced in the public network entertainment scene as a main writer for ten years, both of them were flipping through each cue card as they explained the rules. Also, Im Seo Young of Neptune apparently went on a few entertainment shows. So when you pass the conversation over to them, ITLL be good to pass it over to her to prevent any trouble. If they can't receive the conversation properly when I pass it to them a few times, then I'm not going to talk to them. Said one of the MCs, Park Taepyeong, a comedian who debuted with IBC and was known for his irritable character. Hong Suk Woo, the other MC, who debuted as an anchor and had been leisurely eating an energy bar, replied. They said they are rookies. Hyung, are you going to step and eliminate them before they can even grow? I'm saying if they can't when I pass the conversation to them, if. When the cast is so large, are we going to teach those who can't even follow up on a conversation? Is this a school? If they can't even do that, then tell them to go on a cultural program and just read the script. Ha, huh, this is why all our juniors find it hard to approach you. I care about those who do well. Ryder Park, who had been listening to their conversation, smiled as she cut in. Okay, okay. Glossing over the celebrities, please pay attention to the managers. They are just normal people. Producer Yoon lowered his head as he requested. That's right. Although we did pick those who should be good on air, you know it too. If we place normal people in front of a camera, no matter how great of a talker they are, they can't show their full ability. If seniors don't save them, our broadcast will flop. Tell doctors to save them. Well, are there any decent people? At Park Taepyeong's reply, producer Yoon licked his lips. Lee Hyunjong's manager has a sense for it since he's been on air a few times. Jang Nox's manager was someone who used to be an aspiring comedian. Also, Neptune's manager has a few stories about Lee Sangha so we're keeping an eye on him as well. Ha, we see celebrities on air all the time. If we want to beat out other networks' Lunar New Year's specials, then there needs to be a gem amongst the managers. Park Taepyeong clicked his tongue as he flipped through the manager's profiles. Hong Suk Woo smiled as he added. Well look for one. A gem. 10.55 a.m. Ten minutes before the recording. The lights poured onto the set like the scorching summer sun. In the middle were seats for the two MCs, and stands fanned out from either side. On one side were gorgeous celebrities and on the other sat managers with name tags on their chests. A young, female producer explained in front of the clearly nervous managers. Since we're not a live show, you can speak with ease. 
As you all have mics on, the audio will pick up everything you say so no going off on tangents. Also, the writers are going to be continuously writing instructions so constantly watch them through the corner of your eye. Yes, understood. It'll do my best. Jang Knox's manager, Kim Dongo, shouted in a loud voice. Just do as you did in the prior interviews, Chief Kim. Don't worry. The beef set will be mine and Knox's. His expression was different from any other manager. The tenser other managers looked, the more composed his expression became. That was obvious since he was confident he would be stand out the most among them. As soon as the producer stepped off the set, the managers began to talk with people next to them. Sitting at the end, Kim Dongo was cursing the producer who had guided them as he glanced to the person next to him. Neptune's manager. Young Sun Wu. He wasn't the type of person Kim Dongo liked. First, he was taller than him, and on top of that, he looked quite distinguished because he was from a big company. Also, he looked very much at ease as he sat with his legs crossed and was waving to Neptune on the other side. Why was this person so carefree? Was he a team leader? Inwardly complaining, Kim Dongo started a conversation. Excuse me, hello. You're sitting next to me so I hope you can provide good reactions. Although I'm not going to. He swallowed this thought. Ah, uh, yes. Please take care of me. Young Sun Wu greeted him. Kim Dongo frowned subtly. Although he didn't look like he would be disliked by the viewers, he still wasn't likable. However, after listening to his voice, the scales tipped more towards being likable. Why did you come on the show? If it's Neptune, ah, uh, is it to help the rookies grow? Yes, that's right. Ah, uh, you must be going through a lot, being assigned to rookies. I was cast before this program was proposed. I used to be an aspiring comedian. Though, I'm a manager because I wasn't lucky. My dream is still to become a broadcaster. Then you must not be worried about today's recording. It's a program meant for me. Trying his best not to sound arrogant, Kim Dongo continued to speak. Also, as someone who's worked in this industry for six years, what is there to be nervous of? Other people should have also been working for a few years now so I don't know why they are so nervous. Don't you think so? I'm not very experienced. I ate a Chong Simwen before I came. Ah, uh, really? You don't look inexperienced. How long have you been working? Four months. Kim Dongo blinked. No, not as Neptune's manager, in total. Yes. It has been four months since I've started working. Kim Dongo ridiculed himself for having been wary of him. He was only for display. 11A. They began. The studio, which had been bustling with dozens of staff and involved parties, became silent. The faces of the celebrities in front of me and the managers around me changed. I could even feel a prickling sense of tension. The two MCs, who would appear whenever you turned on the TV, skillfully progressed with the opening. Fortunately, Neptune didn't look very nervous. Even M. C. O. Young, although she was still a little stiff in the shoulders, she was much better than before. It seemed the MCs looked at them favorably as Neptune's introduction was longer than others. The problem was this side. The managers. The phrase general crisis was meant for situations like this. Every time an MC talked to them, there would be silence for a few seconds. Also, over half of them would stutter or say some nonsense. I felt that the producers would have a stomach full of frustration when they went to edit it later. There was only so many times the MCs could gloss over it with jokes, Park Tapiang looked like he was about to throw the cue cards at us a few times now. Even the faces of the producers and writers were becoming gloomy. Although it wasn't nice to say it was thanks to them, seeing the managers messing up made my heart more steadfast. Should I say it was learning from others' faults? My parents and relatives would be watching this, maybe my entire family would gather to watch this, so I couldn't show myself acting like them. I thought my self-introduction went well since Kim Hyunjo's expression was good when I looked at him from the side. After the introductions of the cast and a light talk about their private lives ended, the MCs placed a toy-like object on top of each manager's table. It was semi-circular and was barely big enough to fit on a person's hand. 
On top of it were grooves for fingers. I thought I saw something like this somewhere. The MCs mischievously said. Now, managers, put your hands on top of those devices. Those viewing the broadcast probably know this, but these are portable lie detectors. Lie detectors. From now on, we need only the truth to come from managers' mouths. But because the relationship between a manager and celebrity could be unhealthy or maybe because they are aware of their company CEO, they might unconsciously lie. That's why we prepared this. Since the device will shock you if you lie, you will have no choice, and I emphasize this because it's important, you will have no choice but to tell the truth. Murmurs erupted around me. I carefully placed my hand on top of the lie detector. Maybe it was because I had so many things that could be considered secret, but this small device felt like a bomb to me. The truth, huh? What would the MCs ask me? There wasn't anything that could be considered a lie in the lines I prepared beforehand. Also, even if it was a lie detector, it wouldn't be as precise as those that appear in dramas since it seemed like they were doing this as a joke. Well there wouldn't be any trouble, right? Chapter, 80 I had thought this when I was at a loss for words at the first question. Manager Young Sun Wu, who do you like the most out of the four members of Neptune? Who did I like the most? I reflexively turned my gaze towards the girls sitting on the other side. The girls, who had been diligently reacting to other celebrities' remarks just now, were looking at me without blinking. The other cast members commented jokingly with what a difficult question and you have to answer wisely. Although there were annoying questions before this, it was the first time a question like this popped up. Ah, but we were the only ones who came on as a group. He's at a loss for words. Of course, this is a sensitive question. If you have four members, then there will undoubtedly be differences as humans. Should we ask the members first? Who do you think your manager will say? Hong Sukwu asked him Seo Young while smiling. Those guys, their eyes were gleaming with the intentions to do whatever it took to make this situation fun. Im Seo Young, who had been opening and closing her mouth as though she was thinking of an answer, shouted. Think, me. I vote me. Because the Chong Simwen I gave Appa is still digesting right now. You give your manager Chong Simwen because you were worried he might be nervous. You guys are close. Then M.S. Sangha, who do you think he'll say? Lee Sangha, the second one to be asked, replied right away. I think ITLL be me. Then I think ITLL be me too. LJ added in as though she found this interesting. Finally, Lee Taehee followed suit while scratching her cheek. I was very suspicious that the two MCs incited her to do so with their eyes. Wow, you must be in a bind. What bind? This was a question I could never worry about. I like all four of them. I said in a casual manner. Hong Sukwu smiled like a snake and looked at my hand. You like them all equally? Definitely. I stole a glance at my hand which was placed on the lie detector. From what I knew, this device would measure the subject's sweat or heartbeat to roughly estimate how nervous the subject was. I wasn't sure why, but it seemed there was an unknown change in my body. I felt as though I was patting a porcupine. This stung more than I thought. You're the type of person to play tricks during poker, you are. I saw you flinch. Park Taepyeong approached to my side like a hyena that had found its prey. Hong Sukwa's eyes shined as well. Life is not fair so don't lie and just say the truth. Isn't it a mess? Lee Songa. I saw the picture of you two not too long ago. I wet my lower lip and said. I'm not the type of person who lies on air. Aren't you controlling this with a remote somewhere? This guy's quite stubborn. This should be giving you quite the shock. Doesn't it hurt? I glanced at the girls again. Sitting close to each other, they were still looking at me like four meerkats. I cleared my throat and said in a small voice. Pain is fleeting, but the aftermath will last a long time. Hong Sukwu giggled as he glanced towards the staff. A writer was holding up a sketchbook. In a large font, it read mention Mr. Sun Wu's quadruplet nephews and nieces. I informed my brother and the kids ahead of time since this story might come up, but it came up as soon as we started. 
was it to set a character for me? Hmm, I received questions like this quite a lot before. Questions like this. Hong Sukwu feigned ignorance as if he didn't know. My brother has quadruplets. It was a question I received a lot while I was taking care of them, but I have never picked one of them. That was why I was able to stay safe until now. Hong Sukwu laughed loudly, though I didn't know whether he was really laughing or if it was for the broadcast. What sort of coincidence is this? A person who used to take care of quadruplets is now in charge of a four-member girl group. How did you feel when you were first assigned to Neptune? To be honest, I thought that I was ruined. I felt like I could FL, ah, uh, this seems to be broken. Damn it, this device's performance was quite good despite looking like a kid's toy. What do you it's broken? Anyone would think that that comment came from some script. What do the Neptune members think? He just lied, right? At Hong suk -woo's question, Im Seo Young gulped her saliva and replied in a clear voice. It's only been four months since he started, were his first assignment. Reactions about how I only worked for four months erupted from here and there. Well, since I was already used to being misunderstood thanks to my appearance, this wasn't anything new. Either way, maybe it was because she gained more confidence because of other people's reactions, but Im Seo Young continued to speak. He said that he originally wanted to be assigned to an actor instead of a singer. So he might not have liked it in the beginning, but it's different now. He had a chance to be assigned to a top actor, but he declined and stayed with us. Oh, a top actor. There are a few top actors that come to mind when thinking of W.U. Since there are so many people aiming for him, I'm worried all day and night. It's not like I can ask him to be bad at his job either. Im Seo Young shook her head. Next to her, Lee Sangha diligently nodded her head. Park Tae Young said. If you wanted to be assigned to an actor, you've fulfilled your wish. M.S. Sangha is gaining popularity through her drama these days. There has been an outpour of praise saying how she's like a sudden shower in the drought of actresses. The topic smoothly changed to Lee Song has story. Since it was something we had talked with the staff about beforehand, Im Seo Young was the first to talk. But that too was because of Appa. Just a few months ago, Sangha didn't have any thoughts on acting, let alone appearing on a drama. If Appa didn't catch her as she tried to flee and told her to act, I don't know how things would be now. The cast members murmured amongst each other. You had no thoughts on acting originally. But why? I saw the drama too, and you were amazing at acting. To be honest, today's broadcast was not only the commemorative day Neptune appeared on a public network but also the stage to leak this truth as naturally as possible. I met Lee Song has eyes. I nodded while smiling. If cameras weren't currently filming my face right now, I would have shown the sinister smile I revealed in front of Kim Hyunjo previously. Under the flood of gazes focused on her, Lee Sangha began to speak. They were the words we hadn't been able to speak out into the world even though we had been exploding with anger. I did receive acting lessons in the past, but the acting teacher told me I sucked at acting. He said that people like me shouldn't act and to not even dare think about it so I thought that I was really bad at acting. What sort of nonsense is that? Just where does a person like that come from? Ha, you were caught by a complete quack. Reactions erupted like bustling bees. It seemed that they thought a story as great as this wouldn't be edited out as the cast members remarked using the most aggressive and negative words allowed on public networks. Although I wanted to say that his name was Shim kyung Take, it was still a little satisfying mentioning him on a public network since all I could do last time I went to him was threaten him. Still, since we were already screwing him over, why not screw him over to our heart's content? I tossed another comment for the indignant cast to bite on. I looked into it because Sangha wasn't so terrible at acting to listen to such words and found that the teacher held unpleasant feelings towards her. Really? Wow, complete trash. There are people who can't stand others becoming successful. Still, as someone who calls himself a teacher, really. I don't know who he is but what a worthless man. While inwardly smiling, I observed the commotion. It was no different from a hazing. If there was an object known as acting teacher here, it would already be rolling around in tatters on the set. 
After cursing him for a while, the cast members spoke words of encouragement to Lee Sangha. Once this story went on air, it would undoubtedly become a hot topic. This was why we were leaking this before the Cat Guardian ghost fever was over. It would definitely be a positive influence on Lee Song Ha's image. And it would screw teacher Shim Kyung take over. I wasn't certain why the company told us to leak this on the broadcast. They might have taken measures so that teacher Shim Kyung take couldn't bring Sun Chai Young down with him or CEO Baek Hansung had some other thoughts. However, what was certain was that, even if the press didn't directly expose Teach Shim Kyung Take's name, this would be a publicly known fact to those in the know. If that happens, he wouldn't be able to go around acting arrogantly and being called a professor like now. Also, he would become more nervous the more famous Lee Songa became. Whenever Lee Song has name was mentioned in the press, he would be trembling in fear in case his past would resurface along with it. Then it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that your manager changed your life. It seemed like he thought this was enough as Hong Sukwu asked this to wrap up the situation. Lee Sangha nodded her head with shining eyes. Yes, that's right. If it wasn't for Appa, I wouldn't have done the drama and known that acting was this fun. Even after the large commotion passed, the recording continued. The MCs asked me a few more annoying questions. Especially Park Taepyeong, he kept coming back to me and asking me questions like a bird that had found a bird feeder. Of course, it was good since it would increase our airtime, but my palm already felt like a pincushion. Just as we got rid of those godforsaken lie detectors, Hong Sukwu abruptly looked at the celebrities and shouted. Now, who know their manager's birthday? If you know, raise your hand. Around half of them raised their hands. Lee Sangha did as well. She raised her hand so quickly that it surprised him Seo Young, who was sitting next to her. M.S. Lee Sangha, you were the quickest. Do you know his birthday? Yes. July 22nd. Lee Sangha replied without a moment of hesitation. Manager Young Sun Wu, is she right? Yes, she is. At my words, Lee Sangha smiled with a proud expression. But how did she know my birthday? Did I ever tell her? While I was tilting my head, Hong Sukwu listened to the replies of other celebrities. Then Park Taepyeong smirked as he said. There are definitely those who prepared for logic quizzes since we told them that there would be a quiz corner, but you've done quizzes on Common Sense, Capital Cities, and stuff a lot on other shows. That's why we won't be doing them. Oh my. While protests erupted here and there, I checked I'm Seo Young's condition first. She looked like someone who had lost their country. As if comforting her, Lee Tae Hee, who was sitting next to her, patted her shoulder. We are going to quiz you about your manager. Although it's a given that managers know a lot about their celebrities, we need to check how much celebrities know about their managers in return. The cast members' eyes gleamed. Should I say they reminded me of goldfish that barely managed to reach the surface after fighting each other for food? Also, among those goldfish were Neptune goldfish. Of course, the goldfish who looked like she was overflowing with eagerness was Lee Sangha. The MCs looked at their cue cards as they began the quiz. Who knows their manager's hobby? Once again, Lee Song has hand shot up. Watching movies and dramas. Who knows their manager's nickname during school? Young Jumma. 1. Goldfish Lee Sangha didn't stop. It was so bad that Park Taepyeong, with a tired expression, told Lee Sangha that it would be better if she just kept her hand up in the air until the end. Who knows their manager's zodiac sign? The four of them answered this question together. Our team was in the lead. It was good. It was good since it meant they were interested in me, but this situation where we were beating those who worked together for years was a bit baffling. The other cast members looked dumbfounded, especially Kim Dongo, who was sitting next to me. The look he gave me when he glanced at me hadn't been pleasant for a while now. Hey, Neptune's too good at this. It's a mess. Lee Sangha who's too good. Isn't it to the point it feels like their family? Lastly, a chance to turn the tables. Well do a 50-point bonus question. The most shocking team wins this. Who knows their manager's embarrassing or dark past? Amongst the people shouting, I quickly found Lee Sangha. 
Fortunately, her hand was still. Just as I was relieved that her expression read, dark past. He doesn't have something like that, LJ raised her hand out of nowhere and said. I saw him practice smiling by himself while looking at a mirror before. When did she see that? My face burned. It felt like the cast members and even the staff members were staring at my face. When I glanced at Kim Hyunjo, his lips were stretched up to his ears. If he wasn't on set, his expression said that he would be rolling on the floor laughing. Fortunately, thanks to the other cast members bringing up darker pasts, my trivial story was quickly buried under them. I was paying sharp attention to them in case one of them raised their hand, but M. Seo Young kept glancing my way. Then, in the end, she avoided my gaze and stealthily raised her hand. What? What? What does she know? Yua, Appa, I have no choice for the points. Th there are things in life that just can't be helped. No, Seo Young. There isn't anything that can't be helped. I tried to calm I'm Seo Young down. Park Taepyung and Hong Sukwoo were giggling in front of me and the cast members and staff were laughing at our back and forth for a while now, but it was more urgent to stop I'm Seo Young from spouting whatever bomb she was about to. We're going to lose like this. I'll buy you that damn beef. I don't know what it is, but don't say it. My family is going to be watching this. In the beginning, the mood of the staff was as though they were in a funeral home. Producer Yoon aged in real time as he watched the managers in total confusion, unable to get a sense of the broadcast. When the title of the broadcast was Star Manager and the majority of the managers talked as though they were reading from a Korean textbook, continuing like this would undoubtedly result in failure. It might even be picked as the worst program among the Lunar New Year specials each broadcast company had ambitiously prepared for. However, it was different now. Producer Yoon and Ryder Park were looking at the set with smiling faces. Wow, I was worried we might have to edit this whole part out, but it was revived. I know, right? When we go record outside, we should add another cameraman to that team. I didn't hope for much besides Lee Song has story, but I didn't know their chemistry with each other was so good. I had thought that I should at least insert a bunch of their reactions if they can't get any airtime but doesn't it seem like they'll be cast for a ton of entertainment programs when this airs? At producer Yoon's words, Ryder Park replied while rubbing her chin. But, it seems like that a lot of it is because of the manager. Chapter, 81 Ah, he's definitely okay, that manager. Producer Yoon said as he turned his gaze towards the managers. Manager Yoon Sun Woo immediately caught his eye amongst the bland managers. It seemed he was still shocked by the reveal of his dark past as he was rubbing his face. Even this grabbed people's attention. Ryder Park looked in the same direction and smiled. He's better than okay, he's very good. The majority of the remarks Neptune made that I think we should keep are ones that are from a back and forth with their manager. Now that I think about it, that's true. He gives off a completely different feeling. At first, their comments were typical as if they had memorized them night after night, but once their manager joined in, they became much livelier. At first, there was no doubt that the expressions Neptune had were those of rookies. They were okay with it though as they didn't hold many expectations for a new girl group that didn't have a lot of experience appearing on entertainment shows. The role they expected Neptune to take was to tell the story behind Lee Song has controversies, which their viewers would be interested in, and to catch the viewers' attention with their pretty looks amongst the group of males. This was all. If they hoped for a little more, it was that their chemistry with their manager was entertaining. However, it was beyond what they had expected. Like Ryder Park said, their manager had a great influence on this current good mood. Whirling a permanent marker in her hand, Ryder Park said. There are tons of rookies who are over-enthusiastic and go overboard, but they are doing fine. They speak well, and their tone and pronunciation are good that we can hear them clearly. Which is why our eyes keep looking in their direction. This really, I almost can't even look at the ones I held expectations for with open eyes, but we got lucky with people we didn't hold any expectations for. I know, right? What would we have done if we didn't cast them at the last minute? Thinking of it makes me dizzy. I might have even opened up a bottle of soju in the editing room. The people they had expected do better than average were flopping one after another, especially Kim Dongo, 
who had been an aspiring comedian. He tested the MC's patience with his terrible jokes, which felt like a chilling wind. Park Taepyeong even stopped talking to him a while ago. Producer Yoon licked his lips and said. If they can continue like this outdoors, then there's nothing more I could want from them. I think Mr. Taepyeong is going to look after them. Can't we be hopeful? Look after them. Not Mr. Sukwu, but Senior Taepyeong. At his tone that seemed to ask if she had made a mistake, Ryder Park just shrugged. She looked at young Sun Wu and Park Taepyeong, who was giggling next to him. He looks after good rookies like he said. To me, it looks like Mr. Taepyeong really likes manager Young Sun Wu. As soon as they finished filming in the studio, people began to move en masse. The staff and the cast cleaned up the studio and gathered outside for the outdoor shoot. The forecast kept saying there would be a cold wave, and it really was damn cold. When I sighed, steam flowed out from my mouth. It reminded me of how I felt about my soul. With a faint smile, I asked the camera woman filming me. The dark past part from before, can we edit that out? Nope. Even if I were the main producer, I'd keep it. I thought that would be the case since the main producer came up to me with his lips curved up to his ears and gave me a ton of encouragement. He said something about how, if I continued like this, I would receive casting calls for entertainment shows. It wasn't welcome news at all. Afterwards, Im Seo Young poked my shoulder. With an expression that looked like a criminal on her way to exile or a puppy that had just made an enormous mistake, she blinked her round eyes. If she had a tail, it would droop down to the ground. The cameraman assigned to Neptune stuck his camera in and filmed this scene. Appa, Appa. What, what? When I replied nonchalantly, Im Seo Young's complexion brightened. I really, truly think my mouth has gone crazy. I had a mental breakdown when they said there would be no logic quiz, and since victory was dangling in front of my eyes because Lee Sangha was doing so well, I felt a sense of urgency. I felt like something bad would happen if we lost or something. Yua, Appa, are you okay? Of course, I'm fine. Yeah, in front of the camera. What if there isn't a camera? I glanced at the camera before saying gloomily. Seo Young, if I die when I go back home for Lunar New Year's Day, the cause of death would be out of embarrassment. I'll ask that they bury you alive in my grave. Oh my god. Im Seo Young crouched down. It looked like her soul had drifted off and only paper thin husk remained, fluttering in her place. After watching her like this for a few seconds, I patted her hunched shoulders. Im joking, you can stick your head back out. For real this time. It's for real, right? It'll just take a doll instead of you. Ah, uh, Appa. Full of energy once again, Im Seo Young slapped my shoulder. The other members had expressions that they expected this and laughed. I secretly checked the cameraman's expressions. Since the studio, Im Seo Young's current self was quite close to her normal self. To me, it looked like she was giving off a favorable expression, but that might be because I was like a hedgehog parent. 1. Wondering how others looked at her, my worries sneaked up before subsiding. The lips of the cameramen, who were looking at him C.O. Young, were curled upwards. Also, their eyes gave off the nice impression of an uni and appa. On the pavement where good-looking vans were lined up outside the broadcasting company. Passengers were already present in the van we were to ride. Jang Naksu and Kim Dongo were planning out the comments they would give each other and the reactions they would make. It was almost like a rehearsal. When we approached, Kim Dongo gave me a displeased look. He was acting like this for a while now. Well, I didn't really care about glances like his since I received plenty of them while going around with Neptune. Just, I didn't know why he was acting like that. Did he think my reactions were too soft and he didn't like them? However, those were the best reactions I could make when his jokes could even make time and space curl up. When the cast and the MC shuddered at his jokes, wouldn't it be weirder if I alone gave him a standing ovation? Whatever the reason, since it looked like I was the junior here, I cleared my throat and said. I'll drive. No, you can't. Park Taepyeong suddenly came out behind me. You heard the rules in the studio. As soon as you get in the van, your positions are switched. 
celebrities become managers and managers become celebrities. As he said this, he handed us name tags. My name was on the name tags Neptune received, and all four of their names were on mine. This meant I need to act like all four of them by myself. I was going to be busy. When I looked at the girls to see what they were up to, they had their heads pressed against each other and were whispering amongst each other. Park Taepyeong looked around as he said. Since Mr. Young Sun Woo and Mr. Kim Dongo are celebrities here, eliminated, since in the MC, eliminated, which means one of the remaining people has to drive. Uh, are you going to ride with us? When Kim Dongo happily asked, Park Taepyeong nodded his head. Since we're going anyways, I decided to go with the team that looked like they'll get a lot of airtime. Thank you. We prepared a few more jokes so could yo. Don't do them. It's already cold, you'll freeze to death. After shouting, Park Taepyeong placed his hand on my shoulder. Also, it's not your team, but his. At his additional words, Kim Dong-ho's expression crumbled. The team that seemed like they would get a lot of airtime. This was the evaluation we received from the great Park Taepyeong, who was known to be as prickly as sandpaper. Although I expected this when the staff's reactions became excessively positive and when Kim Hyunjo's smiling face grew wider, this was really a great start. Jang Naksu took the wheel. He had no choice since we couldn't let the girls drive. As she made her way to the backmost seat, I'm CO Young mumbled. I have a driver's license too. I got one just for situations like this. No, put it away. Yours isn't for driving but a form of ID. If you drive, our closing scene will be at a police station or an emergency hospital. Being the last person, I was about to get in when the van suddenly burst into laughter. Park Tapion was holding his belly as he laughed. It wasn't because he was aware of the cameras installed in the van, but he was laughing for real. I almost slipped when I tried to get in because of the girls' expressions sitting at the back together. They all had their mouths firmly shut and were straining their eyes. They were doing their best to make frowning faces. Park Taepyeong was laughing out loud as he said something about how they should go get a refund with those faces. I opened and closed my mouth before asking. What are you doing? We are imitating Appa's face. It seemed she was trying to hold her laughter as M. Seo Young's lips trembled when she talked. Do you have a grudge against me? When did I ever make a face like that? Look at a mirror. LJ replied. Then, as if she just remembered, she looked in a mirror and smiled. I need to practice smiling. I need to practice too. I'm Seo Young enthusiastically joined in. I looked at them dumbfounded when Lee Tae Hee directed her phone at me. I need to take this. She said as she took a picture. Her eyes were smiling. Even more excited, I'm Seo Young gave her a tip. Uni, you can't take a good picture. The picture's appa takes look like they were taken with his feet. Stop it. While these words made their way up my throat, what left my mouth was a sigh. Still astonished, I got in the van. Park Taepyeong looked at me amongst the girls, who were still making frowning faces, and laughed even louder. That man was going to throw up if he kept laughing like that. Just then, someone leaned in from behind me. Fortunately, it was Lee Songa this time. Just as I relaxed from being worried about what it would be now, Lee Song has forehead wrinkled as she said. When you get in a car, you need to put on your seatbelt. Following this, it was a complete mess. Throughout the time we were on the road and when the recording continued afterwards, the girls enthusiastically imitated me, and in order to repay them, I put my heart into acting like the four of them by myself. Should I say it was like, if one side threw a bomb, then the other would launch a missile, which led to the first side launching an atomic bomb. In the end, what I was saying was that both sides were completely beaten up. It was such a mess that I wondered if it would be okay for the broadcast, but people's reactions were good. The camera woman following me kept mumbling that there was nothing to cut out. Yeah, if the broadcast ended up being entertaining, and if Neptune's first time on a public network was a success, then we had pretty much attained our goal. My image, that had just gone through a blender, well, like always, it would momentarily be talked about before quieting down. It would. It must. 
Anyways, what remained after the recording were the staff's warm smiles. Park Tapyang's empty promise, telling Neptune that he would cast them on his weekend entertainment show and to bring me along with them. Also, some memories that would make me kick my blanket at night. Ah, uh, right. One more thing. We got the winning prize, a top quality beef set. A few days after the entertainment recording that felt like it would forever remain in my dark past. As a reward for appearing on the entertainment show, that day finally arrived. A day that made me feel as though I was on the same level as dragons and mermaids. The day that would come only if I forgot about it. The day that made me rage as it disappeared like a mirage multiple times before. It was a break. I had prepared a perfect plan two days ahead of time for this day. First, I would watch a movie early in the morning then have simple lunch near the theater. After watching a second and third movie, I would have dinner and recover myself with a cup of coffee. Finally, I planned on watching the most anticipated blockbuster. Just thinking about it made my heart ache with happiness. While humming, I bought a coffee and popcorn. Then I joined the group of people who came as couples or friends and got on the elevator. Enjoying a movie by yourself was the best. Of course, of course. To be honest, I didn't have any friends who would watch for movies in a day with me. I'll check your ticket. Thank you. The theater employee's normal greeting sounded like an angel playing the bugle. I showed her my mobile ticket. After checking that I had four movie tickets at different times, the employee looked at me as if wondering what kind of person I was. I entered the multiplex with light steps. A mobile communications ad was playing on the screen. I sat in the seat which was like the nest for my soul and took out my phone. Should I set it to silent or vibrate? Although Kim Hyunjo told me to rest easy as he would absolutely not call me today no matter what happened, too many unavoidable incidents occurred in the life of a manager. If I set it to vibrate, I thought I wouldn't be able to concentrate on the movie because I was concerned that I might have received a call. I said it was the quietest vibrate setting and was about to put it in my pocket when it vibrated. I felt an ominous feeling that I shouldn't check what it was. No, there was no way the world would be so cruel to me. While hoping it was spam, I stared at my phone screen. I still had hope when I saw the number started with a zero two, but damn it, the middle numbers were familiar. Although I didn't know which team it was, it was from work. Hello. Thinking about it for a few seconds, I went out towards the door and answered the phone. I heard an unfamiliar woman's voice. Is this manager Yung Sun Woo? I'm sorry for calling you on your break. You just needed to tell me trivial matters and hang up within a minute. What is it? Did Neptune? No, it's not about Neptune. This is team 2, but it looks like we need to you cover for someone today. Our team leader said he would personally talk to Team 3 so you just need to go pick her up right now. As expected, I didn't have a good feeling. I barely contained my urge to go, BZZ, BZZ, sorry, I can't hear you, and hang up. There were so many employees in the company, but why did they need to pass on a schedule to someone who was on his break for a change? First, I should call Kim Hyunjo and ask what. Chief Joe will call you and explain in more detail. Wait, who? Chief Joe. With a feeling of having watched a horror movie, I asked. The schedule I'm covering for, who's it for? M.S. Sun Chai Young. Chapter, 82. Who? M.S. Sun Chai Young. Just what was happening? Why did this name come up? I thought it was weird for Team 2 to ask me who was a part of Team 3 and was also on a break for a change, to cover for them, but did Sun Chai Young choose me? A chill swept through me. It was better when she wanted to take me down, it was more spine-chilling now that she was trying to take me away. The future I had seen last time suddenly crossed my mind. The future where I was Sun Chai Young's manager. The one that was a risk to my mental health. I wasn't certain whether that future changed since I rejected her proposal or not. There was no way I could know why I became assigned to Sun Chai Young with what I had seen. However, it felt like if I accepted to cover for them, I would get closer to that future. It wasn't only my break that would be wasted, I felt like my happy life plans would go to waste as well. 
I placed my phone next to my ear then further away as I said. Hello, hello. I think it's because I'm in the elevator, but I can't hear you very well. They'll call you back when I get off. Pardon? Hello? I hung up and called Kim Hyunjo. He didn't answer. It was the same for the Team 3 leader. Were they together? Were they in the middle of a meeting? The more I thought about it, the weirder it seemed. They knew about my relationship with Sun Chai Young well enough. If there was a situation where I would have to cover for Sun Chai Young's schedule, there was no way they wouldn't tell me. I even thought that perhaps they didn't know what was going on. First, I sent a text to Kim Hyunjo then racked my brain. What sort of excuse should I tell the Team 2 employee? Should I tell her I was aching with pain? Or that I went to the countryside to meet my parents? Or should I? I called someone. She was someone who always answered the phone as if she had been waiting for it, but the ringtone rang longer than usual today. I was waiting for her while I was tapping on the floor with my heel when I heard her drowsy voice. Appa? Is it you? Yeah, Sangha. Sorry, did you wake up because of me? No, I'm awake. Her voice brightened. I also heard the rustling sounds of her getting out of bed. I could picture her in my head. She probably had her phone right next to her ear with a dazed expression. Do you have anything going on today? Or are you busy? Nope. I was going to practice for tomorrow's shoot, but I don't have to. I already practiced a lot. Really? I have to make up some excuse to see you, are sick or anything. After a moment of silence, Lee Songa said. I suddenly feel like I'm going to throw up. From the other side of the phone, I heard a retching sound. I refunded my movie tickets and used that money to buy chicken. Then I fled to Neptune's residence. When I explained the situation to the Team 2 employee, I could tell she was flustered. It felt like she wanted to say something, but what could she do? I had to take care of Lee Sangha, who I was assigned to, over covering for someone. When I sighed, saying that I was worried since we had to go to film tomorrow morning, she was at a loss for words. After I arrived at their residence, I received a call from Kim Hyunjo, and as expected, he was in a meeting. It was a meeting with Team 2. Apparently, the Team 2 leader brought up the matter of covering for Sun Chai Young after the meeting. He said something about how Chief Joe looked favorably upon me so he wanted to give me a chance and how he would make up for making me work on my break by giving me a break later. Since the Team 2 leader kept spouting nonsense about how there was no problem, the two team leaders were fighting. If I had gone to pick up Sun Chai Young after the call, there was a 100% chance that I would have been told to cover for Chief Joe since I was already there. Kim Hyunjo said that today was a disaster and acknowledged me taking refuge. Also, he said that I would get another day off soon. I think the refugee situation ended. So you can stop now. Lee Sangha, who was lying in bed breathing softly, turned her head. It was sad just looking at her reddened cheeks and her soaked forehead. I felt like I had to take her to the emergency right away. I felt this way even though I knew her hot cheeks were because of the electric blanket beneath her covers and the cold sweat on her forehead was because M. C. O. Young had sprayed her with a spray bottle. Is it over? You don't have to leave anymore. Yeah. Thanks. If this happens again, come over. Okay. I get it so get up. You don't have to do this. No one's going to come check on you so there's no need for you to act so realistically. You look like I really need to feed you rice porridge. Appa, you know how to make rice porridge? Of course, I do. Why? You want some? She had been about to get up while wiping her forehead when she looked like she was going to lie back down. I'm kidding. I bought chicken. Aren't you going to eat chicken? She was considering it. Now really, what was there to consider? I dragged Lee Sangha, who looked a little regretful, out to the living room. I thought I had heard bustling noises outside the door, but they had already set the table with food, the chicken in the middle. Sitting on the sofa she always sat on, Im Seo Young sighed as she said. Appa, your break has been ruined again. We really need to move up in this damn world. I know, right? Oh, right. Appa, Appa, you know the entertainment show we were on. 
won't the company make you do this and that if you get really popular from it? I'm fine so you get popular first. At my words, Im Seo Young's complexion became dark. She went around in circles like a puppy who had to go to the washroom before tightly hugging a cushion lying on the sofa and saying. Yua, I'm already scared to death. My entire family's going to watch it when I go back home for Lunar New Year's Day. They'll definitely have high expectations for me. But what do I do if everything was cut out because it wasn't funny? Don't worry. The producer said it would be funny even if he edited it with his toes. How can Appa be so calm? You said your family is going to watch it too. Just give up thinking about it. It's easier if you just forget about it. I set aside such useless thoughts and was concerned about how many days I would rest during the long weekend. With Kim Hyunjo's schedule as the focus, we were trying to free up as much time as we could for the long weekend. But this broadcasting industry wasn't a place that rested when others did so it was almost impossible for us to take a break the entire long weekend. What are you girls going to do during the long weekend? I asked the other girls. Lee Sangha, who was sitting near my leg eating chicken, was the first to reply. I'm going home too. My dad said hell come pick me up. That's good. We're going to watch Star Manager together too. Although it was faint, her voice definitely contained traces of excitement. She said her parents didn't like her being a celebrity, asking why she kept doing something that wasn't working out. Now their thoughts that this wasn't working out would change as well since the current Lee Sangha was a big celebrity. Lee Taehee, who had already opened a can of beer, said. I'm just going to stay here. I don't have anywhere to go. What? Why don't you? What about your home? My parents are going on a vacation. I'm just going to catch up on my sleep during the long weekend. What a surprise. I thought that something had happened at her home. A girl who sleeps wherever she rests her head needs to catch up on sleep. Are you going to go on hibernation? Relieved, I said jokingly and Lee Tae smiled while drinking beer. LJ, who had been fiddling with the remote control, said. It'll be here too. It's not such an amazing day that I have to go to the States for it. Ah, LJ's parents were in the States. Still, I thought it might be lonely if only the two of them remained, but LJ suddenly smiled strangely. It'll just exercise. Well, if I really get bored, it'll go play in I'm Seo Young's room. What? Hey, no way. What are you planning on doing in my room? I'm going to lock my door before I go. I can pick that in three seconds. You you're lying, right? You joking again, right? Im Seo Young shouted, threatening her about going in her room. She had been digging a hole just now, worried that the entertainment special would flop, but it seemed she had forgotten all about it because of LJ. LJ was also enjoying herself while she poked fun at Im Seo Young. They didn't really look they would get along with each other but they did. On one side, it was noisy as usual, and on the other, their leader just watched over them as though they were children while drinking her beer. The youngest was eating enthusiastically before handing me a chicken wing. In this familiar space, I simply grinned. Suddenly, LJ said. Ah, you said you didn't get to watch any movies. You have two choices. Choices. LJ waved the remote. 1. Watching a new movie on IPTV 1. 2. We binge watch Mermaid Out of Water from the first episode. I think ITLL be worth watching that. We unanimously chose option 2. It was a great choice. I laughed so hard that I relieved my stress. In the end, it wasn't a bad, no, it was quite a good break. We got three days and two nights for our long weekend. It was shorter than the official long weekend, but even this would have been impossible if we didn't slave away on the phone. Kim Hyunjo and I promised to not look for each other unless the sky was collapsing or something. The day my long weekend began, I got up early in the morning and left Seoul. Even though the traffic congestion was severe on the highway, I didn't get annoyed and even started humming. The further away I got from Seoul and the closer I got to my family, the lighter my heart felt. It was the ropes which had bound me were cut one by one. How long had it been since I felt this sensation of freedom? Long after I left the inner city, 
long after I passed the high-rises that were getting rarer and rarer. And long after I drove down the dirt country roads where the farmland was barren because it was winter, I arrived in the town my parents resided in. Maybe it was because I was an unfamiliar face, but the townspeople gave me strange looks. I parked my car and entered my parents' house. In the flower bed on one side of the yard was still the fake tree the quadruplets had planted on Christmas, and beside it, a shaggy dog was sleeping in its doghouse, unaware that a person had come. It seemed my brother's family had already arrived as even the yard was bustling with noise. Im home. As soon as I opened the door, the smell of Korean pancakes too welcomed me. Also, four round figures gathered around and stuck next to me. One on my stomach, one on my back, and one on each arm. Uncle. Yes, my children. I felt purified. I patted each head, and the third, Curl three, smiled mischievously. Why are we uncle's children? When we are our dad's children. Let's forget about the biological factors. I took care of you half the time. No, you didn't. We grew up by ourselves. This is why they say there's no use being good to your nieces and nephews. Do you know how many of your toys I bought with my part-time job salary? I bought a ton of stuff to eat but I guess I'll eat it all by myself. You guys have no right to eat what I brought. Only then did they seem aware of the shopping bags in my hands as they scrambled to change their words. No, I want to be uncle's kid. Me too. Like that, they flapped around like chicks asking for food. I passed the kids the shopping bags and greeted my other family members. My brother and sister-in-law were the same as ever. My brother, who was reading a book on the sofa, took off his glasses and smiled. I might end up forgetting your face. If you think it's getting dangerous, just look at father. I looked the same as him. My father, who was eating a pear my sister-in-law had peeled for him, frowned. My sister-in-law and my mom laughed, their shoulders shaking. I looked at them while I unpacked, and it seemed that the countryside suited them as my parents' complexions were a lot better than when they were living in Seoul. My mom touched my face as she sighed. Just look at how much weight you lost. Are all managers this busy? I thought I had lost one of my children. For someone who just got in a company, he has to work hard if he wants to settle in. My mom gave a disapproving look when my father said this. While eating a pear, I suddenly remembered and looked through my bag. Then I took out a stiff piece of paper I had put in an envelope. Father, here. What's this? Mrs. Jang Yunok's autograph. I got her to write my father's name and about how she wished for his complete recovery. My father, who didn't smile much, had a smile hanging from his lips. I handed my mom and my sister-in-law each an autograph of Seo Jijun. Looking at their reactions, it was a success. Seo Jijun was effective regardless of age. Just then, my brother smiled brightly as he said. But Sun Wu, I heard you're appearing on TV. That's right. Ah, uh, what was it? Star manager. I heard you're appearing on that. You should have told us. We only learned about this after hearing it from mother-in-law. At my sister-in-law's words, I turned my gaze towards my mom. My mom waved her hands as she said. I only told daughter-in-law. Hey, Sun Wu, are you appearing on TV? It ended up that way, uncle. Sun Wu. I heard you're appearing on TV. Eldest brother was worried whether you being a manager would be okay, but if you're appearing on TV, aren't you a success? But do all managers appear on TV nowadays? I just happened to go on once, aunt. Sun Wu, are you really appearing on TV? Star, star, what was it? Star manager. I wish it was a lie. Sun Wu, are you? Yes, I am. I had expected this. My mom only told my sister-in-law, my sister-in-law only told someone else, and that someone else only told someone else. As the start of the special broadcast approached, my uncle's family and even my aunt's families, who went to their in-laws early before coming here, gathered at my parents' house. The living room was bustling with people. Chapter, 83 those who liked alcohol drank, leaving the meat pancakes and pollock pancakes on top of the platform table alone, 
and those who didn't drink, including the quadruplets, ate fruits as they all waited for the TV commercial to end. Of course, the topic of conversation on both sides was me. Sun Wu, if there were things like this, you shouldn't have hidden it and told me right away. I almost missed it without knowing. Why? Did you not do well during the recording? Were you stuttering and trembling on TV? But he isn't the type to go somewhere and tremble, you know. Also, all the weird parts would have been edited out anyways, right? All broadcasts are like that. Don't tell me you were completely edited out and you only show up for a few seconds. I emptied my heart and slouched deep into the sofa. My older cousin, who was the latest to arrive, said. Ah, but eldest uncle set up the parking space outside, right? Some bad-mannered person parked his car there. A white minivan. Completely new. It's not one of ours, right? That's mine. My cousin's eyes widened at my words. You drove it here. Is it a company car? Hey, then is it a celebrity's? No, it's mine. This time, it wasn't just my cousin, other people's eyes widened as well. What? It hasn't been that long since you've started working and you bought a car already. An installment plan. You idiot, you got some guts. You're gonna break your back paying that off. He didn't buy it, his company CEO bought it for him. For doing a good job. My mom said abruptly. It seemed she still felt uneasy that I received a car as her expression wasn't good. Well, it wasn't only my mom who was like this. My brother and sister-in-law repeatedly told me it was strange and advised me to look into it. My cousin dragged his butt over towards me. Your company CEO bought you a car. Is your CEO a woman? What are you thinking? He's a middle-aged man. Then it's even weirder. No matter how great of a job you do, instead of giving you a bonus or a raise, he gave a new employee a car. What kind of person is he? What kind of person was CEO Beck Hansung? With the sweet persimmon the quadruplets brought me in my mouth, I mumbled. He's someone a lot of managers consider a role model. To be honest, I thought the same before I met him, but after joining and interacting with him, everything about CEO Beck Hansung left a deeper impression on me. Should I say he was like the ideal CEO I had imagined? I had momentarily been lost in my thoughts when reality washed over me like a tsunami. Quiet. It's starting, it's starting. The title star manager filled the TV screen. The living room, which had been noisy as a marketplace, instantly became quiet. Even the quadruplets lined up in front of the TV and widened their already round eyes with the intent of finding me on the screen. The jib operator swept over the studio with an overlooking shot. On the manager's side, it seemed like it should swipe past me when it caught me in a close-up. Oh my, brother. It's Sun Wu, Sun Wu. There's Sun Wu over there. Wow, young Sun Wu. You really are on TV. But do you have makeup on? Just how many celebrities are on there? Did you talk with all of them? With one hand tightly gripping the remote control, I replied to the outpour of questions. The broadcast was only starting but I felt parched. I glugged down my Siki one. Then I went into a coughing fit and almost threw it all up. The MCs were about to introduce me when an insert began to play. It was me sitting at a company desk, diligently adjusting the schedule. There was no one with me. It was just me talking into my phone alone. Then I crossed my arms together and nodded in front of the whiteboard. It was the so-called setup shot for my profile. Wow, uncle is freaking cool. Is that W? Is black out there too? Sun Wu, when you're like that, you look like a different person. You look quite the part. Is that your office? Are there nice female employee there? Just let him be. Sun Wu might even marry a celebrity. Please let this just pass. Please. Quickly. They went through other people's introductions really quickly, but why was mine so long? Lastly, they showed a group picture of me with Neptune and a picture of Lee Sangha clinging on my back, which I had no doubt the PR team gave them. The living room erupted into a commotion once more. It was noisier than during the World Cup. Alternating between the TV and my phone, 
I focused on monitoring the broadcast. Although I didn't want to think about work when I had come down to my parents' home for the long weekend, my desire was surging right now. I felt like I had to work if I wanted to endure this for an entire hour. It seemed that IBC worked hard to promote the program. There were quite a few viewers uploading comments as they watched the broadcast. To be honest, I was worried how they would deal with the overall crisis, but after seeing the broadcast, it seemed I was worried for nothing. They didn't call producers producers for nothing. They added a sufficient amount of comments by the celebrities and did their best to liven up the disordered managers with captions and through editing. Park Taepyeong mumbling about how the program would flop like this and the celebrities were at a loss for words as they saw how their managers behaved, adding these reactions enriched the fun. It was to the point it made me expectant of the viewers' reactions. First of all, the reactions at home were explosive. Thrilled, the quadruplets clung to my arms and legs and pled. Uncle, can I tell others at school that you were on TV? Me too. Can I tell them that the quadruplets you mentioned were us? Of course, the adults were thrilled as well. Oh my, look at him. Oh, gosh. Why is he so funny? Hey, it's strange that someone I know is on TV making me laugh. Isn't Sunwoo appearing a lot? Isn't he appearing more than celebrities? However, this excitement filled with this positivity changed once Lee Song has story began. After steadily setting up the kindling by talking about the controversies that came up since she was cast for the drama and the process she underwent to overcome them and become an icon of unanticipated surprise. She poured embers and oil all over it at the end. The verbal abuse she received from her acting teacher. The cast on the screen was outraged and so were my relatives sitting in the living room. In the internet site I briefly entered, an unspecified majority of viewers were criticizing, saying, just where did a fool like him come from? It was at this moment when the reporters, who had to wait after receiving the press release due to the embargo, published their articles at once. With this much firepower, it would undoubtedly still be a hot topic after the long weekend. Teacher Shim kyung Take should be with his family during the holiday too, right? When I thought about what kind of expression he would have if he was watching this broadcast right now, I felt like I was showering in carbonated water. My smile was reaching my ears when I felt a ticklish gaze. When I looked around, it was my father. What should I say? He was looking at me with a slightly happy face, but when our eyes met, he quickly cleared his throat and turned away. When I looked around, it wasn't just my father. My mom, brother, even my relatives. They were all looking at me in a new light. As soon as I saw the TV, I knew why. On the screen, Sangha was talking about me with glittering eyes. Big brother doesn't need to worry about his second child anymore. It looks like he's doing well. At my aunt's words, my father didn't reply and simply drank his alcohol. With a face brighter than ever, my mom's gaze was fixed on the TV screen. Whenever my face appeared on the screen or when the Neptune members talked about me, she drew my brother and sister-in-law closer and began discussing with them. When looking at her like that, I felt it wasn't that bad. Although it was a broadcast I appeared on due to various circumstances, well, it wasn't bad. As soon as the manager quiz corner began, the living room became noisy again. On the set, Lee Sangha and I were way ahead of the others, and the edited version reflected just that. Every time Lee Sangha raised her hand, my relatives laughed their heads off. Looking at my phone, the viewers' reactions were the best so far. Those depressed during this holiday, quickly turn on IBC. So fun. I'm watching it with my family as well and we're all laughing our heads off. It's great. It's the best entertainment program I've seen recently. I only knew Lee Sangha from Neptune, but their other members have a ton of charm too. Especially their manager, he's been carrying hard for a while now. 2. It was great that the reactions were so explosive, but I felt troubled because it seemed like the word manager was being mentioned as much as the names of Neptune's members. I hoped that it would burn well throughout the broadcast, leaving only ash afterwards, so that it would quiet down. I was more concerned because I was contacted by various people, including my friends, who seemed to be watching the live broadcast. I was also receiving a ton from broadcast producers and reporters I was familiar with. 
I was purposely not checking them so that I could once I regained some mental composure after the broadcast, but one message caught my eye. It was from producer Go Junti. He hadn't contacted me personally since the casting of Seo Jijun fell through. Since I saw an unexpected emoticon as well, I checked it out of curiosity. Mr. Sun Wu. I am currently watching Star Manager's broadcast, but if I had known Mr. Sun Wu had such great entertainment senses, I would have already. After reading this far, I turned my phone off. This guy was impossible. Anyways, seeing as how producer Go Junti was behaving like this, it seemed that today's broadcast really was a success. Just as I was thinking about how great it would be if we could nab both viewership ratings and trendiness so that Neptune's popularity could rise significantly, the mood in the living room stirred greatly. I quickly looked at the TV. I felt it would be the case, but the MCs were asking the celebrities about their manager's dark pasts. When my mom asked what a dark past was, the quadruplets chattered away, explaining it to her. Even if it's an entertainment show, why do they ask things like that? Even while saying this, my uncle's torso had already turned partly towards the TV. Although my other relatives were acting like they weren't interested, I could tell they all had their ears perked, ready to listen. Just as LJ opened her mouth on screen, I secretly pressed the mute button. Should I say it was my last struggle to avoid public embarrassment? What the? Why isn't there any sound? What did that girl just say? I think someone pressed the mute button. Where's the remote? The remote. The people who were going through the living room looking for the remote quickly declared me as the culprit. So quick-witted. When I looked at them with narrowed eyes, they each raised their voice, asking if they were the type who would mock me after listening to my embarrassing story. Their expressions were already prepared to mock me though. Luckily, since there wasn't anyone taller than me, I endured while holding my hand that was holding the remote up in the air. A few were shouting about wanting to hear what was said, and others were laughing hysterically at this sight. Then my cousin took out his phone. I bet someone already mentioned it on the internet. He said before his eyes went wide after a few taps. Damn it, he saw it. My aunt, who had been vigilantly targeting the remote, urged. Why? What is it? Just what is his dark past that's so surprising? No, that's not the problem. My cousin said in a dazed voice as he looked at me. He's currently ranked one on trending. Star manager hit 11% national ratings in the end. It was the best result out of the Lunar New Year specials each channel showed off. Since the second highest barely passed 8%, we were unmatched as first. Reporters and critics said that, if this had been a pilot instead of a special, it would undoubtedly have become a regularly scheduled program. Search terms related to the special were lined up along the search rankings. Since the broadcast felt well composed on top of being on a public network, I had held a bit of expectation for it, but it was way beyond my imagination. Although I had expected Lee Sangha to receive attention, the amount of attention on M. C. O. Young was great as well. After having checked the reactions on the internet and of those around her the next day, M. C. O. Young even called me, crying and saying that she couldn't believe it. Also, what was most important is that Neptune's popularity surged. If they had slowly built up their image as a talented girl group on Next K Star, a competition program, then this time, they properly showed off Neptune's charm, which they hadn't had the opportunity to show off until now. For something that the company employees had difficulty achieving no matter how much they racked their brains to be accomplished with one entertainment show. So this was why celebrities tried so hard to get on public network entertainment shows. Since their value increased, a sudden change occurred. Requests for events came in like crazy. We also received a few broadcast casting calls. Many were looking to cast Lee Sangha or M. C. O. Young, but there were also quite a few who wanted to cast Neptune as a complete group. There were big weekend public network entertainment shows which we hadn't dared to even try to appear on among them as well. These were the happy things that occurred during the long weekend. On the other hand, there were also troublesome matters as well. My name was at the top of the lineup of star manager related search terms in the search rankings. Many of those big entertainment programs who gave us a casting call, as if they were buying a Levin deal, wanted me to appear on the show with Neptune. Also, damn it. People recognized me now. 
Chapter, 84. This is W.U.'s PR team. The female employee received the call with a face, which still contained traces of the aftermath of the long weekend. I wanted to ask for the contact information of the person in charge of Neptune to cast them on an IBC broadcast. Yes, please wait. I would like manager Young Sun Woo's number, who appeared on the Lunar New Year special. It's an entertainment show on parenting. After telling him Young Sun Woo's phone number, the female employee hung up and said. There really are a lot of people looking for Mr. Sun Woo. He's a new face in the industry for a change. The reactions of the public are good too. Since cases like this heat up quickly before cooling down, they want to milk what they can out of it. The male employee shrugged. The female employee said. Either way, Neptune's popularity rose because of this. The company should give Mr. Sun Woo a bonus. It looks like he might even get promoted. Since they lack personnel once Neptune members have their own schedules, Chief Kim Hyunjo said that he should recruit another manager under him. The female employee, who had been tapping her chin with her pen, turned her head. Beyond the partition, Team Leader Park was looking at her monitor while drinking hot coffee. She asked Team Leader Park. Team Leader, does Mr. Sun Woo have any thoughts on going on any more entertainment shows? I don't know. It doesn't seem like it. He probably wouldn't have done it this time as well if it wasn't for Neptune. That's a bit of a shame. Just as the female employee licked her lips, a middle-aged man entered the PR team's office. He wore a scarf and a coat, and his body was round like a Russian nesting doll. His balding head looked especially cold in the winter. He was the director. Receiving the greetings of the employees, the director immediately asked Team Leader Park. Team Leader Park, did you hear? IBC's Wednesday through Thursday drama, Time Slip. Apparently, the director had an affair with the writer, and his wife came to the film set and caused a fuss. Of course, I did. That's why they hastily got another writer to work with their B-team director. Lucky Charm was the one who brought information about how there was something going on over there, right? Just where did he hear it from? The female employee, who had been listening to their conversation, poked the male employee's side with her elbow. Cat Guardian Ghost, Mermaid Out of Water, Time Slip. What Mr. Sun Woo told us in the beginning came true. This is a great story, but if Mr. Sun Woo went out on entertainment shows and talked about it no one would believe him, right? The director glanced at the female employee and said. Of course. Right, I heard the reactions from Lucky Charm appearing on the entertainment show were good. Did you not see the broadcast? Culture critics and reporters picked him as one of the biggest beneficiaries of the Lunar New Year specials. Oh, wow. He was that good. He wasn't the funny type though, was he? No. From an outside perspective, he looks like someone who is a bit distant from entertainment shows, but once his character was established in that way, this gap was rather entertaining. The female employee slowly raised her hand. Should I show you? I saved a few clips that were floating around. The director, male employee, and team leader Park immediately gathered behind the female employee's monitor. When she showed them clips regarding the lie detector and Neptune and Young Sun Woo imitating each other, the director chuckled. While clicking on the last video, the female employee said. I found this to be the funniest. While watching the broadcast, I choked on my water when this part came up. It was the scene where they exposed their manager's dark past. Im Seo Young shouted about how they might lose like this. This was followed by Young Sun Woo, whose makeup made him seem more unfriendly looking, trying to stop her by saying he would buy her the beef set. When the MCs egged her on, Im Seo Young opened her mouth. It was in the past. It was early in the morning so everyone was taking a nap in the van. I was the only one awake when I heard Sun Woo Appa say, what should I do if aliens invade? Aliens? The puzzled faces of the MCs and cast were reflected on the screen. Even Young Sun Woo didn't look like he knew what she was talking about. So when I asked him, why aliens all of a sudden? Then Appa, in a completely serious way, said, then do I have to save the earth? Do I? Later on, I figured out he was talking in his sleep. The studio erupted into laughter. The screen once again captured Young Sun Woo in a close-up. 
Although he didn't look like he was very flustered, when the camera closed in, they could see his eyes were trembling. When I asked, Appa, how are you going to save the world? He said, it's a secret, before saying, hmm. He'll never wear a spandex suit. The director burst into laughter. The festive mood heated up. The spectators gathered on the field cheered. I saw quite a few older people shouting Neptune and the members' names. I felt it was because of Star Manager. It raised their popularity in more diverse age groups. There was only one song left in Neptune's performance. When I looked at my wristwatch, it was almost the time I had expected it would be. While I was checking the path that I should take to bring the van over, an event agency employee I was familiar with came up to me and said. Mr. Manager, how is Neptune's schedule these days? They are very busy, right? It was times like this when I felt that Neptune had truly taken off. When the words Mr. Manager came out the mouths of those who used to say, Hey, Manager. When the people who used to ask, We cast girl groups even if they are unknown since they are good for heating up the mood at events, but don't you have more revealing outfits? Minded my reaction while asking if we were busy these days. Compared to before, we're very busy. Wow, you guys really grew suddenly. I mean, a few months ago when I said we booked Neptune to the event organizers, they would ask who they were. But now when I tell them we booked Neptune, they are happy. The employee, who had been smiling friendlily as if we were close, stealthily cut the chase. Mr. Manager, Neptune is going to release a new song soon, right? We are in the middle of recording it. We should book some events before then. If their new song becomes a hit, then we probably won't be able to book them at the current price. Even if the price increases, please go easy on us about the price adjustments. We'll have to see WHE, ah, uh, one moment. My phone rang while I was talking. Yes, this is Young Sun Woo. Hello. I am calling about appearing on a broadcast. The writer explained quickly as if it was a rap. It seemed the event agency employee heard what we were talking about as he distanced himself from me while smacking his lips. I took out my notebook and wrote the title, filming schedule, broadcast concept, and the expected date. A happy smile hung on my lips as I looked at the memo filled with casting calls. The smile, which hung on my lips, soon came back down. So we were hoping Mr. Manager will be able to appear on the show with Neptune. Me too. Is this essential? We are contacting you since we thought your team would be a great fit with us after watching Star Manager. Ah, of course, we will pay you separately for your appear. After listening to the writer's words, I said. I will call you back after we check our schedule. After hanging up, I clicked my tongue almost out of habit. How many times was this? The aftermath was too strong considering I only appeared on one show. When would those people who pointed at me, saying, ah, you're that that, or people who said nonsense like do you work as a manager full-time and save the world on the side? Disappear. Damn it. My damn sleep talking. It probably began not long after I obtained my future foresight ability, during the time I was wondering why I obtained such a special ability. There definitely was a time when I was worried that perhaps aliens would invade Earth and that someone would come and say, our abilities are for the protection of Earth. Let's go protect Earth together. However, I didn't know I talked in my sleep. If it wasn't for him Seo Young, I never would have known. Shaking my head, I turned my gaze towards the traitor. Two girls, who looked to be middle schoolers, stood hesitantly in front of the traitor. Why? What's wrong? The traitor asked with his special smiling face. The girl who seemed to be more forward of the two was about to say something before she looked in my direction. As soon as our eyes met, she dragged her friend and came over to me. Ill talk to this person. The traitor frowned. I tried to smile the best I could and looked down at the girls while thinking that I should accept their request if possible for making my mood slightly better. Could we get autographs of Neptune Nunes later? Wait for a bit. Ill get you their autographs once they get in the van. Thank you. The girl who looked relatively more well mannered bowed deeply. Also, the other girl, whose lips had been twitching as if she wanted to say something, said. When are you going to save Earth? But I don't think a spandex suit is good. 
when you see superhero movies, they look funny no matter how great their body is. When they don't have any muscles, it looks completely awful. Then she glanced over my body. I was speechless. Was I being sexually harassed by a middle schooler? The well-mannered girl pulled her friend's arm and whispered. Hey, stop it. He looks like he's getting angry. No, he's not. I saw the broadcast and that's his normal expression. Right? You're not angry right now, right? I'm angry. I'm sorry. Their torsos folded like binders. Although I didn't know what sort of expression I had on right now, it probably wasn't good, seeing as the well-mannered girl was retreating as though she had just seen a heinous criminal. Only after the girls left as though they were running away did the traitor strike a conversation with me. Sun Wu. Why don't you consider appearing on more broadcasts? Just what kind of nonsense is that? It's a shame when people's reactions are this good. You might become successful if you use this opportunity to pivot into that industry completely. It seems like it suits you. After the incident last time, the way the trader treated me changed. His thick mask seemed to be slightly thinner in front of me. While thinking about how I wanted to slap his smiling cheeks with a chicken skewer, I replied. I think you'll make tons of money if you get in the pyramid scheme business, want to do it? I resisted calling him a scammer. When I jokingly said that it would suit him, his expression turned strange. His mouth didn't open again until Neptune came down from the stage. Lee Sangha came over while panting heavily. White steam spread in the air. I think today's the coldest. I turned the car heater on so quickly get inside and warm up. Appa should have waited in the car too. It's cold out. We got the girls, who were cold as if they had taken an ice bath, into the van. Im Seo Young, who was at the end, covered her face with both hands and tapped her feet. Yua, Appa. Cold air comes straight into our stage outfits. No joke. I thought I would freeze to death. If you die, we can bury you alongside me. I'm already a corpse. D did someone S.A. When I nodded my head, Im Seo Young looked like she was about to cry. She said that she would have never talked about my dark past and would rather sew her lips if she knew things would turn out this way. After getting Im Seo Young, who was slapping her lips, into the van, I looked around me. The girls from before were looking at me with anxious eyes from afar. When I gestured towards them, they hurriedly came over. After leaving the girls, who were happy about receiving the autographs, behind, we left the festival event. However, there were people gathering around us, saying that they wanted to see Neptune up close. This never happened before. I'm Seo Young readily rolled down her window and waved her hand. Cheers and sounds of pictures being taken erupted noisily. Really, a lot of things were changing. On the set of Mermaid Out of Water. The mood of this place was as depressing as a funeral. One couldn't find a trace of leisure or a smile on the faces of the staff, let alone the cast of actors. Everyone continued the shoot without rest as if they wanted to quickly end and get out of this drama that had fallen into the mud. In the dressing room, Sun Chai Young scolded Chief Joe. When is the CEO returning to Korea? I, I told you he's arriving tomorrow. Chief Joe continued after licking his lips. Chai Young, don't cause a fuss in front of the CEO and sit quietly like you don't know. This is a deal that was organized by the CEO. Without asking me. It's regarding the teacher. Appa should have told me at least. You don't have to worry. The team two leader said to handle it so that teacher Shim Kyung Tik never mentions your name. You just need to act like you don't know. After glaring at Chief Joe, who was trying his best to comfort her, Sun Chai Young looked down. Her phone in her hand was vibrating. Sun Chai Young made Chief Joe leave the dressing room before answering the phone. Teacher, once the CEO arrives, he'll try to fix this incident as much as I can. Fix. Do you think this is a problem that can be fixed? Teacher Shim Kyung Tik shouted as his anger had reached the top of his head. It was completely different from when he was fretting before. While Sun Chai Young had stopped speaking, Teacher Shim Kyung Tik raised his voice again. Is CEO Baek Hansung really overseas? Aren't you trying to drag this on, 
saying that you'll fix it, before dumping it all on me? Do you know what sort of position I'm in? Even if my name hasn't been mentioned in the articles, do you know many people called and asked if that was me? It's so embarrassing I can't go out. Sun Chai Young didn't reply and sat in the dressing room chair. The Lee Sangha incident was all for you, but do you think he'll take full responsibility for it? You're done if I start talking. If you don't want your image to end up in the sewer, you personally go to that idiot CEO Beck Hansung and get him to pull down all the articles and restrict the press. Don't threaten me, teacher. Sun Chai Young said while calmly smiling. WH what? Don't threaten me. Also, you didn't do it for me, it was a trade. You. Although I don't know what you heard from CEO Beck, I know better than you. I just need to reveal my medical history and hold a press conference. But, teacher, do you think you'll be able to handle everything that comes out of my mouth? Taken aback, teacher Shim Kyung Taek stuttered. Sun Chai Young hung up. Then she threw her phone on the floor. Chapter, 85 Are they all here to see the concert? The girls looked out the window with open mouths. Everyone's eyes were so wide that it seemed like they would pop out if they were hit on the back of the head. My eyes were no different since I was looking out the passenger seat window in surprise. The last recording for Next K-Star was a concert. It was a concert where the eight teams would show the performances they had showed off in the missions. Since it was a hot topic, I expected there to be a lot of people. However, I was speechless when I saw the number of people gathered at the entrance of the concert hall. Although there were audiences at music broadcasts and regional events, the scale was incomparable to this. Oh how many people are coming today? Since they said the tickets sold out, there should be more than 5,000. The trader replied from the driver's seat. 5,000. Im Seo Young displayed unusual behavior as she bit her nails. Since it seemed like she would even eat her fingers at this rate, I moved my arm behind me. Here, since there aren't any dolls, grab onto this. You will be blessed. I'm Seo Young grabbed my arm. Humans only had two hands, but why did it seem like the number of hands multiplied? Thinking something was strange, I turned around and saw that Lee Sangha was holding my hand as well. She was rarely nervous during drama shoots, yet it seemed she still found performances to be difficult. Her face was stiff. Well, it made sense since it hadn't been long since she heard that she alone was lowering the team's average. Uh, that person. Suddenly, Lee Taehee narrowed her eyes as she saw the crowd outside the car window. Why? Did you find someone you know? I think I saw him back when we held a gorilla concert in Hongdae. Kim Hyunjo was astonished at her reply. You still remember someone you saw then? He stood out because of his large figure and he was the first person to give us a present. Ah! The butter cookies? Im Seo Young stuck against the window. The butter cookies they received back then were still preserved in the living room. LJ threw them out multiple times because they were moldy, but Im Seo Young brought them back every time. They had a long life. Then did he come to see us? He probably came to see us, right? Don't know. He might have changed the team he supports during this time. LJ said something that lacked any dreams or hopes. However, Im Seo Young's eyes were already shining. Since she was someone who was concerned fans to an unusual degree, it seemed her confidence and motivation were surging at the thought that a fan had come. It wasn't only Im Seo Young, the other girls were the same. The atmosphere in the van gradually heated up. Since Next K-Star was a competition program, there were many in the audience who came to support a specific team. Also, there was bound to be a war of nerves when fans supporting different teams gathered in one place. Is Lee Taehee really that good at singing? I don't know about that. I'm not even sure if LJ is good at rapping or not. There are probably a lot of people who voted for Neptune because of Lee Song has looks. But is she really that pretty? I don't know if she's that pretty. Hey, to be honest, she really is that pretty. If you don't know this, then memorize it. A few who came to support Sugar Cats whispered amongst each other. Because there was a past between Sugar Cats and Im Seo Young, there was a mood of being wary of Neptune amongst their fans from the start. 
It was fine in the beginning since Sugar Cats was ranked high enough to compete against the boy groups while Neptune was at the bottom. However, as episodes aired, Neptune had long since passed them after being neck and neck for a while. Because of this, there was an especially large number of haters amongst the Sugar Cats fans. Although a few of the audience members who came to support Neptune revealed displeased expressions, the Sugar Cats fans continued to whisper. From behind them, a large hand that was the size of a saucepan tapped their shoulders. Hey, you people who know nothing, please be quiet. What? Can't we even spee? They suddenly halted while turning around out of irritation. His shoulders were broad and his figure was well built like an athlete. The Sugar Cats fans crouched quietly. If they got into an argument with the man behind them, they thought they might spectate the afterlife instead of the concert. Just then, a cameraman approached them carrying a 6mm camera. He shoved his camera towards the man behind them. I would like to ask for an interview. Who did you come to support? I came to support Neptune. The Sugar Cats fans in front of him crouched down even lower at his words. While they were whispering to each other if they should give their seats up and look for another place to sit. The woman accompanying the man smiled cunningly. Hey, why are so serious all the way here? I am Neptune's fan. I danced with my hands in the air after successfully getting a ticket. You have to be like that so that you can get on the broadcast and show your face to Neptune. Shut it. The man glared at her, but the woman didn't pay him any heed and said to the cameraman. We were there during the Gorilla concert too. At first, he snorted, saying that idol performances were lame. Ah, uh, really? When I told that he might end up becoming a fan of one of them and line up for their autograph a month later, he told me to stop with the nonsense. Yet he's like this now because he became a fan of Neptune. A chroma key fabric hung like a curtain on one wall and four chairs crowded below it. The Neptune members sat on the chairs and prepared for the preliminary interview. This is the last interview. Producer Go Jundi said while waving a densely filled questionnaire. Maybe it was because this was the last, but he looked less malicious today. His eyes, which had been filled with the obsession of raising the ratings, and his tongue, which tried its best to make them say more provocative remarks, were calm. At the first recording, five out of the seven teams picked Neptune as last place. However, today, which is the final day, you have reached third place in the overall ranking. As many complications as there were, do you reminisce about the past? Right, Im Seo Young was frozen stiff when she first heard those words. However, like producer Go Junti said, Neptune was third. Punchline was first, and considering that the second place was also a boy group, Neptune was first out of the girl groups. Even excluding the firepower for their fans, there were many who thought that their rank would go up. Honestly, there are times when I'm surprised when I wake up. Thinking it was a dream. Im Seo Young pressed her chest as she replied. Not so long ago, I was so worried that the team would be disbanded that I felt I was standing on the edge of a cliff, but my world has changed in only four months. I would be surprised, thinking it was a dream, then, when I realized it wasn't, I would become so happy. Her happiness was displayed through her expression and voice. Questions continued for a long while. Only after twice the time of other teams' interviews had passed did the preliminary interview end. When I looked at the time, it was almost time for the performance. I was about to leave right away when producer Go Junti held me back. Wait, I would like to interview Mr. Sun Wu a little. Me? If you think about it, Mr. Sun Wu is the one that brought us together. If Mr. Sun Wu didn't approach me four months ago, would today even have happened? Producer Go Jundi said with a bitter expression. Let's do an interview. I'm still being scolded for my superiors because the attempt to cast Mr. Seo Jijun fell through. That was good to hear. Since Kim Hyunjo left me behind after telling me to do the interview, I did an interview that wasn't scheduled. Although I didn't know if my interview would affect the ratings at all, it seemed producer Go Junti was satisfied nevertheless. After finishing everything, I awkwardly shook producer Go Junti's hand, while thinking. Let's not meet in the future. Twenty minutes before standby. A heavy tension hung in the waiting room. It felt like there wasn't enough oxygen. Sugar Cat's performance was going on outside. 
I could hear the screams of thousands of people all the way here. Neptune's first performance was right after them. The girls each had their own way of brushing off the tension. Im Seo Young was breathing deeply while hugging a large bag, and Lee Tae Hee and L J were concentrating with earphones in their ears. Also, Lee Song Da sat quietly next to me. While even the sounds of breathing were silent, Lee Song Ha's phone vibrated. When I glanced at the screen, the phone number was saved as home. Grabbing her phone, Lee Song Da hung up without hesitation. Then she completely turned off her phone and put it in her bag. You can take it. You have time for a brief call. At my words, Lee Sangha shook her head. I don't need to take it. Your heart might relax after talking with your parents. It's okay. After thinking for a moment, Lee Sangha soon mumbled. Also, I relax best when I with Appa. Ten minutes before standby. We went out of the waiting room and moved towards the stage. Maybe it was because today was the last day or because everyone was nervous being in front of thousands of spectators, but other group members gave us words of encouragement. We arrived backstage right after Sugar Cat's performance ended. While the special MC and the judges had a light conversation while looking at footage, Sugar Cats came down from the stage while celebrating amongst themselves. Then, as soon as they saw us, their complexions changed. They had said stuff about how Lee Sangha was now a one-man team and that it was troublesome that the member who was acting was the focus of a girl group. Constantly rubbing us the wrong way, but it seemed they couldn't control their expressions as they looked like they had swallowed a bug. It was probably because Neptune, especially I'm Seo Young, came under the spotlight after Star Manager. I bet they were frustrated since they had put in a lot of energy in disregarding and being wary of him Seo Young for no reason. The Sugar Cats leader, Han Saitbile, stopped beside I'm Seo Young. Neptune's new song is coming out in spring, right? The one by Simon Lee. We're going to have double title tracks. The other one's made by Tae Hyuni. Im Seo Young said with a smile. As she passed by, Han Saitbile said. We're making our comeback then too. I guess we'll see each other in music broadcasts. Hello, we are Neptune. The girls greeted the audience when they went on stage. Although this was a greeting they had said constantly to spread their name, there probably wasn't anyone in the audience who didn't know this name. Right, it did feel reminiscent. Soon, the instrumentals of the mission song the girls had practiced overnight began to play. I was inwardly worried since it was their first time performing in front of such a large audience, but it was for naught. I couldn't find a trace of nervousness from the girls on stage. They were like fish in water. I gazed at the stage without looking away for a moment. A smile unconsciously hung on my lips at some point. In celebration of the last recording, we had a simple ending party. Even though it ended after we each had a piece of cake because it was so late, it was already late into the early morning by the time I arrived home. Depending on the streetlights, I entered the parking lot. As if someone had left out a can of tuna, a black alley cat had its face on the ground in the corner of the parking lot. When I parked my car close to it, it raised its tail up and raised its guard against me. I stretched after turning off the ignition. Just as I was thinking that I should forget about taking a shower and just sleep, suddenly, my vision was filled with static. If there wasn't any static, I would have wondered why my hand was moving on its own since I was sitting in a parked car like before. The familiar inside of a minivan, a familiar steering wheel, and a familiar air freshener. It was night here too. On top of the static, there were no streetlights. It was completely dark when looking out the window. Although I could vaguely make out a building, I couldn't see it properly. What was certain was that I wasn't familiar with this place. Then hold an interview and explain. I was on the phone with someone, but something was odd. Interview. Explain. It sounded like I was threatening someone. It was similar to the time I threatened teacher Shim Kyung Take last time. No, to be exact, it was similar to my voice when I played back the file I had recorded. I could hear rough breathing from the other side. Who was it? This isn't a request. If one interview isn't enough, then do two or three and correct this situation unless you want to roll in the mud together. Although my words continued, it was far from being a hint. Instead, 
it made me more confused. What about an interview and what did I mean by correcting the situation? And what did I mean by rolling in the mud together? My brain was complicated. The breathing on the other side only became rougher, but there wasn't a reply yet. If I could move my head with my will, I would have immediately turned around and checked the phone number. The growls of a cat pierced my ears. Surprised, I turned my head. I saw the black cat, its fur was raised. After seeing this, I realized that I had returned to the parking lot. I swallowed my saliva and recalled the future I had seen. Although the alley cat kept making threatening sounds as it prowled around my car, I couldn't move due to the surge of question in my head. Just when did it occur? At a sudden thought, I looked at the air freshener stuck in front of the passenger seat. There was a little over half remaining. There wasn't a big difference between the one in the future. Although I could have put on the exact one after using this one up, if that wasn't the case, then the future could be earlier than I expected. Who was the person I was on the phone with in the future? Why was I threatening that person? Just what would happen now? Chapter 86 Was this how paranoiacs felt? Since the moment the fact that an incident big enough for me to threaten someone in the future settled in my mind, I kept looking at people with suspicion. There were Sun Chai Young and Teacher Shim Kyung Taek, who would happily chop Lee Sangha and me apart if they held an axe, as well as the traitor, who seemed to be rotting than simply being uncomfortable. There were also producer Go Junti, who I wouldn't find strange if an incident broke out where I wanted to grab him by the collar even though we separated with a handshake. Sugar Cats, who were in a fuss to see Neptune and him Seo Young fail, and that guy from Punchline, who was an eyesore whenever I saw him. Besides them, there were also people who happily ridiculed us when Lee Song his controversy broke out but said that we were lucky when things started going well. There were just too many suspicious people. Should I say it was like looking for a bomb only to find that my surroundings were filled with landmines? Among the countless landmines, which one would explode? Hey, is your family experiencing some troubles? As soon as I sat in the meeting room, Kim Hyunjo asked me suddenly. No, they are well. Then problems with love, no, there's no way you have a girlfriend. Now really, what do you mean by that? I could have a girlfriend. If you can date on top of your current schedule, then you're my senior. When Kim Hyunjo said while chuckling, team leader 3 joined in. They talked about how long it had been since they dated and that this would be my future. They were pouring cold water on my bright future. Just what were they doing after calling me over when I was busy? When I gave them a nasty look, Kim Hyunjo grinned whilst supporting his chin. I'm asking since you seem so serious considering that you should be grinning all over the place. We finished Next K-Star without any problem and Cat Guardian Ghost, after being heralded as a historical drama, is creating a second wave in China. Everything's proceeding smoothly. Yeah. At every team leader meeting, I was bashed that we were pouring the money blackout was making into Neptune team leader too, that idiot, never forgot to add his own remarks, but now I can walk in with my back straight. Right. It was currently the best time since I was assigned to Neptune. The final recording of Next K Star ended well despite our worries, and Cat Guardian Ghost ended after receiving high praise yesterday. Since the highly anticipated dramas, like Mermaid Out of Water and Time Slip, flopped badly, we gained their audience as well, resulting in a syndrome. It wasn't spring yet, but reporters were picking Cat Guardian Ghost as the drama of the year and the audience were petitioning for a director's cut, saying that they would even empty their bank accounts for it. Lee Song has image couldn't get better. If the drama was on a public network than cable, then no one would argue with the opinion that Seo Jijun should receive the acting award and the Rookie of the Year award should belong to Lee Sangha. This was why it wasn't strange for Kim Hyunjo's dark circles to fade noticeably and obvious that the Team 3 leader would go around with a happy face. I would have been the same. Only if I hadn't seen that future that could give thrillers a run for their money. There's something else on my mind. I guess that's why I'm like this. When I just glossed over it, Kim Hyunjo said as if he understood. Is it because of Sun Chai Young and Teacher Shim Kyung Taek? Well, there's that too. He wasn't wrong. The Team 3 leader crossed his legs and clicked his tongue. Lucky charm, sometimes, it looks like you worry too much. 
you shouldn't worry about them. It's like a hundred year poo finally being dislodged. If we were to really expose teacher Shim Kyung Taek, he's someone whose secrets would pour down like hail so he won't try to bite us back. I even heard he's resigning from the university he's been teaching at. Something about rumors spreading amongst his students. I didn't know that. Since rumors have spread far and wide, all the private lessons with rookies should have been cancelled as well. To be honest, if he hadn't used Sun Chai Young's name, he wouldn't even be close to the number of private lessons he gave but that's over now that his relationship with Sun Chai Young has gone sour. That's why they say you have one shot in life. How will he live now, that guy? His career in this industry is over. The Team 3 leader and Kim Hyunjo's smiles revealed how refreshed they were. This is an appetizer, I have more refreshing news. Kim Hyunjo smiled meaningfully before grabbing an envelope from the side. The envelope was so thick it looked like it might explode. After taking the envelope out, Kim Hyunjo pushed it towards me. Here, a commercial for a jeans company. It's for Sangha. Sun Chai Young used to do that commercial, you know. The Team 3 leader added. Kim Hyunjo took out a much thicker envelope this time. It was a scenario. This is director Chai Mun Ho's new movie. He said he wanted to audition Sangha. This was a project originally for Sun Chai Young as well. A commercial proposal, movie scenario, and drama synopsis came out after that. Although they were diverse, they all had one thing in common. They were all projects Sun Chai Young used to do or ones they were discussing with Sun Chai Young to do. I pushed my thoughts about landmines and bombs into a corner of my mind. I looked enchanted at the envelopes in front of me. Oh my god. To those who didn't know, this sight would only look like a bunch of paper, but to me, they were a more shocking sight than diamonds. The Team 3 leader scratched his nose and smiled. You should know by looking too, but they are a difference of heaven and earth in terms of roles and investment scale compared to the ones Lee Sangha received. Of course, we will have to have internal meetings about movies and dramas and she would have to audition for them, but these are opportunities that don't come to people at Songha's level. I did receive scenarios and synopses from a few directors, but none of the roles were as important as these. These were roles given to actors whose talent had been verified through multiple projects. Actors like Sun Chai Young. All of these went to Lee Songha. Is that possible? Normally, it would be impossible. Even though Mermaid Out of Water flopped majestically, someone at Sun Chai Young's level wouldn't lose so many commercial and project offers because one drama flopped. However, for so many and for all of them to go to Sangha. The CEO probably had a hand in this. The Team 3 leader and Kim Hyunjo answered in turn. Then the Team 3 leader gave me a strange look. From what the director said, apparently, you're the one who got these. I got them. Well, I don't know if he was joking or not, but that's apparently what the CEO said. That young Sun Wu obtained them. I suddenly recalled the phone call I had with CEO Baek Hansung. When I asked that Sun Chai Young pay a proper price instead of a simple apology, CEO Baek Hansung had said that he would think about the price. Kim Hyunjo said while grinning. This is probably the worst nightmare for Sun Chai Young. Since an ending party was a place where people expressed their inner thoughts after the drama ended, the mood of the ending party changed depending on the success of the drama. In the case of Mermaid Out of Water, there was an article that they didn't even hold an ending party. On the other hand, Cat Guardian Ghost's ending party was wild. As if they were venting about the busy schedules they had while filming the drama, the film team were pouring bomb shots into their stomachs. Even the production employees, employees from TVL, and the celebrities unbuckled their belts and drank. People were drunk on alcohol and excitement at every table that they were causing a commotion. Mr. Sun Wu. Here, here. Come and have a drink. It hadn't even been ten minutes since I returned to Lee Song has side. Did they all decide to call out my name as their drinking habit? They've been calling my name from all around for a while now. When I turned around, I saw it was the table of managers this time. Young Sun Wu, you're busy today. Chief Lee Bun Jun chuckled beside me. He shook his round body left and right. Since Seo Jijun, who was sitting beside him, wasn't good with alcohol, 
he took a few shots for him, and it seemed like he was drunk considering his face was red. I know, right? It feels like they are calling my name more frequently than the waiters and waitresses. It's good. Good. This industry runs on who you know, and this is proof their perception of you has changed from one of the countless managers to someone worth befriending. It might also be that you've become more approachable because of the entertainment show. Then he giggled again, saying that just looking at me made him laugh. While clicking my tongue, I looked to my side. Lee Sangha was nodding and eating while listening to someone talk. It seemed she drank quite a bit of alcohol every time they toasted, yet her face didn't change in the slightest. Lee Sangha stopped eating when a vibration rang from below the table. Seeing as it displayed home, it seemed to be from her family. Lee Sangha stared at the screen for a while before putting it in her pocket when the ringing stopped. If it's too noisy inside, you can call them outside. It's fine. It's better if I don't answer now. I had some drinks too. She whispered after leaning her head towards me. Were her parents strict? While thinking this, the table of managers called my name out again. Sangha, it looks like I have to go to that table over there. Okay, one second. Li Sangha began collecting her glass, chopsticks, and plate. I quickly grabbed her shoulder since it seemed like she was going to follow me. What do you one second? Don't you see they've made a mixture of beer, soju, and coke and are drinking it in bowlfuls? Just stay here with the chief. After sitting back down, Li Sangha looked at Chief Li Bangjun. I was on my way to the table calling my name out like a song after patting her small shoulders twice when I heard Chief Li Bangjun grumble. Hey, Li Sangha. Don't you think the expressions you look at your manager and me with are too different? You're making me sober up. I looked back because I was curious of her expression, but I only saw the back of her head. Hey, Mr. Sun Wu, come sit here. Sit. I only learned how funny Mr. Sun Wu is after watching the broadcast. As soon as I sat in the empty seat, they began talking about Star Manager. It seemed that it would serve as my business card for a while. The ratings were clearly only 12%, but it felt like the entire country had seen it. Everyone knew it no matter which table I went. They changed the topic only after talking about my damn dark past and flattering me by saying that they thought I was a good person even though they found me difficult to approach. Now that the drama's done too, all that's left is for Lee Sangha to sweep the commercials. It seemed like she'll be in a ton of them. Advertisers like people like her. I hope we get a variety of proposals. When I replied while smiling, someone said while sighing. Wow, if you filmed and uploaded that, then she might even get a Korean barbecue restaurant commercial proposal. How can she eat meat so elegantly? What a waste to not film it, what a waste. Elegant. The bomb shots I had taken almost came out. When I turned around, Lee Sangha was still eating voraciously amidst the celebrities. Since the mood was so good, it looked good no matter what she did. Still, if people looked at her carefully, they wouldn't say she was elegant. It would make sense if they said she ate heartily. A few more rounds of bomb shots passed. Since we were all managers, we naturally began talking about our work. We talked about what the celebrities we were assigned to were thinking about for their next project and about how it was difficult to choose because we were receiving too many synopses after the success of this project. There were even quite a few people asking me what I was thinking for Lee Sangha next project because Pan Production had told people that I picked Cat Guardian Ghost after reading its synopsis. The thin chief Jew licked his lips as he said. Mr. Sun Wu should develop Lee Sangha further. She's good at acting, has good luck, and you never know, right? She might become a walking one-person company. Then you can quit your damn company and set up your own. That's easier said than done. It's not like W.U. is some mom and pop shop, his assigned celebrity will change a few times while he gains experience. Chief Kim joined in, shaking his head. The managers from the table next to us joined in. If they are compatible, they might continue to work together. There are cases like Chief Lee Bang Jun and Seo Ji Jun at W.U. I bet if Chief Lee asks Seo Ji Jun to leave with him, he will. But a mess. Li Sangha seems like she's willing to leave if you ask her to right now. They have a good relationship. 
I saw that she looked at you every time you moved tables. She also looked back whenever she heard your name being called out loud. Chief Ju replied to my question with a laid-back expression. Kids always check to see if their moms are still there when they are dropped off at a playground. Something like that I guess. She's looking at you now. When I turned around, my eyes met Lee Song has. We both blinked once before smiling simultaneously. Seeing this, Chief Lee Bun Jun tapped her shoulder and said something. I didn't know what he was saying, but she was listening carefully. I was curious if he was saying strange things again. I was looking for the opportunity to move back to that table when Chief Kim placed his empty glass down and tapped my back. Mr. Sun Wu, I have something I want to talk to you about, mind if we step outside for a second? Talk with me. I looked at him in surprise since we weren't close. Beyond his glasses, his eyes curled into a smile. To sober up a little, we went outside. Facing the moist night breeze, I brushed my hair to the side. Maybe it was because it was the end of February, but sleet was raining down instead of snow. Chief Kim paused for a moment before saying. Mr. Sun Wu, I am just passing on what my superiors want to say. Yes, please say it. Do you have any thoughts on moving to our company? I asked back because it was so sudden. It seemed I didn't hear wrong due to the influence of alcohol because Chief Kim said. Of course, under better conditions than the ones you have now and as a chief, how about it? Chapter, 87 I sobered up. I recalled information regarding Chief Kim's company, Tia Management. Compared to WU, it was small, but it was a stable company. While it seemed like there were other celebrities, they focused mainly on actors. I didn't know any more details besides that. Why were they giving this offer to someone who hadn't even been a manager for five months? After racking my brain, I straightforwardly asked. Is it perhaps because of Sangha? Chief Kim laughed out loud. We are well aware that MS. Sangha is part of a girl group and has a lot of time left on her contract, do you think we want to be sued? It's not like that. Then why are you giving me this offer? When I asked, Chief Kim exhaled white steam similar to cigarette smoke from his mouth as he said. Well, they said they heard a lot of good things about Mr. Sun Wu. From who? I don't know any more than that. Either way, the company said that they would like to meet with you if you are willing. You are probably aware we aren't some third-rate company as well. This is a good offer. That was why it was so strange. The thought about the future which I had suppressed was slowly crawling its way up. Thinking that this might be related to the incident in the future, I added it to my list of suspicions. Either way, it wasn't like I was thinking of changing jobs. While the conditions were good, they weren't good enough for me to leave Neptune and everything I had built up at WU behind. Since I felt that there was no need to test the waters, I shook my head. While I am thankful for the offer, I do not have any plans on changing companies at this moment. Then contact me if you change your mind. After candidly retreating, Chief Kim took out his business card from his wallet and handed it to me. I received and casually put it in my wallet when Chief Kim smiled as he said. I feel like she's going to bore a hole in my face. It'll go in first. Chief Kim gestured with his chin as he passed me. When I turned around, I saw Lee Sangha standing there with a shocked expression. She seemed to be taken aback when our eyes met as she quickly pressed the button of the coffee vending machine. Did you hear our conversation? When I asked after walking to her, she shook her small head left and right. I think you did. To be honest, I did hear a little. I wasn't trying to eavesdrop, I only heard it when I came to get some coffee. While insisting she was innocent, Lee Sangha licked her lips slightly. But Appa. Yeah. I'm not changing companies. Don't plan to. I replied before she even asked. Smiling silently, she raised a paper cup filled with coffee. Then, as if emptying a shot glass, she drank it all in one go. Since her actions were so natural, I only became surprised two seconds later. Wasn't it hot? It was. Her face instantly turned red. It looked like steam would escape from her lips. I quickly got her a glass of cold water and she gulped it down in one go. She was acting a bit strange. 
When I looked at her closely, her expression was fine, but her eyes were wet and wavering like the moon reflected on the water. You seem drunk. Did you drink more? Chief Lee gave me some. That guy. When I looked at Chief Lee Ban Jun, his eyes were already half closed. Seo Ji Jun would probably take care of him. After explaining the situation to people who were asking me why I was leaving already, I left the restaurant with Lee Sangha. Leaving the driving to the substitute driver one, I got in the back seat with Lee Sangha. As the heater warmed the minivan, it seemed she also became drowsy as her long neck leaned to the side. I placed a neck pillow under Lee Sangha's neck. Since her quiet breathing was ticklish, I turned my head and looked out the window. The sleet on the window melted and dripped down. How long was I like this? I felt like I had fallen asleep temporarily so I stretched my waist when I heard a vibration coming from Lee Songha's clothes pocket. When I left it alone, it stopped soon after before ringing again. On the third time it rang, I shook Lee Songha's shoulder. Songha, wake up. I think it might be important. Since it didn't look like she would wake up anytime soon, I took out her phone. It was her family again. Concerned that something might have happened to her family, I answer the phone with one hand while shaking Lee Sangha with the other. As soon as her phone stopped vibrating, I heard the sighing voice of a middle-aged woman. Just why haven't you ants? I answered the call for her. I am Song has manager. Her manager. Yes. I am Yung Sun Wu. It seems Sangha is tired since she is sleeping. I answered the call for her in case there was an emergency. Yung Sun Wu Ah, you're the one who appeared on the Lunar New Year's broadcast, right? The one who told Sangha to act. I am her mom. Her scolding voice instantly became gentler. It so happens I was hoping to meet you in person after watching that broadcast. What a coincidence. Could we meet in person later? In person? What might the reason be? I think that Sangha should quit the girl group and focus only on acting. Wasting her time. Suddenly, a hand shot out from beside me and took the phone away. Even though it was dark, I could clearly see Lee Song has frowning face. They'll call you back. After saying that, she hung up. Since we arrived at Neptune's residence, I asked the substitute driver to excuse us for a moment. Once he said he would have a smoke and left, Lee Sangha immediately said. You don't need to see her. Don't see her. They'll talk to her. Is this why you've been avoiding her calls? Lee Sangha nodded her head. After a moment of silence, I heard a low voice. We fought about this since the Lunar New Year's long weekend. It seemed she was suddenly dissatisfied with lots of things. I looked into it, and it looks that this is a common occurrence in celebrity families. It's not just us. You should have said something. If she keeps saying that, the chief or I co. I'll handle it on my own since it's my family matter. A few thoughts brushed my mind. A girl group that only now began taking steps, and a member who came under the glamorous spotlight thanks to a historic drama. Problems concerning personal schedules and how to calculate their earnings. I had thought that we were lucky since there wasn't any disharmony within the group, but there was a family matter. Currently, Neptune was on a roll, and even putting the contract aside, if there was discord in the team against Lee Sangha, it wouldn't do well for their image. The incident in the future wasn't related to Lee Sangha's family, right? While I became suspicious again, Lee Sangha mumbled. To be honest, since I was so frustrated I wanted to call Appa during the long weekend. You should have why didn't you? You know my number. If I talk about work, ITLL bug you when you're resting for a change. That's not work. You can call me next time. At my words, Lee Sangha stared at me. Since it seemed like she would ask me if what I said was true, I nodded. Then a smile slowly bloomed on her calm face. As though the raining sleet last night was a lie, the day was bright this morning. However, in this room covered in thick curtains, the bleak atmosphere of yesterday remained. There were broken vases and appliances, and books were scattered all over the room. Only the mirror above her dressing table was intact. Sun Chai Young stood in this mess. She looked like she would explode at any moment. Her distorted face was convulsing, 
and her eyes gave off a fierce aura. Sun Chai Young glared at the wall as though she would rip someone to shreds if they were present. Soon, the phone in her hand rang. The dial tone rang out in the dark room. She might really get a mental illness at this rate, team leader. Chief Joe, whose eyes and cheeks were sunken in, said as he glanced at his phone. On the constantly vibrating screen was the name Sun Chai Young. Clenching his head, he said, as if pleading, to the team two leader sitting in front of him. Shall probably act more terrifyingly from now on. I feel like I'm going to suffocate. What is Chai Young doing right now? She's probably smashing appliances again. I can't even work up the courage to check up on her. Chief Joe mumbled as if frightened. The Team 2 leader clicked his tongue as he said. That's probably true considering her temper. Snatching other people's stuff, maybe, but she's not the type of person to have her things snatched away. But it wasn't just one but a bunch of them. On top of that, she had them taken by Lee Sangha, someone who she tried to bury in secret that's why I told you to keep her in check, you. Surprised by the team leader's irritated shout, Chief Joe prostrated himself. But will Chai Young still renew the contract even now? Don't you know what kind of person the CEO is? She's only smashing appliances because he's got her on a leash. If not, she would have already ripped the contract apart. No, still, why is the CEO going this far? As if he couldn't understand, the Team 2 leader frowned. In any case, there hasn't been a quiet day since Young Sun Wu that guy joined our company. He muttered before suddenly rubbing his beard. Not long after, he opened his mouth. Since Chai Young won't be able to work on any projects in her current state for the time being, do you want to be in charge of Li Sangha? Li Sangha? Even though he had looked like he was about to die just now, Chief Joss' eyes widened. I was going to talk about it with the director anyways, but we can't let Young Sun Wu continuously be in charge of Li Sangha. While it seems like he has a good eye, he's still a chick who doesn't know the ways of the industry. That's true. Li Sangha, she seems like a real gem the more I see her. Before she becomes difficult to handle like Sun Chai Young, we need to manage her by assigning a proper manager to her. ITLL be good for her as well if a veteran takes care of her. He'll be happy to do it. Chief Joe nodded his head repeatedly. Even though they were getting ahead of themselves, their conversation continued for a long while. It was noisy. When I opened my eyes a crack, it was still dark in my room. The cause of the sound was my phone on my table. Seeing as the sun hadn't risen yet, it seemed to be early. Did I set my alarm for the wrong time? I fumbled to unplug the charging cable and looked at the screen. It wasn't an alarm but a call. It was reporter Park Wujong. Looking at the time, it was a bit past 1A. Did she call me by accident? While yawning, I answered the call. Hello, reporter. Ah, Mr. Sun Wu. Sorry for calling at this late hour. Still, I thought I should tell you this quickly. My eyes jolted open on their own when I heard her urgent voice. What is it? Do you know someone named Li Ju Huan? From Punchline. The guy who raps. I know. I quickly got up and turned on the lights. Reporter Park continued to speak. He posted something on his social media just now, but no matter how I look at it, it seems to be aimed at a mess. Sangha. Please wait, they'll check right now. With my phone against my ear, I quickly went online. Then I checked Punchline's Li Juan social media account. Like reporter Park had said, there was a new post. A shitty post that made me doubt my eyes the moment I saw it. A lonely night. While meeting each other fleetingly on the set over the past few months, I believed there was something real between us. Just what is success that makes a person's eyes change so much? I turned the drama off in the middle because it was difficult to see your face. Was I foolish? Or was the industry simply like this? How dirty and painful. What kind of crazy. I was so taken aback that I swore. Met on the set for the past few months, success, drama, he only didn't reveal her name, but anyone would think he was talking about Lee Sangha. Looking at the comments on the side, punchline fans were already buzzing. 
They commented about how this was Lee sung no matter how you looked at it and that she ignored him as soon as she became successful. Each comment mentioned Lee Sangha. Reporter Park Wujong cautiously asked. Ms. Sangha, does she really have something with Lee Ju Huan? Even if she does. No. He's speaking nonsense. Then you need to deal with this as soon as you can. When an idol scandal breaks out, only the girl's side suffers. This is pretty much publicly screwing her over. Since it's still early in the morning, it's quiet for now but ITLL become a huge topic soon. Thank you, reporter. They'll call you back. I hung up and called Team Leader Park. She was in the middle of a call. Kim Hyunjo was in a call as well. Did they hear about it already? I sent them a message just in case and let out a big breath. Was it this? The incident I saw in the future. Was this idiot the bomb? I did tell the person to hold an interview and explain. The situation fit perfectly. In the future, I was undoubtedly threatening someone. It wasn't a request. I threatened the person by saying that they needed to fix this if they didn't want to roll in the mud with me. During that time, the other person couldn't say a word. If this was the incident, then what did I threaten him with? Chapter 88 Was I blindly threatening the person? After rubbing my chin, I shook my head. It didn't seem that way. My tone was similar to when I threatened teacher Shim Kyung Take. It didn't seem like I was threatening because I was at my wit's end, it definitely seemed like I possessed something that I could threaten the other person with. What was it? Even while I was mulling over this, the comments on Lee Ju Hwan's post kept increasing. Just what was Lee Ju Hwan, that crazy idiot, doing after taking a dump like that? Did he write that in a hazy, drunken state before collapsing? Or was he chuckling as he watched the internet's reaction with a clear mind? Anger surged up my throat just recalling his sleek face. If he was in front of me, I probably would have held him up by his collar and punched him. My phone rang again. It was Team Leader Park. Is he an idiot? What kind of is he trying to pull? As soon as I answered the phone, I heard her swear. It seemed her anger had reached its peak. Well, at least she didn't have a mental breakdown. The back of my head ached even though I knew an incident would occur, to others, this was a bolt out of the blue. Did you know anything about this? Was there any sign that this might happen? Nope. I only learned about it just now because a reporter contacted me. He had been quiet ever since he confronted Sangha during the recording last time. Team leader said in a pissed voice. Li Juhuan that crazy idiot. I don't know what he's up to, but he's not answering his phone. The chief and team leader at his company won't answer either. Not only are they not answering my calls, they aren't picking up Mr. Hyunjo's either. Those gangsters. Are you with the chief? He was on call. We decided to meet at the company so I'm on my way there. Mr. Hyunjo is probably busy right now as well. There wasn't a peaceful day last year, yet we're really driving away the bad luck early in the year. 1. I'll get ready and go to work too. I had my phone rested on my shoulder as I got ready when Team Leader Park said. I'm trying to stop the press the best I can, but it doesn't see my TLL last long. So you call Sangha and confirm that there wasn't anything going on between them. Help her prepare her heart as well. No matter how we explain our position, there will be many netizens who are happily writing stories connecting Sangha and Li Juhuan together. Tell her not to go on the internet since there will be a lot of hate comments because Punchline has a lot of elementary and middle school fans. Yes, also, Team Leader. I stopped Team Leader Park, who was about to hastily hang up. Could you give me Li Juhuan's personal phone number? I told you that idiot isn't picking up right now. He's not replying to texts either. I've met him before so you never know. I just want to try. Okay, you never know. Let's do everything we can. He'll send it by text. While I was waiting for Team Leader Park's text, I called Lee Sangha. Even though it was late at night, the call went through right away. Appa. It seemed she wasn't aware of the situation as she talked in a puzzled voice. I said a few things as if there was nothing going on before getting to the point. Sangha, I'm only asking just in case, 
but there's nothing going on with you and Li Juhuan, right? Who's that? I wasn't suspicious from the start, but this was exactly the reply I wanted to hear. The guy who raps in Punchline, the one who tried to start a conversation with you last time. Nothing happened afterwards, right? Ah no. Appa, you told me not to associate with him. Good job. That crazy idiot posted nonsense about you so it looks like ITLL be a little noisy for a while. So don't go on the internet for now. It hadn't been long since her add-on and acting controversies. It would be normal to be nervous when thinking about them, but Lee Sangha didn't even ask what was going on. Yes. That was all. Her voice didn't contain a shred of worry or fluster. The only thing I felt was firm trust. Going out into the moonless sky, I said. Okay, don't worry and wait for me. Just as I got in my minivan, I received a text from Team Leader Park. It was Lee Juwan's personal contact information. Exhaling a stuffy breath, I pressed the call button. A rap played out as the caller ringtone, burrowing into my ears. I swallowed my dry saliva. Even though I resolved myself to not depend so much on foresight multiple times and even though I told myself not to get hung up on an ability that can disappear as suddenly as it appeared. I was hoping for static to appear in my vision at some point. However, there were no signs of my foresight ability activating even when the call went to voicemail. After sending a message saying I was Li Song as manager, I called him again. Even the second and third time, Li Juhuan continued to be silent like Team Leader Park had said. Thinking about it for a bit, I decided to call reporter Park Wu Zhong. I thanked her for telling me about the situation before asking. Are there any tabloids about Li Juhuan? Tabloids? Yes, a bad rumor or something that would make him tense. Anything like that. Something I could threaten him with to be exact. There are a lot of rumors about him. Please wait. I'll ask my colleagues. Not long after, reporter Park Wu Zhong told me the rumors she had gathered. They were about how he was a bit crazy even before he debuted and about how his company had a headache dealing with him because he was the type to do whatever he wants. There were a few others besides those. However, there wasn't anything that perked my ears. Finally, Reporter Park Wu Zhong cautiously said. Also, apparently, Li Juhuan went on a date not too long ago. A date? Yes, around two weeks ago. My colleague who told me this kept asking whether that person he went on a date with was MS. Sangha. Although I was an atheist, at this moment I wanted to thank a god. Reporter Park Wu Zhong's voice became distant as my vision became dark. I had never been so happy to see a static-filled vision. Hoping it was related to Li Juhuan, I concentrated more than ever. I was inside a bar. The lights were gentle and dim. A beer glass and a glass bowl containing snacks were placed on top of a wooden bar in front of me. A somewhat familiar hip-hop song was playing. My future self moved his hand and raised the cold beer glass. Then the refreshing beer went down my throat which was like a dry wasteland. Perking my ears, I heard the conversation between two female bartenders. Li Juan's life has turned around. He's been a hot topic for days now. Keeps going up and down on the real-time search rankings too. His public image has changed from all the sympathy he's received, and Li Song has image has crumbled. Yeah. My future self acted like he was drinking as he carefully examined the woman who gave the short reply. She looked pretty. She had short hair and a slim, curvy body. Li Juhuan, don't tell me he's not going to even meet with us now. The other bartender secretly asked the short-haired woman. But, Haisung, didn't you say that you were seeing Li Juhuan not that long ago? As soon as I returned to the present, I hung up the call. I felt like I finally took a breath of fresh air after being stuck in a dark cave churning my brain, I assembled the information I saw and heard in the future. So there was a woman that Li Juhuan might have been seeing. The woman my future self had found. If this was certain, then it was a great material to threaten Li Juhuan with. Since this meant that Li Juhuan, who targeted Li Sangha on social media acting like he was a hurt simple-hearted man by saying that there was something going on between the two of them and how her eyes had changed, was playing around and going on dates with a completely different woman. 
thinking about it for a moment, I unlocked my phone again. Then, as if baiting him, I sent a text message to Li Juhuan. You must be busy. Flirting on set by yourself and going on a date with M.S. Haisung. Punchline's residence. Li Juhuan was lying on the sofa while checking people's reactions on social media on his tablet. While whistling, he said. Appa's too good for Li Songa. Forget that opportunist and cheer up. Anyone wanna go hate on Neptune's official homepage together? Appa, only be hurt for today. Before WU buries this, they'll store it and spread it throughout the community wow, our fans are working hard so early in the morning. Hyung, have any articles been published? None yet. The chief, who was sitting at the edge of the sofa, shook his head. There was a tablet in his hand as well. Li Juhuan frowned in dissatisfaction. Did all the reporters die? Why is it so quiet when I gave them such a huge story? It looks like WU has a hand in it, but it's useless. Once an article pops up, tons of articles will follow behind it. Just then, the phone on top of the table vibrated. Li Juhuan smirked when he saw the screen. If I don't answer, you should just give up. So persistent. At this rate, they'll memorize all the WU employees' numbers. But why is Young so quiet? I turned it off since it said the battery was low. Should I turn it off too since it's annoying? Just leave it. Even though we've already stuck our heads in the sand, it's too obvious if both our phones are off. Punchline's main vocal, who was rummaging through the fridge behind the sofa, joined their conversation. But, even if it's noise marketing, isn't this coming on too strong? How are you going to deal with it tomorrow? Too strong. It's not like I said Lee Song has name outright and swore at her. Also, in my perspective, there really was something going on between us. Li Juhuan said while raising his shoulders proudly. Things might have gone well if she hadn't suddenly become so popular. When I, the person in question, think that way, what are they going to do? Sue me. Li Juhuan chuckled as if just thinking about it was funny. The chief clicked his tongue as he said. You just stay quiet. It'll settle it in the morning. What are you going to say? It's not like the fact you're hard to handle is a secret. It'll appeal to WU by swearing at you a ton. I'm going to tell them that I'm going to make you take the post down so you make sure to take it down on time. Okay. There are going to screenshots floating around by tomorrow morning anyways. Li Juhuan said in a ridiculing manner before picking his phone up again. The vibration this time was short. He initially thought it would be similar to the overflowing number of messages he had received so far, but then he jolted up from the sofa. What is this? Why? Who is it? The chief got up as well and asked. However, Li Juhuan didn't reply and raised his phone to his ear. He paced back and forth in the living room nervously with a stiff face. Soon, the dial tone stopped. Yes, this is Yung Sun Wu. What is that text? What kind of nonsense is that? Li Juhuan asked immediately. After a momentary silence, he heard a laughter-mixed voice. Nonsense is what your post was. No, seeing as you called me after understanding that, I guess it does seem like nonsense. What? You were so busy flirting by yourself on set and going on a date with another woman. Ah, uh, is this industry simply like this? How dirty and painful. Date? Just who went on a date with who? As soon as he licked his lips to stop. M.S. Haisung. The bartender with short hair. Li Juhuan stood rigidly. His face turned rotten instantly. The chief, who had listened to their conversation from the side, hurriedly turned on his phone. Don't you think it's better if to handle the situation by taking down your post and posting an explanation? Your fans are causing a fuss by saying that they feel sorry for you. I think your young fans will be disappointed if you got caught going on a date with another woman when you talked about how someone's eyes changed and how lonely you felt. While his tone seemed calm, the content of his words was no doubt a threat. Ruffling his hair, Li Juhuan looked at his chief. As if saying there was nothing else they could do, the chief sighed and nodded his head. Kicking the sofa, 
Li Juhuan held back his swears and said. Um. Ill, ill take it down right away. The post. I made a mistake while drunk. After making an excuse, he asked while hiding his nervousness. But how do you know Haisung? Are you the only one who knows? The other side paused for a moment before replying. No. I only heard about it. Li Juhuan ended up swearing eventually. It seemed he was in quite the hurry as Li Juhuan took down his post from his social media at a frightening speed. After confirming it, I called reporter Park Wujong again. Her voice was still serious. Mr. Sun Wu, I think the article will go up soon. I think it's been resolved well. All thanks to you. Pardon? She said, perplexed. As thanks, it'll give you something article worthy. Article worthy? Yes, about Li Juan's scandal. Chapter, 89 The door of the PR team office smashed open. Kim Hyunjo came in wearing a fierce expression. It seemed he was on a call as his phone was stuck next to his ear. Yeah, reporter Min. Look into it for now. After ending the call, he looked back and forth between team leader Park and me. Did you hear about Lee Juan's relationship with a girl? Did you? When we looked at him blankly, Kim Hyunjo said in a frustrated manner. I heard that that idiot was seeing another girl. I hear she's a non-celebrity. Reporter Min says that since the story is so detailed, it's pretty much a fact. Apparently, Jita Day holds the information. Sun Wu, don't you have a reporter you're close with there? I do. When I replied, Kim Hyunjo slapped my back and urged. Call her and ask. You have to use your connections at a time like this or when else would you? Mr. Hyunjo, don't be so hasty and have a seat. Calm down a little. Team leader Park pointed to an empty seat. Do I look like I can calm down right now? When a rabid dog is causing a fuss? Wait, if you're telling me not to be hasty, that means you've already heard. Kim Hyunjo, who had been talking with a frown, paused before saying. No, why are the two of you like that? Team leader, why are you so calm? Not long ago, you were going berserk, asking where Li Juhuan was and how simply screwing him over wouldn't be enough, right? Team leader Park looked at me and smiled brightly. Ask Mr. Sun Wu. Mr. Sun Wu made a great contribution today. A great contribution? What is it? Mr. Sun Wu completely submerged Li Juhuan in. We now only need to take him out and fry him up. Kim Hyunjo looked at me with a perplexed face. What are you talking about? Hmm, listen to this. Without tiring my mouth from explaining, I handed Kim Hyunjo my phone. Then I played an audio recording. The audio recording contained the conversation I had with Li Juhuan on the phone. As soon as he heard Li Juhuan's voice, Kim Hyunjo's eyes widened. Is this Li Juhuan? That idiot picked up his phone. Just listen to it, Mr. Hyunjo. Then your mind will be at peace. Kim Hyunjo hesitantly took a seat. Li Juhuan and my voice played out in silence. Kim Hyunjo's face gradually turned strange, and he even started staring at me intensely. I avoided his gaze with a cough since I wasn't used to threatening someone then listening to the recorded threat with others. No, wouldn't it be a problem if I got used to it? With a thrilled expression, Team Leader Park said. Hey race the climax. Um. Ill, ill take it down right away. The post. I made a mistake while drunk. Li Juan's excuse was smeared with anxiety and confusion. Even though it was her second time listening to it, Team Leader Park's reaction was outstanding. Should I say it looked like she had downed a beer in one shot? Send me this. I need to save it on my phone and listen to it when I need to calm my heart. It has an immediate effect. I readily nodded my head at Team Leader Park's words. Kim Hyunjo, who now had an expression similar to Team Leader Park, said. I bet his company is in mayhem. His post on social media was brought down right away. They are probably racking their brains trying to deal with it. At my words, Kim Hyunjo gave me a strange look once again. Then, with a laugh, he said. This guy's talented, isn't he? You're even better than me. 
When I smiled without replying, Kim Hyunjo patted my back. With a relaxed expression, he told Team Leader Park. I was thinking about how this was a bolt out of the blue, but if it's like this, things should blow over without any damage. We can't just let things blow over. Not wearing any makeup, Team Leader Park's lips became crooked. Since he's already pulled Lee Songa into this, even if he takes his post down and explains, there will be a lot of people who won't believe it and will think that we pressured him. Elementary and middle schoolers ignore facts and believe in whatever they want to believe. That is. So, if we want to make this situation advantageous for us, let's make Lee Juhuan a true idiot. Just then, my blank phone vibrated. It was reporter Park Wujong. Yes, reporter. Team leader Park and Kim Hyunjo's gazes were locked on me. Their gazes contained a strange excitement. Reporter Park Wujong's voice from the other side was also quite excited. Mr. Sun Wu, I found her. I found that woman. You did? Already? It hadn't even been that long since I told reporter Park Wujong. Even the police wouldn't be able to find their suspect this fast. My colleague helped me. Since this didn't involve a celebrity couple but was a scandal involving an idol and a non-celebrity, he wouldn't have helped out normally but said it would be interesting if we pulled Lee Sangha into the story as well. We checked people associated with Punchline members. Though they swore at us since we woke them up early in the morning. After snooping around knowing her appearance, occupation, and name, we found her in no time. We already talked to her on the phone as well. I was really surprised this time. You even talked to her. The bar she works at opens until 4A. Also. After pausing for a moment, reporter Park Wujong said in an excited voice. We confirmed the facts after saying we would compensate her. Now we just need to write an article. There was still a lot of time before the day brightened. The punchline members, who had been taking a nap, were forced awake and were sitting in the living room. They sighed out of frustration and gulped down cold water. They also stared at Li Juhuan mumbling on the sofa. Idiot, if you're going to do something, do it properly. What is this? What are you going to do if our team image becomes bad? Ah, that foolish son of a. Preventing us from sleeping by causing a ruckus so early in the morning. Idiot, you're loud. I'm already pissed. Even though Li Juhuan spoke out impulsively, the punchline members, who were familiar with his personality, ignored him as if he was a barking dog. Scratching his head aggressively, Li Juhuan swore. Motherfucker, this was definitely a foolproof plan. My popularity would rise, and I would knock Li Sangha off her high horse as well. It was pure genius. Idiot. That manager idiot, I didn't like him during the recording, but in the end. He vented his anger by kicking the floor. Hey, Ju Huan. The chief, who had constantly been on the phone in another room, rushed out. What? Why? What is it now? You called that Haisung or whatever and handled things properly, right? You saw me talk with her a while ago. I told her to keep her mouth shut since reporters might call her. With an uneasy expression, the chief said. Call her again. I heard some strange information. She's fine. She's so head over heels for me that she won't say anything if I tell her not to. Grumbling, Li Juhuan called her. However, after ringing for a minute, it went to her voicemail. Idiot, why isn't she picking up? Isn't she answering on purpose? Send her a text. I'm telling you she's not. She's probably busy. Just wait a bit. The second, third, and even the tenth call. The destination of the attempted calls was her voicemail. Li Juhuan, who had boasted that there was no way she would talk during the first few attempts, grounded his teeth after the fifth. His face was distorted and his cheeks convulsed subtly. What the hell? What is she doing that she's not answering her phone? Hey, this won't do. You can't have a scandal with a non-celebrity. Doing noise marketing by pulling a hot topic maker like Lee Sangha in and being exposed in a scandal with a non-celebrity are completely different. Your fans will all leave. And if they mention the post you wrote. Motherfucker, it's her voicemail again. 
Where the idiot does she put her phone? Both had anxious expressions and they said whatever was on their mind. Li Juhuan shook his leg restlessly as he made his umpteenth attempt. Ah, uh, Hyung, Hyung. There's an article. The youngest member, who had been on his tablet, shouted. Everyone was gathered in front of the tablet in an instant. While multiple pairs of eyes read the article, a suffocating silence hung in the living room. His face ashen, Li Juhuan opened and closed his mouth. The chief rushed into another room while holding his vibrating phone. Then the main vocalist of the group glanced at Li Juhuan before saying, We're really fucked. As if this was a signal, Li Juhuan began swearing loudly. The sky was unusually clear and fair. Since so many things occurred during the night, I was sleep deprived, but my mood was as bright as the sky. Holding bagels and coffee I bought at a nearby cafe, I entered Neptune's residence. The girls gathered in on the rug in the living room looked at me. Although I told them that things ended well early morning, they looked terrible, clearly having spent the night awake. With sunken eyes like a zombie's, Im Seo Young staggered her way towards me. Appa, just what happened last night? A lot happened last night. But why are you girls like that? Did you not sleep? Im Seo Young gulped down her saliva. Yes. We were readying our hearts because we thought a storm was coming. Although a storm did come, it passed by us. I answered with a grin. Only then did Im Seo Young's complexion brighten. LJ, who had been tapping at her laptop on one side of the rug, smirked as she said. That storm, it seems it went to punchline. There's a huge fuss. Well, it did deal a strong blow to punchline. While netizens with nothing to do were spreading screenshots of Lee Juwan's post and driving Lee Sangha into a corner, G Today took the post and released an exclusive article that included Lee Juwan's date. Follow-up and aggregate articles were published after that. Like how team leader Park intended, Lee Juwan's image completely went to and many fans who called him our oppa left him. Even though we didn't act, Lee Juhuan and his company desperately explained the post he had uploaded. Only then would he look a little less like trash. Either way because of their explanation and team leader Park's media manipulation, those who were on a witch hunt against Lee Sangha retreated. While the other girls were looking at the articles and comments about Lee Juhuan, I placed a bagel in front of Lee Sangha. Then I asked. Were you waiting? Yes, I was. Li Sangha said while smiling brightly as the sky. What do you want to do? The director scratched his chin while asking. The Team 2 leader and Chief Joe were sitting on the sofa across from him. After taking a sip of steaming tea, the Team 2 leader spoke. The speech he had prepared to persuade the director flowed out from his mouth. Li Sangha, it's an important time for her right now. It's not rare for those who debut brilliantly with a successful first project and disappear after dull projects afterwards. If we want to take care of her properly from now on, it's better to assign a veteran to her. So, instead of lucky charm, she will be assigned to you, Chief Joe. The director asked while blowing on his tea. Chief Joe, whose complexion had brightened a little, readily nodded his head. Since Chai Young's situation right now is a bit there's no need for me to be in charge of her right now. The Team 2 leader added. Lee Sangha will be busier from now on, and if she wants to properly take steps into the drama and film world, a bunch of problems will crop up suddenly. We can't keep leaving it to Young Sun Wu. Since Lee Bun Jun was there with him, there wasn't a problem with Cat Guardian Ghost, but he'll have to face problems by himself in the future. He's just a rookie with five months of experience, do you think he can handle it? Did you not hear about what happened last night? The director abruptly asked. Last night? I saw that Lee Song has name was rising up and down in the articles it didn't seem like a big deal. At Chief Joss' reply, the director clicked his tongue and continued to speak. From what team leader Park says that Lucky Charm handled a scandal concerning Lee Songa that would have given us a rough time this early in the year. Considering he's a five-month rookie, he's good. No, still. Don't incite someone who's doing his job properly and let him be. Unsatisfied, the Team 2 leader began to speak, but the director looked at Chief Joe as if he didn't need to hear any more. Also, why are you guys acting like this? 
Chai Young pestered the CEO to assign Lucky Charm to her, and you want Lee song -a? If you really want to change who you're assigned to, then get Lee song his approval. Chief Joe, who had been sitting scrunched in his seat, suddenly raised his head. Will you assign her to me if I persuade her? He'll think about it if you get her approval. That night, Chief Joe called out to Lee Songa, who was exhausted from preparing for their next album in the basement practice room. Then they sat across from each other in a small meeting room. With a brightly smiling face, Chief Joe talked about the data he had prepared ahead of time. The conversation only went on for about 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, Lee Songa returned to the practice room with no change to her normal appearance. Chief Joe left the meeting room only after a long time had passed. From that day onwards, Chief Joe didn't bring up the topic of changing the celebrity he was in charge of. Chapter 90 Neptune will make a comeback soon. Expected to reveal their full-length recording at midnight today. The girl group Neptune is about to make a comeback. Neptune's mini-album, which received a lot of interest due to the hit songwriter Simon Lee's involvement, will finally be unveiled. Celebrating the release of their second mini-album Guardian One, Neptune will host a press showcase and conference today the third and is expected to signal the start of their comeback. This five-song mini-album consists of double title tracks, Simon Lee's unique rhythmical, clear pop dance song Pisces and Neptune's leader Lee Tehi's song Satellite. Their full-length recording and music videos are expected to be revealed on various online music sites midnight today. Oh, my God! After looking into it, this is their fifth album. They really failed a lot. Looking at their list of songs, it's like a public cemetery. All buried. Whether their album is a success or failure this time is really important. Looking at Lee Song has drama and M. Seo Young's entertainment show reactions, they seem to have individual potential. If they slip up, the team might disband. They need to have a hit song this time. If their album flops this time as well, the heavens have abandoned them. With Lee Song has Buff and Simon Lee's song, I don't think they'll flop though. It's not like they are a boy idol group, Lee Song has Buff won't work on the music charts. To have good music chart performance, you either need to have incredible fandom firepower where they systematically stream your songs or have such a good song that it gobbles up other fandoms. Still, since their popularity is different from before, ITLL be worth seeing. Let's not make a fuss and just wait and see. We'll be able to make a conclusion midnight today. Sangam District KS Move Hall Dim purple lights scattered inside the dark hall. The enormous LED screen set up for their performance played a shooting star graphic. Around 200 members of the media filled the first and second floor seating areas designated for the press. Journalists placed their laptops on the table and wrote articles in real time. This was so that they could add a few keywords once the showcase began and publish them before others. How good will they perform on the charts? It's the peak season. Since the top ranks of the charts are set, ITLL be difficult to pass 10th place, right? Success, decent, and complete flop. I should write all three versions. Getting into 20-30th rank is a success. If their songs are good, then their rank will go up as they appear on music broadcasts and entertainment shows. I bet they already have a few entertainment shows lined up. Murmurs could be heard here and there. There were reporters discussing Neptune's album performance and the direction they would move towards in the future as well as reporters who were focused on gossip. In a path away from the press area, a few reporters from celebrity gossip sites were waiting outside Neptune's waiting room. Looking at the firmly shut door, a young female reporter said in an irritated manner. So quiet. The chief reporter threw a fit telling me to grab an exclusive. They are coming out without any break, right? If they became chubbier or if their faces were swollen, I could write a story with that. There are no signs of discord within the team, right? I hope one of them cries. Then ITLL be easier to write up a lead. Hey, hey. The murmuring reporters looked to one side before shutting their mouths. A man wearing a thin knit sweater rolled up to his elbows was walking towards them with steady steps. The reporters instantly recognized his face. Young Sun Wu. This was because he was the target of the articles they scrambled to publish during the long weekend. 
Unlike others from WU, who ran around with tense faces before the showcase, he was on the phone with someone, talking so leisurely that it was strange. I'm on my way there with the cue cards. I'll prepare the girls with anticipated questions. Ah, uh, Gun Young and the PR team are going to check the route and guide the MC. Once the showcase ends, we need to take a picture with the MC. Excuse me. He was someone worth writing about among those related to WU. The reporters scrambled towards him. Could I ask you a few questions about Neptune's future activities? How about Lee Song has own activities? Are there any projects you are looking into as her next project? There are rumors that Simon Lee and Neptune will appear on entertainment shows together as supporting fire. The reactions from star manager have yet to die down, do you have any plans on appearing alongside them? To the outpour of questions, Young Sun Wu said. I'm a bit busy right now. Then he used his chin to gesture at his phone, which he was still holding. Since there will be a joint interview time with Neptune soon, please ask your questions then. Unable to say a word, the reporters simply opened and closed their mouths. Even though his tone wasn't threatening or unpleasant, it felt it would be difficult to stick next to him. A female reporter smacked her lips as she saw Young Sun Wu's fading appearance. I saw him at a music broadcast in the past. I should have gotten close to him then. As soon as I opened the waiting room door, I was met with a heavy atmosphere. It even felt like gravity was different starting from the door. Although today was the day Neptune was revealing their songs, WU employees had also spent the past few months for this day as well. Everyone inside the waiting was tense like a drawn bowstring. Mr. Sun Wu. Where were you? You were in the middle of a call when I tried to call you. A female PR team employee rushed towards me. Why? Did something happen? The girls have been looking for you since a while ago. The girls? When I entered the waiting room, I flinched because the scene in front of me looked so unrealistic. After finishing their makeup and changing into their outfits, the girls were sitting on the sofa and dressing table chairs. The outfit was made to match the album concept. It was an elegant yet combatant style dress, giving off a conflicting feeling. Should I say they looked like they would appear in myths? Or like they should hold a harp in one hand and a bow in the other? I heard you were looking for me. When I asked after clearing my throat, M. C. O. Young, who was hugging her legs on the sofa, looked at me. There was no point to making her look lovely since her expression seemed like she was possessed by an evil spirit. She looked like she needed an exorcism. Appa, is it raining outside? Yeah, why? The sky looked murky since morning, and it started drizzling not too long ago. It was the first rainfall indicating spring. I even thought that spring had actually come when I saw rain dripping from the windows. However, the girls' moods seemed more uneasy for some reason. It wasn't only I'm C.O. Young, they all looked unhappy. Why are you all like this? Appa, we have a sad tradition on rainy days. It is a sad tradition. One you can hold your tears back when listening to it. I'm C.O. Young said, and L.J. added with her lips ask you. Although I wasn't sure what it was, I decided to match their tune. What kind of tradition? The day we made a comeback with a digital single last fall. It rained that day too. So. We thought it would become a hit since we worked hard on it. We revealed the song at midnight that time too so we waited with wide open eyes, but it was still raining then. We didn't know at the time, but that was the start of our misfortune. Recalling that day, Im Seo Young's eyes narrowed. It seemed like someone should add a thunder sound in the background. As soon as it turned 12, our song was released, but do you know what rank it placed? From what I heard, it was around 80 something. 87th. Then it dropped out of the charts two hours later. Im Seo Young buried her face in her hands as she despaired. But, it's raining today as well. It's the symbol of misfortune to us. We don't have a good feeling. That's why we were looking for Appa as an emergency measure. Sorry, I don't have the power to stop the rain. Not that. Appa is our lucky snake. Symbol of happiness. Staying next to you will neutralize the misfortune. If I could, I want to boil and drink you up. Appa, 
you probably don't understand how I feel. I know that you aren't in your right mind right now. Well, when looking at it psychologically, I could understand how they felt since they reduced their sleep and were hung up on this for months in preparation for today. Relaxing my body, I leaned against the sofa. If I could act as a placebo by just staying next to them, then why not? Okay, do what you want. Besides boiling me up. Since I easily accepted, she was taken aback. Im Seo Young hesitantly came up to me and poked my shoulder and arm with her thumb. Other staff members took pictures of this from afar, saying that they had to take pictures, upload them onto social media, and spread them amongst reporters. Then, unsure when he arrived, Kim Hyunjo chuckled saying that I was like a stone grandfather too. The thing that would help you give birth a son if you rubbed his nose. I sat after emptying my heart, but Lee Songa, who was sitting next to me, handed me a chocolate snack. I was used to receiving food from Lee Songa. Tasting the sweet chocolate covering my tongue, I asked in a joking manner. Why Songa, do you need anything from me? No, I'm good with this. Lee Songa came closer to me. Then, while closing her eyes, she said. I'm becoming calmer. I prepped the girls with anticipated questions. During this time, Im Seo Young calmed down so I no longer had to act as a stone grandfather. While I was looking around to check if there were any other problems with them, Lee Tae suddenly tapped my back. Appa, one moment. After saying that in a quiet voice, she entered the dressing room where hangers were set up. I followed behind her. Lee Tae rubbed her lips with her finger. Her eyes, which were always calm like an autumn lake in front of the girls, were rippling. Will it really go well? Why? Does the sad rain tradition weigh on you too? Lee Tae smiled slightly. No, I kept thinking that I should have worked on the song more. Don't worry. Your song is good, and the rehearsal went well. The reporter's reactions will be good too. I said while smiling. Lee Tae coughed lightly and said. Once more. Your song is good, and the rehearsal went well. The reporter's reactions will be good too. Once more please. Your song is. Last time. After repeating those words five times, we finally left the dressing room. Lee Tae now with a relieved expression after letting out her worries, returned to being the always calm leader as she examined the cue cards. Smiling, I sat back down on the sofa when LJ, who had been playing a game on her phone, bolted up. She came up to me taking long strides before crossing her arms and looking down at me. What's up with you? What do you want? LJ slowly licked her lips. Then she stretched her hand out and touched my hair. I instinctively pulled my head back. I couldn't let my guard down in front of her. I frowned trying to figure out what she was up to when LJ said. Please cut a piece of your head. What kind of fresh nonsense was this? Ah, uh, not your head, but your hair. Why my hair? I feel like ITLL be effective as a talisman. A talisman of luck? LJ's lips curled into a smile. I clearly knew one thing. Unlike other girls, she wasn't saying this because she was nervous. She was definitely doing this because she thought it would be fun. As soon as her words left her mouth, three pairs of eyes landed on me. Im Seo Young, who had been smitten at the mention of a talisman, was the first to rush towards me as though she was about to do 108 bows 3. Appa, me too. Me too. I want one strand. Since you're pulling hair out anyway, one for me too. I want two, no, three strands. In the end, I had to pull out a few strands of perfectly fine hair. Dozens of idols debuted each year. If you added all the other singers who unveiled their own showcase for their comeback, this number was over a hundred. That was why reporters were used to and even bored of idol group showcases. It was a boring event akin to replaying a video you had already seen. What reporters were waiting for wasn't a monotonous performance. They simply could comment on the new songs by extracting information from the press release sent out by WU's PR team ahead of time. What the reporters were really interested in was the press conference that followed afterwards. What kind of questions should they ask during the press conference to obtain an article-worthy remark from the members? 
Because of this, when Neptune went up on the stage and greeted them, the reporters were focused on their laptops. However, not long after their first performance began, the reporters began to raise their heads one after another. Wow this isn't an audio recording but live, right? They are skilled. Their skills were confirmed on Next K-Star. But I heard Sangha was less skilled, yet when looking at them in person, she's fine. Their stage composition is good and so is their performance. This is the best out of the showcases I've been to this year. The song is good too. It's this one, right? The one Simon Lee made. If it's like this, it's worth WU promoting them aggressively. If they are lucky, this will probably perform well. Murmurs could be heard from the press seating areas. Among them, there were reporters who nodded their heads after becoming absorbed in the song, and there were also people who truly felt it was a regret that the performance ended. As if comforting their regret, the second performance began. It was a dynamic and powerful rhythm, however, a fleeting violin tune added an emotional aspect to the song. It was a performance which melded Neptune members' unique tones as well as their outfits and choreography that made one think of something other than Humans 5. The word divine best described this scene. By the time their performance ended, a reporter mumbled. What the heck? Is this Simon Lee's song? This is Lee Tae-hee's song. From the press release, it says she composed and wrote it herself. I thought they mentioned this to add an artist image on top of being a talented girl group, but it's better than I thought. Better than you thought. I like this one better than Simon Lee's song. When the joint interview began, questions popped up everywhere without rest. It was to the point the MC overseeing this event was astonished. Although he had attended a few showcases, it was his first time attending one with so many questions. MS. Lee Tae-hee's song was chosen as one of the double title tracks. Is there any story behind the songwriting process? At a reporter's question, Lee Tae-hee, who was sitting at the center of the table on the stage, raised her mic. There is because, if it wasn't for manager Appa, my song wouldn't have even been included in this album. By manager, do you perhaps mean Mr. Young Sun Woo? Smelling the scent of something article worthy, the reporter's fingers worked faster. On their laptop screens were leads like the story behind Lee Tae-hee's song, Lee Tae-hee's song, if it wasn't for her manager. Lee Tae-hee brushed her light brown hair and continued. I was in a slump during the songwriting process, but manager Appa came to our residence. He gave me something as a present, and when I looked inside, there were alcohol and snacks he said he bought everything in the store aisle. Why alcohol? Ah, drinking while working became a habit for me. He told me to pick and drink whatever I wanted while handing it to me, and thanks to that, I finished the song in two days. Her somewhat cold-looking eyes narrowed to form a gentle smile. After that, he even pushed for my song to be included as part of the double title tracks. If this song obtains good results, it's all thanks to manager Appa. The rain has stopped. I said while entering the practice room. The Neptune girls, who were lolling around after becoming exhausted from practicing, and Kim Hyunjo and the trader, who were talking on one side, looked at me at the same time. Widening her eyes, Im Seo Young said. Our misfortune has ended now. Are really? The rain really stopped. Yeah. The rain stopped and a ray of light shined in the sky. That one's a lie. The girls laughed like deflating balloons. When I went to where Kim Hyunjo and the trader were, I saw that they had their laptops and cell phones out and were in the middle of monitoring reactions. After the showcase and press conference ended, articles about Neptune's comeback poured out onto portal news sites like a broken dam. The PR team was putting in their last remaining effort into promotions, and social media and community forum sites were bustling with talks concerning Neptune's comeback. Online music chart tabs were lined up on one laptop. What rank will they reach? I hope they hit at least 50. Some songs shoot through the graph as soon as they're released. When I said so while smacking my lips, Kim Hyunjo coughed. What's shooting through the graph? Do you think songs can hit the ceiling whenever they want? While it's good to hold expectations, do it in moderation. It hurts more if you fall from a high place. Still, it's not like there is zero possibility of it happening. This time it was the trader who spoke. 
a strange excitement radiated from his eyes. If they reach 10-20th rank, ITLL go up higher as they appear on broadcasts. As long as they do well on entertainment shows, can't we aim for first? Yeah, we might be able to aim for first. I agreed. Of course, the song the trader and I were thinking of was different. Awaiting midnight, we huddled around the computer. I heard someone gulp from somewhere. I also heard someone pant heavily while pressing their chest and a strange groan escaped from being unable to endure any longer. Everyone was calming their excitement in their own way. I licked my lips slightly. A pleasant excitement surrounded my body. The minute hand slowly tilted. Then, the moment it precisely hit midnight, Neptune's second mini-album was released. Chapter, 91 Everyone's gazes turned towards the screen. A familiar album cover appeared in the new song category of the music site. When we clicked it, the five tracks we had listened to again and again while preparing for the album appeared. The two title tracks were marked with a title indicator. In the review column of the music site, which possessed the largest share in the national music market, the comments of people who were waiting for the album to release were uploaded in real time. Looking at reviews, such as I can tell it is high quality just by listening to the intro and Go Neptune. My heartbeat quickened a little as well. Maybe it was because we could see the real-time rankings, but it was a completely different sensation compared to entertainment shows or dramas. How high would they go? Chief, when will the 5-minute prediction chart go up? At my question, Kim Hyunjo smirked. Hey, you. The 5-minute prediction chart is only for the first, second, and third places. It might be one of them. Hey, hey. It seems your standards have reached the top of your head because Cat Guardian Ghost became a historic success, but hitting the top of music charts, that's not as easy as it sounds. Kim Hyunjo glossed over it while laughing, but I was serious. The shooting through the graph talk from before wasn't a joke either. Of course, I knew it wouldn't be easy since the number of downloads and streams would have to surge past the graph. If this was so easy, there was no reason for singers to be so anxious when releasing their songs. Still, my expectations of just maybe had already crawled up to my throat. This album was expected to succeed. Their popularity had already increased enough to shed their rookie label. They were promoted well too. Wasn't it enough to aim for a brilliant rank with this? However, these were only my thoughts, the reactions were lukewarm. Maybe it's because Appa took seven bowlfuls of kimchi soup one, I feel relaxed instead. I'm Seo Young smiled while poking my side. The other girls were the same. The girls said their simple wishes, which was hoping for their album to be in the top 50 so that it appeared on the first page. The only person who held such high expectations in this room was me. No, the traitor and me. Soon, Kim Hyunjo said. Here you go, the five-minute prediction graph. I hurriedly looked at the screen. Then I unconsciously frowned. It wasn't there. Neptune's name wasn't on the prediction graph for the first, second, and third places. Even though others told me not to get ahead of myself, I still thought there was a chance. Then what rank was it? Just as I was divining the next number, the real-time chart updated. Believing we're within the top 50, I'm going to go up from the 50th rank. Appa, quickly, quickly. I feel like I'm going to get a heart attack. If it's not in the top 50. Hey. Are you going to say such unlucky words even at a time like this? What are you going to do if your words come true? Quickly touch Sun Wu Appa and nullify your words. Facing such a fiery temper, LJ lightly touched my arm in the end. Kim Hyunjo suddenly said. It's here. 42nd. While the girls were shouting, I almost made a strange sound. If Kim Hyunjo didn't continue speaking, I might have called the music site to ask if there was a problem with the count. What in the world? It's not one of the title tracks. It's not one of our title tracks. And it reached 42nd. May maybe the count is wrong. Surprised by her own words, Im Seo Young grabbed my arm. The paused screen began to scroll up again. Kim Hyunjo seemed nervous as I heard the mouse wheel click a few times. Soon, the mouse stopped twice. 
35th and 33rd. The places of two other non-title tracks. At this point, the mood in the practice room wasn't just heated, even our skin felt like it was burning. If someone threw a lighter, it would cause a chain explosion. No one could utter a word as they stared at the screen with widened eyes. We kept scrolling up. Neptune's album cover didn't appear in the 20s. As soon as the first digit changed to a 1, I heard people gulping around me. Just then, we stopped scrolling completely. Here it is. Am I dreaming? It, it's probably a dream, right? Right? Right, Uni? I think so. Appa, check another site. Yua, Sunwoo Appa must truly be the symbol of happiness. His hair must really be effective. If not, there is no way this could happen. The company isn't buying up the album, is it? I heard a lot about that these days. The mood surged. Everyone's cheeks were dyed red with excitement, and their voices became louder as they resounded throughout the practice room. It seemed Im Seo Young was overwhelmed with 50,000 emotions as she stomped her feet with tears in her eyes. LJ was persistently asking Kim Hyunjo about the company buying up their album, and Lee Tae Hee took champagne out from her bag. Lee Sangha held glasses and food in her hands. Although the trader seemed a little sad, he was enjoying this festive mood. The only one who couldn't join in was me. I checked the screen once more. There was no change. Lee Taehee's song Satellite was 14th. Simon Lee's song Pisces was 11th. These were the ranks of our title tracks. I greeted the dimly brightening morning with open eyes. My head was so complicated that I only looked at my phone throughout the night. Opening the music app, I checked how the real-time chart rankings changed every hour. Fortunately, they increased as time passed, but the increase was smaller than I hoped. The morning rankings were Satellite at 11th and Virgo at 10th. Objectively, this was a successful entry since Kim Hyunjo and the girls bathed in happiness while popping champagne late into the night and we received texts of relief and congratulations from other employees. Including the Team 3 leader and the PR team, saying that these ranks were good. That was why this was a successful entry into the charts. If I didn't know the original future, then I too would be happy about this success and be drinking champagne until I collapsed. However, the future and the conversation I had heard endlessly entangled in my head, preventing me from celebrating. It felt like I failed to grab something that was within reach. Were my expectations just too high from the start? Did it reach 10th originally? However, considering it was a hit song that would place first on a music broadcast, wasn't it start too weak? Would something happen that would make it rise abruptly or climb back up the chart? Or was it because I changed the album to include double tracks, which was different from the future? Did the rank halt early because public interest was divided? While biting my lower lip, I checked the album review column again. All the songs are of good quality. WU also made the album so pretty that I might have to own one as a photo album. I was worried Neptune might flop again, but if it's like this, they've burst from their coffins. I think the key point is to maintain these ranks for the long run and prevent them from dropping. They need to hold out. Since their songs are so good, I don't think they'll suddenly drop from the ranking. Their non-title tracks are all within the top 40, and since their two title tracks are also in the rankings, I hope that they can keep them up by going on as many entertainment shows and music broadcasts as they can. Lee Taehee's song's amazing, isn't it? I think it's the best out of them. I'm replaying it non-stop. I second Lee Taehee's song. I understand why they went with two title tracks. To be honest, they are songs that can go up higher, but they are lacking the firepower. Since this is only the first day, I believe there is a chance they'll go up even higher. The comments regarding the quality of the album were very positive. Its rating was on the high end with four. Eight stars. Even in community sites and on social media, favorable comments were the absolute majority. If they could gain momentum through broadcasts in this situation and if it spreads through word of mouth, then it might go up even higher. This was what I thought while rubbing my dry lips. Yeah, let's wait and see a while longer. Once we jumped into the torrent of schedules, I no longer had time to leisurely get lost in my thoughts. 
Although we scheduled as many as we could so that we could bring more exposure to the girls and their new songs, after trying to keep up with the schedule personally, there was no schedule more hellish than this. Public network and cable music broadcasts, celebratory performances on cultural programs, as well as smaller events besides them, they performed multiple times a day. We even held autograph events to increase album sales. Days of waking up early in the morning, putting on makeup, running around all day, and sleeping early in the morning continued. The girls were astonished, saying that this was the busiest they had ever been since they debuted, but they seemed to welcome their busy schedule as they were lively every day. Still, the song ranks increased slowly due to the effort they put in. When the talk show they appeared on with Simon Lee was broadcasted, I inwardly had high hopes. Even though it was a group talk show with tons of celebrity guests talking, it was still a one-hour public network entertainment show like Star Manager. However, it completely lacked impact compared to Star Manager. While I was monitoring the broadcast, I thought my eyes would fall out from trying to find Neptune in the full shots since their faces didn't come up on the screen nearly enough. Yet, since it was still on a public network, Virgo climbed up to 6th right after the broadcast and satellite reached 8th. Although it was slow, I had been suppressing my nervousness by looking at the ranks going up one by one. Yet, the insufficient ranks suddenly began to fall. Unexpectedly, it was because of Sugar Cats. This is BYG's fandom's firepower. Kim Hyunjo said while clicking his tongue. Sugar Cats' digital single, which they released at midnight, was playing on his laptop. Sugar Cats was definitely a three-person group, yet male voices were heard more often. Even putting the cart before the horse this much is embarrassing. How is this Sugar Cats song featuring BYG? Anyone who listens to it will think the Sugar Cats were featured in BYG's song. BYG's fans are the only ones promoting the song on social media too. Even their fandom doesn't consider this as Sugar Cats song. As soon as Sugar Cat's song featuring BYG members was released, it reached third. Past noon, it was now at second. Since they were performing this well, their album sales shouldn't be low, and if they appeared on broadcasts with BYG, it would become even trendier. At this rate, Sugar Cats were more likely to be first on the music broadcast than Neptune. Just where did things go wrong? I didn't know where I should start in order to flip the situation around. The Neptune members who were satisfied with being in the top 10 were at a loss for words when they heard the news. Especially I'm CO Young, she became limp like a lifeless jellyfish. We would have to meet Sugar Cats during their next music broadcast, but it put a bad taste in my mouth thinking of their proud faces. Just looking at the songs, ours is better. Fandoms are a cheat, a cheat. The Sugar Cats weren't even expected to have BYG featured in their song, what is this all of a sudden? Kim Hyunjo's words nailed into my ears like a dart. Featuring BYG wasn't expected. They weren't planning on an album from the start, but I hear they changed midway. What a pot of confusion. Sugar Cat's high music chart ranking, featuring BYG, did these events occur in the original future? Or did the present change? I recalled Sugar Cat's, who I saw last at Next K-Star's concert. They had disappeared looking like they had swallowed a bug. They said that they would make a comeback at the same time as us as though they were telling us to watch out. If they had pulled BYG into this because they had a grudge against Neptune, who was continuing to rise after Star Manager, then this clearly didn't happen in the original future. The present had changed. Out of the frying pan into the fire, I already had a headache because Neptune's ranks were lower than I expected, but for another variable to pop up. I felt like my head would explode from overcapacity. Yeah. Another variable was added to the mix, what should I do from now on? For this album to reach the level of success of the original future and for Lee Tae-hee's song to be known as a hit song and reach first on music broadcasts. How could I expose their new songs to the public in an effective way so that interest in them rises? While I was pondering about this, my phone rang. It was a text. I thought it was another congratulatory message, but it was from a writer who had contacted me a few times in the past. Mr. Manager, when do you think the internal meetings will decide? We are awaiting a favorable response. Since a new album has been released, if you appear alongside Neptune, 
we will pay careful attention to use their songs as part of the background music and even display their music video. As soon as I checked the message, I turned to Kim Hyunjo. Although I didn't know how helpful I would be, I had to do everything I could. Chief, you remember the entertainment shows that asked me to appear as well, right? The ones we put on hold for now. Yeah, why? It'll go on them. Chapter, 92 When would we be scheduled for entertainment shows? What kind of concepts would they have? Since we were really lucky with Star Manager last time, it would probably be too greedy to expect that much again. I didn't know how effective playing their songs in the background or playing their music video for 15 seconds would be. If there was a way to naturally show their songs during a program. Okay, cut. While I was lost in my thoughts, the filming director shouted with a satisfied expression. I tapped my head a few times and cleared my thoughts. Due to thinking of the same thoughts at every opportunity during the past few days, my head felt so heavy that it was difficult to carry it on top of my neck. Good work everyone. As soon as the filming ended, dozens of staff members cheered with exhausted faces. Even the Neptune girls flopped on the grass, exhausted from shoots for magazines, TV, and behind-the-scenes footage for marketing purposes. I checked the time when the filming director started a conversation with a shine in his small eyes. I was worried that the girls would be overshadowed because the background was so good today, but there's nothing to edit. I heard all Neptune members had great appearances, but there's nothing to throw out since they would be picture-perfect whenever we filmed them. Thank you. It's all thanks to your filming skills. The new album concept, songs, and reactions were all good. Congratulations. I've been hearing Neptune's name in the advertising industry these days. I know they worked hard, and now they'll finally get to shine. I heard this wherever I went these days. I did my best to smile while thanking them and acting modestly. It would be great if the conversation ended here, but the director glanced at the girls and added. Since the shoot ended well, why don't we have an after-party to get closer to each other? With those businessmen over there as well. The Neptune members drink, right? A three-month single becomes a six-month one or even a year-long one at events like this. I also heard this a lot these days. Although it seemed there were companies who pushed their girl groups into these situations, our policy was to create an impenetrable defense. Ah, we have a schedule early in the morning tomorrow so ITLL be difficult today. After making an empty promise that we should schedule one when the opportunity arose, I distanced myself from the director. It seemed the advertising employees held some expectations as well as they were smacking their lips. There were a lot of men who didn't act their age in this industry, wanting to play with girl group members who were young enough to be their daughters. He, Appa. When I approached the girls, Im Seo Young hesitantly called out to me. We don't have a schedule right after, right? Can we stay here for a bit longer? Why were you hesitant when saying that? Since this was an advertising shoot, I cleared the schedule because we didn't know when ITLL ends so it's fine, but isn't it better to go home and sleep a little? Their schedule was packed tomorrow. I could take a nap by switching with the trader, but the girls had to run around the stage in heels as though they were in their best condition regardless of whether they were sleep-deprived or not. Sleep is good too, but we won't be able to come here again. Im Seo Young looked at the film environment reluctantly. The grass field warmed by the sun. Splendid cherry blossom trees and a tranquil pond piled with cherry blossoms. This garden, which the location manager painstakingly chose for the commercial shoot, was as beautiful as an illustration in a children's book. Lee Tae-hee, who was lying on the ground like a plant undergoing photosynthesis, said while scratching her neck. I think ITLL be nice to relax for a bit before leaving. It's been a long time since we've seen cherry blossoms up so close. Appa should rest too. You looked very tired these days. Lee Songda added. LJ silently looked at me, but her body was already stuck to the grass, clearly indicating she had no intentions of leaving. Okay, let's do that then. After asking for the advertising team's understanding, I bought a bit of time. Then I sat on a bench and took out my phone while the girls were resting on the grass. My fingers pressed the music website app on their own. I clicked my tongue after confirming the ranks didn't change much since last time. 
A shadow dropped in front of me. When I raised my head, LJ was looking at me with her head tilted to the side. As expected of a girl who did sports as a hobby, she could handle most schedules easily, but she seemed slightly different today. Should I say she looked stifled, no, it looked more like she was parched. Seeing that sodas, which was the product they were advertising, were lying around, I was about to offer her one when. I'm suffering from frustration because of you, Appa. I dropped the soda and it rolled on the ground. Because of me? Why? Air, smile a little. Everyone's reading Appa's mood more than the CEO's. I unconsciously touched my face and blinked. Me? Why? LJ sat down next to me. She crossed her legs out of habit and placed her arm on the back of the bench, then she stared at me with narrowed eyes. You look like you're disappointed in us. You're disappointed because our album performance isn't up to your expectations. How can we not notice after experiencing multiple failed albums? My words hovered on top of my tongue. Tehiuni has difficulty bringing it up because her song is a title track. Lee Song has just digging a hole for herself. And Im Seo Young's expression distorts like a rain-soaked mouse whenever you check the music charts. While shaking her crossed leg, she clicked her tongue. That's why teasing her is not fun anymore. That was my greatest source of energy. I can't relieve my frustration these days. I might cause trouble like this. Although she joked at the end, it wasn't a joke. I felt like cold water was poured on me. I turned my gaze and looked at the other girls. Lee Tae-hee and Lee Sangha were talking to each other while lying down leisurely, and Im Seo Young was enjoying herself by gathering cherry blossoms and scattering them over the girls. When I thought back, her words seemed to be true. The girls seemed stiffer around me recently. I didn't know they were concerned about my actions. Since they didn't look any different, no, because my mind was complicated, I seemed to have glossed over it by thinking they were the same as usual. Sorry. I thought the song was really good and felt regretful when looking at its rank. It's because I was greedy. I'm not disappointed in you girls. I didn't know you girls were minding me so much. Thank you for telling me. I read your mood too even though I'm not the type to. She said apathetically before getting up and brushing herself off. Then she joined the other girls and pulled him Seo Young's hair. Annoyed, she grumbled irritably before glancing at me. Lee Tae-hee and Lee Sangha were looking at me as well. I smiled out of reflex. The concerns and worries that entangled my mind dispersed. I had been a bit impatient. The reason why I changed the present was to pioneer a better future, but when a situation turned worse, I became preoccupied with the thought of having to correct the situation. I became so focused on the future that I didn't see the present. The girls worked very hard and their current performance was great enough that they should be happy and proud, but I almost ruined everything. I stood up while scratching my head. I walked towards the girls and sat on the grass. Their clear eyes, which made me wonder why I hadn't noticed until now, stuck to me. I stretched before lying down on the grass. Let's watch the cherry blossoms to our fill before going. There are too many people at the Cherry Blossom Road in Uido that we won't be able to go together. And ITLL be troublesome if people recognize you and swarm around us. It's great your album's a hit, but this part's a little regretful. At my words, my surroundings temporarily became silent. Soon, Lee Sangha rolled over towards me. Then Im Seo Young said with twitching lips. Um, Appa. I talked with my mom on the phone and she said that she heard our song twice when she went out yesterday. Really? I should go around some time. Oh right, I don't have the time. Also, the members on our fan page increase a ton. When I secretly go check when they are chatting, the fans. Im Seo Young's voice gradually became livelier. Soon, other voices joined in and their laughter tickled my ears. We laid on the grass for almost an hour while chatting about all sorts of things. After I explained that I had been overly greedy because it was my first album, the mood became even more livelier. I thought while lying relaxed and watching the fluttering cherry blossom trees. To take it slow. To not be so impatient and nervous because of the future. Well, that was that. 
My thoughts on doing whatever I could, even appearing entertainment shows, didn't change. If we were lucky, we might be able to gather a good reaction from the public, and if that happened, we could take the sugar cats, who walked around with their noses in the air, down a notch. It's been a while. The Sugar Cats members smiled as they entered our waiting room. They all had expressions that they couldn't endure their desire to want to boast. I glanced at him Seo Young, and she greeted them with a soulless face. I did expect this sort of situation since I heard that Sugar Cats would have a comeback performance today. However, even though I knew, it still made me lose my appetite. Han Saitbile of the Sugar Cats blinked her caterpillar hair-like eyelashes and smiled. We saw the entertainment show you went on with Simon Lee. You were really working hard, but it was a shame you were edited out so much. Are you appearing on another entertainment show? Well monitor it for you. Like hell, you would. I got up to make them leave before they upset him Seo Young any further, but LJ suddenly stood up before I could and closed the slightly opened waiting room door. She then looked at the Sugar Cats members and abruptly asked. Why did you come to the music broadcast? What do you mean why did we come? Don't you know we're making a comeback? You released an album, I guess. The Sugar Cats members, who were standing close together, showed angry expression. Do you live without seeing the music charts? Our song is above yours, you know. Ah, that. BYG's song you're featured in. Han Saitbayal's eyes turned fierce at LJ's ridiculing words. I stealthily looked around the waiting room. Well, it was fine if there were no cameras. Since she closed the door, no one would hear since it was so noisy outside. Im Seo Young simply looked at her with flustered eyes. Lee Taehee and Lee Sangha didn't look like they would stop her either. Can't you read Korean? BYG's featured on our song. Really? I thought it was the opposite since BYG's part took up over half the four-minute song. Seeing as how BYG's fans are swarming outside, it seems you are performing together, but people might think you are background dancers. Tell the staff to put the name Sugar Cats really big on the screen. You! Han Saitbile shouted. The other girls tried their best to stifle their laughter. If you're so jealous, why don't you ask Blackout to feature on your song? Our song will take first anyways. Sure. Leave if you're done talking. LJ gestured with her chin. Then, as though she suddenly thought of something, she added. Ah, uh, also, I'll monitor the broadcast to check if you look like background dancers or not. The Sugar Cats members yapped for a while longer before leaving as though they were being chased out. I had imagined LJ, who always bickered with I'm Seo Young, as a cat, but I thought I was seeing a predatory cat today. LJ raised her brows when she saw him Seo Young staring at her. Why? What? Nothing. Im Seo Young shook her head. The edges of her lips twitched. LJ flopped on the sofa and smiled while saying. I wish a big star made a comeback so that they can't get first. Chopsticks grabbed Yuko one. Choi Gun Young took a few bites before setting his chopsticks down. You didn't hear from him after that? I gave him my business card, but I didn't hear from him again. It's already done anyways. The man sitting in front of him said while drinking alcohol. We offered Young Sun Wu those conditions because you said it would be useful to have him when contracting Sun Chai Young, but it looks like Sun Chai Young can't leave WU easily. CEO Beck, what a scary guy. So he didn't even contact you, huh? Choi Gun Young frowned slightly. If he contacted you, I was going to tell people he was thinking of switching companies. But that guy's quite impressive seeing as he's unscathed while working with you for almost half a year. No, he's not just unscathed. I hear that he's the one in the spotlight, right? Still, I won this time. Though the song is not performing as well as I hoped. Choi Gun Young placed his arms on the table, rested his chin on his hand and smiled. Seeing his nonchalant smile that revealed his dimples, the man shook his head. Since you both brought a title track, the album has double title tracks, right? Yeah. If they appear on entertainment shows a few more times with Simon Lee, then the company should focus on promoting Simon Lee's song. But, you, what went on between you and Simon Lee? 
what do you mean what went on between us? I worked hard to persuade him. To you, working hard means by any means possible. The man smirked. Choi Gunyoung shrugged. Isn't that obvious? It's only obvious for someone like you. At the man's words, Choi Gunyoung's smile thickened. Also, in this industry, it's guys like me who succeed. It was already the middle of the night when I arrived home after finishing today's schedule. Yawning, I took out my phone. I was about to set the alarm a little later because the trader was going to handle tomorrow's morning schedule when my phone vibrated. It was the writer who texted me not too long ago. Mr. Manager. Your chief contacted us. We will go forward while thinking your appearance is confirmed. You might be a bit flustered by the concept, but there's no need to be so worried. We won't ask for any more or less, just as much as Star Manager. Chapter, 93 the sky at 7A. Was gloomy. Thunder in the clear sky made me lose my sleep since early morning, and now, dark clouds were wriggling together like smoke. These dark clouds covered the red sun in the east, and the entire sky turned gray. The weather was killer. It just had to be today. You said the recording was today, right? Are you prepared? Hearing my brother's gentle voice, I unknowing started groaning. Prepared? They didn't give me a damn thing to prepare for. I think the staff might have gone insane. It's an hour before the recording, yet I still don't know what we're doing. Even if it's a reality variety show, this feels like him going out to war naked. Of course, since the staff should have already organized and prepared the show, there shouldn't be any instances where I dig my own grave still, I thought they would at least tell us something beforehand. Neptune was new to entertainment shows, and I was a non-celebrity. Yet, they really didn't tell us anything. The kids are jumping up and down after hearing that you're appearing on that show. It's the show they watch religiously on Saturdays. They'll probably have a harder time waiting for the broadcast than going on an outing. Uncle. Dad, pass me the phone. Me too. I said it first. You hear them, right? I could clearly imagine the quadruplets sticking to my brother and aiming for the phone. Even in the morning, they were energetic. Jill won, who came out victorious in their intense struggle, shouted in excitement. Uncle. Uncle, are you going to be a celebrity? Will you be on TV a lot? Then are you going to appear on a lot of shows? Are you going to appear like before? We're going to invite our friends and watch the show together. Mom said she'll order us fried chicken and pizza. Grandma and Grandpa are going to watch it at the town hall. Oh, my God. Like before, I should definitely, definitely avoid embarrassing things like last time. Appa. We're ready to go. I heard him CEO Young's energetic voice behind me. The girls were looking out the van window after fixing their makeup. I said my farewell to the quadruplets as I got in the driver's seat. Uncle has to go work now. Cool. Good luck, uncle. Make sure to win all the games. Are you talking to the quadruplets? It seemed she heard Giles' spirited shout as Lee Sangha asked as she leaned forward from the back seat. I felt like my eardrum would burst a second later. When I quickly moved my phone away from my ear, the children's voices echoed in the van. Uncle, who was that? Who was it? Why? What? What's going on? Someone asked, are you talking to the quadruplets? A woman's voice. Must be Neptune. How lucky. Me too. Me too. I want to hear her voice too. Uncle, tell them that we promoted their new songs the ton at school. They were causing a huge commotion. The girls and their stylists burst into laughter at the back. I was about to hang up, but Lee Sangha stretched her arm out quite enthusiastically. Appa, can I talk to them? Huh? Yeah, here. Be careful of your eardrums. When I handed her my phone, everyone gathered around it like pigeons around food and each said a word. I let them be in hopes that it would be a nice change of mood before the recording began. It seemed like their entertainment show anxiety began to flare up after they were edited out a lot on the talk show they appeared on with Simon Lee. It took almost five minutes for the phone to go around before they finally hung up. 
Do they resemble Appa? Li Sangha asked while sticking to the back of the driver's seat. I don't know. Their personalities definitely aren't similar to mine, maybe our looks a little. Two of the four are similar to how I looked when I was in elementary school. I'm curious. Appa's miniatures. Li Sangha mumbled seriously. I was about to reply that we weren't that alike when I received the text. It stated to enter the parking lot now that they were finished setting up. I started the car and said. They are going to film us appearing by opening the car door, and supposedly, the camera is going to tilt up from the legs of the first person getting off the van. Who wants to get off first? Then the one with the best looking legs needs to get off first. Then everyone besides I'm Seo Young can do rock paper scissors. What? Why? Mine are good too. In the end, it was decided Lee Sangha would get off first. When we entered the parking lot behind PBS, we saw film director of photography holding a heavy camera, the lighting staff, and cameramen with 6mm cameras slung on their shoulders. As soon as they finished filming our entrance, a cameraman approached us. The cameraman, wearing a khaki windbreaker, walked backwards as he talked to us. We'll be heading straight to the entertainment department on the sixth floor. The cast members have already arrived and are waiting for the guests. Since it was before the morning rush hour, the inside of the broadcasting station was empty. The employees we occasionally saw seemed to have worked overnight as they were busy hiding their hollow faces from the camera whenever they spotted one. Hearing the thunderous rumbles from the windows, it seemed like we were entering a den of zombies than a broadcasting station. We rode the empty elevator to the sixth floor. Im Seo Young, who had been seeing her face reflected on the mirror wall, suddenly tapped my shoulder. Appa, you know. Why am I not nervous when I think about appearing with you? I felt like my insides were shrinking before the start of other recordings, but today I feel like come at me. Should I say it feels like I arrived with fortune on my back? Right? The girls nodded in agreement. Hmm. My shoulders felt heavy for some reason. We followed the cameraman to a large waiting room. As soon as we entered, the loud noises immediately quieted down. The familiar faces sitting apart from one another stretched their necks as they looked in our direction. They were veteran celebrities who hosted the five-year real variety show from now on, were, which was commonly shortened into now, we. When I greeted them with the girls, five men shot up from their seats. Oh, Neptune. I know, I know, come in. What are you doing, hurry up and clear the seats of honor. Our guests are a girl group. Ah, man. I told you to tell me ahead of time if you're going to do things like this. If they told you, then what? You're going to go to a shop before coming. A squid is still a squid. Two. Oh, yeah. I went to the shop today. I knew I wanted to go for some reason. They should have known who the guests were, but their surprised and happy reactions looked incredibly natural. Of course, their reactions were being filmed by the cameras set up around the large meeting room. While Neptune was dealing with the outpour of questions and interest, I stood like a male ballad singer who came to comfort the troops. Only after the mood died down a little did one of the hosts recognize me. You're the manager who appeared on the New Year's special, right? Yes, I am Young Sun Wu. I recalled his profile. Huang Jae Hyun. He was a singer and a familial neighborhood Big Brother character. I'm on a cable broadcast with Tape Young Hyun 3 and he boasted a ton about how the special had the highest ratings on New Year's. So I watched the broadcast, and it was really fun. Please take care of us. Our ratings have been dropping these days so we need our guests' help. Ah, uh, no, please take care of me. But what are we doing today? I asked, thinking that this was the perfect opportunity, but Huang Jaehyun replied in a nonchalant manner. Did you not hear anything? Only the date, time, and place. We weren't told what to prepare for so we only brought ourselves. You just need to bring yourselves since we're a show that works people hard. Well, that was true. Before I came here, I watched previous episodes for research, and on their goal, it stated that they were a broadcast where the members challenged something new every week. However, in the end, the concept would change every week, but they would run around regardless. 
we don't really know much either. I think they need some realistic reaction. If we knew, then ITLL become too obvious that we were coordinating with the staff so they don't tell us on purpose. Realistic reactions, huh? I was becoming more and more clueless. So don't worry. When we start recording, the directing team will follow and direct us. It's not like they'll make us do something we can't, right? Huang Jiehyun said while smiling brightly. Right, you're appearing to promote Neptune's new songs. If you brought their album, give me one so we can play it when we're in the car. Of course, I brought it. A box full of them. I told him I would give him one later and glanced at the girls. Even though they are surrounded by now, we members, the mood felt comfortable, not awkward at all. Im Seo Young chatted as she continued this cheerful mood. Then a woman who seemed to be a member of the directing team entered. Bringing in the next guests. So there were other guests. As soon as I thought this, my surroundings became noisy. What? There are more guests today. Is it another girl group? They are actors this time. Two of them. If there's an actress, I'm not leaving work today. Let's record for two days straight without sleep. I agree. I return my right to leave work. Their reactions were more realistic than mine. Soon, the door opened, and the two aforementioned actors entered. As expected of actors. Her cheeks were plump and warm like freshly made rice cakes. Her eyes were so large that they seemed to be pasted on, and she had rose-colored lips. She was a child actress walking hurriedly with her short arms and legs. A mixed-raced boy was paired the girl, but they were even younger than the quadruplets. Still, they seemed to have quite a bit of experience since they were children I had often seen in miniseries, daily dramas, and even movies. Appa, I suddenly got a feeling. Im Seo Young whispered to me. Maybe they cast Appa to take care of those two child actresses. I was a bit suspicious too since I became known as the uncle of quadruplets because of star manager. However, unlike the quadruplets, who still looked very childish, they gave off a completely different feeling. How should I say it? They didn't seem so young as to need someone to look after them. The girl smiled brightly as she acted cute in front of the uncles, but it was clear she was acting like that to dote it on. The mixed-raced boy had the expression of a grandpa who seemed tired of everything. The two child actors went around greeting everyone, and when they got to me, they tilted their fist-sized heads. It looked like they were confused as to whether I was a guest or not. I was about to speak first when. Since everyone's here, including the guests, well start the actual recording now. The woman who introduced the guests a while ago shouted while clapping her hands. When the conversations died down and their gazes focused on her, the woman took out a cue card. You must be curious why you've gathered here in the morning, but well start individual interviews in another room first. You just have to enter the room to the side in the order your name is called. What? What is it? You're not going to give us some weird mission again, right? Stop making us do weird things after inviting guests. The woman didn't even bat an eye as she called Huang Jiehyun's name first. He disappeared with a leery expression. Soon, two more left the large meeting room. It seemed they would go somewhere else after their individual interviews as no one returned. Mr. Young Sun Wu. I got up as soon as my name was called. Since I was the first in our group, the Neptune girls waved their hands as though they were seeing off someone going on a long journey. Appa. Live so we can meet again. If something happens in the room, scream. Am I Shim Chung being dragged to the Indangsu Sea? 4. I grinned as I followed the woman. The room I was guided to had an unusual atmosphere for some reason. The window was blocked by blackout curtains, and the lights were a chilling purple color. The mood felt like someone should release some dry ice as well. Inside were two cameras, a producer, and a writer. The producer was a face I became familiar with after watching previous episodes, Bei Yong Huan, the main producer. The short-haired woman giving off an urban feel was the second writer, Song Yujin, who had texted me previously. When I sat at a table covered with a black cloth, writer Song smiled as she said. You give off a stronger impression in real life than on screen. 
When I greeted them with a sour face, Ryder Song continued speaking. We've been hearing that our program has fallen into a routine a lot these days, so we've been using guests to add fresh blood to the program. Ryder Park, who plans Star Manager, suggested Mr. Sun Woo and Neptune. Ah, that person. I said that we wanted to bring out as much as that program, but we're not really expecting that much, so there's no need to be worried. If you can make things that fun every time, then you need to be on broadcasts than being a manager. You just need to act naturally with the Neptune members. Yes, but what do I have to do naturally? Seeing as they were calling us individually, it seemed like they were giving missions like someone mentioned, and I also thought that it could be a hidden camera prank. Still, I hoped that, since I was already appearing, it would be something I was good at. Then I could obtain some air time and, like my original goal, promote Neptune's new songs. Then he'll tell you a secret first. Producer Bay said while making a serious expression. To be honest, there are people who possess special powers in the world. Special powers? They're called superpowers. I almost made a bizarre expression in front of the cameras. Producer Bay unveiled the black cloth covering the table to reveal a few cards with large words printed on them. Now, pick one. Producer Bay said while gesturing to the cards. There were a few cards, but only one caught my eye. The card with the words Future Prophet. Chapter, 94. I did hope that it was something I would be good at. However, this wasn't right. In front of someone who could actually see the future, though no one knew that besides me, either way, I felt taken aback after seeing the Future Prophet card just lying in front of me. The moment I slightly touched the card, almost in a trance, producer Bei Yonghuan nodded. Good. Mr. Sun Wu will see the future today. How fantastic. Leaving the room, I went down to the parking lot accompanied by a cameraman. Amidst the staff, who were bustling to prepare for the outdoor shoot, there were two vans of the same design but different colors. When I opened the driver's seat door out of habit, the two people who were already inside turned their gazes towards me. One was Huang Jae Hyun, who I had talked to before. The other was the youngest character on Now, We, Im Ju Won, an actor. As soon as I greeted them, Huang Jae Hyun dropped his formal speech and asked. You picked a card too, right? What kind of power is it? Ah, uh, I can see the future. Young Sun Wu. 28 years old. Future prophet. What should I say? It seemed like words had power. Once my biggest secret, which I had kept hidden for almost half a year and would continue to do so from now on, left my lips, I felt refreshed all the way from my belly. Huang Jiehyun and Im Juwon each had their own power. While I was listening to their explanations, other people soon arrived as well. The child actress Song Yuri, Li Tae and Li Sangha, who sat next to me. Sangha, what did you pick? Hypnotist. Li Sangha replied with a proud expression. I can hypnotize one person and make him mine. Yours? Yes, I just need to hypnotize that person and write my name on his forehead. I think I chose well. Seeing as she stared at my forehead after saying that, I had a feeling. You aren't trying to use it on me, right? Li Sangha avoided my gaze and focused on something else. So she was going to. Why use that on me? What use will I be after you hypnotize me? Hmm. This or that. So what were they? When I told her to aim for someone else besides me, she looked at me with an expression that asked, why? While telling her that she would get more screen time and it would be more fun if she used it on a cast member, I heard Huang Jiehyun's voice from behind. Hey, relax. I'm not doing anything. Now that I thought about it, Im Juwan's reactions were a bit weird. I could tell that his pretty face, which ignited women's maternal instincts, was a bit stiff. He was also glancing at me and Li Sangha since a while ago. Huang Jiehyun waved his hand as he said. He's just jealous. The lead male role for Cat Guardian Ghost was offered to him first. Mr. Seo Jijun's role. If he had done it, he would have been a big hit right about now. Since he kicked that away, how upset must he be? Ah, uh, really, Hyung. Thinking about it now, 
there were articles regarding Im Ju Huan before Seo Jijun. Something about him being injured. When I glanced at him, Im Ju Huan was making an irritated face. I could have made it for the drama since it was a minor injury, but my company told me not to do it. Saying that it wouldn't do well and that I should just use my injury as an excuse to refuse. The hell they mean by it wouldn't do well. Damn company. They're no use. After my contract ends, I'm going to leave it without turning back. I'm slowly starting to look for a company too, Sunbeam M1. Song Yuri, who was sitting in the middle, joined in while blinking cutely. Until now, my uncle managed my schedule, but it's a bit frustrating. If I want to transform into an adult actress later on, I felt that I would need a company. The two went back and forth discussing a few management companies. They were all management companies that were famous in this industry. Well, if it were those two, then almost all companies would welcome them. Im Ju Huan was a star actor who could play lead roles on public networks, and Song Yuri was a child actress with outstanding potential, having received the Best New Actress Award at a film festival, which was unprecedented for a child actress. My company would welcome them as well. The PR team seemed to be constantly looking actors entering the free contract market. Should I try my hand? How about W? The two stopped talking once they heard my words. Im Ju Huan and Song Yuri stared at me. Just as my cheeks were heating up, Im Ju Huan asked with a strange expression. Are you scouting us right now? I was about to reply while smiling when producer Bay stuck his head in through the van window. Superhumans, are you ready to move? What? Is this all? Where are the others? At Huang Jiehyun's question, the producer gestured towards the white van standing a bit away from us. Writer Song was there, explaining something to them, and I caught a glimpse of LJ and Im Seo Young through the door opening. Producer Bay spoke. Today, we divided you into two teams, the superhuman team and the researcher team. The superhuman team has to be careful not to get caught by the researcher team. Since superhumans are valuable test subjects, you will be dragged to their research lab if you are caught. Valuable what? Isn't that too cruel? What have the superhumans done? I asked sincerely. I already had a nightmare where a mad scientist found out about my foresight ability and kidnapped me. I woke up after being bound up tightly and laid down on a surgical table. With a brazen face, the producer stared at me as if asking what was wrong. This is the way of the world. For a rated G entertainment show to take on such a worldview devoid of hopes and dreams. Well, the world has always been like this. Even kids know that. It was okay for kids to watch this program, right? Then before we head out, Mr. Sun Wu, please see the future. How do I see it? With this. The producer handed me a box the size of my head. Inside were a few different colored dice, and there were stickers on each of the six faces. The people at the back chatted noisily as they leaned their heads forward. You just need to throw the dice all at once. Isn't there some sort of chant when using your superpower? I almost swore at Huang Jiehyun in front of the cameras. When I imagined myself chanting, come out, future. While holding the dice, shivers ran down my entire body. No way. There was no way, right? If I had to do something like that, then I might really see a future where I die. This time, my cause of death would be out of humiliation for sure. The producer glanced at me. If you want a chant, moon prism power, with light. No, they'll just throw them. They'll throw them right now. Without breathing, I threw the dice all at once. I heard someone sigh in regret beside me. When I turned to look at her, Lee Sangha acted otherwise. Hitting the walls of the box, the rolling dice stopped one after another. Now take off the sticker on top and see the event that will happen in the future. Following producer Bay's request, I began tearing off the stickers, starting with the red die. The superhuman team will, in one hour, on the streets of Sinchin, with civilians, complete a mission. Huh, so this was what future foresight was. If the futures I had seen were even half as clear as this, I might have already become a chief. Licking my lips, I returned the dice. Then we drove to Sinchin as the future indicated. 
Of course, we played Neptune's new songs loudly in the van. There are a lot of people because it's the weekend. Everyone, be careful while on your mission so that there aren't any accidents. Producer Bay asked us as soon as we came out of the van. There were clearly a lot of people. Since it was the weekend, they had even restricted traffic. From the sidewalks to even the asphalt road, the entire Yonsei Street was crowded with people. Wherever I looked, I saw couples, and there were a lot of families with strollers. Ah. It's I'm Ju Won. Isn't that the now, we team over there? Right? Hey, hurry up. They are filming something here. It looks like Song Yuri's a guest. Who's that next to her? Isn't that Neptune? Oh, my god. Seeing their appearance in person amazing. Let's go closer. People began to gather around us as soon as we entered the streets. Because of the filming staff, they weren't able to come too close. All the women looked at I'm Ju Won and the men watched Lee Songa and Lee Tae Hee as their excitement heightened. I feel like we're going to be squashed. The weather's gloomy, yet they still came out on dates. Still, ITLL be difficult for the researcher team to find us because of all the people, right? Huang Jaehyun shrugged at I'm Ju Won's complaint. Then he asked Lee Tae Hee. We're probably going to have to run today. How are Neptune's athletic abilities? In our group, LJ is the best since she boxes as a hobby. Seo Young practiced dancing since she was young so she's good too. Sangha, if you provide her with sufficient fuel, ah, if you give her food, she can move well. And you? I'm awful. Li Taehee replied without hesitation. Awful. How are you at running? I've never run since the physical fitness test during high school. Looking off into the distance, Li Taehee took something out from her pocket and ate it. It was a ginseng jelly, a healthy food she received from a fan. Seeing her like this, Huang Jaehyun clicked his tongue with an expression that read, there's no hope for her. Producer, quickly give us the mission. So that we can complete it quickly and flee before the researcher team gets here. At Im Juwan's urgings, the producer handed out mission cards. On my card, it said to bring a same-aged couple. Taehee, what does yours say? Buy two fresh fruit juices. Li Taehee replied while looking around her. And Sangha? Mine says to bring a baby boy on a stroller. Fortunately, theirs weren't too picky. Mine was the pickiest. While there were countless couples, I had to ask each of them to see if they were the same age. I separated from the girls and went into the crowd of people. The cameraman assigned to me chased after me. I asked smiling couples for their understanding and age. However, it felt weird standing amidst people who came to leisurely enjoy their weekend. Should I say that I felt like I became distanced from this normal scene after living busily in the entertainment industry all this time? A sudden sense of reality overcame me. On my next break, I must meet a friend or someone. Resolving myself, I was about to ask my fourth couple. Hey, aren't you Young Sun Wu? Right? Young Sun Wu. When I turned around, a familiar couple was looking at me. The one who clearly called my name was the man. I definitely remembered his face, but was he my university colleague? Or from high school? I couldn't remember his name. When I smacked my lips, the man's complexion crumbled. Don't tell me you don't remember me. Yeah, sorry. I have trouble recognizing faces. Kim Taejong, man. Kim Taejong. But what are you doing these days? Did you come here alone? The guy, who just told me his name on his own, looked up and down at me while questioning me. Seeing as he was pulling his girlfriend's shoulder in, it seemed he wanted to ask if I was single on this spring weekend. A stronger sense of reality overwhelmed me like a tsunami. You used to look after kids all the time instead of coming to the PC room too. Like some boy breadwinner with a bunch of younger siblings. Do you still look after them? Well, something like that. I was taking care of some girls. Enjoy your life a little. Well be thirty soon. When Kim Taejong said this, his girlfriend tilted her head. Taejong, did I see your friend before? He seems familiar. Hey, 
How would you have seen him if this is my first time seeing him in a long time? Rather than their conversation, I heard their casual speech three. They were the same age. I quickly smiled friendlily at Kim Taejong and said. Are you the same age as your girlfriend? Yeah, why? Hey, doesn't it seem like that cameraman is filming us? Kim Taejong suddenly tidied his hair as he looked behind me. The cameraman was still filming me from a little distance away. I was about to explain in detail to Kim Taejong and ask for his cooperation. Lee Sangha approached me from my right. With a slightly smiling face and while carefully pushing a stroller. Behind her lush hair that fluttered in the wind were men who followed behind her like zombies, completely entranced. What are you doing here? I'm done. Uh, I think I'm almost done too. I met someone I knew. Did you get married? Kim Taejong suddenly said something ridiculous. He foolishly looked at Lee Sangha and the stroller before looking back at me. D did you marry? Did you marry TH that person? Is that your kid? Are you trying to prevent someone's chances of getting married? For that's not it. Right? Of course, no wonder. The kid didn't resemble you. I was shocked. Behind Lee Sangha, a young couple, who looked to be the baby's parents, laughed while covering their mouths. I was about to explain the situation to Kim Taejong once again, but this time, I heard a commotion from my left. Appa, I bought fresh fruit juice. Lee Taehee came out through the crowd holding a green juice glass in each hand. Maybe it was because of crowd of people, but she approached me with unusually swift steps. She looked at Kim Taejong and tilted her head. Kim Taejong opened and closed his mouth before asking me. Hey, don't tell me, she's. No. Whatever you're thinking of, no. Ah. Neptune. Kim Taejong's girlfriend shouted out of the blue. Then she pointed at them. You're Neptune, right? And, you're their manager, right? The one who appeared on the New Year's special. That's right. We are currently filming from now on, were. If you have the time, would you mind doing a mission with us? Of course, it's fine. Oh, my. What do I do? I'm totally fine. We can just cancel the movie. What? What's Neptune? While I was explaining the situation to the two people in detail, there was a commotion behind me this time. Wondering who it was this time, I turned around and flinched. I saw familiar faces. LJ and M. C. O. Young were running straight at us. Appa. Stay there. Don't run away. I understood the situation as soon as I heard M. C. O. Young shouting forebodingly. Uh, hey, we should run. What? I asked Kim Taejong and his girlfriend to wait a little, and we quickly scattered to avoid LJ and Im Seo Young. I was wondering how we would complete our mission now that we had been seen. Then, in front of me, an ear-piercing scream erupted amidst the crowd of people. Then a second and third time. The screams quickly spread. At first, I thought Im Ju Won was doing something. Or that the now, we team had gathered and were inciting cheers. I couldn't think of anything else that could bring about such an intense reaction besides those two. However, something was off. These weren't happy screams from seeing celebrities. They seemed as though they were stricken with fear. Avoid it. Run. Screams like these that didn't suit this place were mixed in as well. I think something's happening over there. Ah, uh, why are those people acting like that? What the heck? Someone's going to get hurt. People around me murmured. The screaming people ran in our direction as if running away from something. I figured out the reason a few seconds later. An old truck loaded with water bottles was rushing towards us. Through a street packed with people. Just what was that person doing? Was he insane? A fleeing woman was hit by the truck. Screams erupted all around. As if swaying, the truck turned and rushed side to side. People scattered like a swarm of minnows hit by a rock. An abnormal event was occurring in this place, which had been extremely normal only moments ago. Wait, where were the girls? I hastily looked around within the confusion. LJ and Im Seo Young were far away, 
and Li Taehee was a bit away as well. Li Sangha had abandoned the stroller and was hugging the baby. She was in the direction the truck was charging at. Without having the mind to comprehend the situation, I shot forward. Li Sangha, who was running away while hugging the baby, seemed to trip on something as she fell over. When she got back up, the truck was right in front of her. Sangha. Li Sangha looked in my direction. An unknown expression brushed across her shocked face. I ran forward and embraced Li Sangha and the baby. I heard the sound of tires scratching the asphalt. It was going to hit us. Just as I thought this, Li Taehee suddenly pushed my back forcefully. Chapter, 95 Taehee I hastily shouted. The instant my body wobbled, I fell to the ground. You will see the future, Mr. Sun Wu. My thigh hit the cold floor, and my ankle groaned in pain under the chair that had fallen down with me. There wasn't any other pain besides that. I quickly took in a deep breath like someone who had been submerged in water. Then I looked around at my surroundings. This wasn't the streets of Sinchen. It wasn't the street where screams erupted out and people scattered chaotically. I was in the room with purple lights, the room that I had entered an hour ago to pick my superpower. What the heck? Just what happened? Taken aback, I had been calming myself by taking deep breaths when Producer Bay hesitantly stood up. Uh, were you just acting just now? Writer Song Yujin added in with widened eyes. Producer, while it isn't the future foresight ability we had set up, let's try to save this since it's a shame to waste it. It's realistic. I almost thought that today's concept was a thriller. It was good, right? Then. Producer Bay placed the fallen chair upright as he asked. Mr. Sun Wu, did you see the future just now? What kind of future was it? What kind of future was it? The woman who rolled on the ground after being hit by the truck was still vivid in my mind. Screams echoed in my ears, and I gasped when I saw the truck about to hit Lee Sangha and the baby. Then that truck. What happened after? No, more importantly everything wasn't real. I got on the elevator with the cameraman. It opened on the first floor. When we went out to the rear parking lot, I saw the staff chatting in two vans for the members. They were all things I had seen before. I looked down. My feet were on the concrete floor of the parking lot. So I was walking on the ground properly. It had felt like the floor was rolling. I got on the driver's seat of the black van. After a familiar greeting, Huang Jiehyun asked. You picked a card too, right? What kind of power is it? Future Prophet. Do you have the power to stop time? What the heck? How did you know? Since I heard it previously. Ah, uh, does the Future Prophet know other people's powers too? Guess so. But what's wrong with your complexion? Relax. It's too exaggerated. Producer Bay probably asked for something weird again. The voices of the two talking and laughing seemed so distant. I exhaled the breath I had been holding back and racked my brain, which was currently like a rusty machine. First, things were following what happened in my memory. What I saw, which I wasn't certain if describing it that way was correct, seemed like it would be the future that would unfold soon. However, it was in a completely different format than before. There was no static or myself twenty years in the future, and I could move on my own. However, it was so realistic that I couldn't even consider it as the future. Even now, rather than feeling like I had seen the future, I felt like I had returned to the past. Why? Why was it different from before? I looked for a clue within my foggy mind when, suddenly, I recalled the last scene. Li Taehee pushed my back, but the power in her thin arms was insignificant. Most likely, we were all hit by the truck the next moment. I was probably hit too. I might have even been in a critical state. Maybe it was because of that. Was the method in which I saw the future different from the others until now because I would be in a large accident incomparable to the others? While it was only a guess, that was all I could think of for now. Just then, Li Taehee got in the car. The moment I recalled her pushing my back, my mind jolted awake as if cold water had been poured on me. Hey, just why did you? I unknowingly shouted before stopping. 
I almost made a mistake. The others were looking at me with wide eyes. Li Tehe tilted her head. Did I do something? Your manager is the future prophet. It seems he's been seeing things since a while ago. It has even gone beyond the realm of role-playing. Look at how realistic his expression is. Ju Wan. What are you doing? Stop losing to the guest and reflect on yourself. Worry about yourself. In trying to get into character. While Huang Jiehyun and Im Ju Wan were chatting, Li Taehee leaned towards the driver's seat. Does something happen to me in the future? Yeah I think something will happen today. So be careful. Okay. Her light brown eyes curled into a smile. Next, the child actress Song Yuri and Lee Sangha got in one after another. Lee Sangha said she picked hypnotist as she glanced at my forehead while holding a black marker, and Im Ju Won and Song Yuri discussed changing companies. Then producer Bei passed me a box of dice. With the box in hand, I thought for a moment. Perhaps the results would be different this time. However, this thought disappeared the moment I took off the sticker of the red die. The superhuman team will. In one hour, on the streets of Sinchen, with civilians, complete a mission. Gulping dryly, I looked at Li Taehe and Li Sangha. The two probably couldn't imagine what would happen to them in an hour. My grip on the steering wheel tightened. There were many moments when I thought that I changed the present after seeing the future until now. However, I was more desperate than ever before. Should I act crazy and say I couldn't go? Or tell them I had certain circumstances? Faint after saying I wasn't feeling well? Or just drive in a completely different direction? If I did, then we probably wouldn't be involved in that incident. With a complicated mind, I recalled the chaotic scene. Producer Bay knocked on the window, telling me to start driving. I bit my lips and started the van. I needed time to think. I had to think of something on our way. What method would be the best to change the future? The scene in my memory played out in front of me. I saw couples laughing and chatting while enjoying the event and families with strollers. The streets of Sinchen were extremely peaceful and normal, just like before the incident. Since the truck would rush in here soon, I would have liked it if everything could be handled by shouting to everyone, telling them to run away, but there were cameras. I shook my head after calculating the storm that would sweep through my life afterwards. Before producer Bay distributed the missions, I told him. Producer, I'm going to go to the washroom. That Uplex building. Okay. But ITLL be good if you hurry since the researcher team has found your location and are on their way here. I told Lee Sangha and Lee Tae to stay with the staff and walked away, almost running. Of course, I wasn't planning on coming back before the incident took place. I was relieved since this place was quite a distance away from the location of the incident, and if the five celebrities stayed together without dispersing, civilians would gather here as well. Apparently, the now, we team is over there. Let's go there, quickly. Oh, my god, what in the world? Autographs, where can we go get autographs? I passed the rushing people and approached a gigantic building. Fortunately, I didn't need to lie to lose my cameraman. He raised his camera and stopped. He'll be filming the crowds in front of the building so come here when you're done. Yes, then he'll be back soon. While he was filming, I entered the building and left through a different exit. Then I took off the mic on my shirt and called 1121. I want to report a drunken driver. It was a water bottle truck and the driver seemed very drunk. There are a lot of people on the streets right now because of an event and someone might get hurt. I constantly thought about it on my way here. Why did the truck charge into a vehicle prohibited area? I came up with three hypotheses. The truck was broken and couldn't stop. Though, if this was the case, then the question was why the driver drove into a crowd of people instead of turning towards the trees on the side of the street or something. My second hypothesis was that the driver was drunk and wasn't in his right mind. If not, then he might be a crazy person with a lot of dissatisfaction towards the world trying to commit an unspeakable crime. Which was why I reported him as a drunk driver. Other reasons were that it looked like drunk driving, and it was the most likely and easiest to make up and manage. Soon, I was told that it had been reported to the police. 
They said they would dispatch officers right away. I stood in the middle of the street and recalled the place of the incident. That time, I was in the middle of Yonsei Street, and the commotion was in the front, not too far away. There was quite a distance between me and the traffic circle. If the water bottle truck had charged through the traffic circle, then the commotion would have gone on for much longer. Then there was a bigger chance that it came out from an alley in between. When I arrived, there was a pathway for cars to pass between the left and right alleys like a crosswalk for cars. While there were traffic cones and poles set up so that cars wouldn't drive out of the pathway, when I touched them, they were made of plastic, empty inside, and had no strength. At least there was a rectangular bar that seemed quite heavy, seemingly filled with sand, but it felt like cars could still charge through it. I clicked my tongue out of nervousness when I got a call from the producer. Mr. Sun Wu, where are you? The cameraman says he can't find you. I thought about it for a second before saying. Producer, I saw a drunken driver up the street. The driver seemed to be in a really bad condition. Pardon? What did you say? Worried that there might be a big accident, I am looking around for the car. Air, just in case, could you gather the civilian's attention? Maybe encourage a cheer. Air. Mr. Sun Wu, are you serious right now? It's not a part of your concept. He sounded flustered. I would be the same if I was in his position. After I told him that I had reported it to the police, dazed, producer Bay said he understood. Not long after, I heard cheers behind me. While waiting for the police, I checked to see if there was a water bottle truck in either of the two alleys. The alleys were complex like a maze. While I did see a few cars, none were the one from my memory. During this time, people laughed and chatted as they passed me. I informed the civilians. At first, when I told them about the drunk driver, their expressions asked, so what? But when I told them about celebrities, they were instantly enthralled. Well, who could imagine an incident that they had only ever seen on the news where a car charged down the street into people? Even I, who personally saw it, wondered if it was real in that moment. Time kept passing. My chest felt stiff from nervousness. Mr. Sun Wu. I've been looking everywhere for you. What was that about? The cameraman ran towards me while carrying his camera. The moment I looked back at him, accompanied by the rough sound of an engine, a truck came out from the alley on the other side and crashed into the traffic cones. It was an old truck with water bottles loaded on its trunk. It was the truck I had seen. The people around me scattered while screaming. Like an agitated bull, the truck crashed into the traffic cones and the delineator posts. The powerless traffic cones flew out in various directions, and I saw those hit by them fall before hastily getting back up and fleeing. Well what the heck? What's wrong with that truck? Idiot, that scared me. Is there a problem with the car? Why is it going nuts? Is that driver crazy? Hey, hey, reported him to the police. I still didn't see the police and the water bottle truck was going nuts, going around in circles, before stopping momentarily after crashing into the traffic cones and the heavy rectangular bar. Relief crossed people's expressions. However, the real commotion hadn't begun. Damn. I swore while rushing in at full speed. I didn't know what I was doing. I had never rushed into or even thought about rushing into a situation like this. But, when I thought about how the car would charge towards people once it started moving again, strength went into my legs as I recalled the last moment I had seen. I instantly approached the side of the truck. When I grabbed the door handle and pulled it open, I was overwhelmed with a thick stench of alcohol. A middle-aged man turned to look at me with his hands on the steering wheel. Looking at his eyes, he didn't seem to be in his right mind. Without the time to think about it, I grabbed the middle-aged man and dragged him out of the driver's seat. So we're going to stop the recording for a bit. The recording isn't the problem right now, no, it is. The recording is a problem, but I'm just too flustered right now. I'm telling you that a big accident could have happened here. It's crazy, police cars, and... When I turned back after finishing my conversation with the officers, who arrived a little late, producer Bei Yong Huan was talking gibberish into his phone. The other staff members and cast members were looking at me with expressions of just what happened. 
The Neptune girls were anxious and rushed towards me as soon as they saw me. Their already light faces were as white as paper. Oh Appa, Appa, are you okay? We felt like our hearts were about to drop. Just what is going on are you hurt anywhere? Stop standing there stupidly and turn around so that we can see if you're all right. Im Seo Young, Lee Tae Hee, and LJ gathered around me and examined my condition. Lee Sangha was a few steps away from me, standing rigidly and unblinking, as she stared at me as though she was stricken with fear. To be honest, I was partly out of it, but because the girl's reactions were so intense, my mind crawled back to its senses. After showing them that I was all right and comforting them, the mood relaxed a little. Huang Jiehyun and the other celebrities came up to me after the girls. I heard you blocked a drunken driver charging into the streets with your body. Is that true? I heard you stopped a truck and fought with the driver. Is that true? No. If I had that sort of talent, I would have become a national athlete. I said while exhaling the breath I had been holding in. Mingling in their noisy conversation, I finally felt like the incident was over. Only after I relaxed my shoulders did I realize how tense I was. Producer Bay hung up his phone and was about to approach me. Excuse me, producer. They are from the organization hosting the culture market or something event today. They apparently have something to say to you. The floor director brought over the people from the event and an employee from the district office. The man who had thanked me multiple times a few moments ago lowered his head to producer Bay and requested. The mood is a bit uneasy because people are shocked by the incident just now. If it's not too much trouble, could the celebrities tell them that it's fine and to relax? Us? At Huang Jiehyun's question, the event organizer looked at the celebrities and me and continued. Since the person who personally resolved the incident is here and because you are all famous, if you all say something, then I think the mood will quickly calm down. Would you consider it? Well, saying something isn't difficult. If the mood calms, then I think we'll be able to get the mood to naturally settle down since an indie band is going to arrive soon and begin their performance. An indie band. A performance. As soon as I heard this, I suddenly thought of something. The reason why I decided to appear on this entertainment show, which I had completely forgotten due to the incident. I looked at the surrounding cameras, civilians, and the girls, who were calming their surprised hearts. Then I approached the event organizer and producer Bay, who were talking with each other, and said. If we're going to do it, how about Neptune performs a song as well? The staff were moving busily. Producer Bay glanced at the camera and lighting equipment being set up in front of the small stage as he ended his call. Then he gestured to young Sun Wu and his cameraman, who were nearby. We need to check the tape. If you filmed the scene, they want us to send it to the newsroom. When she heard this, writer Song Yujin's eyes widened. The newsroom? ITLL be on the news? Since there aren't any severely injured people or anything, we don't know if ITLL be as newsworthy, but if we have the scene, then it's an exclusive for us. They'll check the recording and determine if it's worth showing in a news brief. Producer Bay said with a still dazed expression. The news is the news, but how are we supposed to edit this? Stopping in thought, he pointed to the cameraman and asked. You followed Mr. Sun Wu in the end, right? Mr. Sun Wu rushing into the scene, how much of it did you get? The cameraman handed him his 6mm camera and replied. All of it. Chapter, 96. I looked around at my noisy surroundings. I recalled the horrifying accident that I had seen. The scene that would only remain in my memory was completely different from the scene in front of me right now. The commotion died down, and the scale of the accident had been glossed over as an unpleasant instance. The police took the drunk man who wasn't in his right mind away. The injured were treated at pharmacies or sent to the university hospital nearby. Since the majority of the injured people had been hit by the traffic cones or fallen over while fleeing, there was no need to call an ambulance. While the mood was a bit uneasy, this changed soon as well. Ah damn, I was really freaking out. What kind of instance is this after going out in public? Still, the now, we members are going to talk on stage because of it. I could only see them from afar because it was too crowded. Quick. 
let's get seats at the front. As soon as the news that the now, we team and their guests, including Neptune, were going on stage, people began gathering around the small stage. The jib camera that had been set up was moving in the air as it filmed this site. I gave the USB drive containing the instrumentals to the audio staff and went to find Neptune when producer Bei Yonghuan approached me with quick steps. After fixing his hat twice, he said. Mr. Sun Wu, about the current situation. Since the news is already spreading through social media, I think ITLL be quite the hot topic if we issue a promotional press release. Is it okay for my team to freeload off of it? When I tilted my head, producer Bay scratched his head and added. I was thinking about how it would be if we packaged the scenes where we gathered the people's attention, who were originally at the scene of the incident, and where we go up on the stage to calm the mood. Like a moving tale during a recording. Though it is a bit too dynamic to call it a moving tale. I think ITLL be fine. If there's a problem with the press release on my side, then the PR team. No, we gathered the people's attention by your request. I was wondering if it was okay for us to freeload off this when you settled the problem on your own. I'm completely okay with it. Rather, I had a ton to thank producer Bay and the staff since they listened to my absurd words and readily agreed to my request asking if Neptune could perform a song. This incident would have been a bolt out of the blue for the filming team as well. I am sorry that the recording has been delayed. You're even letting Neptune perform. People's safety takes priority over delays. Since our members are going to go up and greet people on the stage as well, we were going to get some airtime from that anyways. You're obviously going to go up as well, right? Yes, well, if I have to. Ah, uh, right. Also. I was nodding when producer Bay said something completely unexpected. About the incident. I think it might be on the news later, is that okay? The newsroom asked me to ask for your understanding. The news? That would go on the news. Not on internet articles or the entertainment show, but the news. It seemed my flustered expression was clearly revealed as producer Bay stressed that it would quickly pass since it would be in a news brief and that I shouldn't be too troubled by it. I rigidly nodded my head. If it would quickly pass, then there probably wouldn't be a problem. It wasn't like there were only one or two incidents on the news. Even cases where someone rescued a person who had fallen down onto the subway tracks or had captured a heinous criminal with his bare hands would quickly die down so this shouldn't matter much. Just then, my phone in my pocket rang. It was Team Leader Park. I answered the phone while separating from Producer Bay. Yes, Team Leader. I know that you are in the middle of recording, but there are weird posts popping up on social media. I've even been receiving an outpour of calls from reporters. So I felt like I had to ask you personally, are you in Sinchin? Yes. I'm in Sinchin. What kind of posts did you see? Now, we team and Neptune are filming in Sinchin, but a drunk driver suddenly charged down a street filled with people. Everyone was at a loss due to the shock, but Neptune's manager, which I think they are talking about you, dragged the driver out and ended the incident. Her voice was filled with disbelief. Also, I heard that the now, we team is going on stage to greet people because of the uneasy mood and that people nearby should go and watch since Neptune is going to perform as well. How much of this is the truth and how much is made up? Hmm. I think it's all true. From the beginning to the end. As if she didn't know what to say, team leader was silent for a moment before asked in a bewildered voice. Just what did you do during the entertainment show recording? I don't know. Something newsworthy. Even as those words came out of my mouth, they felt surreal. I also suddenly thought that I should tell my parents and my brother ahead of time. While I didn't know if I would be in the news or not, there would be a huge fuss at home if they saw it without knowing. My word, are you hurt? I'm fine. Okay. Either way, you're saying it's all true. While I don't know how big this incident will become, they'll talk to the reporters so don't worry and focus on the recording. Let's talk after. After hanging up, I called my brother and my parents. I told them that I would explain in detail later about 30 times. Only then did I go find the girls. They were preparing for their performance in an event tent. Are you ready? 
I think they are done setting up the cameras, well going to go up soon. When I said this while going in, the girls all turned to look at me. Their eyes were alarming. LJ clicked her tongue as she said. Do you like experiencing dangerous things or seeking thrills? If you do, then tell me instead of going against the truck. They'll try to work something out. Because you seem too calm for someone who returned from the scene of an accident. What did she mean calm? I explained that my appearance wasn't everything, but M. Seo Young rushed to me and slapped my arm. Appa! Appa, you are seriously unbelievable. Why do you do this? Appa, a while ago, no, you were almost in an accident just now. We took deep breaths to calm our beating hearts, yet Appa is talking about the performance like nothing. You were almost in a car accident. A car accident. Her small palm hit my arm multiple times. I know. I know, but I suddenly thought it was an opportunity. Since they said this incident was spreading on social media and if you perform your title track here, it might become a huge topic if we're lucky. The more I talked, the more chilly the atmosphere became. LJ was glaring at me, and Lee Taehee was blankly staring at me with her arms crossed. I didn't know what Lee Sangha was doing as she had her back towards me and wasn't looking in my direction. Im Seo Young stomped her feet hard. Then she tilted her head up and looked at me mercilessly. Her fierce eyes were wet with tears. An opportunity? If, if, if you were hurt, do you think we'll be happy if we use this opportunity to perform and gain popularity? Do don't tell me you were thinking this as you jumped in. Of course not. No matter how much I wanted to increase Neptune's popularity, would I really do something that crazy? I was firmly shaking my head and comforting them when Lee Tae Hee came up to us. Then she tapped I'm Seo Young's shoulder. Stop for now and get ready for the performance. Appa either way, he created this opportunity by risking his life so we need to do well. While she looked calm compared to I'm Seo Young and LJ, her gaze was a bit chilly as she looked at me. After calming him Seo Young down, she stood in front of me. With a sigh, she said. Don't do anything dangerous from now on. Tae Hee, it's you who should. Damn. I began confusing the future that didn't happen and the changed present. While clicking my tongue, I looked at Lee Tae Hee's arms. They were thin and so white that they looked pale. With those arms that looked like they would break if I gripped them too hard, she had pushed my back. Me. You should be careful too. Don't jump into an incident and avoid it. I don't have the ability to jump in. My athletic ability is garbage. She said while shrugging her shoulders. I suddenly became curious about what she thought when she did that. What was she thinking when she rushed in front of the truck and pushed my back? Well since it didn't happen, I wouldn't be able to hear an answer in the future. We're okay, but talk with Sangha. Sangha. I was worried because she kept her back turned towards me. When I came close, her state was a bit, no, very odd. She was holding her phone with her fingers that were so pale they were like a mannequin's. On the screen were the lyrics of their title track Satellite that they were going to sing on the stage. Why the lyrics all of a sudden? I can't remember the lyrics. She said with a stiff face. Her black eyes trembled as though they had lost their way. For her to not remember the lyrics she looked more scared than when she was in front of the truck, holding the baby, in the future I saw. I bent my knees and stared directly at her face. Were you that surprised? It really wasn't much. You saw it too. Im not hurt anywhere. You could have been hurt really bad. You could have even died. In a place I couldn't see you, without me knowing. Sangha, Sangha. Her white face almost looked blue. It seemed that her mind was filled with thoughts of me getting carried away in an ambulance as a bloody mess or with all my bones broken. Hey, why would I die? It's not like I jumped in front of an oncoming truck or did some stunt in the air. All I did was open the door and drag the driver out when the truck stopped. I value my life too so don't be so worried. I said while smiling gently, but Lee Sangha suddenly grabbed my arm. Her eyes, which were trembling like a stormy sea, gradually calmed down. Calmer than ever, her eyes stared directly at me for a long time. 
Only when my legs started to go numb did she say in a small voice. Don't do it again. Okay, I got it. She let go only after hearing my reply. At a sudden thought, I slowly looked around at Lee Sangha and the other girls. If, in the future I saw, the truck didn't charge at Lee Sangha and Lee Tae and if that last moment wasn't embedded in my mind, then I might not have jumped into this incident this much. I realized that Neptune had become a significant part of my life. Appas, you're so cool. You look better than on TV. Yua. Their looks are amazing in real life. How could they be so unbelievably pretty? Can't they just film here instead of going somewhere else? The power of celebrities was incredible. People were crowded around the stage, even so far back that it made you wonder if they could even see them. There were also a lot of people looking down from two or three story buildings nearby. It seemed like the truck incident had already thrown back into a corner of their minds as everyone's face was filled with excitement. The now, we members skillfully heated the mood. Entertainment show veterans were on another level. Even in such a sudden situation, their back and forth was natural like flowing water. Neptune and even the child actors were waving their hands with a smile. It felt like I was the only one here who was stiff. Fortunately, I didn't show it. Of course, I had seen a lot of stages while going around with Neptune, and there were countless times when the number of spectators exceeded this. However, I was always below or behind the stage. It was my first time being on stage, sharing the attention. The gazes on me were very uncomfortable. There were even some people who murmured my name, but whenever I heard my name, it felt like another wrinkle appeared on my face. As expected, this wasn't my preference. While I was clicking my tongue, Huang Jiehyun approached me, holding a mic. Everyone, this is Neptune's manager, Mr. Yung Sun Wu. You were all surprised before, right? We were very surprised as well when we heard that the person who went off to the bathroom had caught a drunken driver on the scene. Laughter erupted from below the stage. The people who had been looking at other celebrities were turning to look at me one after another. I greeted the people who waved their hands as they faced their phone cameras towards me when I saw a familiar face in the crowd. Kim Taejong. He was standing next to his girlfriend and looking at me with a stupid expression. He looked the same as in my memory. When I greeted him by gesturing with my eyes, he became surprised. Seeing this, I felt like my slightly stiff shoulders relax. Now, say something to the crowd. Huang Jiehyung handed me the mic. Um. It's fortunate that not many people were hurt. I added a few simple words after that before handing the mic back. After hearing people cheer in front of me, I felt like I was going deaf. Huang Jiehyun spoke to the crowd again. Since we can't just end it like this, Neptune here will perform a song. Please give them a loo it seems you will. Ow, my ears. Then we'll start Neptune's special performance. Soon, Neptune's performance began, accompanied by a violin melody. The other celebrities and I came down from the stage and watched their performance like the other spectators. The scenes of the celebrities following the girls' choreography was clearly captured by the ENG and jib cameras. At first, the people's attention was divided into two. There were many people who were looking at the now, we team rather than Neptune's performance. However, a few seconds after the intro, their gazes were directed at the stage as though their eyes were dragged by the collar to look in that direction. I looked at each of the girls who were buried under the cheers. Their performance was perfect, which meant I was worried for nothing. Even Lee Sangha, who I was the most worried about, looked completely fine on stage. It was an unfamiliar stage. It was an unexpected, sudden performance. Yet, this performance made those watching more excited than any of their other performances, even their music broadcast comeback performance which they had reduced their sleep to prepare for. It didn't seem I was the only one who felt this way as cheers loud enough to shake Sinchin rang out. During Lee Taehee's part, people slapped the backs of the person next to them and admired her, they went wild during LJ's rap, and they waved their hands friendlily at him Seo Young. They also crazily pressed their shutters at Lee Sangha. At some point, voices popped up, telling them that one song wasn't enough and to perform another, asking for an encore, and even asking they hold a guerrilla concert right here. 
In fact, the celebrity members, including Huang Jiehyun, sloppily followed the choreography as they sang the encore. I took a step back and captured this scene with my two eyes. Without me realizing, a satisfied smile hung on my lips. Chapter 97 The recording began again. As the mood was too heated, it wasn't appropriate to continue the mission so we pushed through the crowd and returned to the van. Everyone flopped down like corpses and panted heavily. They looked like they had evacuated to an air raid shelter to avoid bombs. I leaned against the back of the seat and closed my eyes when I heard rustling sounds from the passenger seat. Then Lee Sangha came closer and said. Yeah, what? Look at my eyes. Your eyes? Is there a problem? I immediately turned around to examine her. I saw her black pupils within her eyes, which were so delicate they looked like they were drawn. She looked like she had firmly resolved herself. Should I say she was giving off a tragic beauty look? Rather than pulling out a marker, it seemed like she was unsheathing a sword A marker. Why did you take that out? Appa's already under my hypnosis. Astonished, I looked at her, but Lee Sangha stealthily avoided my gaze. Then she stretched her arm out and scribbled something on my forehead. When I looked at my forehead in the rearview mirror, I saw Lee Sangha written prominently on it. Hey, I told you to use it on someone else. It can't be helped since I can't allow you to do something dangerous elsewhere again. Your expression is too happy for something that can't be helped. It was too late to try to change your expression now. The people in the back seats giggled as they watched us, even the young Song Yuri. Then Li Taehee patted Li Song his shoulder, saying that she did well and that it's probably best if you stick with Appa. I lightly rubbed my forehead. Well, this did make me come to my senses. To be honest, I was worried that I wouldn't be able to focus 100% on the recording because of the sudden incident. My head was complicated with thoughts about the news and how the incident was quickly spreading on the internet. However, after she scribbled her name on my forehead, the fog in front of me seemed to clear a little. I did resolve myself that I would give it my all since I was already appearing on the show. I cleared my head and decided to focus on the entertainment show recording right now. Producer Bei Yonghuan opened the driver's seat door. Mr. Sun Wu, well move after you foresee the second future. Then he handed me the box containing dice. Everyone's gaze was on me. When I gathered the dice with a serious expression, Huang Jiehyun and Im Ju Wan jolted up from their seats. No, don't be like that, Mr. Sun Wu. Don't make such a serious face, it's scary now. Really? I thought it was a concept before but then there was a huge accident. I think you'll believe it if you told me you really saw the future and acted like that. Foresee a peaceful future, a peaceful one. I dearly wished for that as well. With crooked lips, I threw the dice. Thirty minutes later, we arrived at a park. Bright yellow, lush forsythia beds and a tunnel of plum blossoms that fluttered whenever the wind blew. It was an entirely peaceful sight. Not us, just the sight. The superhuman team members read each other's moods. The foresight was simple. The superhuman team, after thirty minutes, in the Nulpurium Park, must sacrifice two comrades and capture two members of the researcher team. Whoever it was, he was crap at throwing dice. Since what was foreseen had to occur in reality, this meant that two members had to be dragged over to the other team. After a short meeting, Huang Jiehyun was responsible for Song Yuri and the others were to survive on their own. While we were looking around at trails we could escape and hide in, we saw familiar faces at the entrance of the park. Unaware of the foresight, they swarmed at us as though we were a banquet. Everyone rushed towards the escape route they had chosen. I also stuck next to Lee Sangha and pushed through the maze-like trail. That's why you should have hypnotized a researcher team member instead of me. I have no regrets. Yeah, okay. Lee Sangha said in a resolute face. If someone chases us, quickly hide behind me. What are you going to do by hiding me? Since I'm the master right now, I have to protect you. I grinned without realizing it. Ah, so moved that tears filled my eyes. Like this, we might both be dragged off to the research lab. I don't think that's bad in its own wa. What do you mean it's not bad? 
It seemed they knew we were joking with each other even while running away as the cameramen smiled with their faces looking like haho -ha masks one. But for some reason, I heard another pair of smaller footsteps besides the cameraman. I turned around to see if it was Li Tae Hee, but it was Song Yuri, who was chasing us with her short legs. Uh, why didn't you go with Mr. Huang Jae Hyun and come over here? Since Huang Jae Hyun had the ability to stop time, the probability of surviving was probably higher with him. Also, Huang Jae Hyun had been taking care of Song Yuri, telling her to just trust and follow him. Panting already, Song Yuri said. I think you'll be a bother if I went with them. And if you come with us? Here, you're going to. Song Yuri dragged off after checking the cameraman. Well, she probably meant that, since the likelihood of Lee Sangha and I surviving was low, she wouldn't be a bother to us. Either way, we were fleeing with her when the cameraman assigned to me said. Apparently, M.S. Lee Taehee has been caught. When I asked due to being taken aback, the cameraman showed me his phone screen. Lee Taehee had a mask over her eyes and was detained by the researcher team. No, she was detained, but she looked comfortable as if she was at home. Her superpower is teleportation, yet how was she caught within a few minutes? Was she crawling? I said, naturally dumbfounded. Now that Lee Taehee was caught, if Lee Sangha or I was also caught in vain, then things would become troublesome. It would be fortunate if LJ and M. Seo Young were doing well on the other team, but if not, then this part was ruined. Our airtime was a problem, and it would be difficult to face producer Bay and the entertainment team. While I was pondering what I should do to make things entertaining, I heard a commotion behind me. From then on, we were chased constantly. Also, the ones chasing us were three members of the Now We team so we were finished the moment we were caught. How long had this game of tag continued? Song Yuri was panting heavily as she stopped. Just, just leave me here and run. I'm a kid anyways. Won't they leave me alive? Song Yuri, who had been saying this while waving her hand, became shocked and looked at the cameraman. Then, clasping her hands together, she repeatedly begged for what she said not to go on air. We're all child actors like her. She was the textbook example of a grown-up child too. After asking for the cameraman's understanding, Song Yuri continued to talk while covering her mic. I came on the show to change my image. Some people said that I was creepy because I wasn't childlike. Wouldn't it seem more childlike if I was caught here? Kids are like that. No, you acting like this is more creepy. Song Yuri's expression became strange. I knew I made a mistake when I said that. Sorry, I said that out of my habit of talking to the quadruplets. Quadruplets? Are they young? They are probably two years older than you. While I was speaking, Li Sangha, who had been going around looking like a warrior, saying that she would protect me, tapped my back. Appa, I think they are coming. Since it looks like ITLL be difficult to keep running away, let's hide for now. I have a pretty decent idea. I took Lee Sangha and Song Yuri, who were tilting their heads, and hid in the nearby forest. The cameraman filmed us from the back while lowering their bodies. It seemed they had separated to look for us as their loud voices communicating with each other came closer. I slightly held Song Yuri's shoulder and said. Now, go out. If you act as bait and lure someone, they'll grab him. Since the three of them wouldn't rush together to capture a tiny child. Lure. Isn't that too shameless? Song Yuri asked with a dumbfounded face. The hidden meaning should be too shameless for a child to do. Beside me, Li Sangha mumbled that she thought it was a good idea. I rolled up my sleeves as I said. What is shameless? If we're caught, we going to be dragged off to the research lab. When you play with the quadruplets, do you? Those kids are stronger than me. If they were faced with this situation, then they would have already offered me up as a sacrifice and ran away. Ah, uh, right. The cameras. I quickly looked towards the cameras behind me and added. Of course, they are good kids. They are just too competitive from growing up in a jungle. Song Yuri seemed like she was thinking whether this was how a child should act, but in the end, she followed my words and went out as bait. The researcher team members easily took the bait. 
The big fish that were baited were caught by Li Songa and me. As things proceeded smoothly, at some point, Li Songa and Song Yuri rushed out more passionately than me. Li Songa mumbled some strange words like how it felt like a crime family, and Song Yuri's expression now looked like a child's. By the time we heard that Im Ju Won was dragged away by LJ, we were thinking about who, among the three researcher team members we caught, we should let free. When I asked my cameraman how we were, he gave me a thumbs up. In the center of the city, lights from neon signs rippled like waves. After filming in two more locations, we parked the van in a nearby parking lot, waiting for the final recording. We set the DMB3 to PBS News. Everyone gulped their saliva as they alternated between their phones and the DMB screen. I was thinking that it might not happen in the end, but producer Bay's words put the final nail in the coffin. That the incident in Sinchin would go out on the news as a brief. There are already quite a few internet articles. Social media is bustling with footage and stories of people who witnessed the incident. It has become a huge fuss on the internet while we were filming. No wonder our stylists were staring at their phones. At Huang Jiehin's words, the two captured researcher team members nodded. Apparently, reporters contacted our company. Our CEO Hyung freaked out when a local news reporter, not an entertainment reporter, contacted him, thinking that I caused an accident. Hey, our names appeared on the accident report. It's not like we committed a crime, but it feels weird. I thought that the day my name appeared on an accident report, my life as a celebrity would be over. There is a lot of discussion about Mr. Sun Wu. Did you see them? Wow, Neptune's quite something too. Their performance was great. I bet those who saw the fan cams have Neptune's name embedded in their minds. Don't tell me once Neptune members become top stars, we won't be able to cast them because of their schedules or something. Huang Jiehyun looked at Li Sangha and quietly said. Just in case, write a contract saying that you'll appear once more. Ah, uh, Hyung. Asking for a contract is going too far. Let's first exchange phone numbers. My ears perked up while I was blankly looking at my phone screen. When I turned around, Park Jongtae, who was the talkative type among the Now We members, was about to hand her his phone when he took it back. Hey, hey, did you see her manager's expression just now? His expression read, You want to get my girl's numbers? You have to go through me first. No, he was saying not to even try if you don't have the courage to strike him down. Girl group managers are just that scary. I think I know why the drunken driver was instantly restrained. Just think about that expression glaring at you. That person probably felt that his life was in danger. These people. My expression wasn't that bad. My expression just stiffened because I was a bit sensitive towards these things after dealing with Punchline's crazy idiot. They joked, saying, anyone would say it is that bad, and it really is that bad. Just as I was wondering how I would shut them up, Lee Sangha grabbed my arm. Appa, I think the news is starting. In another parking lot, the researcher team's white van was parked temporarily as well. The scene inside was similar. They were all chatting while they waited for the news brief to start on the DMB. Under the dim lights, Im Seo Young's eyes shined in a meaningful light as though she was about to tell a strange story. Sometimes, it's really strange. Appa got us next K star and that did well. Appa handed Lee Sangha Cat Guardian Ghost, saying that he thought it would be a hit, and it did. It was a huge hit. Im Ju Won, who was handcuffed, mumbled with a depressed face. Anything else? Nuna, is there anything else? The mixed race child actor, Alex, urged I'm CEO Young. He was so focused on her story that his tired eyes shined. Im Seo Young trembled due to his cuteness and nodded her head. And this time, Sun Wu Appa actively pushed Tae Uni's song to be a title track and it did well. It reached the top 10. Oh my god. How desirable. That manager. At this rate, is his ancestor helping him? Or there is something about him? The people inside the van reacted with glittering eyes. Not long after, a member of the Now We team looked at a camera and yawned. That's good. Yung Hwan Hyung should be able to do something with this. Since that manager picked Future Profit, 
if he edits it with the Sinchin incident, then I bet ITLL look quite believable. Im Ju Won suddenly asked the Neptune members. Is there anything else? Something that didn't occur yet that he said. Something that didn't occur yet. As if she remembered something, LJ shrugged her shoulders. I do remember one thing, but he said this in a joking manner a few months ago. What is it? That well take first place on a music broadcast. Eyes rolling in thought, I'm Ju Won abruptly asked. Hyung, when will today's recording air? Usually, it airs after two weeks. But I don't know if they'll air it a week early before the hot topicness fades. But why are you asking? Im Ju Won grinned as he said. Maybe Neptune will get first before our episode airs. The same time, people crowded around the enormous TV in the WU lounge. A few people, including Kim Hyunjo and employees from the PR team, were staring intently at the screen. Chief Joe, who got off the elevator and headed towards the vending machines, tilted his head when he discovered this scene. What's this? Why are you all gathered around the TV? Is something happening today? Mr. Sun Woo is appearing on the news. Maybe even Neptune. At Team Leader Park's words, Chief Joe swiftly took a spot. Young Sun Woo. Why is he appearing on the news and not the entertainment show? Did he cause an incident? He did. Kim Hyunjo replied, as if at a loss for words. During this time, the news anchor's remarks concerning a gruesome murder ended, and finally, the news briefing began. This is the main news brief and incident for today. While drunk, Mr. A, who was in his forties, drove his water bottle truck into a crowd of civilians and was caught by the police with the help of a civilian. The water bottle truck charged out of an alley. Even though the civilians are shocked and fleeing, he doesn't stop. Fortunately, girl group Neptune's manager, 27-year-old Young Sun Woo, was at the scene and settled the incident by dragging the driver out of the truck. It was later revealed that he had discovered the drunken driver and reported to 112 before searching for the truck. Listening to the anchor's recorded voice, Chief Joe blinked. The scene where a water bottle truck was causing a fuss like a wild buffalo in a vehicle restricted area and shocked civilians fleeing from it played on the screen. When the truck stopped momentarily after ramming into the traffic cones, someone jumped towards the truck and dragged the driver out. Hey, there he is. It's Mr. Sun Woo. What the heck, you can clearly see his face. He'll contact PBS's newsroom and request the full news brief video and a clean version. Excited voices erupted in the lounge. They were so loud that other team employees came over to the TV to see what was going on. During this time, Chief Joe stared at the familiar face on the screen with a foolish expression. The anchor continued. This incident has become more trendy after it was later revealed that from now on, were team members and their guests, including Neptune. Who had arrived at Sinchin to film their program, purposely gathered civilians' attention to bring them away from the scene of the incident. 